Hello all, welcome to part one of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to introduce you to Python. So let's get started. First of all, what is this Python? Python is one of the popular programming languages available in the market. There are several popular programming languages available in the market like Java, Python, C Sharp, Ruby, JavaScript, and the list will go on, guys. And Python is one of the popular programming languages available in the market. And Python is easy to learn, guys. Okay. If you want to learn Python programming language, okay, Python is easy to learn, very easy to learn. And also, Python is an open source programming language which is available for free guys okay you don't have to pay any license amount for using the python programming language as it is open source and is available for free now if you google search most popular programming language you will get python in the top list guys okay so i'll simply google search for most popular programming language like this just google search like this you see august 2021 and the number one position goes for python guys which is having around 31.47 percent market share followed by the java which is having 19.14 percent share okay so python is topping the list right python is the most popular programming language which is in the top of the programming languages list because python is used in many different things like machine learning ai okay data science go with all the modern stuff guys okay you need python programming because of its simplicity and easiness to learn at same time it is open source and free so that's all about this session guys see you in the next video session thank you bye hello all welcome to part two of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically demonstrate how to download install and configure python in windows machine so let's get started first of all i'll show you how to download python i'll open any browser and simply search for download python just two words guys okay download python you'll get this link in the search results just click on this link you'll be taken to the official website of python that is python.org downloads page now here you see a button which shows the latest version for windows for python okay click on this button it's downloading the 3.9.7 version as per today's date okay fine so here the exe file got downloaded guys for python so let's go to the location where it got downloaded now simply double click guys just double click on this and you'll get the installation wizard like this just say install now and I got a user access control dialog. I'm just selecting yes. Very simple process, guys, for installing the Python in our Windows machine. Let's wait for the installation to complete. Once the installation is completed, just click on this close button. Okay, that's it, guys. Now let's see. Okay, let's see whether the Python is configured in our machine or not. For that, I'll go here and type cmd and open the command prompt. And here I will type Python hyphen hyphen version, okay? One of the commands in Python guys, which has to display the version of the Python here. Just press enter here. You see Python was not found. Even after we have successfully installed Python in our machine, okay? Still it is saying Python was not found. When you type this command, Python hyphen hyphen version command, it's saying instead of giving the version number of the Python, it's saying Python was not found. Let me close this. So to configure Python, okay? In order to get the Python version there in the command prompt, we have to configure Python, guys. Right? But to configure Python, let's go to the location where Python got installed in our machine first, okay? So let's open the folder and uh, go to the C drive where uh, the Python got installed. So we have to go to the C drive here, users folder, and then user name of the, okay? User name of this machine. So my username is this number, guys. I'll go inside this number. This is a username. And uh, 
here we have to find something like apps folder but by default it will not be displayed because it will be in hidden mode to enable it or to make it uh, unhide i have to click on this view and select hidden items okay the moment i select that i'll get the folder known as app data okay which is a hidden folder just open that you will find this local open that here somewhere you will find something like uh, programs go inside here you will find python okay and here you will find the version we have installed python 39 okay here we have the application of python so this path we need guys okay we need to copy this path and paste in the environment variables how we need this path guys okay we have to copy this path and here type env and uh, when you type env guys you will get this uh, option in windows 10 edit the system environment variables option just click on that guys okay just click on that option by default it will be advanced okay advanced tab will be in selected mode in the system properties just click on the environment variables which is displayed here and here we have in uh, user variables and system variables okay we have to edit the system variables and that to the predefined uh, system variable that is path variable okay just select this path guys which is already there so click on edit and here click on new and give this path guys okay you need to give this path copy this path where the python application file is available or installed in your machine and here you need to click new and select and just paste the path guys okay till here you have to paste the path and say okay 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 done now guys repeat the same step open the command prompt again this time and here type python hyphen hyphen version okay press enter you see this time you are getting the python version that means python is successfully configured in your machine okay we have downloaded installed and configured python in our machine now and this proves that okay if you are getting this version that means python is successfully configured in your machine so guys that's all about uh, how to download install and configure python in windows machine see you in the next video session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 3 of python tutorial in this session i'm going to practically show you how to download install and use pycharm ide so let's get started the previous session we have installed python in our machine now we can install something known as pycharm id what is this pycharm id pycharm id is an advanced editor where we can write the python code and execute the code now let me practically show you how to download this pycharm id and how to install it so for that i'll open the browser and simply type download pycharm just two words guys okay download pycharm that's it you will get this link in the search results download pycharm python id for professional like this you will get from jetbrains.com click on this you will be taken to this download page where you will be shown two options one is professional other one is community which one we have to choose community one is open source and is free guys okay you don't have to pay any license amount here but coming to the professional okay it's a licensed one okay you can use it for trial but after that you have to pay for the license for now for our python programming needs this community edition of this pycharm is enough guys okay so i'll simply click on this download button under the community section so in a while you will see that the pycharm id the exe file for installing the pycharm id will get downloaded like this okay let's wait for this download to complete now let's install this exe file so just double click on this pycharm exe file and uh, you will soon get an installation wizard okay so i got a user access control user account control i have to select s here now the installation wizard has come up i simply say next okay so this is a place where uh, okay the pycharm id is getting installed fine next then uh, don't select anything guys that's not required i can or you can create a shortcut if you want okay on your desktop you can create a shortcut okay that's okay click on next install so in a while the pycharm id will be installed in our machine let's wait for the installation to complete
as the installation of the PyCharm ID is now completed, okay, without selecting or by selecting also not a problem, guys. You can run the PyCharm community edition. The moment you click on finish, the PyCharm ID will launch here, okay, automatically because of this checkbox got selected, right? Just click on finish. You see, in a while, you will see PyCharm ID will launch automatically. Yes, it's launching as you can see here. So, so this uh, do not import settings, guys, uh, because I had the previous version of PyCharm ID installed in my machine earlier. But for the new installers, you will not get this dialog, guys. If in case uh, you have installed PyCharm ID and uninstalled it earlier, you may get this kind of dialog. Guys. This is not the compulsory. If you are freshly installing PyCharm ID for the first time in your machine, okay. I'll simply say do not import settings, guys. So nothing will be carried forward from the previous installation. Okay. Okay. You will directly get this, guys. Okay. If you are directly for the first time, if you are installing this PyCharm ID, you will get directly get this. You will not get the dialogue. Okay. Let's wait for the PyCharm ID to launch. Yeah, it has launched, guys. You see, this is uh this is how the PyCharm ID looks. Fine. So here there are no projects, guys. Okay, there are no existing projects. So that's why welcome to PyCharm. And here they are showing new project. Okay, open and uh, something. Okay, I'll just select this new project, guys. Just click on the plus icon. Then I'll get this uh, new project uh, window where this select selected part I have to change to the project name. Okay, I have to give some project name, guys. Let's say I want to give first first python project okay so if you clearly observe the naming convention i am using here guys okay clearly observe the naming convention i am using here that is first python project so all the first letters of this uh, okay multiple words are in capital letter okay so in the first word f is capital in the second word p is capital in the third word again p is capital okay so this kind of notation is known as camel case guys okay it's known as Capital camel case. For example, if I search here, capital camel case, you'll understand more. Okay, the naming convention I'm talking about, guys. You see, this camel is a bit different. You see, the first letter is small, but this this format I'm not using. Okay, from second word onwards, the uh, capital letter is starting for the first letter of the second word, right onwards. But the type of uh, case we are using is this camel case. Okay, so this capital camel case okay each and every words uh, first letter will be in capital okay this this format we are following here so first python project you see each and every word has first letter in capital that is uh, capital camel case fine anyhow let's click on the create button let's click click on the create button okay the the project will be created guys okay it's uh, creating the virtual environment and uh, I don't want to receive the tips, guys. So I'll simply say don't show tips so that it will not disturb me next time. And uh, close it. Got it. Okay, the project got created, guys. First Python project. Okay, as you can see, whatever the project name we gave that has come here. So by default, this main.py got opened up here. I'll just simply close it. I'm not going to use that. So under this project, I'm going to create a Python file. Okay. Let me run a sample Python, okay? Let me write a sample Python code, very single line of code, okay? Nothing much. So let's uh, write the Python code in this uh, PyCharm ID and let's try to run it, okay? So before that, guys, as you can see, the color uh, is kind of completely dark. A lot of people may not like this color uh, or some people may even like this, okay? So uh, let's change uh, the color, guys, okay? So file, you have to go to something known as settings. Okay, just go to the settings and here and the, under the appearance of the settings uh, window, we got the theme, current theme selected as dark color. And I'm going to change that to IntelliJ light, okay? So you see the moment I selected IntelliJ light, the complete UI got changed, okay? Say, okay, now this looks good, right? This, uh, okay, this is something most of the people like. So I just changed the, okay? I ch just changed the kind of uh, UI part here. Now, what next? The next thing is under this first Python project, let me create a Python file, okay? Let's create a Python file. The Python file has a .py as the extension, okay? Right click here, create a new Python file, okay? Under the project, let's 
let's create a folder guys okay if, uh, just to segregate the things we can even create a folder okay right click on this project select new and select this directory guys and name this directory as practice okay practice python practice python here directory okay Let, like that you can create a directory guys under the directory let's create a python file okay simple guys same steps okay right click on the folder under the folder i'm going to create a python file select new and select python file okay just give some name for the python file let's say demo okay let's say demo demo and this is a python file just press enter guys okay the python file will be created with the name that is given that is demo okay that is demo dot py here also guys capital camel case okay this folder also capital camel case project name also capital camel case and this uh, python files also should be specified with the capital camel case, okay all are capital camel case so far so under this python file i'll write some sample python code okay very sim single line code i'll write i'll simply say print of okay print of inside the print okay i'll give my name guys okay i'll print my name arun muturi okay so this particular name i am surrounding by double quotes here as you can see print of arun muturi okay single statement so let's increase the font size guys okay let's increase the font size uh, some people may not be able to see this uh, font okay so for that guys we'll go to the file and i'll select the settings again and here we have something like uh, enter font okay let's go to the settings guys file settings and uh, here under the editor we have the font guys we can increase the font guys okay we can it's currently 13 guys okay currently 13 if i increase to 20 it will look something like this let's see whether 20 is enough or not for us okay so say apply and okay you see uh, 20 looks a bit better right so you can see this right print print of this particular text okay this particular text i want to print now this is a single line of python guys i'm going to explain what is this print and all in the upcoming uh, sessions but for now let's blindly follow so this is a single piece of line of code that is written in python which will print this particular text into the output okay when i run this python file this particular text will be printed in the output guys, okay so how does it will print okay right click here on this uh, demo.py file somewhere on this area of the demo.py file and say run demo okay run this guys okay run this python code this is a sample python code i am going to run when you say run demo you see in the output we got arun motori printed since i gave arun motori text my name inside this print statement my name got printed in the output guys okay so if you give some other thing let's say if i give uh, practicing python here okay like this and if i run this code in the output what should be printed practicing python here should be printed you see practicing python here will be printed so this is how guys we can download install and use pycharm ide for python programming purpose so hope guys you understood this session that's all about the session guys see you in the next video session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 4 of python tutorial in this session I am going to practically show you how to use print statements in Python for printing. So let's get started. I'll first switch to this PyCharm IDE where we have this sample Python file already created. Now let me type the print statement. Using this print statement, if you have to print some text, okay, if you have to print some text, you have to surround that particular text with double quotes like this and write uh, let's say i will write my name the text right this particular text is surrounded by the double quotes okay inside this print statement now run this code whatever the text you have provided inside the print statement that particular text will get printed into the output once i run this code let me run this code you see in the output i got the same text whatever the text i provided inside the double quotes inside the print statement got printed out as it is in the output fine now i can also use single quotes guys okay here text is surrounded by double quotes i can also use single quotes for the text like this okay so give me a second i can surround this uh, text with single quotes like this this is also fine run this code you see still still the same output right despite of you providing the text inside the double quotes or single quotes in the print statement you will get the same output that's okay. Now, what if 
have to print some numbers. What if I have to print some numbers? Let's say I want to print the number nine. Do I have to surround this number nine also in single quotes or double quotes? The answer is no, guys. Only if you have to print some text, that text has to be either surrounded by single quotes or double quotes. But coming to the numbers, you have to provide directly, guys. You have to enter the numbers directly inside the print statements without any single or double quotes. Now run this code, the nine will be printed in the output. Okay. So can I print the text also? The way I have printed the numbers, no, guys, you are already getting an error. Okay, the text need to be provided inside the single quote or double quotes, where numbers can be printed directly, guys. Okay, numbers can be printed directly like this. Fine. One more thing, guys. Okay, what if I write something like this? Uh, print Arun Motori. Okay, print Python. Okay, Python tutorial. Three print statements I am typing here. Print, okay. Python tutorial print. Python. Python. Is a programming language, okay? Like this. If I run this code, guys, will these three print statements will print in the single line or? If Arun Motor will be printed in one line, after that in the second line, Python tutorial will be, will be printed. And after that, Python is a programming language will be printed. Okay, right? So I'll just put some dots so that you will see some difference. I'll say, my name is Arun Motori. Okay, I am teaching Python programming like this. Okay, I am teaching Python programming and Python is a programming language if i run this code guys all these three lines will not be printed in a single line they will be printed in separate lines if i run this code you will see that in action you see the first print statement is printed in the first line my name is arun motor after that immediately we went to the second line in the second line the next print statement got printed i am teaching python programming got printed in the third line the third print statement text that is python is a programming language got printed like this guys. now what if but if I want to have all these three statements in a single line, okay, all these three lines should be printed in a single line. Then what I have to do? Default behavior of the print statement is to print the text and immediately go to the next next line. Okay, before printing any other stuff, we'll go to the next line. But to avoid that, I can provide something like this: comma end is equal to provide double quotes. Okay, just provide double quotes, guys. Here also say end is equal to Double quotes. In double quotes, nothing is there, guys. Okay, empty double quotes I provide. Okay, end is equal to double. Whenever, okay, whenever this end appears, okay, so it will not go to the new line, guys. Okay, run this code, guys. This time, all the three lines will be printed in a single line. You see, my name is Arun Motori. Dot. I am a. I am teaching Python programming. Dot. Python is a programming language. Fine. That's all good. So I'll go for a different example. Let's say print. I will say print nine. Okay, print uh, otherwise print one, print one, print two, and uh, finally, third print statement is print three. If I run this code, guys, one, two, three will be printed in multiple lines, separate lines, like this. What if I want to print all this uh, one, two, three in a single line? I have to say end, equal to, comma, end is equal to double quotes without any thing in between double quotes now this time guys one two three will be printed in a single line okay you don't have to provide for the last one anyhow it will be even though it goes to new line nothing will happen right there's no other print statement that's okay run it you see one two three got printed it looks like 123 what if i want to give some space between one and two and two and three in that case guys just give the space here end is equal to give some space here now run this code this time you'll get the space between one and two and two and three okay like this guys we can use print statements in Python for printing. Okay, you can either print the numbers, text, and uh, you can print in the single line instead of going to when you are using multiple print statements. You can uh, get all the text printed or numbers printed in a single line. Okay, for that we have to use end equal to double quotes. Then only it is possible in Python. So hope guys you understood how to use print statements in Python. See you in the next video session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part five of Python 
tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate variables in Python. So let's get started. But what are these variables? Variables store data, not only in Python programming language, but also in other programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Ruby, whatever it is. The purpose of the variables is to store data. Data is as simple as it can be anything guys. Okay. For example, if I type my name here. Okay. This is a data. If I type some number here, this is also a data. Right data can be of many types, right? This kind of data. If you have to store in any of the programming languages, we have to use something known as variables. Okay, we have to use something known as variables. Now let's understand variables at the next level. Okay, apart from understanding that the variables just store the data. Okay, let's try to understand variables in a better way now. Okay, in the next level now by using this line guys. Okay, if you read this statement, you may or may not understand it, but I'm going to explain in a detailed manner after reading this. Okay, variable is nothing but a name given to the reserved memory location where the data is stored. Okay, if you talk about any programming languages, if you are trying to store data into the variables, then variable is nothing but a name given to the reserved memory location where the data is stored. For example, if I store some data to the variable, okay, so in Python guys, we have to store the data into variables like this. For example, if I give the uh, variable name as my full name like this, okay? Let's say this is a variable or we'll keep it simple guys like A, okay? The variable is A and if I have to store some data into the variable A, I have to say A is equal to nine, okay? The data nine is now stored in the variable A. But here in this statement, I am saying variable is nothing but a name given to a reserved memory location where the data is stored. So when you write this statement in the Python programming language, what happens is let's assume that this is your computer memory. Okay, in the in your computer, this is a memory and this memory can be divided into multiple slots like this. Okay. This memory can be divided into multiple slots like this. So let me draw it completely guys. Let's wait. So these are the several slots we have in our computer memory. And when you try to store the data into a particular variable, okay, in Python, if you are trying to store some data into a variable, what happens internally is in the memory, somewhere the data will be stored. Let's say in this memory slot, okay, let's assume that this is one of the memory slot. Here in this memory, the data or value nine is stored. And this memory slot may have some kind of unique number, okay, like this. We don't know, okay. So this unique identity of this memory slot cannot be remembered guys okay we as human beings cannot remember this kind of numbers for example if i talk uh, if i go out of this topic now if i say remember all the phone numbers in your mobile phone is it possible no right we can remember up to two or three but after two or three can't we remember all the mobile phone numbers of our friends family members etc etc not possible here also same thing guys the complete memory got segregated into memory slots right in one of the memory slot this data nine got stored nine got stored and that memory slot has this kind of unique okay identifier like zero one zero one or other other uh, memory slot may have one a b two like this okay we can't remember all this memory uh, memory slot numbers guys okay uh, so we have to name this slot guys okay we have to name this slot where this data nine is stored okay in the memory at this particular memory slot we have the nine stored okay we have to name this we have to name this guys okay so that name is nothing but this variable guys okay if you give the name to that particular nine memory slot uh, where the memory where the data nine is stored in the memory slot to that memory slot if you are giving the name as a that is called as a variable guys okay now come back variable is nothing but a name given to a reserved memory location so this is the reserved memory location for storing the nine guys for that memory location for that reserved memory location. We are giving the name as a okay. We are giving the name as a that is what is variable guys. Okay, fine. Hope you understood uh, variable at a next level now. Okay. Now in Python, do we have to specify the data type? For example, in Java guys, okay, if you, you uh, if you go to Java, 
uh, let's say if you want to store this uh, value or data 9 into this variable a in that in java we have to mention int guys okay because the type of data you are storing into the variable a is integer type that's why you have to mention int here if you mention int here and uh, give some string text like this in java you are going to get some error guys okay in java you are going to going to get some error so based on the type of the based on the data type you have specified before this variable the data to be stored into the variable also should be the same time here if you mention int you can only store the numbers guys okay integer numbers like 9 like that okay you cannot store other type of data into this variable because in java this is in java guys not in python but in python guys this data data type concept itself is not there okay you don't have to specify the data type either you specify a is equal to 9 or if you specify a is equal to uh, arun motori my name okay if uh, if you specify some boolean value also okay a is equal to true doesn't matter guys because here in python data type concept itself is not there you don't have to explicitly specify some data type before these variables in python that's not required okay that's what i'm saying we don't need to specify the data type for any variable in python okay but uh, in other programming or other strict programming languages like java you have to specify the data type case otherwise you are going to get some errors in the java etc but in python data type mentioning is not required for the variables fine so far so good now let's move uh, let's uh, jump into the practical mode a bit guys okay so what i'm going to do is uh, here in this demo.py okay in this uh, demo.py sample python file i'm going to create a variable guys a and i'm going to store data into this variable okay so a is equal to 9 i am saying simply now now if i have to now if i print this variable a like this okay if i print this variable a a is equal to 9 i mentioned now if i print a like this what will happen a will be printed in the output or the data that is stored in the variable a will be printed in the output here guys when you try to print this particular variable a the data that is stored in the variable a will be printed in the output okay so you are printing the name of the variable here but when you run this code the data that is stored in the variable a will be printed in the output run it you see when you are printing a the data that is stored in the variable a is getting printed fine this is what is this is how we can print the variables guys okay uh, apart from printing the text by surrounded by double quotes and single quotes or apart from directly printing the numbers in the print statements we can also use print statements for printing the variables guys but when you print the variables the data that is stored in the variables will be printed in the output fine now let's store the different type of data into the variables guys okay now let's store different types of data into the variables for example i will store integer data say 9 into the variable a and i will store decimal data like 1.25 decimal data into the variable b i will store uh, text data say arun motori into the variable c I will also store another type of text data which is surrounded by here text data is surrounded by double quotes you can also represent the text data in single quotes also guys okay so if i say python programming this is also text data okay but surrounded by single quotes both are same guys okay the different representations for the string text okay nothing much then i can store some boolean data like true or i can say false only two possibilities for the boolean data guys either it should be true or false okay but here in python guys the first letter of this uh, boolean value or data should be in capital for example i cannot write like this okay this is not this is not correct okay you are getting an error you have to make it capital t okay capital t or capital f in the false in case of false boolean value or data you have to give f letter as capital now let's print out guys now let's print out these are the different varieties guys okay so this will be enough okay these are the different types of data that we can store into the variables and you don't have to specify any data type here you see i have not specified any data type like int float or double or string anything i didn't provide here in, in case of java you have to provide the data type here guys before the variable names but in python you can directly store like this now if i say print of a i'll print all the variables guys what will happen guys when i print the variables the data that is stored in the variables will be printed guys okay when i print the variables the data that is stored in the variables will be printed so let me print d print e let me run the code you will see all the data that's stored in all these variables like a b c d e will be printed in the output you see first 
when you are printing the variable a the data that is stored in the variable a9 got printed when you are printing b the data that is stored in the variable b that is 1.25 decimal data got printed similarly arun motori python programming and boolean data like true got printed in the outputs fine so into the variables we can store different types of data and also we can print them next one so let's understand this uh, logic is okay if i say a is equal to 5 later i will say a is equal to 10 now if i print if i simply print a what will be printed guys what will be printed in the first statement i am saying a is equal to 5 in the second statement again i am saying the same a is equal to variable is equal to 10 what will happen what will be printed either 5 or 10 or you will not get anything printed the answer here is we are going to get the latest value guys okay even though in the first statement you are storing the value 5 into the variable a but in the next statement you are changing the value here okay into the same variable you are trying to store a different value that is 5 is uh, 10 is different from the 5 right you are trying to store the different value into the variable a but when you try to print a guys the latest value will be printed the latest assigned value to this variable a will be printed guys okay run this code you see 10 got printed okay 10 got printed fine now how this happens how the 10 will be printed let me show you so this was the original uh, earlier diagram right right so i'll remove this 9 from here guys okay let's say into this memory location uh, which is named as reserved memory location which is named with the variable name a here the value 5 is stored let's say okay so when i say a is equal to 5 okay in the reserved memory location 5 is stored and to that okay we are we are name, naming that reserved memory location or pointing to that reserved memory location using the variable name a and let's say this is another memory slot where 10 is there okay here we are saying a is equal to 10 right so what happens earlier a is pointing to 5 but in the next statement you are saying a is equal to 10 so what happens is a will be now pointing to 10 and the old reference to this reserved memory location where 5 is stored will be the connection will be disconnected guys okay the connection between this variable and the reserved memory location will be disconnected the moment you try to assign a new value to the same variable okay this connection will be lost and now a is pointing to 10 okay a is now pointing to the reserved memory location where 10 is stored not 5 is stored okay that's why when you try to print a since this connection is lost 10 will be printed in the output hope you are able to understand what's happening here right fine good next next example guys okay i'll do one more thing here i'll say a in this case what will happen if i print a here lower case a here upper case a are the same is a lower case a and upper case a same no guys in python python variables are case sensitive okay variable name having the lower case a is different from the variable name having the upper case a so in this case in this case in this memory what's happening I'll just go back so here this reserved memory location where 5 is stored is pointing with a and the reserved memory location where 10 is stored is now pointing with a different variable known as capital a capital a guys okay this variable is different from this variable guys okay both are not same because variables in python are case sensitive okay this are different variables not same variables that's why when you print a here what will be printed 5 will be printed guys. okay see 5 got printed but if i print capital a this time 10 will be printed both are different variables you see when i printing capital a 10 is printed when i print lowercase a 5 is getting printed fine cool next thing now i can create multiple variables in a single statement and assign the variables with the different values in a single statement only for example guys if i have to say a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 c is equal to 3 how many lines i have to write here how many lines i am writing here three lines for three variables having three different values i have to write three lines instead in python we can also write the same three statements in a single line like this a comma b comma c is equal to one comma two comma three what happens here is the one will be stored into the variable a two will be stored into the second variable b three will be stored into the variable c guys you see print a also printing also same guys you can also print in the single line okay a comma b comma c instead of saying print a print b print c you can also say print a comma b comma c also this is also fine okay you see one two three will be printed in the output guys run this code you see when you are printing a one is getting printed when you are printing b two is getting printed when you are printing c three is getting printed 
So this is another way, guys. And uh, the other thing, let's say you have to create uh, three variables. You have to create three variables, and they all should have the same data. Here, all these three variables have the different data. A is having one, B, B is storing two, and C is storing three. But what I am saying here is, everyone should, every variable should have the same data. Let's say I want to store three into all the three variables. Here, I have to change this a bit, guys. I have to say A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to three. Now if I print A, B, C. All these three variables are storing the value three only. Okay, run this code. You see, three, three, three will be printed. Okay, if you have to store same value or same data into multiple variables, you can write like this, guys. And the next thing about the variables, guys. Okay, next thing about the variables is here we were using so far we were using very simple variables like variable names like A, B, C like that. Okay, but in real team we may have to use a very descriptive uh, variable names like say I want to describe my first name. Okay, my underscore first name is equal to Arun. Okay. So here my variable is involving three words, not a single letter or something, but here three words are there. Okay. How, how I'm writing Jesse. If I have to write my last name. Okay. My last name is Motori. Like this I have to write. Okay. Arun Motori. Here guys, if you observe this, there is some kind of notation we are following while writing the variable names in Python. Okay, most of the people in uh, okay who are programming in Python uh, prefer this kind of notation guys where if they have multiple words all the all the words are in lowercase. Okay, here you see each and every letter of these three words is in lowercase, but all these words are separated by underscore. Okay, this is called a snake case. Okay, you can type in Google guys if you want to find out more about the snake case. Just say snake case. Okay. What is a snake case anywhere you got? Yeah. Let's see. This is a snake. Okay, snake case versus camel case. They are writing. Snake case looks like this case. For example, in this image, you can say right. This is a. This is snake case. Okay. So that is what is snake case, guys. I am not able to find in Google properly, but uh, let's go here. Snake case to the Wikipedia. What it is saying? Let's see. Yeah. Lower case with underscores. Okay. This is what is a snake case, guys. Okay. This is what is a snake case. Fine. Now, so the variables in Python need to be written in which case snake case. Okay. Fine. So this is one example. My underscore first underscore name is in the format of the snake case, guys, so that we are storing the data. Here, this is a variable and we are storing the data around here. Fine. Okay. Now, now guys, let's say a is equal to nine. Let's say a is equal to nine. I want to print a guys. Okay, what will happen when I print a the data that is stored in the variable a will be printed, right? This is fine. So far, so good. Now I want to uh, write some text guys. Okay, I want to write some text. Okay, so I don't want to print the variable a directly rather I want to write some text inside the print statement saying that the value stored in the variable a is like this. Okay, this is text guys. Whatever I have written is the text. But here along with this text. Okay, along with this text. I want to print the value that is data that is stored in the variable a you see I'm already getting an error. Okay, here I provide the text along with that. I want to display the data that is stored in the really stored in the variable a the value stored in the variable a is 9 should be printed that's my intention but here already i'm getting an error how to overcome this problem just put a comma here guys okay just separate this uh, text uh, from this variable with a comma okay this is the way guys the value stored in the variable a is comma a then you will get 9 here 9 will be printed uh, along with the text guys you see run this code this time you say the value stored in the variable a is 9 got printed okay so this is how guys uh, we can uh, print some text along with the variables in the print statements. Okay, apart from only printing the text or apart from only printing the numbers, we can combine both the text and numbers. Okay, text and uh, variables or text and numbers or whatever it is by just separating with comma guys. Okay, in the print statements, you have to provide comma just to separate this variable. Okay, variable need to be separated by comma and other thing you can write it as a text. Okay, that will be printed like this in the output. And one more thing is final thing. Okay. So we are done with the variables actually, but uh, the final thing I have to say is you see here you are saying a is equal to 9. Okay. This part is known as initialization, guys. Okay. You are creating the variable here and also you are initializing this particular variable with which value, which data 9. Okay. Technically or technology wise, you will say that variable a is initialized with the value 9. Now, if I say a is equal to 10, am I initializing the data 10 to the variable a? In this case, no, guys. Okay. For the first time when you are assigning the data to the variable that is called as initialization. 
but this one you are not initializing you are updating guys okay this part is known as initializing that data to the variable this part is known as updating the data in the variable okay this is updating the data this is initializing the data both are different guys okay first time when you are trying to store the data into the variable that is called as initialization but from the second time if you are trying to update the data that is called as updation guys not initialization okay hope you are able to understand the concepts fine guys uh, that's all about the variables in python i have explained and practically demonstrated demonstrated how to use Pyth uh, variables in python so that's it guys see you in the next video session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 6 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about data types in python so let's get started in python we don't have to explicitly specify or mention any data type while creating a variable as you can see in this example here i have created a variable and i am assigning some data to this variable did i specify or explicitly mention any particular data type here no but coming to java guys okay coming to java if you are creating a variable and if you are assigning some integer data to this particular variable then it is mandatory in java that you have to explicitly specify or mention some data type but in python it is not required that's the one thing but guys in python even though explicitly specifying or mentioning of the data type is not there but we can use type function okay python is providing a function known as type function using which we can find out which data type of data is stored in the variable okay in python we have this type function to find out what data type of data is stored into this variable okay before i take you to this type function and demonstrate how the type function works first let me show you a list of data types that are there in python okay so these are the list of data types that are available in python that is int data type float data type string data type boolean data type list data type tuple data type and dictionary data type okay so these are the different data types we have in python okay for now i'll show you or practically demonstrate few examples of int float string boolean data type and how to find these data types in python guys by using the type function okay we'll pass the variable name to this type function and this type function will specify which type of which data type of data is stored into the variable okay so let's uh, move on to the list tuple and dictionary later guys okay i'll be explaining about the list tuple and dictionary later but for now i'll demonstrate the type function with int float string and boolean data types fine so for that i'll open this eclipse id sorry this is pycharm id okay i'll open this pycharm id and here here i'll be creating a variable say a and into this variable i'll be storing this data say integer data say 9 now if i say type of a this type of a will return the data type of the data that is stored in this variable but i have to print it out right i have to print this in order to print that i'll surround this type of a with print statement like this print of type of a now if i run this code if i run this code in the output we'll get int data type you see it is saying that type function is saying that into this particular variable int data type data is stored now if i convert this 9 to 9.5 in this case if i run this code you will get float guys okay run this code now you got float data type now i'll give my name here i'll enter my name here say arun motori name okay now if i run this code this type function will return string data type str okay it will return str that means string data type what was the other one guys boolean if i store some boolean data say true true is one of the boolean data First letter should be capital guys run this code you'll get bool bool means boolean i can also give false guys false is also another boolean data type possibility okay run this code now also you will get bool guys so hope guys you understood how to use the type function to find out what data type of data is stored in a variable okay for now i demonstrate in float string and boolean you can also use type with list double and dictionary which i will be demonstrating later in the upcoming sessions so guys that's all about this session that's all about uh, the data types in python so see you in the next video session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 7 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about 
type casting in python so let's get started first of all what is this type casting using type casting we can convert one type of data to another type of data for example here we have 1.25 which is of which type in python this is 1.25 is of which type float type we can convert this float type of data into int type of data okay integer type of data like this if you convert this 1.25 to integer type data it will become one guys this 0.25 will be waved off but how to convert okay how to convert this let me practically demonstrate for that i'll go here guys to this pycharm id where we have the sample python file i will assign 1.25 to this variable a okay here this data type is float type how can i be sure that this particular data type is float type when i say type of a okay it will get you the type of this particular data that is stored into the variable a now i'll say print of type of a okay it will print float data type in the output run this code you see it will print float data type i'll also print the value of the a guys okay along with the type of the a i'll also print the value of a it will print 1.25 which is a float type run this now i want to typecast this float data type okay float type of data to integer type of data how what I have to use in python for that we have to use int okay we have to surround this floating point data inside the int like this okay so this is called as type casting guys where we are type casting the floating point data to the int type data before assigning the data to the variable a so in this case 1.25 will be type casted to int type so 1.25 will become 1 and 1 will be assigned to the variable a and here when you say type of a instead of float type int will be printed and uh, instead of uh, 1.25 here 1 will be printed on this code you see int and it is of 1 fine so this is one example guys but there are other lot of possible examples uh, are possible guys so here you see i just converted this uh, 1.25 floating point data to the int type data using the type casting statement int similarly what if next example guys what if i have a number but that number is surrounded by double quotes what type of data this is is an integer data type type of data is an integer data type or it's a string it's a string guys because this particular number if without double quotes is a integer type of data but this number provided with the double quotes is a string data guys if i run this code it will print 9 here but here type of a will be printed as string data type okay str run this code you see str got printed and here 9 got printed it looks like a integer number but it's not a number guys it's a string okay it's a string guys fine how to convert such kind of convertible numbers okay how to convert such kind of uh, numerical strings into integers okay for that again i have to use the same statement guys int of like this here the string data type type of data string data type type of data will be converted to the integer data before assigned to the variable a here this 9 will be converted to the integer type of data and also you can perform the operation here guys i can say plus 1 okay what will be printed here here 9 string will be converted to integer 9 and uh, will be assigned to the variable a and here 9 plus 1 is 10 should be printed in the output here type of a should be printed as integer now because we converted the uh, string we converted the string to the integer so int should be printed here int and 10 should be printed guys okay int has been printed and you can you are able to perform the operations what if i don't convert this to int data type if I don't type cast it to into type and if I say a plus one, will this work? No, guys. This case you are going to get the type error because you are trying to okay, you are trying to append or concatenate the string type data to the numerical data, which is not possible in Python. Okay, using this concatenation operator, you cannot clap a string with a number, guys. In Python, that is not possible. You'll get type type error. Okay, run this code. You see, you got the type error. You can only concatenate a string with another string, but here this 9 is a string but 1 is not a string okay that's the problem guys so that's the reason guys what we are doing here is uh, before we before i add this 9 to the 1 i am converting that 9 to string type to integer type so that the calculation will happen now this will convert to integer 9 and 9 plus 1 10 will happen now okay because string plus number is not possible number plus number is possible okay i'm converting that to number and adding fine guys this is possible okay this is another example i gave Similarly, we have other uh, type casting possible, guys. Uh, we can convert a integer to float, guys. Okay, integer to float. For example, here I'm assigning nine here. Okay, I'm assigning nine here. I'm printing a again. Okay, this is an integer data type. 
type of data that I am storing into the variable a. And if I say type of a, here int will be printed. Here when I print a, 9 will be printed. Run this code. In time, 9 will be printed. That's OK. But what if I typecast this to float? OK. What if I typecast this to float? OK. Float of 9 means 9.0. OK. The integer value 9 will be converted to floating point data that is 9.0 and assigned to the variable a. And if I say type of a, if I say type of a, since this floating, uh, this, since this integer data got converted to floating type, here type of a will be printed as float type, okay, float type, and the a will be printed as 9.0 because it's not 9. It's now converted after converting to float type, 9 is 9.0, guys, okay. Type of a is uh, float and a is 9.0. Run this code. You see, float and 9.0, float and 9.0. Fine. A lot of other things are possible, guys. We can also convert a string type uh, number, okay. Let's say here. Here we have the string type number, okay, and we can also convert this into float type, okay. If I if I directly run this code, type of a will be printed as string and a will be printed as nine, but that is a string, guys, okay. Run this code, you see, string and nine got printed. What if I typecast that to float, okay, float type? Earlier I was typecasting this kind of string to int type, but now I'm trying to typecast that to float type. So here, string type number will be converted to nine point zero float type number that is 9.0 and assigned to the variable a when you say type of a when you say type of a the float will be printed guys data type will be printed as float and a will be printed as 9.0 okay run this code float and 9.0 okay similarly other examples we have i completed the int and uh, float type casting statements now we have the string type casting statements which can convert the numbers into the strings okay which can convert the numbers or numbers like integer and floating point numbers into the strings let's try that okay so here uh i'll say nine guys okay i'll say nine nine is an integer number and if i run like this type of a will be printed as int and uh, a will be printed as nine here run this okay right now i am trying to typecast that to string type okay i'm typecasting the string uh, i am typecasting the integer data type value to the string data type value okay so here type of a will be printed as string and uh, String type and uh, that is str type and print of a will be printed as nine only because but it is in a string format okay it is in a string format guys run this code okay and also you can append that uh, with a string because to prove that it is a string in python you can concatenate string with the only string right so nine is a number okay is a number number string okay like this run this code you see nine is a number string is possible because this is a string and this is a string then only the concatenation is possible in python okay number and string concatenation is not possible in python you will get a type error okay fine similarly guys i can typecast the uh, floating point value also into a string type okay 9.5 also can be uh, converted into the string data type okay this floating point data type value also can be converted into the string data type value so here it will be converted to like this guys okay it will be converted to in double quotes 9.5 like this okay after typecasting this 9.5 floating point value will be converted to 9.5 like this and assigned to the variable a and when you say type of a it will print float here guys and uh, here a is not the number guys all right here concatenation will not happen because it's not string type right if, you, if i print a it will print 9.5 guys if i say plus 1.5 9.5 plus 1.5 how much 9.5 is uh, plus 1.5 is 10 11 11 should be printed guys okay if this is possible so here type of a is uh, float and uh, a plus 1.5 is 11 run this float and 11 should be printed so there is a problem here again okay we converted it to string right so the old one was correct i was wrong i was converting the floating floating point to string so is a floating point number i have to say this is correct guys okay otherwise you are you are concatenating a string with a number guys that's not possible in python run this code you will get the output string type Okay, 9.5 converted to the string type. So type of A is string and uh, A plus is a floating point number. 9.5 is a floating point number. Okay, done. So like this, guys, uh, we can use all these different uh, typecasting uh, functions like int, float, and string to convert one type of data to another type of data. What if, guys, there is one more thing here. What if here I am saying 9, okay, I am saying 9, and uh, I am saying uh, print of type of, print of type of, a, I'm saying print of type of A and I'm printing A, right? This is fine. So far, so good. Okay. It will say type of A is string and A is uh, 9 will be printed. Okay. 9 string text will be printed. That's okay. 
what if uh, i say int of okay int of this will convert and uh, here type of a will be converted to int and here also 9 will be printed in number format okay that's okay but what if here string text is not number okay let's say my name is there is it possible is it possible guys this is a non convertible string text okay earlier i gave the convertible string text here which is in the form of uh, number string but here non convertible string text if you try to convert into int what will happen here it will not get converted guys okay this is not possible guys in python this kind of stuff is not possible where you can convert a string a pure string kind of stuff into an integer is not possible okay if there is a number in the form of string you can convert okay if you try to convert some string text which is not in the form of the number into integer that is not possible at all you will get an error run this code you will get a error here you see value error invalid literal for int okay so you have to provide some numerical string here not textual string okay then only it is possible to convert you see now it's converted so hope guys you understood uh, what is type casting and what are the different uh, type castings that are possible in python that is int float and string so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 8 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about operators in python so let's get started first of all what exactly are these operators operators in simple terms are nothing but just symbols okay using these different symbols we can perform different operations for example if you talk about a symbol say plus okay here plus symbol is an operator but what is the purpose of this plus operator to perform addition let's say if i say 5 plus 6 okay what is the result guys it will perform the addition this plus symbol which is called as a addition operator will add this two sides okay numbers on the two sides that is 5 and 6 and it will result in 11 so now i am saying that this symbol is an operator right i am just saying that this particular symbol between these two numbers is an operator one of the operators okay one of the operators what about this 5 and 6 then okay to the left side and right side of this particular operator there are there is some data guys okay what is this data this data we have to call as operands okay the data on the left or right side of a particular operator okay are known as operands operands okay we have to call this symbol as an operator and the data surrounding by that operator uh, are known as operands okay these are operands guys hope you are able to understand the terminology now okay so here plus is one of the operator guys like that we have different operators okay but what are the different types of or categories of operators we have in python let me show you so these are the several types or categories of operators we have in python guys first category is arithmetic operators second is assignment operators third one is relational operators fourth is logical operators and fifth one is other type of other remaining type of operators okay fine these are the high level categories of the operators in python guys let me practically demonstrate one by one category of operators okay i'll first start with the arithmetic operators let me expand this arithmetic operators here as you can see there are several arithmetic operators okay in python one is addition for addition which symbol we are using plus symbol for subtraction minus or hyphen symbol okay multiplication asterisk symbol division forward slash modulus percentile symbol okay apart from this uh, mentioned uh, 1 2 3 4 5 we also have two more operators in python guys under the arithmetic operators category that is exponential and float division okay we also have exponential and float division exponential has double asterisk symbol whereas float division has double forward slash symbol okay so i'm going to practically demonstrate all these arithmetic operators that are there in python okay so for that i'll open this pycharm id where we have the sample python file so here i'll create two variables guys into one of the variable i'm just assigning 5 and into another variable i'm just assigning 4 okay now i'll say print of okay print of a plus b here we are using plus operator right this is plus operator which for which will perform the addition 
here we have operands as a and b a is holding 5 b is holding 4 so 5 plus 4 is equal to how much guys 9 9 should be printed okay the addition of these two values should be printed in the output if i run this code 9 should be printed guys you see when i run this code 9 got printed in the output so let's move on to the next type of arithmetic operator that is subtraction which is hyphen symbol okay hyphen symbol so i'll just re replace this plus symbol with hyphen symbol or minus symbol okay a minus b so from 5 4 will be subtracted that means from 5 4 will be removed so you will it will it will give you 1 right 5 minus 4 is 1 as everyone knows mathematics right so it's very easy to understand here run this you see 1 okay 5 minus 4 is 1 clear next multiplication okay so if i replace this hyphen operator symbol with the asterisk symbol this symbol will perform the multiplication that means a into b what is a into b 5 into 4 how much 20 so you should get 20 in the output so simple right now let's move on to the division a divided by b okay how many times you can divide this 5 by 4 only one time right i can divide this 5 only one time with 4 4 ones are 4 okay i cannot say 4 to the right 4 ones are only one time it is possible but if i run this code will i get one in the output here only one time we can divide this 5 with 4 right that means you will get one in the result no guys in python okay you will get a floating point or floating type data that means 1.25 you will get not one you will get 1.25 in the output guys so run this you see you got 1.25 okay 5 can be divided by 4 how many times 1.25 times okay it's very accurate right that's fine anyhow let's move on so what if uh, what if i don't want to uh, get the exact times the 5 is divided by 4 okay so rather you want to see like a uh, you want to get a kind of float division guys okay there's one more operator here so since division has come let me explain all, all about this float division so instead of providing this uh, single forward slash you have to provide double forward slash here guys this time you will not get 1.25 instead you will get only one guys okay you will not get this uh, 0.25 okay the decimal point will not come guys okay that's the difference between the forward slash and double forward slash so uh, this single forward slash is a division whereas double forward slash is a floor division okay so it will not consider the decimal point it will not give you the exact value like 1.25 like normal division this floor division will give you only the integer kind of data it will not give the floating point of data guys that means only one should come let's run this phi can be divided by four only one time okay like that okay so you hope you are able to understand uh, uh, the difference between the division and floor division here in python fine so we completed division and floor division also at the same time let's move on to the modulus guys here in place of this flow division operator i am going to give the modulus operator so what is the difference here here guys if i give some different number let's say six and four here okay six divided by four what is the remainder four ones are four remainder should be two right you should get the remainder as two run this you get the remainder as two so this modulus operator will give you the remainder okay fine then what one more operator is left in arithmetic operators guys one more operator is left in arithmetic operators that is exponential operator okay for example guys if i say 2 power 5 how much what is 2 power 5 in general 2 should be multiplied 5 times right 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, into two okay 2 need to be multiplied 5 times 2 to the 4 4 to the 8 8 to the 16 16 to the how much guys 32 okay 16 to the 32 so 2 should be multiplied by multiplied 5 times 2 power 5 means that one same thing we'll perform here uh, i'll just give one more uh, thing like uh, a as 2 and b as 5 let's say otherwise okay here i'll give 2 times asterisk symbol okay 2 power 5 double time asterisk means not multiplication rate it's power okay a is 2 power b is 5 2 power 5 is how much yes we should get 32 right let's see whether we are getting the result as 32 yes you will definitely get the result as 32 so we are done with the arithmetic operators guys these are all arithmetic operators okay there are around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 total 7 arithmetic operators are there here too okay i covered now let's move on to the next type of or next category of operators in python that is assignment operators okay assignment operators so these are the assignment operators guys 
you see the first operator we are already using right this particular first operator in assignment operators we are already using how you see a is equal to 2 b is equal to 5 what is this case what is this equal symbol here that is nothing but assignment operator okay this particular symbol that we are already using till now is nothing but the assignment operator guys so what is the purpose of this assignment operator the data on the right side okay will get assigned to the variable on the left side okay that is the purpose of the assignment operator assignment operator using which we are assigning the sorry for that noise now let's move on so the next uh, assignment operator we have is uh, one of the compound assignment operators guys you see there are several compound assignment operators here plus equal to minus equal to multiplication equal to division equal to modulus equal to okay even flow division equal to is also possible guys all the these are the set of uh, compound assignment operators so how to use this operators and how these operators will work how this compound assignment operators work let me demonstrate so i'll go here so if I say uh, C plus, okay, or A plus equal to, okay, so here A is equal to 2, B is equal to 5, right? If I say, I'll remove this part, guys, or that's fine, you can also say this. Let's say if I say A plus equal to B, for example, how does this uh, compound assignment operator work? How does this? compound assignment operator work so internally guys okay internally this compound assignment operator okay will work as a is equal to okay when i say a plus is equal to b internally it is a is equal to a plus b okay a is equal to a plus b like this guys okay internally it will like this so what is a plus b guys here a plus b is 2 plus 5 that is 7 7 will be assigned to a now if i print a here if i print a here how does it print how does it print guys this a plus equal to b is nothing but a is equal to a plus b a plus b is 7 7 will be assigned to a and when you print a 7 will be printed in the output just see this 7 will be printed in the output similarly if i say a minus okay i'll give some bigger number here otherwise i'll give 5 and 4 i'll give 5 and 4 here and uh, if i give a minus equal to b a, a minus equal to b in this case how does uh, how does this compound assignment operator work a is equal to a minus b okay a is equal to a minus b so what is a minus b one right five minus four is one one will be assigned to a so when you print a one will be printed in the output hope you are able to get it now if i say a into equal to b this will be internally a is equal to a into b guys okay they both thing internally will be the full form representation of this compound assignment operator will be like this guys a into is equal to b is nothing but a is equal to a into b okay a is equal to a into b a into b is 5 for the 20 20 will be assigned to a so if i print a here the result of a and b will be printed that is 20 will be printed in the output you see 20 got printed similarly guys a okay division operator is equal to b this is nothing but a is equal to a divided by b a divided by b you already know 1.25 1.25 will be assigned to a and when you print a 1.25 will be printed in the output done and uh, what else a modulus equal to b is also possible okay a is equal to a modulus b okay a modulus b is nothing but what is the reminder guys for one the four one will be the reminder one will be assigned to a and one will be printed in the output okay that is also done the next thing the next thing is uh, we can also go with this uh, okay uh, flow division equal to b okay a flow division equal to b that is nothing but a is equal to a flow division b a flow division b is nothing but uh, one guys okay one time it's not 1.25 one time only the 5 will be divided by 4 okay so one one will be assigned to a and uh, if you print it one will be printed in the output you see one got printed in the output so guys these are the compound assignment operators okay all these listed things are nothing but the compound assignment operators including others i just demonstrated apart from the assignment operator we have this compound assignment operators so this is how we have to use compound assignment operators in python now let's move on to the next category or set of operators that is relational operators 
this relational operators are used for comparing the stuff type, okay just for comparing the data so what are what are the different relational operators available in java i mean uh, sorry in python what are the different relational operators we have in python so these are the different relational operators we have in python guys first one is equal to okay not equal first one is equal operator second one is not equal operator third one is greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to these are the several or different relational operators in python now let me demonstrate one by one so i'll just give some variables here guys let's say a is equal to 5 b is equal to 4 c is equal to 5 okay d is equal to let's say 3 e is equal to let's say 9 okay like different variables i created i can also create all these variables in a single line but for now let's uh, keep it like this but fine okay so if i say print of a double equal to b is it true or false guys a double equal to b is true or false a equal to b a is holding 5 and uh, b is holding 4 are 5 and 4 equal all right so in the output you'll get false okay this will result in boolean value false case run this code you'll get the boolean value false here okay if i say a not equal to b yes 5 is not equal to 4 is true right 5 is not equal to 4 is true so if i run this code you'll get go in the output similarly if i say a double equal to or a equal to c if i say a equal to c is a equal to c yes 5 equal to 5 is true so you'll get true in the output guys and if i say a not equal to c in this case is 5 not equal to 5 that's false this will be false in the output so this is how guys the relational operators work so i demonstrated the equal and not equal now let's go on with the other uh, relational operators greater than okay if i say a greater than b true or false a greater than b is true or false Phi greater than 4 yes pi is greater than 4 correct right pi is more than 4 so true will be printed in the output what if i say a greater than c if i say a greater than c is phi greater than phi no phi is not greater than phi rather phi is equal to phi but not greater than phi so this should result in false case you see got the false now if i say a greater than e a greater than e phi greater than 9 is 5 greater than 9 no it's less than 9 guys so it should result in false again should get false in the output like this guys similarly the next operator we have is the less than operator so let me give the less than operator a less than b okay a less than b 5 less than 4 is 5 less than 4 no 5 is greater than 4 so this should result in false now i'll say a less than c 5 less than 5 is 5 less than 5? No, guys. 5 is equal to 5, not less than 5. So again, false. Again, false, guys. Now, next one. 5 or A less than E. A less than E. 5 less than 9. Yes, 5 is really less than 9. So it should result in true, guys, if I run this code. You see, you got the true in the output. That's good. So these are the less than and uh, less than and greater than operators, guys. Now let's move on with the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to operator. First, we'll go with the greater than or equal to operator. Here I'll say a greater than or equal to. You see, you have to call like this: greater than or equal to any of the stuff should happen to result in true. Either a should be greater than or a should be equal to b. If any of this thing is true, it will result in true. So let's see in action: uh, a greater than or equal to b. Yes, a is greater than b 5 is greater than 4 one of the condition is true here in this greater than or equal to greater than is true that's why you will get true guys now if i say this you got true if i say a greater than or equal to c a greater than or equal to c 5 greater than 5 no but 5 is equal to 5 okay this operator in this uh, together operator is true so if one of the operator here is true you will get the true guys since one of the condition is matching phi equal to phi is matching here in this greater than or equal to so we got true here then a greater than or equal to e what about this one five greater than nine phi is not greater than nine or five greater than uh, sorry five equal to nine phi greater than phi is not uh, phi greater than nine is not correct and five equal to nine is also not correct both the conditions are here false so you should get false guys should get false here now the next one less than or equal to okay 
a less than or equal to b 5 less than or equal to 4 is 5 less than 4 false 5 is not less than 4 or is 5 equal to 4 5 is not equal to 4 both the conditions are false you should get false in the output done then uh, okay a less than or equal to c is a less than c is 5 less than 5 no that's not correct but is a equal to c yes 5 is equal to 5 so one of the condition is true in this so you should get true in the output you see you got the true in the output now if i say a less than or equal to e okay a less than or equal to e 5 less than or equal to 9 first of all 5 is less than 9 guys okay this condition is always already true 5 less than 9 is true so it's it will be true only okay one of the condition is true means we'll get true so these are the different relational operators we have in python guys equal not equal greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to these are the different relational operators we have in python now let's move on to the next category of operators in python that is logical operators we have three logical operators in python guys and or and not how this and or and not will work in python let me demonstrate before i demonstrate let me show you how the and operator will work and is one of the logical operators in python guys so let's say here we have and and uh, first operand is let's say true okay if i say true and true let's say true and true so left side of this and operator we have true and right side of this uh, and operator we have also boolean result as true true and true is well, how much what is the result here what is the result if both the sides of the and operator are true then only it will be true guys okay if one of the sides of this and operator is false then the result will be false for example here if it is false but it is true still false and true okay like this true and true is true guys okay false and true is false and true is one of the operand if it is false the result will be false guys with and operator both the sides of the and operator should be true then only you will get true otherwise you will get false so in all the other cases uh, let's say true false true and false is also false okay false and false both the sides false means directly false anyhow okay it is also false only in one case okay using the and operator only in one case the result will be true that is both the sides of the and operator are true then only the result will be true this is logical and operator what about the logical or operator we have one more operator right that is logical or operator this will be opposite of the and operator guys okay this will be opposite of the and operator that means if both the sides are false then only false guys, okay the result will be false only when both the sides are false for example here false is there here also false is there then only the result will be false okay then only the result will be false if one of the side is true if one of the side or operand is true for this or operator the result will be true you see it looks like an opposite right if one of the side is true and other side is false still true it will be okay still true it will be now if this side is false and this side is true still it will be true if the both the sides are true automatically it will be true okay if both the sides are true true or true is also true or true also true guys or true is also so our operator works in an opposite way of the and operator where in and operator both the operands if they are true then only true remaining all cases false okay remaining all cases false but in case of our operator if both the sides are okay if both the sides are false then only false otherwise in all the other cases if one of the side is true that means the result will be true guys okay that's how and operator and or logical operator are different from each other now one more operator we have guys uh, that is not operator okay if i give this not operator before true okay not of true will become the result will become what guys false okay not of true is false whereas if i use the not before false the result will be true not of false is true guys like this okay hope you are able to understand now let me practically demonstrate this logical operators for you so here i'll say print of true and true what will be the result guys so here in python guys capital t we have to give for a boolean value true and true both the sides are true for the and operator then only it will be true guys run this you see you will get true if one of the side is false 
one of the sorry uh, if one of the side is false then the result will be false so if this side is true and this side is false still false right still false run this code still false if both the sides are false then also false only when both the sides of this and operator are true then only true guys in all the other cases false now if i convert this into r operator okay so here if both the sides are false then only false okay both the sides of the r operator are false then only false guys you see in this case only you will get false if one of the side is true you will get the result as true true if this side is false and uh, this side is true still you will get true still you will get true you see you got true if both the sides are true obviously it will be true guys right and finally the last operator there is not operator if i say not of true what will be the result not of true is opposite of the true is false okay false should be printed in the output if i say not of false opposite of false that is true should be printed in the output so here in real time guys uh, in case of this false or true boolean values uh, we generally have some expressions guys like this for example in real time we may have this kind of expression a is equal to 5 b is equal to 4 okay if i say not of a greater than b what will be the result guys not of a greater than b what is a greater than b phi greater than 4 phi is greater than 4 true or false true guys not of true is false false should be printed in the output you see false got printed in the output so so this uh, this uh, expression is giving you some boolean result not of that boolean result will be printed here okay if this gives this condition gives uh, true then not of true will be false here okay if this condition gives false then not of false will become true here like that guys okay so not only in this case of not operator guys in all the case of and operator or operator uh, in place of true or false whatever we ha i have demonstrated here we should have this kind of expressions okay conditions or expressions which will result in the boolean results fine so that's all about the logical operators guys so i am done with the three sets or three categories of operators in python that's arithmetic operators assignment operators relational operator and logical operators now we have one more category of or the remaining category of operators are there uh, they are identity operators bitwise operators and member membership operators so this extra or miscellaneous operators uh, i'll not be covering right now okay based on the requirement in the upcoming topics of python i am going to explain this other remaining operators guys okay for now i am not going to take up this other operators in this session so in this session i covered arithmetic assignment relational and logical operators okay fine so that's all about uh, the different uh, types of operators in python and how to use the different operators and what exactly are the operators in python i explained everything in this session so that's all guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 9 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about comments in python so let's get started first of all what are comments comments not only in python programming language but also in other programming languages like java c sharp ruby javascript the purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code okay the purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code guys so why we have to explain the underlying code for example this is some sample code written by you tomorrow if you share this code with your colleagues or your friends they may or may not be able to understand the logic that you have written right so to help them in understanding okay to help them in understanding what is the code or what is the logic you have written here you have to write comments guys for example here i will write a comment hash okay so in python single line comment starts with hash guys whatever you type after this hash is going to be a comment guys okay the below code okay the below code stores Five and four into variables. Okay, performs addition and then prints result. Okay, and then print results. So this is a single line comment you have written about this particular code. Okay, so that tomorrow if you share this with code with your uh, friends or uh, ex, uh, I mean friends or some colleagues. Okay, they can even understand by reading these comments. Okay, they can understand the logic. Here the logic is very simple, guys. but in real time the logic will be kind of complex so such kind of complex logic if if you want your friends or colleagues in your project to understand you have to write this kind of comments guys otherwise it's not possible right and also guys 
sometimes what happens is you will be writing some logic on a particular day and after let's say after some months or years after after some months or years or after some time if you check your own code you may not be able to understand what you have written here because the complex of the code may be so much kind of complex that uh, you even may forget what you have written the logic for okay so these comments may not help your may, may not only help your uh, uh, colleagues or friends but also sometimes you can use the same comments to understand what you have written long back okay and also guys this comments won't be executed okay this is a dummy text you can say this code will be executed right when you run this code you see uh, into the a into the variable a 5 will be stored into the variable b 4 will be stored and uh, into the variable c the sum of this uh, a and b that is 5 plus 4 9 will be stored and this print statement is going to print the 9 but come into the comment nothing will happen guys when you run this program this is a normal text guys which is the only purpose of this particular text is to explain the underlying code this will not run guys this particular comments will not run when you run this uh, python file okay comments are just a normal text guys which are intended for explaining the underlying code apart from that there is no nothing going to be executed okay this comment is not going to be executed when you run this all these lines are going to be executed but this comment is not going to be executed guys and this is a single line comment single line comments in python starts with hash okay if you put a hash that will become a single line comment fine now run this code guys you see the first line will not make any difference okay if you have this first line or doesn't have doesn't make any difference in this python file but all the other lines which are not comment will make the difference anyhow okay run this code you see so you see if i run this code i'm getting the output as nine right i'm getting the output as nine so if i remove the comment also if i remove the comment also if i run this code still the same thing will happen guys you will get the same result okay so comment doesn't make any difference guys okay the only purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code and this is a single line comment in python so is there any other thing that uh, we can achieve by using the comments apart from the main purpose of the comments like the main purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code apart from that is there any purpose of the comments okay sometimes guys sometimes okay for example here let's say uh, let's say here i am using this print statement print sum plus 10 let's assume that i am just writing more code sum plus uh, 20 okay if i run this code First 9 will be printed, then 9 plus 10, that is 19 will be printed, then uh, 9 plus 20, that is 29 will be printed, right? 9, 19, 29. For example, uh, I, I don't want this particular two lines of code to be executed, okay? For example, I don't want to want this particular two lines of code to be executed, but I may require this line again, okay? I cannot delete this, guys, okay? There is a situation where I don't want this particular two lines of Python code to run. At the same time, I don't want to delete these two lines. What I have to do? If I if I remove this, then only that uh, nine will be printed. Nineteen and twenty-nine will not be printed. That's okay. But thing is that I don't have to delete it. Okay, I have to keep. I I need to have this line still in the program, but they should not be executed. That's the requirement. Okay, it's not about deleting or removing this kind of piece of code which should not be executed. But it's all about uh, having the same uh, having the code in your program, but they should not run. Such kind of situation you have. What you can do is you can convert this into comments okay just put hash this will become a single line comment here also put hash this also will become a single line comment okay if you run this code if you run this code you see 99 29 are not getting printed you see these lines got disabled how because they are converted into comments comment won't be executed in python right any other programming language also comments won't be executed guys so if you have a piece of code which uh, cannot be removed but uh, it has to be disabled just comment it out guys so that piece of code which is commented out won't be executed okay so that's another uh, okay that's another thing where we achieve using the comments guys okay there are two purposes we are achieving using the comments one of the purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code other purpose is to disable the code okay disable the code from execution without removing okay if you have some piece of code which should not be removed but it has to be disabled uh, during that execution or at that point of time if you want to disable that okay so we can convert them into comments okay disable the code from execution without removal okay so these are the two things we can achieve using the comments guys but whatever the comment have uh, whatever the comments have shown you till now these are single line comments guys okay if you put a hash 
whatever the text you write after that or whatever the code you write after that will become a comment okay these are the comments happened okay so let me remove this single line comments for now there are other type of comments also guys not just a single single line comment we ha also have multi line comments in python okay for for creating or writing the single line comments we have to use hash symbol but for creating the multi line comments okay we have to use three double quotes okay so i'll first uh, explain the disadvantage of the single line comment for example here i want to write the comment like this okay uh, i want to write the comment like this my name is uh, my name is arun motori okay i have written the below code for performing the sum of or addition of of two numbers okay i'm just writing some sample uh, text comment guys okay i'm just trying to write some sample comment in multiple lines okay so the below uh, i've written the below code okay on execution of the code on execution of the code we should get the result printed okay like this so i am i am expecting this three lines to be a comment guys but since i provided hash here only this particular line is going to be a comment guys whereas this is not a comment okay you see i am getting all the errors here because python is not able to identify what these statements are so what i have to do here is i have to put again hash again hash how many hashes i have to provide 1 2 3 okay instead of okay instead of providing hash 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 for each and every line what we can do is okay so for such kind of multi line comment what we can do is since we know the starting point and ending of this particular comment okay the comment is starting here and ending here right uh, here and after the third line it is ending uh, here in the first line it is starting is just provide three double quotes here okay and uh, end it with three double quotes here okay and the comment with three double quotes here guys so this will become okay this will become one minute yeah like this guys okay so this will become multi line comment okay multi line comment i don't have to put hash 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 you want to write more lines you can write still okay so the better way of uh, typing the multi line comment is just uh, type three double quotes guys three double quotes you see when you type three double quotes automatically ending three double quotes are coming just press enter here in between this in between this write as many lines of comment you want okay my name is arun motori okay i love programming in python okay so welcome to my training series okay the below program i can keep on writing guys okay it doesn't matter how many lines of comment i am getting okay here so if you are typing this particular text between this three double quotes starting and ending three double quotes okay all this is going to be a comment guys okay the below program okay performs addition of addition of two numbers and then prints the results okay prints the result like this you can keep on writing any lines of uh, text guys which is going to be a comment okay fine so this is a multi line comment guys and at same time this is a program guys is not commented out as you already know this particular line comments are the purpose of the comments is to explain the underlying code generally okay the purpose of writing the comments in a program is to explain the underlying code that's one of the purpose and the next purpose of the comments sometimes we have to use comments for disabling the code from execution without removal for example here print of sum plus 10 okay print of sum plus 10 print of sum plus uh, 100 print of sum plus 1000 like this sum some code is there that's assume okay after printing the sum we are also printing the sum plus 10 sum plus 100 sum plus 1000 as part of the logic let's say but uh, let's say the same thing guys i want to disable this code from execution i don't want to remove this code from the python program but this particular code should not be executed when i run this python file in that case guys instead of removing if i have to disable this what i have to do i have to surround this with comments okay i have to comment it out i have to put hash hash here and another hash here and another hash here like this i have to put but the problem is these are single line comments guys these are single line comments okay instead of uh, commenting these three lines using the single line comment what we can do we can we can just start the multi line comments here like this three okay three double quotes you have to provide in between that just paste all this uh, code that you want to disable okay at a time all this statements will be commented out okay starting from here to here everything will be commented out 
they will not be executed. Run this code, guys. You will only get the output as nine. All these three statements didn't get executed. So, guys, this is all about the comments, guys. Okay, there are two types of comments. One is single line comments. Okay, in order to in order to write the single line comments in Python, we have to use hash. And there are other type of comments like multi line comments. In order to uh, write or mention or specify the multi line comments in Python programming, we have to use three double quotes, starting and ending. And you already understood the purpose of comments in this session and uh, with all the practical demonstration. So that's all about this session, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 10 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about operator precedence in Python. So let's get started. First of all, what is this operator precedence? When you have multiple operators provided or specified in a single Python expression or statement, all these operators won't have the same level. That is, some operators in the statement may have the higher priority, some operators in the same statement may have the lower priority. Because of these priorities, the operation will vary. For example, I'll open this PyCharm IDE and in the sample Python file here, I'll write a statement like this print of 3 plus 4 into 5. Okay. Now, if I give, if I operate this first, let's say 3 plus 4. What is 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 into 5 is, you are getting the output as 35. Right. What if I multiply this first? Okay. Instead of adding 3 plus 4 first, I am multiplying 4 with 5 first. So in this case, 4, 5 is a 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. In other case, you are getting the output as 23. Right? You see, depending on the priority you are giving for the operators, the output is changing. So what is the priority then here? If I, three, if I say 3 plus 4 into 5 here, which operator is of higher priority, which operator is of lower priority, we have to understand. Okay? So if you see clearly see here, the multiplication, these operators have the higher priority over these operators. That means multiplication has a higher priority over the addition. That means instead of performing 3 plus 4 first, we have to perform 4 into 5 first. Okay. According to the operator precedence, this multiplication operator has a higher priority. So 4 into 5 will happen first. 4, 5 is a 20. Then only addition will happen. 20 plus 3. So output will be 23, not 35. In this case, the output will be. 23 because multiplication operator has the yes priority over the addition operator in Python. Run this, you'll get the output as 23 as expected. But what if, let me prove guys, let me prove that. Okay, so what if I provide this circular brackets here? Okay, if I use circular brackets in Python, guys, in Python, out of all the operators, this circular brackets have the highest priority. Okay, they rule it. Okay, when you use circular brackets, no matter what, it will give the higher priority. For example, here, if I put circular brackets around this 3 plus 4, then here will the multiplication will be performed first or addition will be performed first. Because this 3 plus 4 are inside the circular brackets. As we already know in Python, the circular brackets have the highest priority in Python. So whatever that is there in the circular brackets will be performed first. So 3 plus 4 will happen first. So 7, this 7 will be multiplied by 5. 7, 5 is 35. You will get the output as 35 now. You see, you got the output as 35 because circular brackets in Python have the highest priority of all the other operators in Python. Okay. So if you put circular brackets around 3 plus 4, you will get 35. If you provide uh, circular brackets around 4 and 5, or if you don't provide also because multiplication has the highest priority anyhow, if you don't provide or provide, you'll get 23 as the output because multiplication will be performed first, then addition will be performed. 4, 5 is a 20, 20 plus 3 is 23 you'll get, okay? So this is how, this proves that circular brackets have the highest priority in Python, right? Then after the circular brackets, the next uh, priority operator we have is the exponential operator, okay? Let me prove this. For example, here, I'll say 3 uh, into 4, Exponential operator 2. Okay. So, first of all, which operation will be performed? Multiplication or exponential operation? As I already mentioned here, 
exponential operator in python has the highest priority over this operators that means exponential will be performed that means 4 power 2 will be performed first instead of 3 into 4 first 4 power 2 will be calculated what is 4 power 2 4 into 4 that is 16 then 16 into 3 is 48 right you should get the output as 48 you see you got the output first 4 power 2 will be performed with that result we'll be multiplying with 3 okay so hope you got it okay so exponential operator has the highest priority over the other operators but if i again provide circular brackets here the things will change okay if i provide circular brackets here again things will change because in python circular brackets have the highest priority of all the other operators so whatever that you provide in the circular brackets will be operated first so 3 for the 12 will be performed here 12 power 2 12 12 the whatever the output that you will get okay 144 okay you will get the output as 144 so hope you understood the priority so far now coming to the third statement here in this operator presidents all these operators have the same level priority okay in a single statement if you use these operators okay they have the same level priority but the operation will be performed from left to right what does it mean let me write down something here i'll say 4 into 3 divided by 2 uh, percentile that is modulus modulus uh, i'll say 4 then uh, this one okay division this is division and this is uh, other division we have and here i'll say 3 okay let's see here you'll get the reminder but here you'll not get the reminder you already know about this thing right all these operators you already know four threes are first thing is that here whatever the multiple operators you have used that may be multiplication that can be division modulus or another division operator whatever the operators you have used in this single expression have the same level priority guys okay they have the same level priority they don't have they are not higher of each other or lower of each other they have the same level priority that means if they have the same level priority which operator will be considered first that will be depending on left to right okay that will be if, if they have the same level priority the operation will be performed from left to right that means from left if you come first one from the left is multiplication so multiplication will be performed okay so left to right we have to operate fourth is a 12 then 12 divided by 2 2 6 6.0 something will come 6.0 modulus uh, 4 the reminder is 2 again 2.0 will come so 2 divided by 3 so you will get 0 right you cannot divide 2 by 3 right 2 cannot be divided much like that okay what if i make it 2 run this still okay so 1 i think still it will come the same if I say 3 here, no, I'll just increase the number. 8, 3 is a 24. 24 divided by 2, 2, 12 is a 24. 24, oh, reminder is 0 again. You'll get 0 again, okay? So most of the cases you are getting 0 anyhow. But what if I say divided by 2 here? Uh, here, 24 is coming now. Now I'll say some 5. 1. Now it got changed. 83 is a 24. 24 divided by 2 is 6. Uh, 6, right? Uh, 83 is 24. 24 divided by 2. Uh, 83 20, 2 12 is a 24. 12 modulus 5. 5 2 is a 10. And uh, 2 will be the reminder. 2 will be divided by 2 by 1. That's it. Okay. You got 2. 1. 1 is the output. Okay. This is how it will be from left to right guys okay when you have the same level operator it will be operated from left to right simple okay this have the same precedence okay whereas this circular brackets have a is precedent precedence and after that we have the next priority as a exponential that is a okay power operator after that we have this next level of operators that is a multiplication division modulus and that division okay extra division and uh, again after that then you have the uh, plus and minus okay plus and minus so even this plus and minus uh, when compared to multiplication plus has the lowest priority okay this minus also has this lowest priority in case of plus and minus guys so again this plus and minus have the same level precedence 
uh, let me show you here if i say 8 minus 3 plus 6 okay so first which one will be performed guys okay so here addition and subtraction have the same level okay so 8 minus 3 is 5 5 plus 6 is 11 okay you will get the output as 11 you see you will get even though you put uh, plus here plus minus 8 plus 3 is 8 plus 3 is you have to start from left to right guys okay 8 plus 3 is 11 11 minus 6 is 5 you should get output as 5 okay like that okay from left to right it will be because they have the same precedence so the same precedence uh, same level precedence operators will be eva evaluated from left to right whereas the circular brackets of the is priority and this exponential has a second priority followed by this multiplication division modulus and other and here the final level of operators low level operators are plus and minus but here these operators and these operators have the same precedence okay these operators have the same precedence so they will be operated from left to right here plus and minus also have the same precedence so they will be operated from left to right hope you understood all the details about uh, operator precedence in python this much is enough guys okay so this much of knowledge about operator precedence or operator priority in python is enough so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 11 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about deleting a variable in python so let's get started in most of the programming languages we can only create the variables but we cannot delete the variables but coming to python programming language apart from creating the variable we can also delete a variable now let me practically show you how to delete a variable in python for that i'll open this pycharm id here i'll create a variable say a and initialize the variable with some value say 9 now if i print this variable you will get the value that is stored in this variable printed in the output like this now after this if i delete the variable okay in order to delete the variable in python we have to use this keyword known as del okay and followed by the variable name this statement is going to delete this variable after you delete the variable if you try to print the variable then what will be printed is okay if the variable is available and if it is assigned with some value that value will be printed but after deleting the variable when the variable doesn't exist if you try to print you should get an error right run this code you see you will now get an error saying that name a is not defined okay so here print a has printed nine after that the a got deleted once the a got deleted if you try to print the a you will get this kind of name error saying name a is not defined so this proves that we can delete a variable in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 12 of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically show you how to use this plus symbol for string concatenation so let's get started first of all i'll open this pycharm id where i have the sample demo.python file here i will write a print statement print of print of i'll give my first name as a string text this is a string text guys okay and i'll use this plus symbol followed by some space inside the double quotes this is also string text which is only having space again at the end of this again i'll use the same plus symbol and uh, inside the double quotes i'll give my last name okay first name plus space plus last name okay here these three items that you are seeing here the first name or space or the last name are surrounded by the double quotes which represent the string text okay so here this plus symbol is acting like a concatenation operator okay this is acting like a concatenation operator Okay, that means it will combine the string text with the space and then this uh, string text space with this last name. Okay, run this code. The complete text Arun space motor will be printed in the output. Okay, the first name space last name got printed in the output. Similarly, if I write the print statement and say five plus four, here this plus symbol is acting like an addition operator, not concatenation, guys. In this case, it is acting like an addition 
operator okay in this case it is addition operator not concatenation in case of the strings the plus symbol is acting like a concatenation operator but in case of the numbers the same plus symbol is acting like an addition operator that's the difference now if i run this code you'll get nine out output printed okay first it will print arun space motori then the next line next print statement will print nine okay in the new line you see arun motori nine got printed so far so good but what if i write a print statement like this i'll give my first name say arun and i'll use a plus symbol and i will mix that with an number case okay so here in the first print statement all this operands surrounding this plus symbol are string text string text string text string text in the next example we have the operands as some integer numbers but in the third print statement one of the operand is string text whereas the other one is a number is this possible can we concatenate a string text with a number in python no here you are going to get a type error okay in the output you are going to get some error you see you will get a type error printed you see type error after printing arun motor 9 the third print statement is giving you an error saying type error you can only concatenate okay you can only use this plus symbol as a concatenation operator for concatenating a string with another string but not integer it is saying okay you cannot concatenate a string text with an integer number then what is the solution still can i achieve this still can i uh, concatenate a string text with a number is it possible even though you are getting an error is there any alternative way yes there is some alternative way guys where one of the way is you have to convert this number into string okay before before performing this concatenation operator between the string text and the number you have to convert this number into string that is one way okay so how to do that i have to surround this with str okay str like this okay i'm using this str for converting this number into the string text after this nine number got converted into string text then you are appending with arun it's fine now you will not get error okay in this case you are not going to get error because you converted that into string text so plus symbol can easily used for concatenating a string text with another string text here nine is a string text okay so it will work you see arun nine is there any other way is there any other way so if i say arun plus nine this is not going to work right this string text this is a number which is not going to work here we are going to get error right here we are going to get error on this you see again we got the type error saying only concatenate string text with another string text but is there any other way other than converting this number into a string okay in this previous print statement we convert in order to concatenate this string text with this number we converted the number into string text without converting the number into the string text is there any way of uh, combining this arun with the number nine is there any way yes there is a way where just replace this plus symbol with comma symbol okay just replace the plus symbol with comma that's it okay but the only problem here is you will not get error but you will get a space okay between the string text and this number you are going to get some space okay but this is going to work run this code you see arun since we are using comma here instead of a plus symbol it's adding a space and after that nine number came okay these are the ways guys uh, these are the ways where we can use plus for string concatenation plus can be only used for string concatenation in python if you try to concatenating a string text with a number you are going to get type error in that case you have to convert that number into string before concatenating or you have to use a comma symbol in place of the plus symbol in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 13 of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically show you how to store a multi line pre formatted string text into a variable so let's get started first of all what exactly is this multi line pre formatted string text an example for a multi line pre formatted string text is nothing but a poem guys okay so let me search for something known as poem here and uh, scroll down we'll get some links yeah we'll go with this poetryfoundation.org where we can find some sample poems let's look into this okay this is a sample poem right uh, which is a multi line and also it's a pre formatted because you see some spaces are there here okay it's a kind of aligned in a different manner so this uh, this line only have four words and the next line has some more words and here some space is there before this line starts so this kind of pre formatted multi line 
text if you want to store into a variable in python i'll copy this then you have to use three double quotes okay three double quotes while storing that particular type of value into a variable how this is possible let me practically show you for that i will first open this pycharm id here in this sample python file i'll create a variable say p is equal to p for poem let's say p is equal to just uh, type three double quotes and press enter like this here paste it okay whatever the pre-formatted poem you have you just paste it but uh, it's not copied as it is as you can see here long too long america is there after that second line traveling this is also fine up to you only okay from here okay this uh, this one is like this learn okay let's uh, change this uh, text according to the poem but now till where but now till off okay anguish uh, just uh, okay like this fate and uh, not up to there and this both are in the same line somehow okay so uh, is everything okay yes direct pay time recalling not and now to the world world is on the new line like this okay this is what is a poem and uh, i think this is enough now it looks like enough okay so this is a pre-formatted multi-line text Okay, which is a poem nothing but an example of poem which is starting with three double quotes and ending with three double quotes okay this is how you can store into a variable in python now if i print p this particular text should be printed in the same way okay in the output this particular text should be printed in the same way run this code right click run you see the same format format should not be lost here okay you see the first line is like this yes exactly it got printed in the same way second line up to you and third line it's starting with some space and after that uh, it's starting it's also perfectly fine you see the format is reserved here and it is also multi-line so for that we have to use three double quotes in python for so storing such kind of multi-line pre-formatted string text so that's it guys thank you bye Hello all, welcome to part 14 of Python tutorial. In this session, I'm going to practically show you how to store a lengthy text into a variable in Python. So let's get started. First of all, I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have the sample Python file. Here, I'll create some variable say a is equal to, I would like to store some lengthy text. Say in the double quotes, I'll type the lengthy text my name is arun motori i have 12 years of experience in software testing i teach python programming for beginners python is an easiest programming language like this i would like to type a lengthy text i would like to store some lengthy text into this variable but here can i see the entire text in this editor whatever the text i have typed can i see it a go in this editor no right to overcome this problem what i will do is i'll just press wherever i want to break you see from here to here i can see here i would like to break i'll just press enter guys automatically a backward slash is being added by the pycharm id okay so this represents that uh, you are just writing in a new line but it's a continuation only okay so in this uh, Python, you can just uh, use this backward slash. It doesn't make any difference, guys, okay? You are just uh, seeing everything in the editor. That's only the difference, okay? And here, uh, I have 12 years of experience. Now, again, I have to break here because the text is going out of the editor, right? I just want to see the entire text. To overcome that problem, just press enter here. Automatically, the PyCharm ID is adding this uh, backward slash. If you don't have this PyCharm ID, then you have to do this manually, guys. Okay, you have to do this. Uh, you have to manually type. Just close this uh, text with the double quotes and provide backward slash, and then type the remaining text here, and again backward slash. So here, just like this. Okay, again backward slash. In the final statement, you don't have to write anything. So like this. Okay, the lengthy text is now being stored into the variable, and at the same time, you can 
see the entire text in the editor you can see the entire text because you are adding this backward slash okay that's the advantage now if i say print of a this entire text will be printed in a single line we just run this code you see my name is Arun motori i have 12 years of experience software testing i teach python programming for beginners and then followed by python is an easiest programming language okay but what if in the output also you want to display in the same fashion in that case here just say backward slash n okay backward slash n new line this means new line go to the new line after printing this just go to the new line okay again here also say slash n here also say slash n okay three lines last line is not required you don't have to go to the new line right for the first three lines uh, you can mention slash n when this particular thing is executed uh, it will take you take the control to the new line okay now run this code you will see all run this code now you will see all these lines printed in a new line okay run here spaces are there if you want you don't want you can remove them remove the spaces here run this code you see my name is Arun motor i have two years of experience software testing i teach python programming for beginners python is an easiest programming language so this is the way of storing a lengthy text into a variable and if you want this lengthy text to be printed in output in multiple lines you just need to add slash n and if you want to represent a lengthy text in the editor and if you want to see the entire text then you have to add the backward slash for every line going forward okay so that's all about this session guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 15 of python video series in this session i am going to practically show you how to format print statements in python so let's get started there are several ways of formatting the print statements in python as you can see here we can format the print statements using this plus symbol comma symbol okay this curly braces and here using the curly braces using index or you can use percent ls percent ld percent lf or g like that so let me practically show you all these possibilities that we can use for formatting the print statements in python first i'll open this pycharm id where we have this sample python file here i'll first create some sample variable say name is equal to i'll give my name arun motori and i'll give experience 12 okay for now it's 12 so here I am storing integer value into the experience variable, whereas string text value into the name variable. Similarly, I'll give one more variable, say location is equal to my location. I'll give say Hyderabad. Now I'll create a print statement and I'll start typing something like that. Okay. So my name is my name is what is my name? This is my name, which is in the variable, right? I'll append this with using plus name. Okay. Using the plus symbol that is concatenation operator, I'm concatenating a string text with the name string text that's okay okay it will be concatenated again plus here i'll put a dot to end the statement and i'll start a new statement saying my name is here arun motori till here fine i have around plus experience this variable i am giving plus experience plus here i'll say years of experience and I stay in Hyderabad, right? I stay in plus location. Here I am using the plus symbol completely, right? Here, concatenation operator I am using for concatenating the string text with another string text. But the problem here is one of the variable is storing an integer value. That means here, till here, no problem. Till here, complete string text. But if you try to concatenate a string text with a number in python as explained in the previous sessions guys you know try to concatenate a string text with a integer or some number or something you will get a type error okay if i run this code you'll get a type error saying you can only concatenate a string with another string but not with the integer here experience is the in integer type so you, you cannot concatenate like this but there is a way you can still print this out by typecasting this experience into string before concatenating i'm just Type casting it to string type. Okay. I'm just converting into string type. I'm converting this numerical 12 to string 12 and then concatenating with the string text. This is how we have to do. Run this code, you'll get an output. My name is Arun Motori. 
your name arun motri came i have around string of experience that is this is 12 12 is in string format that's why it got conquered 12 years of experience and i stay in hyderabad that's fine is there any other way if you don't want to use this str for converting this number integer number into a string and still want to get the similar kind of output what you have to do is you have to replace this plus with comma remove this str first okay remove this str first and if you use a plus this won't be possible because you are trying to concatenate a string text with a number uh, you'll get type error as we already got right but if you replace this plus with comma this problem will be solved but an extra space will be coming because of this comma if you run this code you see you'll get an extra space you see before and after 12 there are two 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 spaces before 12 one two one two that's the problem extra space is coming so what i will do here is i'll just remove these spaces here so that it will be okay now run this code my name is arun motri i have you see only one space came that space came because of comma here okay this is another way guys okay and this is another way of formatting the print statements uh, we completed plus str and comma so far now the next way of formatting the print statements in python so what i will do is i'll i'll uh, remove these parts okay in place of that i'll provide the curly braces like this okay my name is curly brace i have around these parts i will remove okay i have around this curly brace years of experience and i stay in here i'll remove the location and here before the double quotes i'll provide the curly braces and here what should come into this curly braces i would say dot format and what should come into this first one name right my name is name should come so i'll give name here okay if i give name this name will go into the first curly brace then comma into the second curly brace i want to i want to use experience okay so here i'll say experience again comma third curly brace i want to give location so i'll give location here okay i'll give location here like this now run this code it will work okay now run this code it is going to work my name is arun motri i have 12 years of experience i stay in hyderabad that's fine what if i change the positions here okay i'll give the name uh, here okay and uh, i'll yeah this is fine now experience is at the first position location is at the second position and name is at the last position so here experience will fall into the first brackets my name is experience my name is 12 will come i have around hyderabad years of experience and i stay in arun motori that is completely wrong right that's a problem okay that's a problem you have to give the same order guys okay whatever the order you provided this uh, curly braces the same order you have to give if not this will go into this one this will go into this one so to overcome this problem there is a concept of indexing okay in python there is a concept of indexing let me show you what is the concept of indexing means for example experience should come where experience is zero index okay experience is zero index location is one index name is it starts with zero zero one two like that okay experience index is zero experience experience should come here here this is a place i have around some years of experience okay the index of experience is zero right so here i will provide zero index okay now location is having index one location is here whereas name is having index two here index two now run this code my name is arun motori now it's perfectly coming right even though the order of this uh, things are different but uh, because of this indexing the proper things are going into the proper brackets okay my name is arun motori i have year of experience and i stay in hyderabad this is working fine this is another way okay earlier we used without index the curly braces without index now we are using with index this is another way okay or there's a final way okay there's a final way that is using this kind of things like percent ls percent ld percent lf or percent lg okay i'll tell you what is this here i'll give instead of two i'll give my name is i have to print name right name is in string format so i have to give percent yes here i have some years of experience experience is in integer value so you have to give percent d here okay integer for integer percent d years of experience and i stay in again percent ls this is also string text so percent ls s for string d for numbers integers also i have to change the order guys okay this order also should be changed here percent ls what should come into the percent ls here name should come 
into the percent ld what should come into the percent ld experience should come okay and into the last percent ls again location should come so here location will be there the order should be fine here okay the order should be proper but the type of the data you have to perfectly mention for example if you want to uh, format here with the string text then percent ls should be provided as per string text if integers percent ld again string text percent ls like this okay and also here format will not be there you have to say dot percent l okay here percent l symbol we have to use percent l of name experience location okay now run this code it will work fine my name is arun motri i have 12 years of experience and i stay in hyderabad what if i change this to 12.5 i'm changing my experience from 12 to 12.5 it's not an integer it's a floating point right it's a floating point value now right so but here we are using percent ld in case of experience we are using percent ld what will happen nothing will happen guys the only problem that will happen is uh, it will remove this 0.5 while printing okay instead of getting 12.5 still you will get 12 only because you are using percent ld there my name is arun motri i have 12 years of experience and i stay in hyderabad instead of 12.5 we are getting 12 but what if i want to get 12.5 here change this percent ld to percent lf f stands for for floating run this code you will get 12.5 you're getting 12.5 but a lot of zeros are coming what if i don't want these zeros and still want a 12.5 but without zeros i want in that case replace this g af with g okay you have to use g guys okay in this if you use percent g you will not get this extra zero so now run this code you see my name is arun motor i have 12.5 years of experience and stay in hyderabad what if i use percent d here in place of the string text i am using percent d you will get a error Okay, you'll get type error. You, see, you cannot use percent ld. Percent ld is meant for integers, but not for string. It's saying your name is not an integer, it is a string. So you have to use percent ls here, percent g because it's like a floating point. Okay, percent l for percent g. Percent g will not give you extra zeros uh, in the decimal point, and here percent ls means string again. Okay, so this is uh, these are the different uh, formats. Okay, these are the different ways for formatting the print statements in Python. Guys. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 16 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain about the different control flow statements in Python. So let's get started. First of all, what exactly are these control flow statements? Let me explain. Generally, when you write the Python code, when you write the Python code, let's say this is the first line of the Python code, this is second line, third line, fourth line, and so on, right? This is a sequence of code we have in Python. Let's say this code is written in Python. Now, when you run this code, the code will be executed in a sequential manner. That is, after first line, then the second line will get executed. Then after second line, then third line, like that, sequential manner, one by one. But Coming to the control flow statements in Python, we can execute the code like this, okay? We can jump from this line to some other this line, okay? Like this, okay? The code will not be executed in sequential manner in control flow statements. The code will be executed like this, okay? After the first line, directly we may jump to the fifth line, okay? It's possible with the help of control flow statements in Python. So hope you understood uh, what is control flow statements in Python. Okay, there are several control flow statements in Python. So which uh, change the execution order of the code. Okay, instead of executing in a sequential manner, the code will be executed in a different order. Okay, random order. So what are the different uh, those control flow statements? Then? So here is a diagram as you can see. The control flow statements in Python can be categorized into three categories at a high level. That is first category is selection or decision statements. Okay, you can either call them as selection statements or you can call them as decision statements. So the examples of the selection decision or if, if else, and if, elif, else, okay? They have a condition, guys, okay? Based on the condition, a set of code will be skipped or executed, okay? Based on a condition, a set of code can be skipped or executed. I'll explain more about the selection decision statements in the next few sessions. The next category we have the repetition or loop statements, okay? You can either call them as repetition statements or loop statements. Here, the same set of code will be executed multiple times, okay? With the help of this repetition or loop statements, 
the same set of code will be executed, can be executed multiple times. You don't have to write the same line, same code multiple times. Instead, write only once and execute the same code multiple times. How many times you want to execute, you can execute, okay? I'll explain more about reputation and loop statements in the upcoming session. And uh, coming to the third category of the control flow statement, we have the transfer or jump statements, uh, break, continue, return, try, and accept. These keywords in Python we have to use to achieve this uh, transfer or jump statement. Okay, I'll explain more about transfer jump statements in the upcoming sessions. Okay, so for now at a high level, okay, the control flow statements won't be executed in a sequential manner. Okay, depending on some condition or loops or okay jumping or whatever the nature. Okay, the flow will not be sequential. It will be some random or in a different order. Okay, so these are the control flow statements in Python, guys. I'll ex explain one by one now. Okay, after this session, I'll explain one by one in the upcoming series. So that's all about this session, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 17 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about selection statements also known as decision control statements in python so let's get started first of all what exactly are these selection or decision control statements so here is a sample diagram okay so selection or decision control statements run some code based on the condition okay so if this condition is true then this particular block of code will be executed but if the condition is false then this block of code will be skipped. Okay. Now I will practically demonstrate this. Okay. In a while, I'm going to practically demonstrate, but just understand about this selection and decision control statements. As you already know, under control flow statements, one of the category we have the we have is the selection or decision control statement. And we have if if else and if elif else under this selection or decision control statement. I'm going to practically demonstrate each one of this for you now. Okay, but before that, you have to understand what exactly are these selection or decision control statement. They work based on a condition. Here, the diagram, as you can see, if I just enlarge this diagram, the code will be executed in a sequential manner. When the if statement condition comes, okay, if statement condition comes, based on this condition, a set of code will be dependent. Okay, if this condition is true, then this block of code will be executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false, block of code will be skipped it will not be executed okay now let me practically demonstrate for you i'll create two variables a is equal to by b is equal to four like this now i'll write a if statement as you already know here if is one of the selection or decision control statement in python right i'm going to demonstrate the first item if if followed by you have to provide a condition if you see this diagram also there is if followed by some condition is there you have to provide the condition what is the condition if I compare these two variables, that becomes a condition. If I say a greater than b, this is a condition. Okay, this is a condition. This condition may result either in true or false. A Boolean value will be resulted. Okay, here phi is greater than four. It is resulting in true, right? So it's a condition. Followed by this condition, you have to provide colon symbol. As per the syntax of the Python, okay, after providing the condition, you have to provide a colon symbol and press enter. The moment you are pressing enter, you are getting a default space here, tab space, which is called as indentation. Okay, we call that as indentation. So, if I press enter, you see you are getting an indentation space here, and uh, you write some statement here. Print a is greater than b like this. Okay, one more print statement you write. A is greater than b. You can write any number of print statement. So the uh, every time you write, right, automatically some indentation is getting happening here. You see, for each and every print statement here, some indentation is coming. That means that this particular four statements that have sample four statements have written under this if statement belong to the if block. Okay, they belong to the if block. If this condition is true, then only these statements under the if block will be executed. If this condition is false, none of these statements will be executed. Okay. Now, so how to end this uh, if block? These four statements belong to the if block, right? It has indentation, but how to end this if block? So simple, guys. Uh, just remove the indentation, okay? If you press enter here, again, indentation is coming, but you have to ignore it, right? Just press backspace and press enter. You see? Now, if you start typing from here, print end of the program like this. 
end of the program this statement doesn't belong to the if block okay this particular print statement which is at the line 10 doesn't belong to the if block because all the statements which belong to the if block followed by this fourth statement should have some indentation okay after this condition and colon uh, the next line statement should have the indentation only if the statements have the indentation they belong to the if block okay in python this is the this is the rule okay this is a syntax or whatever you call now if i run this code what will happen so when i run this code the value 5 will be stored into the variable a the value 4 will be stored into the variable b and uh, here if condition will be verified a is greater than b 5 is greater than 4 is 2 if the condition is true all the statements under this okay if uh, this all these uh, statements which belong to the if block because of this indentation okay if you remove the indentation they don't belong to the if block okay? because uh, okay all these statements which belong to the if block will be executed if you see the diagram again if the condition is true all the statements if block statements will be executed but if the condition is false the statements will be skipped for now the condition is true that means all the statements which belong to the if block will be executed okay they have to be executed so four times a is greater than b will be printed in the output after that end of the program will be printed it, this particular thing doesn't belong to the if block but it will be executed as per the flow of the code of the execution after the if block got executed if any other statements are there in the program that will be executed right but only these four lines will be executed based on the condition if the condition is true only then these four statements will be executed if the condition is false these four statements won't be executed for now the condition is true so they will be executed the statements the if block statements will be executed that means a is greater than b a is greater than b four times it got printed then end of the program right then now i will intentionally change the condition like this a less than b a less than b five less than four is it true is five less than four no false this time this condition is resulting in false that means this block will be skipped the if block will not be executed if the condition is false this particular block of statements won't be executed okay we'll directly come out of the if block okay we, from here we'll directly go to the 10th line okay this the statements won't be executed they will be skipped directly we are going to the 10th line and the printing only end of the program now if i run this code only end of the program will be printed none of this print statement will be printed okay right click run only end of the program that means if the condition is false none of the statements which belong to the if block are executed so as shown in the diagram if the condition is false this block of statements will be skipped okay, and remaining statements will be executed here apart from the print statement you can write any other uh, python statements under the if block okay but only the rule is they should have the indentation if you feel that the statements belong to the if block you should provide the indentation here you have to make sure that there is indentation space here then only they belong to the if block hope you understood hope you understood uh, if statements in python okay if statements in python this is all about the if statements in python now we have other uh, type of uh, statements in python apart from the if statements we have if else okay next category if else so if else is an extension of the if statement okay if else is an extension of the if statement what does it mean it means is here i'll just go like this okay and type a keyword known as else again put a colon here and say print here i'll write a is less than b okay so till now we have till here but now i am attaching else block okay along with the if block we also have a else block now this is called as if else okay the second category it's an extension of the if statement it's the next level of the if statement where we not only have the if block but also we will have the else block okay this all together this thing is all together but earlier else block was not there now we are having the else block also as an extension to the if normal if statement I'll, I can write any number of uh, one or more than one statement under this else block. I'll simply, for demo purpose, I'll write the sample code like this print statement code. Okay, like this I'll write. So here also I am writing four or three statements, whatever is fine for you. Okay, since uh, there is some indentation here, that means all these three statements belong to the else block. Okay, since there is an indentation for these statements after the else line. Okay, all this belongs to the else block. Here, colon also should be important. Okay, after typing else, you have to provide a colon, and after that, you have to type the statements and with indentation. Then only this block will belong to the else block. This, these four statements belong to the if block. These three statements belong to the else block, like that. Okay, fine. Now, what happens here in this case is, 
uh, in this case, something different will happen. Okay. If the condition is true, if this particular condition is true, then if block will be executed, else block will be skipped. Okay. When the condition is true, if block statements will be executed, but else block will be skipped. But if the condition is false, if this condition is resulting in false, then if block will be skipped, else block will be executed. You understood, right? Based on the condition, either this block or this block will be executed. Now let's run this. Now let's run this program. So now if I say a greater than b, phi greater than 4, true or false? Phi is greater than 4 is true. That means if it is true, only if block will be executed, else block will be skipped. Only a is greater than b will be printed four times. A is less than b will not be printed. Anyhow, end of the program will be printed at any cost. You see here a is greater than b, a is greater than b, a is greater than b, a is greater than b. Okay. Since this condition is true, all this uh, if block statements got printed and uh, finally end of the program. Okay, got printed. But else block statements got skipped. The statements didn't get come, didn't get executed because the condition is true. What if I make this condition false? A less than b if I make. So this condition will result in false because phi less than four is false. If phi less than four is false, if this condition is resulting in false. In that case, if block will be skipped and else block statements will be executed. Then A is less than B will be printed three times and finally end of the program will be printed. This time if you run, you see A less than B, A less than B, A less than B and end of the program got printed. Hope you are able to understand how this is working, right? So this is, uh, if else is an extension of the if statement, okay? If else is an extension of the if statement. Here in the normal if statements, if the condition is true, then if block will be executed. If the condition is false, if block will be skipped, simple. But in case of if else, if the condition is true, if block will be executed, else block will be skipped. If the condition is false, if block will be skipped, else block will be executed. Hope you are able to understand. Now let's go to the final one. That is if elif else. What does it mean? It's still an extension of the next one. Okay. This one is an this one is an extension of if. Okay. If else is an extension of if, whereas if elif else is an extension of if else. And what is the difference between this if else and uh, these two statements and the last statement? The difference here is here you can have more than one condition. If you clearly observe here, how many conditions are there in this program? In this if else or if statements, normally if or if else statements, how many conditions are there? Here only one condition is there. But if you want more conditions, if you want to have more conditions, then you have to go for more than one condition. You have to go, you have to use elif. If elif else, I'll tell you how to use. Okay. So I'll remove all this stuff. Uh, let me keep end of the program. So, and here I'll say a is equal to 5, b is equal to 4, c is equal to 3, d is equal to 2, e is equal to 1. Like this five variables I created. I can also, uh, if I want to save the space, I can do like this also. a comma, b comma, uh, c comma, d comma, e. Into the a, I am storing 5, the b, 4, c, 3, d1, and e1. Right, like this. Like this also I can do. This will save a lot of space for us, right? So I'm creating five variables. Into the variable A, five is stored. Into the variable B, four is stored. Into the variable C, three. Variable D, two. And variable E, one. Like this, okay? simple. Now here, I'll write if elif else, okay? If first condition, it looks like if statement only for now. If A less than B, I'm writing like this, intentional. Okay? If A less than B, print, here I'll write a is less than b. Okay, this belongs to the if block. This particular statement belongs to the if block because of the indentation. After this, immediately what I am doing is I am writing elif, elif, elif. Another condition here. Till now only one condition we have, but in this fifth line, I am creating one more condition. That is b less than c. Okay, elif b less than Print B is less than C. Okay, B is less than C. Again, here again another elif. I can write any number of elif here. Okay, I can write any number of elif here. Here I can write C less than D. Hold on. Print C is less than D. C is less than D. Again elif D less than E. Hold on. Print D is less than E. 
finally i'll write else print is the list okay e is the list if none of these conditions are true then finally e is the list okay let's understand this program a bit here the first difference you have to understand is in case of if statements of if else statement you will have only one condition but if you are going to use elif you can have any number of conditions more than one condition here two condition third condition fourth condition this particular example has four conditions you can have 10 20 up to you then there's no limit you have to keep on putting elif as an extension okay fine now let's see what will happen a less than b a is 5 b is equal to 4 5 less than 4 5 less than 4 true or false 5 is less than 4 is false since this condition is false this block of code this if block will be skipped okay this if block will be skipped it will not be executed so the control so since this particular condition is false this block got skipped the control will go to the next condition which is there at the elif okay if this condition is false the next condition will be checked so at least this may be true right let's see whether it is true or false b less than c 4 less than 3 4 is not less than 3 again false again this statement also will be skipped elif block will be skipped first elif block will be skipped not be executed the control will go to the third condition c less than d 3 less than 2 again false again this block will be skipped second elif block also got skipped if block got skipped first elif got skipped the uh, second elif block also got skipped now con control came to the fourth condition d less than e two less than one true or false d less than e is true or false two is not less than one so it's again false again third elif block also got skipped is there any other condition left since there is no condition automatically else block will be executed okay automatically else block will get executed and it will print e is a list yes one is a list right e is a list so one is a list like that what if one of the condition becomes fall, uh, true for example here if i intentionally make a greater than b here and i'll say a is uh, greater than b in this case what will happen so before that i'll run the code okay before changing this i'll let me run the code here in the first example uh, first case all these four conditions were false a less than b is false b less than c is false okay uh, then c less than d is false d less than e is false since all these four conditions are false the remaining block that is else block will get executed printing e less than e is a list will be printed e is a list will be printed so only this statement will be printed and end of the program will be printed if you run this code you see e is a list end of the program got printed but what if one of the condition is true if i make this a greater than b first condition itself is true then what will happen so here 5 greater than 4 5 greater than 4 is true that means since a condition is true the if block statement will be executed a greater than b will be printed and remaining all will be skipped none of them will be executed okay one of the condition is true automatically every other parts will be skipped only a is greater than b will be printed a is greater than bb uh, a is greater than b will be printed after that end of the program will be printed on this a is greater than b and end of the program got printed but if this condition is false still okay this condition is false uh, so a less than b 5 less than 4 is still false so this block will be skipped and uh, this condition is also false let's say b less than c 4 less than 3 is also false right this block also got skipped now c here i am writing like b greater than d in this case what will happen here this condition is false so this block got skipped this condition is false this block got skipped now this condition is t greater than d that is 3 greater than 2 true here condition is true so this block will be executed and remaining blocks will be skipped already this blocks got skipped only this condition was true so this block will be executed and remaining blocks will be skipped t is greater than d will be printed after that end of the program will be printed now run this t is greater than d and end of the program will be printed hope you are able to understand and this one is optional okay if you don't write the if you don't write the else block there will not be any problem it's not compulsory that you have to end this if elif uh, with else block here what will happen in this case what will happen if i write like this okay what will happen all these four conditions are false here right a less than b is false five greater than uh, sorry five less than four is false so this block will be skipped b less than c four less than three is false so this block will be skipped 
d less than d three less than two is also false this block will be skipped d less than e two less than one is also false so this block will be skipped there is no else block so nothing will be executed okay in this statement nothing will be executed because all the conditions are resulting in false and this doesn't have any else block because else block is optional not compulsory okay all these things are optional guys okay all these parts are optional else block is optional elif is optional everything is optional okay here in this case else block is not there if all these conditions were false and if else block was there else block would have got executed but now in this case all these four conditions are false and this statement doesn't have any else block so nothing will be printed here and simply end of the program will be printed in this case run this okay only end of the program will be printed because else block is not there it was optional i didn't write it okay hope you understood uh, these three statements three selection statements or decision control statements in python that is if if else and if elif else this if else is an extension of if statements if elif else statements are an extension of the if else statements okay so this is all about the selection or decision control statements in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 18 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about while loop in python so let's get started while loop is one of the repetition or iterative or looping statements in python okay it falls into the control flow category statements where while loop is one of the repetition or looping or iterative statements in python in this session i am going to focus only on while loop in the next session i'll explain the other repetition or iterative statement that is for loop will be covered in the next session for now let's focus on the while loop how does this while loop works let me show you a diagram okay if this is the execution of the code okay when the while loop comes there will be a condition guys okay based on this condition if this condition is true the block of code inside the while loop will be executed okay and after this while block got executed for the first time again the condition will be checked if the condition is again true then the same while block will be executed for a second time and again the condition will be checked if the condition is still true for the third time the while block will be executed so the same set of statements which are there in the while block will be executed until this condition becomes false okay if this condition is true this block of code will keep on executing here okay like this like this iterative looping repetitive right so when the condition becomes false then will come out of the while loop this is how the while loop works in python now let me practically show you how to use while loop so for that i'll first open this pycharm id and here i'll create a variable say i is equal to 1 okay i am storing a value 1 into the variable i now here i'll write while statement while followed by what should be there after while what should be there condition should be there let's create a condition here i'll i less than or equal to 10 okay this is a condition guys i less than or equal to 10 is a condition so current value of i is 1 One less than or equal to ten. This condition will either result in true or false. I'll put a colon here. Okay, I'll put a colon here. As per the syntax of Python, after the condition, we have to provide a colon. Now press enter. You see again indentation concept came, right? In the previous session also, with the if statements or if else statements or if elif else statements, indentation was there, right? This represents the block of statements. If you after this line, the next lines having the indentation. Will belong to the while block like that. Okay, so just press enter here. So while keyword followed by the condition i less than or equal to ten. This is the condition. This condition may either result in true or false. Okay, if the condition is true, then while block will be executed. Right now here I'll say print of i. I'll print i guys. Okay, simply I'll print i. Now I'll come out of the while loop. Okay, so this is the while block. Only one statement is there in the while block. Now see here according to the diagram. based on this condition the while block will be executed right based on this condition the while block only one statement is there in the while block will get executed if this condition is true then this statement that is while block statement will be executed what if i'll say i greater than 10 here okay so let's see here currently the value of i is 1 and while 1 is greater than 10 is false if the condition is false will the while block get executed no right So here somewhere here I'll say print end of the program. Okay, here I'll say end of the 
program okay end of the program run this code only end of the program will be printed in the output because this while condition is false if this condition is false this block of this while block will not be executed even once also okay even once also this while block will not be executed if this condition is false okay run this code you see end of the program will be printed nothing will be printed except end of the program because this condition is false hence this while block got skipped simple what if this condition is true if i say i less than or equal to 10 in this case what will happen let's see this case i is 1 1 less than or equal to 10 right this condition this condition is true 1 less than or equal to 10 is true 1 is less than 10 is true so this condition is true so we'll go inside the while block and while block will be printed print of i what is i i is 1 1 will be printed in the output the output one will be printed after this one got printed in the output again the same condition will be checked guys okay again the same condition will be checked you see here after the while block got executed again the condition will be checked so when it checked the while block condition while condition for second time after printing i here one already got printed here right one got printed i is equal to one one less than equal to one less than equal to 10 is true so print of i is one got printed after that condition is checked for the second time. So again, I is still one only, right? I value didn't get changed. I is still one only. One less than or equal to 10 is still true. Again, the condition is true. So we'll go inside the while block. Again, one will be printed. Again, the condition will be checked for the third time. Again, I is one. One less than or equal to 10 is again true. Again, one will be printed. Again, the condition will be true. Again, one will be printed one 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 it will never stop guys okay it, it will go into the infinite loop the same while block is getting executed infinite times in this case one will be keeping on printed guys okay it will never stop if you run this program you see one is getting on printed here you see program is still running okay one is getting on printed here you see it's not stopping See, it's keeping on going, keeping on printed, keeping on printing one. It went into infinite loop, guys. It's not going to stop because the value of i is still one only, right? Okay, after printing i, the value of, again, when you check the condition, i is still one only. It's not changing. i value is not changing and the condition is always true. Hence, we went into the infinite loop, okay? This, this program is not going to stop. I have to forcibly stop now. I have to click on the stop to forcibly stop this program. Otherwise, it's not going to stop, okay? Fine. So how to overcome this problem? The condition is always true. The looping or iteration or repetition will go into infinite loop, okay? Infinite iterations will happen. So to overcome that problem, after printing i, I'll change the value of i, guys, okay? To some, at some point of time, this condition should become false. Then only we can come out of this while loop, right? So what I will do is I'll say i plus is equal to one, I'll say, okay? What is this i plus is equal to? In, in uh, when I when I was explaining about the operators in one of the previous session, I explained about this uh, plus equal to. Okay, if you if you are new to this, uh, just go back to the previous session where I explained exp about this plus equal to. Okay, compound assignment operator. This is uh, which I have covered in the operator session already in the previous sessions. Okay, so here what will happen because of this statement? What will happen? I'll let you know. Okay, initially the value of i is one. So it uh, when condition is verified, one less than or equal to ten is true. So here one will be printed first here hash one got printed after that i plus is equal to one means the value of i will be incremented by one so i will become what here i will become two now when you check the condition here two less than or equal to two less than or equal to 10 will be verified again true here this time when you print i two will be printed not one now the next statement after printing i as two the value of i will be incremented by one this time i will become three 3 less than or equal to 10 is again true. 3 will be printed. Here, i will become 4. Again true. 4 will be printed. 5. Again true. 5 will be printed. It will become 6. Still true. 6 will be printed. It will become 7. Still true. 7 will be printed. This will become 8. i will become 8. Uh, still true. 8 will be printed. i will become 9. Again, true, 9 will be printed. I will become 10. 10 less than or equal to 10 is again true. Equal to 10 is there, no? so true. So here, 10 will be printed. Now, I will become 11. 
11 is less than or equal to 10 is false. 11 is neither less than 10 nor equal to 10. So the condition has finally become false when i value become 11. When the condition became false, we'll come out of the while loop and we'll print end of the program will be printed. So here 1 to 10 will be printed. Guys. In this program, with the help of this program, we are printing 1 to 10. If you run this code, you see, you'll get 1 to 10. 1 to 10 got printed in the output. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then end of the program. Okay. So this is how the while loop will work. Okay. Based on the condition, if the condition is always true, this while block will be executed infinite times. If the condition is by default false, even one time also this while block will not be executed. But there are some cases where like this, initially the condition will be true and after some iterations, the condition will become false. While the i value became 11, when the i value became 11, the condition becomes false. And uh, when the i value was from 1 to 10, the condition was true and uh, i was printed. 1 to 10 got printed. But finally, when i became 11, the condition became false. After 10 iterations, till 10 iterations, the condition was true. But at the 11th iteration, the condition became false and we came out of the while loop. Okay, we'll come out of the, when the condition becomes false, we'll come out of the while loop like this. Okay. This while block got executed in this program. This while block got executed how many times? 10 times. In this program, 10 times. In each and every time, the value of i got printed. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 got printed. So this is how the while loop works in Python. Okay. This is how the while loop works in Python. So is there anything else I have to explain? So yeah, if the condition is always true, infinite times. I showed you an example. By default, if the condition is false, even the, the block will not be executed even once also. If this condition, if I say i greater than 10, this block of code will not be executed even once because by default, the condition is false, right? One greater than 10 is false by default. So this will be skipped by default, okay? Will not enter into the while loop at all. You see, end of the program got printed. So because the condition was by default false. So while loop iterates until the condition becomes false, uh, like where we have written the condition like i less than or equal to 10, right? i less than or equal to 10. So till the i was uh, 10, the value of i got printed here, the while block got executed. But the moment when i became 11, the condition became false and we came out of the while loop and end of the program got printed, okay? This one also I demonstrated. You can also use else block with while loop, okay? You can also use else block with while loop. How to use else block? Simple, okay? Here after this, uh, as an extension of this while loop, at the end of this, you have just have to write else. Like, like we have used uh, as an extension of if statement, uh, the way you, you used if else statements, right? Uh, as I explained in the previous session, the same way. After the while loop, after the while statement, uh, as an extension, you can write else. Okay, this will become single unit now. Okay, while else kind of thing. Here I'll say print off. Okay, came out of came out of while loop when the you can write like this. Whatever you want to write, you can write. Okay, came out of the while loop when the value of i has become become what comma i. Okay, when the value of i became eleven, we came out of the while loop, right? So when does uh, this particular else block will be executed? When this condition becomes false, automatically the else block will be executed, okay? Till the condition is true, while block will be executed. But the moment when the condition becomes false, then we'll go into the else block and where whatever you write in the else block, the else block will get executed, okay? So here in this case, initial value of i is one, the condition will be true. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 will be printed, 10 iterations will happen. In the 11th iteration, uh, in the 10th iteration, when i we, i becomes 11, okay, this condition will become false. When this condition, when i becomes 11, the condition became false. When the condition became false, we'll come out of the while loop. But since this condition is false, this time we have the else block. So when the condition becomes false, the control will go to the else block, okay? And whatever you have written inside the else block will be executed. So after printing 1 to 10 here, came out of the while loop when the value of i has become i 11, okay? 11 will be printed after that end of the program will be printed. Run this code. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After that, you see, when the condition became false, when the i value became 11 and this condition became false, the control has gone to the else block and came out of the while loop when the value of i has become 11, got printed. And uh, finally, end of the program got printed. So hope guys, you understood how to use else block with while loop. Similar the way we have used else block with if statements, 
as an extension. You can use the else block as an extension to the while loop also in Python. Okay, this is only possible in Python where you can use else block as an extension of the while loop. Okay, so when the condition becomes false, then else block will the uh, else block uh, of the while loop will be executed. Okay, in Python. So this is all about the while loop, guys. Okay, this is all about the while loop. You can you can play with the while loop, guys. Okay, so here I was printing the numbers from one to ten. What if I have to print from ten to one? If I ask you to print the numbers from 10 to 1, how to change this program? You can play like this, okay? You have to practice programming like this. I'll give i is equal to 10. Here I'll say i greater than or equal to 1, I will say. I'll reverse the condition. And here I'll print the value of i. And here I'll say i minus is equal to 1. Every time the value of i will be decremented by 1. So, fine, let's see what will happen. So, initially the value of i is 10. 10 is greater than or equal to 1. True. 10 will be printed first 10 will be printed then i value will become 9 still greater than then 9 will be printed then 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 1 also will be printed finally i will become 1 minus 1 that is 0 when i becomes 0 0 greater than or equal to 1 is false right will come out of the value came out of the value when the value of i has become 0 end of the program so 10 to 1 will be printed and came out of the value when the value of i has become 0 will be printed finally end of the program will be printed on this code you see 10 to 1 i printed okay i printed the values from this is how we can play with the while loop okay this is how we have to play with the while loop 10 to 1 got printed after that came out of the while loop when the value of i has become zero and end of the program that's it simple right so this is all about the while loop guys uh, you can practice while loop with the different examples anyhow in python so that's it thank you bye hello all welcome to part 19 of python tutorial in this session I am going to practically demonstrate how to use for loop with range in Python. So let's get started. In the previous session, I have demonstrated the while loop. Now I am going to demonstrate the for loop with range in Python. So if you clearly observe this diagram, there are two types of loops. One is while loop, other one is for loop. This while loop I have already covered in the previous session. Now in this session, I am going to focus completely on the for loop. And that too, I'm going to use the for loop with range. So how to use the for loop with range? For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID. And here, I'll type a keyword known as for. Okay, in order to use the for loop, I have to type a keyword known as for. For followed by, you have to give a variable name. You can give i or a or x, whatever you feel convenient. I'll give i for now. Followed by this variable name. I have to give an operator, say in operator. Okay, I'll explain more about this in operator, not in operator in the coming sessions for now we are using in operator with the for loop okay for variable in followed by this operator you have to give range okay range range of you have to give some value say 10 for example range of 10 colon you have to end this statement with the colon here okay and now press enter you see automatically the indentation that is tab space is coming so whatever you type along with the tab space here those statements will belong to the for loop okay so if you if you type here with the tab space if you type some statements for example if i say print of i this statement as it has some indentation here it belongs to the for loop like that okay you already know about the indentation right so fine so now if i run this code what will be printed here i am printing the value of i right here i am printing the value of i did i provide any value into the i no right so what how this uh, for loop with uh, range thing will work here is when you say for i in range of 10 so let me write a comment here okay so initial value it will assign to this variable i is 0 it will start with 0 guys okay but you gave 10 here 10 means up to 9 0 to 9 okay 10 minus 1 maximum value will be maximum value that will be assigned to the value variable i is 10 minus 1 that is 9 but the initial value it will start with 0 so when i run this code how this for loop with range will work is since i provided range of 10 it will first assign the value 0 to the i okay 0 will be assigned to the i so since 0 is in the range of 10 okay we'll go inside the for loop and i value that is 0 will be printed first then i value will be incremented automatically by 1 i will become 1 okay then 1 is in the range of 10 
So next, in the next iteration, one will be printed. Then I will become two automatically. Two will be printed. Then three will be printed. Then four will be printed, and so on till i is nine. Okay, till i is nine, this loop will iterate. The maximum value here mentioned as ten, but ten minus one we have to see. Okay, starting value is zero till ten minus one that is nine. Zero to nine will be printed, guys. Okay, if you run this code, you see in the output zero to nine got printed. Now let's play with this uh, for for loop with range a bit. Okay. What if I provide eleven here? What if I provide eleven here? What will happen? What will be printed in the output? For i in range of eleven means it will start. It will start assigning the value zero to the i first. Okay, whatever the number may be here, the first value that will be assigned to the i will be zero. So the first iteration zero will be printed. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to ten because eleven minus one is ten. So zero to ten will be printed. If I run this code, you see. 0 to 10 got printed, right? 0 to 10 got printed. So this is how the for loop with range will work. Okay? If you give 10 here, it will print 0 to 9. If you give 11 here, it will print 0 to 10. But I don't want 0 to 10. Rather, I want 1 to 10. Here it's starting with 0, but I want to print from 1 to 10 only. I don't want to start with 0. Then how to modify this uh, for loop with range? Here. Before this eleven, you provide one more value known as one, one comma. Okay, here we are explicitly, explicitly stating that the first value that should be assigned to the i should be one. So it should start with one, one to eleven minus one. That is ten, one to ten. So this for loop will be iterated ten times. Okay, starting from one to ten. So every time it is iterating, it is printing the value of i. So one to ten will be printed. Run this code. You see, this time one to ten got printed. Hope you are able to understand so far. What if I say three comma eight? What will be printed in the output? If I say for i in range of three comma eight, it will start with three. Okay, it will not start with zero, guys, because here three is mentioned, right? I value will start with i value will start with three. Then four, five, six, seven, up to seven, because eight minus one is seven. Three to seven will be printed in the output. You see, three to seven got printed in the output because we are printing i. Okay, when the value of i is printed, automatically the value will be printed. Okay. So three to seven. So one more example. Let's take. Let's say I'll say four to four comma fifteen. What will be printed here? It will start with four. First four will be printed. Then five, six, seven, eight till fourteen. Fifteen minus one is fourteen. Four to fourteen will be printed. Run this code. Four to fourteen. What if I again make it? Uh, let's say fifteen. It will start with zero because you are not providing any extra value here, right? It will start with zero. Zero to fourteen will be printed. Run this code. 0 to 14 got printed, right? But if I mention 1 here, 1 comma 15 means 1 to 14 will be printed. It will start with 1 until 15 minus 1, 14. 1 to 14 will be printed. Fine. If I only give uh, something like if I give something like uh, start with 2, 11, what will be printed here? 2 comma 11 means it will start with 2 till 11 minus 1, 10, right? 2 to 10. Two to ten should be printed. You see, it will start with two till the ten. What if I put one more number here? Let's say two. One more number I am adding at the end. What does it mean? So it has a different meaning, guys. Okay. So these two values are same. It will start with two. I value will start with two. In the first iteration I will be two. Second iteration I will be automatically incremented by one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, till ten. Eleven minus one is ten. That's fine. But here. Because you added one more extra value that is two, what's happening is after printing two, the next value that will be printed is not three guys. Two plus two. Maximum value is ten. First value is two. First two will be printed. The next value should be printed is two plus two. That is two plus two is how much? Four. Next value four will be printed. Then again after four got printed again four plus two is six. Six will be printed. Five will not be printed. Six plus two eight will be printed. Eight plus two ten will be printed. Okay, the max value is ten only. It cannot go beyond right. Eleven minus one is ten only, right? So twelve will not be printed here because uh, maximum value is ten only. Eleven minus one is ten. Run this. You see, two, four, six, eight, ten. What if I give something like this one? Here I'll give. Uh, let's say three. And here I'll give fifteen. What will be happening here? It will start with one. One will be printed. The next value will be one plus three. That is four will be printed. 
then 4 plus 3 7 will be printed 7 plus 3 10 will be printed 10 plus 3 13 will be printed up to 14 only right so 13 plus 3 16 will not be printed maximum value is 14 only right so you see 1 to 13 only will be printed hope you are able to understand this logic okay now i want to print the numbers from 10 to 1 okay i don't want if i want to print the numbers from 1 to 10 i have to give 1 comma 11 because it will start with 1 and till 10 minus 11 minus 1 10 so 1 to 10 will be printed here in this case you see first one then 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 but i want to print in a reverse manner where i want to start with 10 i want to start with 10 and 10 to 1 i want to print 10 to 1 so here i will say 1 so 1 comma minus 1 i have to say here okay minus 1 every time after first it will print 10 it will start with 10 the next value will be 10 minus 1 that is 9 then 8 then 7 then 6 5 4 3 2 up to 2 only here reverse way we have to see here we are coming from bigger number to lower number so till 2 only 1 plus 1 2 okay till 1 plus 1 that is 2 so 10 to 2 will be printed here okay run this code you see 10 to 2 got printed but what if i want to print till 10 to 1 just give zero here it will print from 10 to 1 okay we are decrementing right so it will be adding here okay zero plus one in case of incrementing it will minus here so hope you are able to understand it will start with 10 until zero plus one that is one 10 to one run this code 10 to one will be printed let me explain again if i have to print from one to ten i can give like this okay so if i give like this it will print one to ten or one to nine it will start with one but 10 minus 1 9 up to here we have to say minus 1 right because we are starting from a lower number to a bigger number in this case the second value should be minus 1 so starting from 1 10 minus 1 is 9 1 to 9 1 to 9 will be printed here okay run this 1 to 9 will be printed but here if i give 10 comma 1 minus 1 you have to give if this is the case first 10 till 1 plus 1 we have to say here not 1 minus 1 here we have to say 1 plus 1 okay because we are coming from a bigger number to the lower number okay that's what is the difference guys if you're coming from a lower number to a bigger number here we have to say minus 1 if you're coming from a bigger number to the lower number then we have to say 1 plus 1 so from starting from 10 till 2 okay 1 plus 1 is 2 every time it is minus 1 run this 10 9 8 7 up to but here if you give zero it will print 10 to 1 so this is how guys we can uh, work with the for loop uh, with the range in python okay so these are several examples you can practice okay so just practice it guys okay so all these different several examples you practice and get comfortable with for loop with range in python okay this is how the for loop with range with python will work okay in python will work so that's it guys thank you so there's one more thing guys sorry there is one more thing i have to explain about the else block okay I forgot this so else block there's one more thing known as else block okay, refresh here yeah else block has to come here okay so fine so the final item is else block guys okay else block how to use else block here the similar way we have used else block with the while loop in the previous session the same thing here also guys. else block print after this uh, range is completed then automatically the control will go to the else block okay so here i will say inside uh inside else block like this i'll say okay once this range of values are completed then when you come out of the for loop it will the control will automatically go, go into the else block it's an extension for the for loop now okay else block is a extension to the for loop here also indentation is there this statement belongs to the else block okay you can write any, any number of statements under the else block that's fine here I'll say print end of this program. Okay. Just for the sake. End of the end of this program. Okay. So now if I run this code, it will print from 10 to 1. Okay. It will print 10 to 1. After that, the range will be over. Then the control will come to the else block and inside else block will be printed. After that, end of this program will be printed. Run this code. First 10 to 1. Once the range is over, once the for loop range is over, then else block will get executed. So hence. Uh, inside else block got uh, printed here after this end of this program got printed okay 
So this is how we can use uh, else block with for loop. Uh, in the previous session, I explained how to use else block with while loop. Okay, we have also used else block with if statements. After that, we have used else block with while loop. In Python, this is possible, guys. With loops also, we can use else block. Okay, either it can be while loop or for loop with range or anything. You can use else block in else block with loops in Python. Okay, so that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 20 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about break and continue statements in Python. So let's get started. Break and continue statements in Python belong to the transfer or jump statements category. Let me show you here. As you can see here, this break and continue statements belong to the transfer or jump statements category of this control flow statements in Python. In this session, I'm going to only cover break and continue statements under this transfer jump statements. The next few statements like return, try and accept will be covered in the upcoming sessions, okay? This return uh, statement will be covered as part of the functions, which is going to come next, and try and accept will be covered as part of the exception handling in Python, okay? These two keywords will be, the statements will be covered later. This transfer jump statements, return and try and accept will be covered later. For now, in this session, I'm going to focus on break and continue, okay? So let's get started with the break and continue statements in Python in this session. To demonstrate this break and continue statements, I have to create some loop, guys. Uh, either it can be a for loop or while loop, okay? So I'll first open this PyCharm ID and here I'll create a for loop, okay? For i in range of one comma 11. Put a colon here and say print of i. What will be the output of this for loop? It will print the values from one to 10, okay? It will start with one. One will be assigned to i and uh, in the first iteration, one will be printed when i got printed. The next iteration, i will be automatically incremented by one. I will become two. So two will be printed and so on till 11 minus one, okay? This iteration will continue 10 times. That is till the 11 minus one is reached, okay? Till the i becomes 11 minus one, that is 10. The iteration will continue. So if I run this code, if I run this code, you see one to 10 got printed, okay? Starting from one till 10. but Till now, I have not used any transfer statements like break or continue. What will happen if I use, okay? Here I'll write something like if, if I uh, equal to five, okay? If I is equal to five, then simply break. I'm writing the code like this, okay? Inside the for loop, all these things belong to the for loop base, okay? Because indentation is there, as you can see, right? Indentation is there. So this statement belong to the for loop, and here, this break statement belongs to the if condition, okay? If, if statement. You see, this indentation applies for if statement, okay? Whereas this one belongs to the for loop. Here also, this belongs to the for loop, okay? So like that, okay? There are three statements inside the for loop. So what will happen here is, if the value of i is phi, then it will break. What does this break will happen? What is the, what is the purpose of this break statement? So whenever it occurs, okay? Whenever the Python executes this, break statement, it will take you out of the for loop, okay? So if there is a situation where break statement get executed, then you will com completely come out of the for loop base, okay? So what will happen here is, initially, the value of i is one, right? So if one equal to five, false. So break statement will not be executed because this condition is false means this break statement will not be executed, so nothing will happen. Simply print of i means here, one will be printed. Now in the second iteration, value of i will be automatically incremented by one. Initially it was one, now it will become two, okay? So it will go into inside this uh, for loop and uh, two equal to five is again false. So this will not be executed. And again, it is printing i, so two will be printed. Two will be printed. After this, again, i will be three. Three equal to five is false. Here three will be printed. Then i will become four. Four equal to five is false. Here four will be printed. Finally, I became phi, phi equal to phi is true, right? When I became phi, phi is equal to phi is true. So in this case, break statement got executed and you'll be taken out of the for loop. No more iterations, okay? You are completely taken out of the for loop when the break statement triggers. If you run this code, it will only print the values from one, two, three, four, okay? From phi onwards, it will not print, okay? From phi onwards, it will not print because 
when the value of i became phi the condition got true and the break statement got executed which has taken you out of the for loop entirely even print statement also did get executed after break right so run this code 1 2 3 4 will be printed you see 1 2 3 4 got printed so hope guys you understood what is break okay how the break uh, transfer statement can be used in python you understood okay fine that's all good now what about the continue statement there is one more statement right apart from the break statement we have the continue transfer statement in python so how this continue statement is different from the break statement let me explain okay in place of the break if you use continue what will happen break is completely taking you out of the for loop by cancelling all the iterations okay simply taking out of the for loop without okay without executing the next iterations it's taking you out of the for loop but what about continue continue unlike break will not take you completely out of the for loop but it will cancel the current iteration only the current iteration it will cancel but not the next iteration okay fine so what will happen here is 1 2 3 4 till 1 2 3 4 the condition is uh, false so continue statement will not be executed when i becomes phi phi equal to phi the continue statement got executed it will cancel the current iteration that means the current iteration will be cancelled means printing will not happen right in the current iteration printing will here itself the iteration got cancelled so it will not go further immediately i will jump to 6 okay when i was 5 the current iteration got cancelled so none of the statements got executed now when i became 6 6 is equal to 5 is false so here 6 will be printed that means phi got skipped here right 1 2 3 4 when i became 5 the current iteration got cancelled so it didn't get executed uh, i value didn't get printed when i value was 5 then 6 then i become 7 okay 7 will be printed because this condition is false then i become 8 it will be printed because condition is false then i becomes 9 9 will be printed finally i becomes 11 minus 1 that is 10 last one okay and here 10 is equal to 5 is false so 10 will be printed so here 1 2 3 4 5 only 5 got skipped because only the current iteration when the condition was true and the continue got executed got cancelled that's why 5 didn't get printed here apart from 5 everything got printed here 1 2 3 4 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten got printed. Hope you understood what is the difference between the break and continue statement, right? Break will completely take you out of the for loop. With it will cancel the current iteration, next iteration, everything. But continue will only cancel the current iteration and will continue the next iteration. Continue means will continue the next iterations left out. You can similarly use this uh, break and continue with the while loop also, guys. Okay, break and continue statements can be used uh, either with uh, for loop or while loop. so how do we create the while loop actually i is equal to 1 while i is less than or equal to 10 print of i i can say like this right now here i'll write a condition so if i don't write any break or continue statements what will happen here here also i have to say i plus is equal to 1 okay I have to increment in for loop i don't have to specify this but in while loop i have to specify this otherwise the i value will be always 1 and it will be always true and you will enter into the infinite loop but you have to manually change the value of i by 1 okay you have to increment the value of i by 1 so that the condition will be become false when i becomes 11 okay so run this code 1 to 10 will be printed guys you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 got printed now let's apply the break statement here okay so so how to apply the break statement here i'll write if condition because if i simply write break right it will be executed and you will come out of the while loop so based on some condition i want to break that's why i'm writing if statement here if i is equal to same condition okay i'll simply say break what will happen here so it's a problem guys okay this this program will not work as you are expecting because you see here what's happening is the initial value of i is 1 1 less than or equal to 10 is true or false true it's true right if 1 equal to 5 false so this will not be executed so print of i is here one will be printed okay so far so good then i becomes 2 again condition is true 2 less than or equal to 10 is true 2 equal to 5 is false again so break will not be executed print of 2 2 will be printed now i becomes 3 true this is false this will not be executed 3 will be printed i becomes 4 here i becomes 4 true not true break will not be executed Four will be printed. Then i becomes five. 
condition is true here this condition is also true now break statement will be executed okay break statement will be executed and you will come out of the while loop only 1 2 3 4 will be printed run this code the 1 2 3 4 got printed now i will replace this break with continue okay with break it is fine okay this logic is fine with the break now what if i replace the break with continue what will happen till 1 2 3 4 still fine but when i becomes 5 but when i becomes 5 here when i becomes 5 this condition is true this condition is also true continue will cancel the current iteration this okay nothing will be executed when the continue is triggered the current iteration will be cancelled and the value of i is not incremented guys you see here the value of i is this statement will not be executed because continue statement has cancelled the current iteration how can the value of i will be incremented now from 5 to 6 or something till the value of i is 5 again the condition is true i is equal to 4 pi again true it will cancel the current iteration so this will not stop program will not stop that's a problem right you are able to get my point right so what we have to do here before this continue got triggered you have to increment the value of i by 1 like this okay you have to add this extra statement guys then only the program will continue as you are expecting okay if you don't write like this it will be a problem now let's see till 1 2 3 4 there is no problem but when i becomes 5 and i becomes 5 condition is true this condition is true i became 6 here after that continue the current iteration is cancelled fine now 6 less than or equal to 10 true this is not equal false so this statement will not be executed Six will be printed. You see, now the things are working fine. Okay. Now I become seven. True, false. Seven will be printed. I become eight. True, false. Eight will be printed. I become nine. True, false. Nine will be printed. I become ten. True, false. Here ten will be printed. I become eleven. This is false. Will come out of the while loop. Okay. So in order for the continue statement to work properly, you have to increment here itself. Okay. So because otherwise continue will cancel the iteration. This increment action will not happen. Okay. So the loop will go into the infinite loop, and uh, because the value of i will be i always, and it is it will keep on canceling the while loop, uh, current iteration of the while loop. Okay. So it's better to put here. Okay. Now it will work. Run this. You see. Except five, everything will be printed. One, two, three, four. When value of i became five, current iteration got cancelled. Okay. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So hope guys, you understood how to use break and continue statements in Python with for loop and while loop. Okay. The implementation is a bit different when compared to the for loop with the while loop. Uh, in case of, in case of continue statement. Okay. In case of continue statement. Okay, you have to uh, tweak the logic a bit. Okay, here you have to add i plus is equal to one before this continue gets executed in the while loop. But for loop, this particular thing is not required. Okay, this statement is not required. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part twenty-one of Python tutorial series. In this session, we are going to get started with functions. First of all, what is a function function in simple terms is a block of code but what is the purpose of the functions i am not going to explain the purpose of the functions in this session okay let's wait till the end of the function series okay at this moment or in this session i am only going to cover what exactly is a function and how to create and work with the functions okay what is the purpose of the functions will be explained by the end of this function series so function in simple terms is a block of code so let's start working with the functions okay let's create a function and let's start working with the functions so here i'll open this pycharm id having this sample python file and here i have to create a function but how to create a function in python if you have to create a function we have to use a keyword known as f keyword okay as you can see here this is a syntax of creating a function def followed by the name of the function okay like this you have to create df followed by the name of the function but what is the naming convention we have to follow while creating a function okay so here naming convention of a function is same as the naming convention of a variable that is snake case okay if you if you remember the one of the previous session where i explained about variables and the naming convention of the variables we have to use snake case okay 
Okay, so what is the snake case? Like this, guys. My my is first word, which is completely in lower case. If there is another word, you have to separate that another word with underscore. First underscore function. Okay, here we have three words, right? My first function. All are in lower case and they are separated by underscore. This is the naming convention we have to use for functions. Okay. The same naming convention we have used for the variables. We have to use the same snake case naming convention for the functions also in Python. Okay. So def keyword will create the function. And after the def keyword, you have to provide the name of the function. After the at the end of the name of the function, you have to provide circular brackets like this. Okay. You have to provide the circular brackets like this. Okay. Starting and closing circular brackets. And at the end of the circular brackets, you have to provide colon. So this is the syntax of a function, guys. Okay. So we have to use def keyword and uh, the name naming convention of the function is in snake case and uh, it should be followed by the circular brackets and colon symbol. Now press enter again the indentation concept comes. Okay, we were following this indentation from starting from if statements, right? If statements, if else statements, okay, if L if else statements, after that while loop, for loop, everywhere indentation was there. For functions also in Python, we have to follow the indentation, okay. So whatever the statements I write under this function, if they have to belong to the function body, okay, then they should have the indentation, okay, like this. Just press enter, it will automatically come. Indentation will automatically come. Now write here a sample print statement, okay. So I'll write here inside, inside my first function, okay, like this. You can write any number of lines, okay. Because function is nothing but a block of code, right? A block of code. Block of code may contain a single statement or multiple statement, okay? So let's write only one statement for now, okay? You can even write any number of statements in this function body, okay? Fine. Now we have this simple function. And uh, here we have a function body having a single statement, that's fine. If I run this code, will the function will work? If I run this code, will this print statement will be executed? What do you think? It will not be executed, guys. If I run this code, nothing will happen. You see, nothing will happen, guys. Why? You see, this function has to be called. Okay. So only when this function is called, the print statement or the block of code which is there inside the function will be executed. Otherwise, this block of code will be ignored. If I run this code as it is, you see, no output is coming. The print statement is not printing anything because the function will not be executed like this, guys. Okay. In order to execute a function or in order to execute a or run a function in the Python code, we have to call the function. Okay. We have to call the function. How to call the function? Just copy this part till here. That's it, guys. This is a function calling statement. Only when you call the function, the function will be called and the block of code that is there inside the function will be executed. If you don't call the function like this, this function will not be called and you will get this kind of output, okay, where nothing got printed. Now, since I am calling this function, okay, now since I am calling this function, if I run this code this time, inside my first function got printed because this is a function calling statement. What is this, guys? This is a function calling statement. This is a function calling statement, guys. So this calling statement is calling the function and the function got executed and you are getting the print statement executed. Otherwise, this print statement will not be executed. If the function is not called, this will not run. Okay, the function body will not run. So hope guys you understood uh, how to create a function and uh, how to work with the functions. Okay, in order to run a function, we have to call it. Then only the function will be executed. Okay, and function is a block of code. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 22 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I'm going to show you practically how to call the same function multiple times. So let's get started. I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have this sample Python file. In the last session, I have written this code. Right, I have created a function and uh, this particular statement is part of the function body and here I was calling the function. But how many times I'm calling this function? This particular function I'm calling only one time here. But can I call the same function more than one time? That is multiple times. Yes. 
Okay, copy paste the same thing. The new line. How many times you called? First time, second time. You can call any number of times. Third time, fourth time, fifth time, and so on. Okay. We can call the same function any number of times. Okay. So what will happen if you call the same function any number of times? Okay. When you call this function, what will happen? This function will be executed, and this particular print statement will get printed here for the first time. Again, when you are calling the same function again, again the block of code which is there in the function will be executed again. Again, inside my first function will be printed in the second line. Okay. So how many times you are calling this function? That many number of times the function code will be executed. Okay. So run this code. Here you are calling the function five times. That's why inside my first function got printed how many times? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is the result of first function calling statement. Okay. This is the result of second calling statement. This is the result of third calling, fourth calling, fifth calling. Okay. So this proves that we can call the same function any number of times. Okay. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 23 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I am going to show you how to parameterize functions in Python. So, what is this parameterization? If you want to make a function intake data or receive data, then we have to parameterize the functions. So, how to parameterize the functions? I am going to practically show you right now. First of all, I will go to this PyCharm ID where you can see some code already written, right? This code I have written as part of the previous sessions, okay? When I was explaining the about the functions in the getting started session, okay? I have created this particular function, right? So this particular function doesn't receive any data. You see here circular brackets are empty. That means this particular function that I created in the previous session is not in taking any data. I'm simply calling this function and this particular function is getting executed and this body got executed, right? When I call this function, the body of the function will get executed. That's it. But this particular function is not in taking or receiving any data because the circular brackets are empty. So how to make a function receive or intake data for that how to parameterize the functions, how to provide the parameters in the function. Okay, how to provide parameters in the function? I'll show you. In order to create a function, we have to use def keyword that you already know, followed by the name of the function. Let's say I'm giving the name of the function some random name as print name function. Okay, I'm just giving this random name to the function. The snake is provide a circular brackets and provide a colon. Here, this particular function is also not in taking any data because the circular brackets are empty. Okay, if the circular brackets are empty means it is not parameterized and this function will not intake any data. But how to make this function intake any data? For that, I have to give some parameters. You can give the variables here, like the way you create the variables, right? Just provide the variable names here. Say name, one variable I created. Here, we should not call this as a variable. Instead, we have to call this name as a parameter. You see, when I hover the mouse, parameter is coming, right? This is called as parameter, guys. It's not a variable, it's a parameter. If you if you specify some variables inside the function, okay, then this will become a parameter. That means I'm, I have parameterized this particular function with the name parameter, okay? Now press enter. Now here, write print. Your name is okay. Your name is plus name. Okay, plus name. Your name is plus name. Like this, you can write the code. Now call this function. Now call this function. How to call the function? Copy this. Copy this as it is and paste it here. This is a function calling statement. In place of this name, you have to pass. Let's say if I pass my name as Arun Moturi. Okay, and run the code. What will happen is this particular data will be passed to this parameter. Okay, this is known as argument. This is known as parameter guys. Okay, what is this name here? The name which looks like a variable inside the function. This is like a this is this is nothing but a parameter. We have to the terminology wise we have to call that as a parameter. Okay, your name is a parameter. What about this uh, data that you are passing while calling the function? Okay, you cannot call like this. Okay, this will not work. This is not going to work, guys. Okay, if you are not passing the data, that is a problem. If I run this code, you see you are going to get an error. Type error is coming because here there is one parameter. For that parameter, from the function calling statement, this is a function calling statement, right? This is a function calling statement. Function calling statement. So this function calling statement.
cannot be empty here because this function has a single parameter. That means you have to pass the data from the function calling statement to this parameter of this function. Okay, that's why you're getting the error. Missing one required position argument. Here it is saying that you have to pass the argument. What is argument? The data that you are passing to this function parameter is known as argument. Okay, from the function calling statement, whatever the data you are passing to this function while calling the function is known as argument. So here uh, actual data, like for example, if I have to pass the data like my name Arun. Okay, print of Arun. If I say this is my name, right? I'm passing my name as a data. Okay, here Arun is known as argument, guys. Okay, it's called as argument. And here this name is known as parameter. Okay. So to this parameter, we are passing this argument. Okay. Where will be the argument available? The function calling statement. Where will be the parameter available? In the function. Okay. In the function, we will have parameter. In the function calling statement, we have to provide argument to the according to the parameter. Now run this code. Arun will be passed to this name. Okay. So when Arun is passed to this name, when you call this function, this data that is argument will be passed to this name and name will be assigned with this Arun and uh, here in the function body we have this statement your name is and this parameter will be printed whatever the data that is stored into the name will be printed here that is Arun will be printed now can you understand right the function is intaking the data here with the help of this parameter this particular function is receiving or intaking the data so this is called as parameterizing of a function okay if I run this code you see your name is Arun got printed. What if I call the same function again? I'll call the same function again, like print underscore name. And this time I'll pass a different name, say Varun. Can I call the same function multiple times? Yes, I can call. Okay, here the argument is different, right? Varun is the argument. This will be passed to name, and this function will be executed. Your name is Varun will be printed. Run this code. Your name is Arun. Your name is Varun. Now, another print statement. I mean another function calling statement here. I'll pass a different argument say Tarun. Okay, run this code this time Tarun argument will be passed to the name when the function is called for the third time and uh, that name will be printed. You see your name is Tarun will be printed. So hope guys you understood how to parameterize a function so that functions can receive some data or intake the data in Python. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 24 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about default arguments in functions. So let's get started. What exactly are these default arguments? Let me explain them in a practical manner. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have this code already written in the previous session. Okay. If you have gone through my previous session, I have written this code where I have created a function having a parameter. And when I'm calling this function, I have to pass the argument, right? Since there is a single parameter, I have to pass a single argument. No matter how many times I'm calling this function, every time I have to pass the argument, right? What will happen if I, okay, what will happen if I call this function without passing the argument? Here you see, here are three statements. I'll remove this for a while. I'm calling this function, but this time I'm not passing the argument. Will it work? No, guys. Okay, it will give you some error. Okay, you'll get type error in the output. Type error. Here you are missing one required positional argument. Okay, you have to pass some data to this name parameter. It's not intaking, right? But what if I provide some data? It will work fine. Okay, if I pass the argument from the function calling statement, if I pass the argument, this will work. The function will be called and this Arun will be passed to name and it will work. Okay, but what if I still want to call like this? I still want to call the function like this without passing the argument and still the function should work without giving the error. Here in this case, I am getting error, but I want this function to be called without getting this error. The solution for this problem is I have to pass some default argument. Okay, if you call a function without passing the argument, this default argument will be considered. Here I'll say if if you are calling the function without passing the argument, by default it will take Arun as the argument. Okay, that's what it means. It's a default argument. This this argument is called as default argument. Now if I run this code here, 
when I'm calling this function, I'm not passing any argument. So if, if this function is called without passing the argument, then this default argument will be considered. Okay, run this code to see your name is Arun got printed. Even though I'm not passing the data, your name is Arun got printed. What if I pass the data here? What if I call the function with the argument? Here if I say Varun, if I pass the argument as Varun, in this case, what will happen? Will it take Arun or Varun in this case? This print name function will be called and here Varun will be passed. Here default argument is there, here Varun is also being passed. Then in that case, Varun will be considered case, okay? If you don't pass, then only the default argument will be considered. But if you pass something, then whatever you pass will be considered. That means this print name function calling statement will pass Varun and uh, Arun will not be considered and your name is Varun will be printed, okay? Run this code. When you are not passing anything, by default, default argument is considered, okay? When you are passing the argument, then whatever the argument you pass, that will be considered. So I'm not getting the error here, right? Why I'm not getting the error? Even though I'm not passing the argument, why I'm not getting the error? Because of this default argument. So if you are providing the argument inside, beside the parameter inside the function, that will become the default argument in Python. So hope guys you understood what exactly is this default argument in functions in Python. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 25 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I am going to create and use a function containing multiple parameters. So let's get started. First of all, I'll open this PyCharm ID and in this sample Python file, I'll create a function. In order to create a function in Python, we have to use a DEF keyword followed by the name of the function. I'll give the name of the function as sum followed by the circular brackets and colon. As I mentioned, I want to create a function containing multiple parameters. Okay, I want to create a function containing multiple parameters. Here, there are no parameters. So let me add multiple parameters. Here, I added more than one parameter. You can add one more also if you want, okay? A comma B comma C or A comma B comma C comma D. Okay, any number of parameters you can add. Now here, I'll say print of A plus B plus C plus D. Okay, now I'll call this function sum of since there are four parameters here, I have to pass four arguments from this function calling statements. Okay, from this function calling statement, I have to pass four arguments as there are four parameters in this multiple parameterized function. So here I'll give something like three comma two comma nine comma six. Okay, three to nine six. If I run this code, all these four arguments will be passed to each and every parameter of this function and it will be calculated and printed here. Okay, run this code. You will get the output as 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 9 is 14, 6 is 20, right? You got the output as 20. So in Python, we can create a function containing multiple parameters. And when you are calling such kind of function having multiple parameters, you have to pass the similar number of arguments. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 26 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I am going to show you how functions can return data in Python. So let's get started. In Python, functions can return data with the help of a keyword known as return keyword. As you can see here, return keyword. Now let me practically demonstrate this for you. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID in the sample Python file. I'll first create a normal function, guys, okay? A function which doesn't return any data, I'll create, okay? DEF, name of the function. And this particular function is going to accept the data, okay? It is going to receive the data. So I'll give some two variables, A and B, colon. And here, print of A plus B. If you clearly observe this function, this particular sum function is intaking the data into these parameters and here it is calculating and printing as it is, okay? So if I have to, if I have to execute this uh, statement and all, I have to call this function, right? So how to call the function sum of, okay? The sum of here in place of the parameters, I have to provide the arguments. Let's say five comma four, okay? So here, when you're calling this function, this data is passed to these parameters. That means this function is intaking the data and printing here itself. Run this code, you see nine got printed here itself. But is this function returning any data back? 
No, it's not returning. It is only intaking the data, but this function is not returning. How to change this function so that it can return the data? Let's say instead of print of a plus b, I'll say I'll simply say return a plus b. Okay, return in circular brackets or without circular brackets, both are same case. Okay, here instead of printing the sum of this a and b here itself, what I am doing is I am making the function to return the sum of a plus b. Okay. I'm making this function return the sum of a and b like this. Okay, using which keyword I'm using here to return from the functions return keyword. Okay, functions have to use a keyword known as return to return the data back. To whom this particular data will be returned to the function calling statement. Okay, here the sum of a and b will be returned to the function calling statement. Fine. So, so when you call this function and pass this five and four, five will go to a. 4 will go to b and here a plus b is 9 9 will be returned by this sum and that will come back to the function calling statement that thing i can capture into a variable if required okay c is equal to like this and print of i can print the c okay from this you see 9 will be printed okay when i print c 9 got printed so here this is calling this function by passing this data and uh, this function is returning the data back to the function calling statement that data that got returned by this function calling uh, by this function so this function calling statement will be stored into the variable we are storing that into the variable and printing the variable so we got the same value okay or if you don't want to separately write print of and all those stuff and store this data return data to the variable and all you can directly say print of some guys okay print of sum of five comma four this also works in the same fashion run this you see the still the same okay when you are printing the function calling statement if the function is returning the data the function calling statement will return the returned data by the function okay so guys hope you understood how functions can return data in python using the keyword known as return keyword this is possible so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 27 of python tutorial series in this session i am going to explain and show you the purpose of using functions in python so let's get started first of all what are these functions as explained in one of the previous sessions function is nothing but a block of code okay function is nothing but a block of code but what is the purpose of creating such functions in python the purpose is to avoid the repetition of the code okay if you have to write the code again and again instead of writing the code again and again simply put that code into a function as a block of code and you can call the function any number of times okay that resolves the repetition of the code in any programming language you should not repeat the code guys okay if there is such code which has to be repeatedly used you just put that into a function and call it whenever you need for example here in this pycharm id we have the sample python file let's say i want to calculate the sum of uh, two numbers okay i'll create two variables guys a is equal to 5 b is equal to 4 now i want to calculate the sum of this uh, Two values i'll say sum is equal to a plus b okay sum is equal to a plus b now i want to print this sum i have to print sum like this okay this is one thing now after this again i got a requirement where uh, i need to calculate the sum of two other two numbers okay apart from this five and four i have to calculate the sum of other two numbers so i'll say c is equal to let's say three d is equal to let's say five okay here again sum is equal to c plus d here i'll say print of sum same logic have written again and again right same logic have written again and again now again i'll say e is equal to again if i have the same requirement again where i have to calculate the sum of the two values let's say two comma uh, two e is equal to and f is equal to four again i have to calculate the sum of e and f e plus f and here i'll say print of sum you see i'm re repeating the code here i'm repeating the code again and again okay this program will work but the problem is the repetition guys okay i'm i'm printing the sum of four uh, five and four i'm printing the sum of three and five i'm printing the sum of two and four i'm getting the proper values but the problem is i'm repeating the code instead of repeating this code what i will do is i'll create a function like this def sum of a comma b okay a comma b here i'll say sum is equal to a plus b okay or some s is equal to a plus b and here i'll print the sum print of yes 
these three, uh, these two lines are enough. Okay, these two lines. If I write in the function block, I don't have to repeat this guys. Okay, I don't have to repeat this. Instead, what I will do is I'll simply call this function. I'll call this function sum of by comma four. I will say. Okay, this will solve. I don't have to write this code, this logic again and again whenever I need to perform the sum of two values. Okay, simply I can call the function and pass the arguments. You see, the same function will be called. The repetition of the code has been avoided, right? Now with the help of this uh, functions. That's the actual purpose of the function guys. Okay, to resolve the repetition of the code. To avoid the repetition of the code, we have to use functions. And whenever we need the code, we have to call the function and use it. Now here I will say three comma five. You see, this much of code is being reduced. Sum of two comma four. Still, you will get the same output. Okay, you will still get the same output nine eight six. So hope guys, you understood what is the purpose of functions in Python. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 28 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to show you creating multiple functions in a single Python file. So let's get started. In a single Python file or same Python file, we can create as many number of functions as possible. Okay. Now let me practically demonstrate this for you. I'll open this uh, PyCharm ID. Here we have the sample Python file. I'll be creating a number of functions. So not just one function in a single Python file. You can create multiple functions. First function I am creating f sum of a comma b. And here I'll simply say print of a plus b. This is the first function, guys. Okay. I just created one function. Now I am creating another function in the same Python file. Def sub of that is subtraction a comma b print of a minus b okay now i can create one more function mul multiplication a comma b colon print of a multiplied by b now one more function a division a comma b colon like this i can create any number of functions in the same python file in Python. Okay. Now, if I say if I call sum of pi comma four, nine will be printed in the output. Okay. If I if I call this other function that is uh, sub of pi comma four, five minus four that is one will be printed in the output. If I call mul of pi comma four, pi multiplied by four that is twenty will be printed in the output. If I say division of pi comma four, okay. 1.25 will be printed in the output. Okay. Fine. Now, if I run this code, you'll get the output. Okay. So you see 9, 1, 20, 9, 1, 20, and 1.25. So, hope guys, you understood how to create multiple functions in the same Python file. So, that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 29 of Python tutorial series. In this session, I am going to show you how to collect input from users in Python. So let's get started. In Python, we have an inbuilt function known as input, using which we can collect input from the user. Now let me practically demonstrate this function for you. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID, and here the first statement I will type as print statement. Okay, I'll ask the user to enter his or her name. Okay, enter your name here like this. I'll ask. Okay. And when I run this program, this particular statement will be printed in the output. And by looking at that particular statement, the user will try to enter his or her name. Okay. That input given by the entered by the user will be collected by this input inbuilt function. Okay. If I write this input inbuilt function, this will collect the input given by the user. And that input I will store into a variable, say name. Okay, whatever the input that is collected by this input inbuilt function that I am storing into the name. Now, after that, I'll print welcome, welcome plus name. Okay, plus name like this. Okay, when I run this code in the output during the runtime, in the output, enter your name is name here is displayed. By looking at this print statement, by looking at this statement, the user will try to enter his or her name. Okay, I'm entering my name here. The moment I press enter, this input will be collected by this input inbuilt function and will be stored into the variable name and it will be printed here. Welcome, my name will be printed. Okay, welcome, my name will be printed. 
So hope guys, you understood how the input inbuilt function works in Python. But here, if you observe clearly, this input inbuilt function by default receives the input from the user in the form of a string format, okay? Whether you enter a number or whether you enter some text, it will be by default collected in the form of string. What if my example is like this, enter your, okay? Uh, so uh, I'll ask something like this. For example, I'll change this example, print, okay? Enter number one, okay? Enter first number, okay, first number like this. So this I'll collect into input, using the input function, I'll collect this input from the user and I'm storing that into num1, okay, num1. Fine, after that, I'm asking the user to enter another number. Enter second number, okay, second number like this. Now here I'll say num2 is equal to, again, another input, okay, another input. Now finally I'm saying, okay, uh, here I'm printing, multiplication of two given numbers is, okay, I'm writing this code like this, plus num1 into num2. Will this work? Will this program work now? num1 into num2 will work? It will not work, guys, because the user, when he sees this particular message in the output, he will enter a number, okay? Let's say some, let's say the user has entered the number, a five, okay? But this will not be connected, okay? This this particular number will not be collected by this input inbuilt function in a number format. Instead, it will be collected in a string format like this. That's the problem, okay? Here, the number entered by the user will be collected in the form of string format, not in the number format, okay? This string text got stored into this variable. And uh, when the, Again, when the user sees the second message, enter second number, he will input uh, another number. That number also will be received by this input function in a string format. Let's say you, the user has entered number four, it will be collected in the form of string text. That four will be stored into the number two. Now, multiplication of two given numbers is num1 into num2. Is it possible? Can you multiply string with another string? Here, number one is a string, number two is also a string. It's not a number, guys. These are all strings both are string string formatted numbers okay will this work no guys okay if you run this code okay first of all it will ask the user to enter first number if the user has entered a number say five and press enter this number five got inputted in the form of a received in the form of string text not number okay enter second number if i give four and press enter immediately you're going to get error because can't multiply a non-int of type string okay you are trying to multiply string values here but here, we have to multiply the numbers, right? Here, strings are getting multiplied, which is not possible in any language. So what I will do is, here, before I multiply this number one with number two, what I will do is, I'll convert them into, I'll convert them into uh, integers, okay? Int of number one, okay? Here also, int of, int of, number two, like this, I'll convert and then multiply, okay? So, this is good, right? Why the error is coming, let's see. Okay, here one more circular bracket is missing, that's why it's coming, okay? Here I'm converting that into integer and then multiplying, okay? Will this work? This also will not work, I'll tell you the reason, okay? If I run this code, it's asking for the first number, I gave five, it's asking for second numbers, it, I gave four, these two inputs got received in the string format, but here I'm converting them into integers, five for the 20, okay, here 20 got calculated. But the problem with this statement is I'm appending the string text with a integer number here, okay? I'm appending this string text with an integer number 20 here, that is not possible. You cannot concatenate a string with an integer value. So what I have to do is instead of this, okay, here again, I have to convert back into string, okay? Before appending the string text with uh, a number, Okay, I have to convert that back to string, okay? So run this code, enter first number five, enter second number four. These two inputs got received in the form of string. They got converted into integers while multiplication, during multiplication. After the multiplication is done, when you get the value 20, here that 20 number got converted into string back before appending that with the string text here, okay? That's why the output came correctly here. Multiplication of two given numbers is 20, okay? So, so here, 
you have to understand one thing input inbuilt function by default receives the numbers also in the form of string format okay you have to do this kind of conversions to get the required output so hope guys you understood how to collect input from the users in python using the input inbuilt function so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 30 of python tutorial series in this session i am going to practically show you how to use max and min inbuilt functions in python so let's get started in python max and min inbuilt functions can be used to find the largest number of the given list of numbers and also to find the lowest number out of the given list of numbers now let me practically demonstrate this for you i'll open the pycharm id and in this sample python file i'll create the max function this is a max inbuilt function to this max inbuilt function i'll give you i'll give a list of values let's say 9 comma 1 comma 5 comma 7 comma 11 3 8 okay like this a list of uh, values have entered into this max function now this max function will find out the largest out of this all these even numbers here in this 9 1 5 7 11 3 8 11 is the largest so it will pick the 11 and we can store that maximum value into a variable say m is equal to m a is equal to otherwise okay here i'll say print of m a okay i can say print of m a if i run this code you see the largest available value in the list of uh, given values to the max function will be printed that is 11. similarly if i change this to minimum okay m i n m i here if i print m i you see now the lowest value out of all these values lowest value is one guys okay so one will be printed in the output so this is how the max and min inbuilt functions in python will work with integer values similarly I can also use this max and min with string text. So what will happen if I use the max and min with string text? If I use max with the string text, then it will find the alphabetically the largest value. Okay. Or if I use min function, alphabetically whatever the value which comes first, that will be selected. For example, here if I say min of, I'll give some colors, guys. Okay. Let's say I'll give some colors like orange, green yellow blue orange green yellow orange green yellow here blue so out of all this uh, four string text available which one is a minimum alphabetically a b b will come first right so blue will be selected here okay so yeah i will again say m i is equal to and here if i print m i it will print blue color in the output because alphabetically blue comes first right compared to others what if i change it to ma the maximum okay that means alphabetically which will come last that will be selected so a b c d e f g h x y z almost okay so yellow will come guys okay if i say ma here if i print ma it will print yellow because yellow comes late right in the last alphabetically you see this is how we can use max and min inbuilt functions in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 31 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about local and global variables in python so let's get started first of all what is a local variable local variable is a variable which is created inside the function if you create a variable inside a function that variable is known as a local variable let me practically demonstrate this for you for that i'll open this pycharm id and here we have the sample python file now i'll first create a function f my underscore function i'm just giving some random name to the function guys like my function i created a function inside this function i'll create a variable say name is equal to here i'll give name is equal to around motori okay my name now this variable since i created this variable inside a function this variable is known as a local variable so what is the scope of this local variable i can only access this local variable inside the function okay so here if i try to print this name okay i'm trying to access this variable inside the function so no problem but if you try to 
access this variable outside the function. Okay, let's try to access this. Okay, in the same way, I try to access this variable outside the function. So here, if I say print of name, immediately I'm going to get error. Okay, so it cannot locate. It cannot locate where exactly the name is. Okay, so local variable can only be accessed inside the function, but not outside the function. Here already you are getting error. Okay, so if I run this code by calling this function, okay, in order for this particular code inside the function to run, I have to call this function, right? Let me call this function using the function calling statement. I can run, okay, run like this. Okay, you see my name got printed because a local variable can only access it inside the function. But if you try to access the local variable outside the function, if you try to access here, that is not possible. Outside the function, accessing the local variable is not possible. If I try to run, you see I'm getting name error. Okay, it's not defined. It's not there. It is saying. So this is visible only inside the function, but not outside the function. You cannot access. What if I make this? I create this variable outside the function. Okay. Now the next. Uh, Type of variable, guys. Okay, we I covered the local variable, right? I covered the local variable. A variable that is created inside the function is called as a local variable. But if you create the variable directly inside the Python file and outside the functions, that variable is known as a global variable. Okay. See, simply what I will do is I'll just move this variable outside the function. Okay. I'll not create the variable inside the function. Rather, I am directly creating this variable in the Python file and outside this variable is outside the function, right? Not inside the function. Hence, this variable is not a local variable. This variable, which you got directly created inside the Python file and outside the functions, is known as a global variable. Okay, if you create a variable directly inside the Python file and outside the function, is known as a global variable. And this global variable can be accessed throughout the Python file without any problem. Either it is inside the function or outside the function, no problem. You see, the error is gone here. Earlier, here when I try to access the name. Uh, when the name variable was a local variable, right? I got an error here. But the moment I moved this particular variable and converted that into a global variable outside by creating that variable outside the function, now I'm able to access not only inside the function, but also outside the function also I can access this global variable. That is the difference between local variable and global variable in Python, guys. You can access the global variable throughout the Python file and it is created directly inside the Python file outside the functions. Okay, now run this code. You see, this time two times Arun Motori got printed. My name got printed because I'm able to access this global variable not only inside the function but also outside the function. Okay, fine. Now, guys, so here this is a global variable I created outside the function. Is there any possibility where I can create this global variable inside the function itself? Okay, this is one possibility where if you want to create some global variables, you have to directly create the global variables inside the Python file outside the functions. But is there any possibility where I can create the same global variable inside the function? Still, it has to be a global variable. Is it possible? If I move it again back to the function, guys, now it becomes a this particular variable becomes what? Again, it becomes a local variable. Okay, and as you can see here, you are already getting an error. That means you cannot access this local variable outside the function. It is a local variable, guys, not a global variable now. But I can do something where I'll add global keyword here and uh, in the next line I will say name is equal to like this. Okay. Now here inside the function I'm creating this variable but I am adding a keyword known as global keyword because of this this variable is not a local variable now. Okay. This is not a local variable because I'm adding a keyword before this variable known as global. This global keyword makes this variable even though I'm creating this variable inside the function because of this global keyword this variable becomes a global variable it's not a local guys it's a global variable okay this is another way of creating the global variables in python either you can directly create the variables in the under the python file outside the function that is one way of creating the global variables or if you want to create global variables inside the function you have to add a keyword known as global then this variable becomes a global variable okay in the next line you have to assign the value in the first line you have to uh, declare it with a global keyword okay it becomes a global variable you can access this global variable inside the function and also outside the function run this code it will work in the same way you see it's also a global variable fine now what if what if i'll just change it back to the local variable okay i'm not adding the global keyword here so this name variable will become a local variable okay this is a local variable guys okay this is a local variable 
now what if i have the variable having the same name as a local variable and also global variable okay i'll say name is equal to i'll give my name like this okay so here here this name variable is a global variable because it is directly created in the under the python file and outside the function that's why it is a global variable what if here if i say name is equal to i'll give a different uh, value here okay like this okay name is equal to varun dawat if i give this is a local variable can we create uh, a global variable and local variable at the same time having the same name yes it is possible guys okay so as it is possible you can with the same name the same name variable name you can create a global variable and a local variable also okay that's possible guys so here if i try to access the variable having the same name inside the function then which variable will variable will be accessed uh, global variable or local variable if i try to access this variable inside the function then which variable will be accessed local variable or global variable here local variable will be accessed priority will be given to local variable okay here local variable is being accessed if you are trying to access a variable having the same name as a global and local inside the function if you are trying to access then it will prefer the local variable okay what if i try to access this variable having the same name for the global and local outside the function then it will take the global variable okay you see when i double click here global variable is getting highlighted if i double click here local variable is getting highlighted if i run this code okay since i am calling the function here i am printing the name right name variable since global variable and local variable has the same name it will prefer the local variable because inside the function it will prefer the local variable that is varun dawat will be printed first after that i am printing the name outside the function name variable outside the function here it will prefer the global variable okay since i am accessing outside the function it will prefer the global variable so then my name arun motor will be printed after varun dawat okay run this code you see first varun dawat then arun motor okay so if you have the same name for the global variable and local local variable then inside the function local variable will be accessed and outside the function global variable will be accessed fine okay now changing the value of a global variable from the function using global keyword for example here name is equal to arun motor right i want to update this value okay i want to change this value inside the function i want to change if i change like this it is a local variable guys it's not a global so it will not update this global variables value right here name is equal to varun dawat here arun motor will not be replaced with varun dawat because it is a local variable it is a global variable both are different but still if i want to update the value of the global variable inside the function then what i have to do is here i have to add a keyword known as global okay here i have to add a keyword known as global and in the next line i have to say name is equal to varun dawat okay this is a global variable so i am updating the value here i am updating the value of the global variable from arun motor to varun dawat in this case if i print name here and name here what will be printed both the things varun dawat will be printed okay so first the function will be called here global name is equal to name is equal to varun dawat and here name is equal to varun dawat will be preferred okay it is a global variable now outside the function if i try to access this name variable here the global variables value got updated because i added the global keyword here right this arun motor got replaced with varun dawat already okay because i called the function it got replaced now if i access the name here also varun dawat will be printed because the global variables value got updated with the okay varun dawat because i added the global keyword here run this code both varun dawats will be printed okay so hope guys you understood uh, what is a local variable what is a global variable and how to create uh, different ways of creating the global variable directly under the python file you can create the global variable by creating that uh, global variable outside the functions and also you can mention a global keyword if you are creating the global variable inside the function okay so that's all guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 32 of python tutorial in this session i am going to show you how to use pass statements in python so let's get started in python we can use or provide pass statement under a function or under a loop like while loop or for loop or under a condition block like if condition statements etc now let's understand what is the purpose of providing this pass statements under a function loop or condition block in python for example if you want to create a function 
but you don't want to implement the function right away you don't want to write the function code right away or if you want to implement the function code in future you want to create the function right now but you want to implement the function in the future not now in that case instead of keeping that particular function blank we can simply mention a pass statement now let me practically demonstrate this for you for that i'll open this pycharm id and here we have this sample python file i'll create a sample function okay let's say def some function i'm creating but i don't want to implement this function i want to create the function but i don't want to implement this function right away okay so so if i keep it blank it doesn't look good right so let's create few more functions let's say subtraction function and i want to keep this functions blank i want to create this function but i don't want to implement let's create a uh, three or four functions and uh, don't implement them okay for now i don't want to implement this any of these functions i am creating i just want to keep them blank instead of keeping them blank what we have to do is we just have to pass this pass statement okay we have to provide this pass statement here okay instead of keeping this functions blank it's better to provide the pass statement okay it's a better approach so what will happen if i call this kind of function since i have not implemented the functions and in place of that implementation i have provided the sample statements like pass so will something happen if i call this functions nothing will happen guys these are dummy statements okay they will not get executed so if i call this sum function or subtraction function or multiplication function or a division function nothing will happen guys okay only the thing is you are not implementing the functions and you want to implement these functions in the future for now instead of keeping them blank you are providing the pass statement and when you run these functions or call and run these functions you will not see any thing in the output okay so that is the purpose of the pass statements in python guys so apart from using the pass statements in functions we can also use pass statements in a loop like for loop for example for i in range of 1 comma 11 okay i am creating a for loop in python and here i don't want to implement this for loop so instead of keeping it blank i'll provide a pass statement if i run this code nothing will happen as usual okay similarly i can provide the pass statement in a condition okay condition block like if statements etc okay i'll create two variables a is equal to 5 b is equal to 4 and i'll say if a is greater than b colon i don't want to implement this function uh, i mean i don't want to implement this this uh, condition statement okay i don't want to implement this condition statement In, instead of keeping it blank just provide pass statement that's it so here a is greater than b that is 5 is greater than 4 is 2 but pass statement will not be executed right it is a dummy statement okay you'll not get any output okay so this is how we have to use pass statements in python if you don't want to implement a function or loop or a condition block right away and if you want to implement that in the future so but if you want to create them okay but you want don't want to implement in that case you create them and simply pass the pass statements under them okay whenever you are ready you can replace the pass statement with your implementation code so this is the purpose of the pass statements in python guys so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 33 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain about collections so let's get started first of all what exactly are these collections collections in python are nothing but data types collections in python are nothing but data types which allow us to store multiple values into a single variable okay the data types in python which allow us okay the data types in python which allow us to store multiple values into a single variable are known as which data types collection data types okay the data types in python which allows to store multiple values into a single variable are known as collection data types there are four okay there are four collection data types okay there are four collection data types in python they are first one is list then we have tuple then we have set and then we have dictionary there are four collection data types in python they are list tuple set and dictionary i'll explain more about this list tuple set and dictionary in detail in the upcoming sessions for now let me practically demonstrate this list for you to show that how collection data types can allow you to store multiple values into a single variable okay for that i'll open this pycharm id and here we have this uh, sample python file 
here i'll create a variable guys okay let's say color okay or colors colors variable i will create into this color colors variable i will store multiple values okay instead of storing a single value i'm going to store multiple values into the single variable known as colors i'll put this square brackets here and inside the square brackets i'll give some different colors let's say orange then comma here green so hello red white and so on you can give as name as many number of okay you can store multiple values into a single variable this is possible with the help of collection data types in python and whatever i have shown here is a list guys okay whatever i have shown here whatever the multiple values i have provided in such a square bracket is nothing but a list guys it's a list okay if i print out like this for example if i print type of colors you will get the type of the data type okay that is list will print in the output you see the type of the data type of this uh, colors variable is nothing but list hence you can store multiple values into a single variable similarly you can use tuple set dictionary for storing multiple values into a single variable i'll explain more about them in the upcoming sessions and even i'll cover more about list okay this is just a sample about the list guys there is lot to be covered regarding the list that i'll be covering in the next session okay for now this is enough to get started with the collection this much is enough guys so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 34 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about list in python so let's get started as explained in the previous session list is one of the collection data types using which we can store multiple values into a single variable now let me practically demonstrate this list for you for that i'll open this pycharm id and in this pycharm id we have a sample project under that we have a sample python file inside this python file i'll create a normal variable say a and into this variable i would like to store multiple values in the form of a list how to store that a is equal to in order to create a list in python we have to use square brackets like this okay we have to use square brackets in the square brackets you can specify a list of values say 9 comma 1 comma 5 comma 7 here i am storing multiple values as a list into this variable now if i print out this list okay if i print this particular list say print of a okay if i want to print this list as it is i have to say print of the name of the list that is a now run this code the entire list will be printed guys okay you see the entire list will be printed as it is so like this there are several examples i am going to demonstrate about the list in this session guys so first thing i have printed the list now how to access the each and every element of the list here when i print list entire elements got printed but i don't want to get all the elements like a list here to be printed instead i want to get only this value say 5 to be printed how to access this value from the list for that you have to understand a concept known as indexing okay when you store multiple values into this variable as a list what happens in the memory is let's say this is the computer memory okay let's assume that this is a computer memory in that memory when you create this variable and assign this list of values to this variable some memory will be reserved okay for the list for this list some memory will be reserved and in that memory okay some slots will be created based on the number of list values we have here some slots will be created here okay 1 2 3 and 4 slots okay into the first slot the first value that is 9 will be stored and into the second slot the value 1 will be stored then 5 will be stored then the last value that is 7 will be stored into the last slot and to refer this list okay we have to use a variable so this is a reference okay this variable name is a reference to refer to this list okay we can refer to this list using this variable name now how to access only this value from this list i want to access only this 5 okay i don't want to print the entire list like this okay i don't want to print the entire list like this when i print a you see 9157 got getting printed but i want to print only 5 so to understand that i mentioned that you have to understand some concept known as indexing concept so as part of indexing right okay the first slot will be there at the index 0 
okay this is indexing guys okay this is index at the index 0 okay the first slot is given index 0 okay at the index 0 the first slot is available that where the value 9 is stored and uh, the second slot has the index 1 third slot has the index 2 fourth slot has the index 3 so here indexing is starting from 0 to 3 now if i have to retrieve this value 5 from this list and print in the output then i have to use the index 2 guys okay if i say this is a syntax guys okay instead of printing a here i have to provide the square brackets like this and inside the square brackets i have to provide the index if i have to get the value 5 5 is available at which index 2 so i have to give 2 here okay i have to give 2 here now run this code 5 will be printed in the output in, instead of the entire list getting printed now using the index we are able to get the value required value okay based on the index where the number is stored or value is stored we are able to get the value so this is called as indexing guys so if i say a of 0 what will be printed in the output if i say a of 0 in the list at the index 0 what is there 9 so here 9 will be printed using this statement 9 will be printed now if i say print of a of 1 here what will be printed here 1 will be printed because at the index 1 1 is there now if i say print of a of 2 here 5 will be printed if i say print of a of 3 here value 7 will be printed okay 9157 now run this code this is a way of accessing the elements of the list using their index okay accessing the elements of the list or values of the list using their index okay 9157 got printed as it is so hope guys you understood what is indexing now let's move on okay let's move on now let's find the size of the list guys okay here by looking at the list we can easily say that this is a of the size 4 right by looking at this list we can easily say that the size of the list is 4 but without visually counting the number of values or elements in the list if you want to find the size of the list you have to use a function known as len function okay an inbuilt function of the list okay an inbuilt function that can be used with the list that is len function inside the len function you have to provide the name of the list that is variable name of the list that is a this will return you the length of the list but the problem here is if i run this code you will not get the output here because you have to print this part okay you have to print the length of a here len is returning you some value that is the size of the list how many elements are in the list it is returning but we are not utilizing we are not printing that in the output okay to see the output you have to enclose this len of a inside the print statement like this and run this code you see how many elements are in this list what is the size of the list four four will be printed in the output okay this is how the len inbuilt function can work with the list in python now let's move on to the next topic okay so since we have understood how to find the size of the list using the len function now let's move on with the next topic that is for loop with range okay how to use for loop with range with list okay generally how to write the for loop here for i in range of here we have to provide some number right here we have to provide some number if i say for i in range of 11 means 0 to 10 will be printed in the output okay if i say print of i you already know about the for in uh, for for loop with range I have demonstrated in one of the previous session right so for i in range of 11 and if i say i right okay so initial value that will be assigned to this i will be 0 till 11 minus 1 that is 10 okay from 0 to 10 it will be assigned so iterations will be like 0 to 10 okay 0 to 10 if you run this code you see 0 to 10 will be printed in the output starting from 0 to 10 that means 11 times this for loop got iterated okay but here i don't want to give a specific number instead i'll write something like this len of len of a what does this len of a will return here in this case it will return four because there are four elements in the list len of a will return how much four for i in range of four means what for i in range of four means from zero to four minus one that is three okay zero to three this for loop will iterate for loop with range will iterate four times that is zero to zero one two three four times okay the first iteration the first iteration i will be zero in the second iteration i will be one the third iteration i will be two fourth iteration i will be three now now if i say print of i it will print from zero to three guys okay you see as you can see here if i say len of a it's printing zero to three zero to three are nothing but indexes guys you see zero index is for nine one index is for one two index is for five and three index is for five so instead of writing instead of printing i here i will say a of i 
what will happen guys if i if i convert this if i am uh, instead of printing only i if i say if i try to print a of i what will happen the first iteration i value will be zero okay so a of zero is what a of zero is nine nine will be printed in the output now in the second iteration i will become one a of one is how much one will be printed in the output now then in third iteration i will become two a of two is how much five will be printed in the output then in the last iteration that is fourth iteration i will become three final value three so a of three is seven seven will be printed this is how we can use for loop with range with list in python okay this is how we can use for loop with range so inside the range we have to use len of a okay this will give you the size of the list okay if i increase the size also there is no problem guys okay it's not hard coded right it's not hard coded len len of a is very dynamic okay if i add more values like 6 comma 0 let's say okay so it uh, here what is the size of this list 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay len of a is 6 for i in range of uh, 6 means 0 to 5 okay from 0 to 5 that means 915760 will be printed in the output you see 915760 complete values got printed okay so it's kind of dynamic now okay now let's move on with the next type of for loop okay till now i have not explained about this for loop okay? this is called as for each loop okay this is called as for each loop how to use for each loop with python this for each loop is different from for loop with range guys okay it's kind of different this for each loop can be used with only few things like list uh, and different uh, things okay i'll explain more about this for each loop later for now let's see using uh, for what and what uh, we can use the for each loop okay for now how to use the for each loop with list we'll see okay later i'll show you how to use for each loop with the different things in python okay so this is a different type of for loop guys i have not explained this for each loop so far now let me explain okay so in place of this for loop with range if i have to use for each loop okay this is what it is a new type of for loop known as for each loop guys okay it's not a for loop with range it's a for each loop how to use for each loop i have to write like this for okay for some number in okay you can give any variable name here you can give b here x here t here name here whatever you can give just give some variable name for some variable name in the list which operator you are using here with for each loop in operator okay you are using in operator with the for each loop for some number in the list print that number that's it okay print that number for some number in the list print some number okay if i say t here for t in a print a t this is also same okay for each and every element in this list print that element in simple words guys why we are calling that uh, as for each loop means for each and every element in the list print that element here you can even say like this okay if you want to resemble it properly for e in a print e for each and every element in the list print that e okay for each and every element in the list print e run this code you see all the elements will be printed all the elements in the list will be printed 915760 915760 got printed hope you are able to understand okay? hope you are able to understand how to use for each okay for each loop with uh, list in python okay this is how we can use for each loop this is different from for loop with range it's very simple loop guys nothing much okay so here we have to use in operator and this side we have the list name and uh, here we have the variable name uh, it can be element or it can be number or anything you can give whatever you feel convenient you just give that okay this is how we have to use for each loop with this in python okay so next next with uh, next is updating the elements in the list okay so let me change the list back to only four values for now just for demonstration purpose now if i print print this list guys okay if i print this list print of print of a if i say run this code if I say print of A and run this code, you see only 9157 are getting printed. Only these four elements of the list are getting printed. Now I want to update one of the element of the list uh, from 5 to some other value. Okay? I want to change 5. You see, originally when printed, 9157 got printed. Now I want to change this 5 to some other value. For that, I will say A of which index, guys? At which index is 5 values available? 0, 1, 2. So give 2 here, guys. A of 2 is equal to. Okay, A of 2 is equal to. Give the latest uh, value that you want to update. Let's say I want to update this five with six. Let's say okay, I updated. Now after updating the value that is available at a particular index with the syntax, if I print this list, okay, the updated list will be printed, guys. Okay, run this code. You see the original list is nine one five seven. Since we have updated a value at the index two here, a of two is equal to six. This is how we have to update the elements. Okay, this is how we have to update the 
element in the list. Okay, one of the element in the list. So here 9167. Okay, instead of 9157, we got 9167. Okay, we can update the elements in the list in Python. Now let's move on to the next one, guys. Appending the elements to the end of the list. Like this, there are several examples, guys. We are going one by one. Okay. So now instead of updating the elements in the list, I want to append the elements to the list. That means at the end of the list, I want to add a new value. Let's say I'll say a dot append of okay six. Okay, a of append of six. What happens here is after 9157, one more value will be added to the list at the end. That is 9157, six. Now, if I run this code before appending, 9157 will be printed. After appending a new element to the list, see 9157 at the end, we got one more element. You can append as many number of elements as you want, guys. Here I appended only one element at the end of the list. Okay, so this is called as appending. Now let's move on to the next one. Inserting the elements at the particular index using index. Okay, so instead of appending at the end of the list, what I want to do is I want to insert at some index position. I want to insert the element in between the list. Let's say uh, at the index two, zero, one, okay, two. At the index two, I want to insert a value. For that, I have to provide the index, guys. At the index two, I want to insert an element, say six. Okay, at that particular index only, this element will be inserted. You see here after 9, 1, 6 will come. At the index 2, 6 will be inserted after 5, 7 will be there. Okay, run this code. Before inserting, the original list is like 9, 1, 5, 7. After inserting, you see after 9, 1, at the index 2, 6 got inserted. At the index 2, the element 6 got inserted. After that, you got 5, 7. Okay. So we can also remove the elements from the list using the remove function. Okay. We can use remove inbuilt inbuilt function with the list to remove the elements from the list. A dot a dot remove of okay give the element guys that that you want to remove let's say i want to remove this element say five from the list okay in the original list nine one five seven are there but i want to remove this element say five okay i want to remove the five so i have to say a dot remove of five this five will be removed from the list and uh, after you print after removing if you print right the five will not be there you see original list is nine one five seven after removing the five element from the list only nine one seven is there now let's move on to the next one. Removing the last element from the list using pop. Okay. So instead of removing like this element by element, if I say dot pop, okay, a dot pop, what simply the pop will do is it will simply remove the okay. This pop inbuilt function will simply remove the last element in the list. What is the last element in this list? Seven, right? So seven will be removed. Okay, run this code. So original list nine one five seven is there, but uh, in the uh, after removing using the pop right after removing the last element of the list using pop right you see only first three elements are there 915 last element got removed by the pop okay you can use this pop any number of times if i say a dot pop again okay what will happen here first seven will be removed by this pop after that the next uh, last element five will be removed okay remaining elements will be nine one okay run this code you see only nine one will be there so this is how we have to use pop and there is another variation of the pop in python guys okay so there is another variation of the pop where you can provide the pop with index also okay so here what you can do is here you can say a dot pop off okay you have to give some index guys okay you don't want to remove the last element in the list rather you want to remove the element which is available at a particular index for that you can use pop off index let's say if i give two here what will be removed guys if i say a dot pop off two an element which is available at the index two that is five will be removed okay zero one two index two element will be removed by this pop Okay. instead of removing the last element if you provide the index it will remove the element that is available at that particular index here in this case this pop of index will remove the element 5 and this code the original list will get 9157 in the final list after popping up at the element at the index 2 you see you got 917 5 got removed now let's move on to the next one guys so you can also remove all the elements in the list at a go guys okay so what you can do is to remove all the elements in the list you want to empty the list you don't want to delete the list Okay, here you don't want to delete the list, but you want to clear out all the elements in the list. You want to remove all the elements in the list without deleting the list. For that, you have to say a dot clear off. Okay, a dot clear off. When you say a dot clear, it will remove all the elements in the list. Run this code. You see, original list has 9157, uh, 9157 but uh, after clearing all the elements in the list, list is still there, but no elements are there in the list. Okay, it's an empty list. And going back is uh, to the pop of index. I forgot one thing. If I say a dot pop of two, it is removing the element which is there at the index two. That is five is getting removed. That's fine. But at the same time, okay, this pop of index will return you the removed element. Okay, if I say 
print of a dot pop okay if i say print of a dot pop of two okay it will return the element which it has removed okay whatever the element that pop of two is removing that element will be returned and whatever the element that is returned we are printing that means five will be five five is getting removed right that five will be printed again run this code you see five got printed okay whatever the element that got removed by the pop with the help of the index that element is returned by the inbuilt function okay and that we are printing here fine next one reversing it okay reversing the list so what i will do here is uh, in the original list uh, we have the values like 9157 and we are printing it here okay now if i say a dot reverse okay i am reversing all the elements in the list so after reversing the all the elements in the list if i printing the list this seven which is at the last position will come to the first position and nine which is at the first position will go to the last position five will come here one will come here like that okay every element will be reversed run this code you see 9157 here reverse 9157 okay from left to uh, i mean from right to left it's coming from right to uh, from left to right this is from right to left this is okay you see reverse right 9157 9157 okay done that is called as reversing similarly we can sort the elements in the list here okay we can sort the elements in the list so that means here are this uh, values that are multiple values that are stored into this list are in uh, okay are in a particular sorting order no right here random order it is like a bigger number is there here smallest number in the second position again some other numbers are here okay if you want them to be in a sequential order where lowest number should be in the first and highest number should be on the next okay in that case you have to sort the list guys a dot sort simple okay here you are simply saying a dot sort this statement will sort all the elements in the list in ascending order if it is a text also it will will do guys if it's not numbers it will Sort them in uh, lower number to the higher number. Okay, here this will sort these numbers from lower number to higher number in the list. After sorting, if you print the same list, you see you will get lower number to higher number. Okay, in original list is nine one five seven, but after sorting, we got one five seven nine, lower number to the higher number. This is how we can sort. Sometimes what happens is uh, we may have something like this. B is equal. Okay, another list I am creating. Here I am giving some colors, guys. Okay, otherwise I will say color, color. So otherwise I will say colors. Okay, here I will say orange. Okay, orange, green, yellow, blue, white. Like there's some colors I'm giving guys. Okay, this is also a list guys. List of values, right? But uh, all these elements are in string format. That's okay. so i can also sort this kind of list guys okay i can say colors dot sort okay so i say colors dot sort and if i print colors okay if i print colors here before sorting and uh, print colors here after sorting let's see what will happen okay i'm print and uh, before sorting the colors i'm printing and after sorting the colors they will be sorted in ascending order guys okay so in alphabetically b comes first right in alphabets b comes first so blue will be printed blue will be there in the list first after sorting like that guys run this code you'll get the sorted list orange green yellow blue white was the original list order now ascending order blue green orange white yellow okay so like this also we can sort guys we can also sort the numbers in lower number to higher number or we can sort the text in alphabetical order okay alphabetical order now let's remove all this stuff go back remove the colors also if required i'll create the colors again now let me go back to the previous example okay only we have the four elements uh, four values uh, multiple values we are storing into the list like this okay this is the previous example we are using now using index next one guys okay after sorting another inbuilt function we are going to use is index okay how to use index with the list index so if i say a dot index of okay so a dot index of 5 uh, what is the index of 5 guys what is the index uh, of the 5 element that index will be returned guys if i say print of a Okay. If I say print of a, the index of the a will be printed. Okay. The index of this uh, element five will be printed. What is the index uh, where the five element is there? Zero, one, two. Two should be printed in the output. Run this code. You see, two got printed in the output. The index of this given element in the list got printed here. That is two. So that is a index inbuilt function. Now we can have nested lists in Python. Okay. Nested lists are uh, lists are possible in Python, guys. What does it mean? Is here, here. one of the uh, here what i will do is inside this uh, list i'll create one more list guys in place of this element i'll provide a 
another list a list inside another list guys this is a list inside another list one of the element of this list is again a list here i'll give another values like 60 68 like this okay here this is called as a nested list okay there is a list inside another list that is a nested list now if i say a of 1 what will be printed guys 0 a list inside another list will be printed in the output is the entire list 9 uh, 6068 printed because at the at this uh, index 1 this uh, nested list is available okay child list is available now i don't want the child list to be printed rather i want this uh, number 8 to be printed what i have to do so in that case guys after this one i have to give one more square bracket and uh, give the index of the inner list that is 0 1 2 3 right give 3 here a of 1 3 now what happens is first it will check a of 1 a of 1 is this list in that a of 1 3 means in that inner list index 3 0 1 2 3 8 will be printed in the output guys run this code you see 8 will be printed in the output so this how we have to work with the nested list in nested list in python okay nested list in python fine can store different type of values into the same list guys okay so till now right i am either storing the num uh, numbers integer values into the uh, as a list into this variable or i am storing some colors different colors of string text right i am storing into the uh, as a list of values into the variable now what i will do is i'll create a mix of values okay so i'll create something like swift or otherwise i'll say honda honda is the brand name of the car model of the car is ames okay uh, comma mileage of the car i'll give mileage of the car as 14.5 km per liter and i am saying that uh, the variant of the car is petrol variant okay petrol variant and uh, whether it is sedan or not yes true it is a sedan like that i am giving a mix of values here okay so what is the cost of this uh, car 9 lakhs 9 lakhs in indian rupees okay so like this okay i am just giving a mix of values you see this is string this is floating point uh this is again string this is boolean this is integer like that mix of values i am giving i am storing into a list as list of values you can do that guys there is no problem okay now now if i say a of 0 right honda will be printed okay or if i directly print a the entire list will be printed okay this is allowed in python guys you can store a list mix of values into a list okay not a problem okay different type of uh, data you can store into a as a multiple values into a single list okay that is possible print of a you see all the values of the list got printed here you can retrieve whatever you want okay a of 3 means 14.5 will be printed i uh, sorry petrol will be printed if i say a of 2 at index 2 we have 14.5 right so 14.5 will be printed here done so can store different type of values into the same list guys that's okay now let's go with the forward and uh, backward index concept i'll change this back to 9 comma 1 comma 5 comma 7 again and uh, i am going to explain about the forward index and backward index okay if i say a of uh, print of a of 2 it is a forward index or backward index if it is positive index it is a forward index okay so uh, 0 1 2 that is 5 will be printed in the output 5 will be printed in the output what if i say print of a of minus 2 minus 2 is not a forward index guys it is a backward index if it is in negative if the index value is in negative that is a backward index how to calculate then in terms of negative index or uh, backward index minus 2 plus size of the list what is the size of the list guys 4 less 4 what is the output 2 right minus 2 plus 4 is 2 so again you will get the same result guys uh, index to 5 will be printed in the output you see i got printed in the output so that's how uh, tomorrow if you have here uh, minus 1 then minus 1 less 4 that is 3 at the index 3 what is there if i give a of minus 1 so that means minus 1 plus 4 that is 3 at the index 3 what is there 0 1 2 3 7 will be printed in the output like that you have to cal calculate okay if you are using backward index calculate like this so now we are done with the forward and backward index guys now let's uh, let me show you the slicing of the list okay like slicing a mango we can slice the list okay like you are slicing a mango you can slice a list so here we have four values and uh, what i will do here is <clears throat> inside this print statement inside this print statement i'll write a of like this instead of providing index value here i'll put a colon here okay instead of providing a index value i'll put a colon here guys okay and so before this colon i'll give some value say 1 and after the colon i'll give a value say 2 or 3 let's say 3 okay one colon 3 what will happen in this case is 
it will start with the index one. What is the index one, guys? Zero, one. Okay, index one is one. It will start from one. And three here is not the index, guys. Here one is the index, but three is the element position. First position, second position, third position. In case of the next value is a position. But in case of the first value, it is the index, guys. Okay, first one is the index. Second one is the, like this, guys. Okay. Index colon position, element position. Okay. First one is a uh, first one is the index, guys. Okay, index. Index one means starting with one, but uh, second one is a position. Position three means one, two, three till five. Index one to position three. From here to here, that's one five will be printed in the output. We are slicing it like you see a slice of the entire mango. Okay, a piece of the mango is coming out. Okay, when you slice a mango, what you will get? You will get a portion of the mango, right? Uh, like this, you can get one comma five. You are getting because you are slicing this portion by using this slicing part. What if I say I'll not give this case? Okay, I'll I'll say uh colon three that's it i'm not giving any uh index value here if you don't give any index value here by de by default it will be zero guys okay if you don't give any index value here by default it will be zero it will start from the beginning zero from here to which position third position index zero to third position third position is one two three till five nine one five will be printed in the output okay nine one five will be printed in the output what if i give the index as one okay so if i Give some index, it is not zero anymore, it's one. And uh, here I'll remove this portion. What will happen? If I remove this part, what will happen? So it will go to the end of the list, okay? End of last position of the list, okay? If you don't provide anything, that is nothing but the last position, okay? So starting from index one to the last position, that means index one is zero, one. Starting from here to the last position is seven. One five seven will be printed in the output. You see, one five seven got printed in the output. Now let's move on, guys, okay? So what if I remove both the sides, okay? I don't provide uh, anything before and after. By default, index is zero, and uh, this position is last index. That means entire list will be printed. So this is how we can slice the list in Python, guys. Okay, this is how we can slice the list in Python. Now, there are a few more things that we can do with the list, guys. Uh, we are almost at the end of the list session. Okay, so now let's uh, find out the number of times the element is repeated in the list. Okay, for example, here I'll give six comma comma six comma eight and then nine comma nine comma okay nine comma nine okay like this some values i give now i want to find how many times the nine is repeated in this list okay i just want to find that for that what we have to do is in the inside the print statement inside the print statement i have to say okay uh, a dot count of the element that got repeated okay uh, the element that you want to count, the number of times the element got repeated in the list, that thing that you have to count, right? That element uh, value you have to give here. How many times the nine got repeated in the list? That will be printed now, okay? Run this code, you see five times the nine got printed. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five times, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Five times the nine got repeated in the list. Now finding the maximum and minimum elements in the list using max and min in build function. So here, what I have to do is, I have to say print of max of okay max of a what is the maximum value in this uh, uh, list nine right the largest value here in the list is nine so run this code you'll get nine printed and if i say print of another inbuilt function min of a what is the lowest value that is there in this list here we have one but here we have zero also zero is the lowest so zero should be printed in the output you see nine zero these are the max and min inbuilt functions can be used with the list like this, guys. Now finding the sum of the elements in the list using sum. Okay. We can also find the sum of the elements in the list. Print of sum. Okay. I'll reduce the number of elements, guys. Otherwise, you cannot calculate the sum. Print of sum of a. Okay. Like this. Sum of elements in the list like this. Okay. Sum of a means all the elements in the list will be added up. So 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 plus uh, 5 is 15. 15 plus 7 is 22. 22 should be printed in the output. Okay. Sum working time. now similarly we have another inbuilt function known as type so you want to find uh, what is the data type of this variable okay if you want to you already know about this uh, type inbuilt function that we have used in the beginning also okay in order to find the type of the data that is stored into this variable you have to use the type inbuilt function so i'll say print of type of a what will be printed guys if you are providing a list of uh, a multiple values in inside the square brackets and assigning that to a variable that means this is a List okay. The syntax of the list is square brackets, guys. Okay. If you put multiple values inside the square brackets, that becomes a list. Okay. So type of A is a list. Run this code. 
list got printed in the output data type of this uh, variable a is list okay now we can also delete the list guys okay here i am printing the list first before deleting the list i am printing after printing the list i am deleting the list okay you have to use the del keyword to delete the list after deleting the list if i print the list again you will get error okay here you will get type error on this code you see first the list got printed after that after you deleted the list you got the sorry name error got okay there is no variable right name error got displayed name a is not defined okay uh, now using in i not in operator with the list okay now let's go with the next type using in i not in operator with the list okay if i say print of okay print of uh, 5 in a is the value is the element 5 is available in the list just check here 9157 right yes 5 is there in the list so true will be printed in the output boolean value true will be printed in the output and this code okay, true will be printed in the output but if i say print 15 in a do we have anywhere 15 in this uh, list 15 is not there anywhere so here false boolean value will be printed run this code false boolean value will be printed okay and done now we can also concatenate two lists using plus operator guys okay so let's create two lists a list b list okay b list is 6 comma 0 comma uh, 6 0 6 8 okay that uh, i'm just randomly creating one list the first list second list now if i say c is equal to a plus b I can use a plus concatenation operator not only to concatenate the strings but also I can concatenate two, two lists. Here A is a list, B is a list. Both together we are concatenating into another list. So here another list is getting created. Another list C is getting created. If I print this C, you will see the concatenation. This first list will be concatenated with the second list and together it will become a uh, single list. Okay. So this uh, C list will contain eight elements okay first four elements and second four elements so eight elements it will have run this code you see how many elements are there eight elements the first list is what concatenated with the second list to form a third list okay so we created a new list out of this two lists and similarly guys similarly in, instead of uh, concatenating the two lists and creating a new list what we can do is we can extend the existing list only okay here i want to extend the first list only with the second list how can we do is a dot extend of b i'll say okay a dot extend of b what will happen here is the first list itself existing list itself will get extended with this second list so after a dot extend of b right if i print print of a right so the a will not be 9157 anymore it will be eight elements okay a will a, a got extended with b means a became eight elements guys okay a became bigger b will be still still same guys okay b will be still still same but a got extended with the list b okay run this code you see in the first a got extended with b also that means it became bigger 9157606 this is a guys and b is still same okay so this is how we can use extend so hope guys uh, you understood how to use a list which is one of the collection data types in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 35 of python tutorial in this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate about tuple. So let's get started. First of all, what is tuple? Tuple in Python is one of the collections data type. In the previous session, I explained the other collections data type that is list. In order to understand tuple, we need to compare list with tuple. Okay. In the previous session, I explained the other collection data type that is list. And in this session, I'm going to explain about tuple. Now, we need to understand the difference between the list collection data type and tuple collections data type, okay? What is the difference between this list and tuple? We have to understand, okay? In order to understand the tuple collections data type better, we need to compare that with the list. In simple terms, okay? In simple terms, list is mutable. Okay. In simple terms, list is mutable, whereas tuple is immutable. Immutable means you cannot update or modify. Okay. Immutable means we cannot cannot be updated slash modified. Whereas list elements can be okay, can be updated slash modified. What does it mean? What does it mean as updated or modified? Okay, the list, okay, the multiple values, 
the multiple values that are stored into a list variable can be updated or modified. For example, if I open this PyCharm ID, here we have the sample Python file. And here, let me create a list, guys. How to create a list? I'll say A is equal to. In order to create a list in Python, we have to use square brackets. Okay. Inside the square brackets, I'll provide a list of elements. Okay. A group of elements. Multiple values I'll store into a variable known as list now. Okay. Because of the square brackets, it is a list. Now, if I print A, here if I print A and run this code, you see the list will be printed as, as it is, right? Now, as I'm say, saying here, list is mutable. Okay. That means changeable or modifiable or updatable. Okay. I'm simply saying list is mutable. That means if I say A of, okay, A of 2 is equal to 6. That means a value which is there at the index 2, 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. At the index 2, 5 values there that I am updating the value 5 with 6, guys. Okay. After updating the value, if I print this list, you will see that the list will get modified. Okay. A new value came in place of 5. That means list is mutable, whereas tuple is immutable. You cannot modify that or update that. So, here, in order to change this particular variable into, okay, in order to change this particular variable into tuple, just replace this square bracket with the circular brackets. Okay. Just replace the square brackets with the circular brackets like this. Now this is a tuple guys. This is called a tuple. Now if I print the tuple, uh, I'm printing the tuple here. I'm trying to update the value here. Okay. The same logic is same here, right? Just I converted the list to tuple and I'm doing the same thing. I'm printing the tuple here. I'm updating one of the value of the tuple and I'm trying to print after updating. Is it possible to update the value of the tuple? Already you are getting some kind of warning here. Run this code. You see, here we have printed the tuple before modifying or updating it. Okay, tuple got printed. Now, after that, in the sixth line, I'm trying to update one of the value of this tuple. Okay, and this is not possible, guys. Tuple object does not support item assignment. That means you cannot update it, you cannot modify. That's why I'm saying tuple is immutable. Other than this, guys, other than this concept, everything is same. Okay, only one thing. There is a difference, okay? The difference between the list and tuple is list is mutable, tuple is immutable. You cannot modify or update, okay? All the operations that generally to be performed on the list for updating cannot be performed on the tuple because tuple is immutable. Apart from that, everything is same, guys. Anyhow, uh, I will demonstrate all the things, okay? Assuming that you have gone through the previous session where I explained about list, okay? Now in this session, I'm going to repeat the tuple. Okay, I'm going to explain about the tuple, even though it looks like repeating, but only the difference between the list and tuple is tuple is immutable, non-changeable, whereas list is mutable. Okay, so you'll easily understand this uh, concept so if you have already gone through the list in the previous session. Okay, fine. So, so which symbols we have to use for list? We have to use square brackets. For uh, tuple, we have to use Circular brackets. Okay, that's the difference, guys. Okay, list is mutable, tuple is immutable. List we have to use square brackets, tuple we have to use circular brackets. That is the difference, nothing much. Okay, printing. I already shown you how to print the tuple here. Okay, here I am printing the tuple. Okay, I created a tuple using the circular brackets and I am printing it. Okay, the tuple will be printed as it is. You see, this is tuple, not list. Fine. Now, uh, just to find uh, like uh, what type this variable is. Okay, you can provide here print of type of a okay if i say print of type of a the data type that is collection data type of this variable that is tuple will be printed in the output you see tuple it's a tuple data type now accessing the values in the tuple using the same index case in the list also we have index now in the tuple also we have the index okay so what happens in the memory is as i already explained with the list guys we have the computer memory and when you create a tuple here when you create a tuple here some memory will be reserved for the tuple. Okay, when you create a tuple, and uh, some memory will be reserved for the tuple like this. And here, how many values are there? Four values. Okay, so this memory slot that is reserved for the tuple will be divided into multiple slots, like four slots, because there are four values in the tuple. Okay, so in the first slot, nine will be stored. Okay, in the first slot, nine will be stored. In the second slot, one will be stored. In the third slot, five will be stored. And in the last slot, the one will be stored. Okay, 
and uh, we are referring to this particular memory location of the tuple with the help of the variable a okay a is used for referring to this tuple okay now there is a concept known as indexing list or tuple guys in the, both the cases we have a concept known as indexing okay in both list and tuple we have the concept known as indexing and the first slot will start at the index 0 the second slot will have the index 1 third slot will have the index 2 the fourth slot will have the index 3 okay 0 1 2 3 indexing starts with 0 slot 1 will have the index 0 where 9 is stored that is index 0 guys okay fine next next thing is next thing is i already explained tuples are immutable right i already explained that's the main difference between the list and tuple guys other than that everything is same okay list is uh, mutable tuples are immutable in case of list we use square brackets in place of uh, in case of tuples we use circular brackets apart from that both are same guys so as now accessing the values in the tuples guys okay so since there is an indexing concept here since there is an indexing concept here if i say print of a of okay a of 0 like this if i give 9 will be printed guys at the slot 0 9 is there on this code 9 will be printed what if i say print of a of 1 1 will be printed okay 1 will be printed now run the, uh, now if i write print of a of 2 5 will be printed okay 5 will be okay let's run this code yeah 5 got printed okay now print of a of 3 7 will be printed using the index we are accessing the values of this tuple okay fine same concept okay the way we have used this uh, indexing concept with the list we have to use with the tuple guys there is no difference in the case of this and there is a forward indexing concept and backward indexing concept guys as explained with the list again the same thing repeats so for example here if i give a of 2 a of 2 what will be printed guys if i give a of 2 here what will be printed a of 2 means 0 1 2 5 will be printed in the output okay here the index value is positive value that means it is a forward index okay this is called as if you are using a positive index positive value in the index that is for uh, that is called as forward index if i use print of a of minus 3 okay a of minus 3 what does it mean this is negative value in the place of index this is backward index okay we have to call that as backward index then which value will come if i say a of minus 3 which value will come so you have to calculate like this guys minus 3 plus minus 3 plus how many elements are there in this setup 4 4 minus 3 plus 4 is how much is equal to 1 that means it is a of 1 it's a of 1 guys a of 1 means 0 1 1 will be printed in the output you see 1 got printed in the output okay this is backward index now let's move on guys okay again tuples are immutable we cannot update the values like list okay as i already demonstrated if i try to update any value of the tuple that's not possible if i say a of 2 is equal to 6 this is not possible guys okay already warning is coming here and if i print of a nothing will happen guys type you will get type error here okay you see you got type error tuple object does not support item assignment okay which this updation is not possible guys because tuples are immutable whereas list is mutable okay this is not possible and also there are some uh, inbuilt functions right we were uh, in the previous session i explained a lot of inbuilt functions all the inbuilt functions which do some modifications or updations to the existing tuple right that are not allowed you cannot update append because that that adds some element to the list that means you are updating the tuple right that is not possible okay in case of a list it was possible but if i say a dot append is not coming you see a dot append is not coming because this this inbuilt function is not supported with tuple okay if you try to still if you try to add some value and try to do it you see again you will get the same kind of error tuple object has no attribute append append is not possible okay this kind of uh, inbuilt functions which modify the tuple won't work okay inserting appending removing popping okay sorting reversing these are some fun inbuilt functions guys which are not possible with tuple you can use this uh, inbuilt functions with the list but uh, you cannot use this inbuilt functions with tuple because they are like modification or updation kind of functions which are not supported by tuple because tuple is immutable okay now accessing the tuple elements i just now shown now finding the length of the tuple guys the same way okay the way we have on the length of remaining all things are same as list guys there is no difference between the list and tuple except tuple is immutable okay whereas list is mutable now here if i say print of len of a okay print of len of a if i run this code uh, size 4 will be printed okay the size of the tuple will be printed 
now similarly we can use for loop with tuple remaining all are same guys similar to list we can do all the things but only the thing is tuples are immutable for i in range of len of a okay if i say print of i for i in range of len of a if i say print of a of i i'll get all the values in the tuple printed okay 9157 similarly i can use for each loop with the tuple for for uh, some element in a or some number in a whatever you can call print of e this is for each loop with tuple run this code you see the same output you are getting next uh, any other things there yeah this is done guys using for loop or for each loop with tuple is done we can also slice the tuple as we can slice the list so same thing again print of a of the square brackets provide colon first on this side provide one and on this side provide three what does it mean here index colon index colon position okay it means index colon position this side we have index this side we have position what does it mean one means index case zero one okay it starts with here okay first index is here position is three three means first position second position third position starting from index one to position three is one five one five should be printed in the output okay one five got printed in the output what if i remove this part by default index will be zero guys by default index will be zero position is three up to three elements starting with index zero that means zero one two nine one five will be printed in the output what if i give one here but i will remove this part so by default position is last position okay last position that means starting from index one to last position index one is starting here one five seven one five seven should be printed in the output it's like slicing a mango right as explained in the previous session with the list uh, while i'm explaining about slicing concept it's like slicing a mango you are taking a piece out of the mango okay like slicing for that you have to use that's why they are calling it as slicing guys okay fine now if i remove these two things okay by default it is uh, index is zero if you don't provide index will become zero if you don't provide this one it will become the last position okay that means starting with the zero to the last position complete tuple will be printed 9157 will be printed this is all about the slicing of the tuple case now let's move on with the using the in and not in operators with tuple okay how to use in and not in operators with tuple so very simple guys print off if i say phi in a okay whether the value phi is available in the tuple a or not yes it is there so it should print what if it is there it should print what which operator i am using in operator since it is in phi is in available in the tuple it should print true in the output guys okay it should print true in the output what if i say not in opposite phi not in it will become false case okay this will print false because phi is available in the tuple and here you are saying phi not in a that means false should be printed what if i say 15 in a is 15 available in this a tuple no 15 is not there anywhere and none of these elements are 15 so it will become false it will print false case since it is not there and what if i say 15 not in a yes 15 is not in tuple so it will print true boolean value true will be printed in the output like this done so this is how we can use in and not in operators with tuple guys and everything is same guys other inbuilt functions which are supported by the list okay all the other type of uh, normal inbuilt functions which doesn't mod modify okay you see count sum min max doesn't modify the existing values right index find they are, they, we are just uh, finding something out of that but uh, we are anywhere we are not uh, uh, modifying any elements or updating uh, updating the elements in the tuple okay so that's why these are supported guys okay the inbuilt functions which are supported by the list are also supported by tuple only when the inbuilt function doesn't modify the existing tuple okay so here all these uh, functions can be used inbuilt functions can be used because they don't affect any they don't modify the tuple so hence they are supported let me show you what you have to do uh, here i'll say um, i'll say a dot count of nine okay here only one nine is there right how many how many values of nine are there if i give more nine here nine comma nine comma five comma nine comma nine like this if i give more nines here what will happen is what will be the output guys okay how many times nine is there in this uh, tuple that will be printed here one two three four five five times okay run this code five should be printed in the output count is done now let's go with the sum guys okay now let's go with the sum so how do you sum sum of a that's it nothing much sum of a i'll remove this uh, extra values i gave 
So sum of this 9, 1, 5, 7, what is sum of the values in the double guys? 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, 15 plus 7 is 22. 22 should be printed in the output. Similarly, have max, max of A. What is the maximum value in this A? Couple, 9. 9 should be printed in the output. Okay. And similarly, if I can give min, the minimum value is 1. Out of all the values that are there in the tuple, 1 is the minimum value. So 1 will be printed in the output. Okay. Uh, then index case. Okay. If I say a dot index of, okay, give some element guys. Let's say I'll give 5. What is the index value of this uh, element 5 in this tuple? 0, 1, 2. 2 should be printed in the output. Done. Then delete. We can delete a tuple also guys. Okay. So before deleting the tuple, I'm printing guys. After that, I'm deleting the tuple using the del keyword. Again, if I print a, okay. So if, you, if I run this code, you see first uh, 9157 are getting printed. And after that, even I'm trying to delete this a, okay, you see name a is not defined is get coming. Okay, that means it got deleted. Tuple got deleted. Okay, now type. We can delete guys, but we cannot remove any of these elements guys. Okay, we can delete the entire tuple. Okay, we can delete the entire tuple, but we cannot remove. This is not possible. A dot remove is not possible. A dot pop is not possible. Okay, uh, all this kind of stuff are not possible, guys. Okay, A dot clear is not possible. You cannot clear the elements in the tuple. Okay, but you can delete the entire tuple. That is possible. Okay, only deleting is possible. Fine. I already shown you this uh, type inbuilt function, right? Uh, to find what type of uh, okay data type it is. So if you uh, store group of values into a single variable by surrounding them with circular brackets that is of which type that is of tuple type okay if i say type of a tuple will be printed in the output as i already shown okay now nested tuples and uh, list inside a tuple okay we can inside this tuple guys i can here in place of one element i can create a tuple inside another tuple we can first of all we can create a tuple inside another tuple like this okay you see circular bracket means again another one okay six comma zero comma six comma eight so I can create a tuple in a nested tuple inside a tuple guys. Okay. So this is possible guys. Uh, now if I say print of a nested tuple will be printed. Okay. The entire nested tuple will be so parent and uh, child tuples together will be printed like this. Okay. The same format. What if I want to get this value h? What I have to do? For that, I have to provide two square brackets. First I'll say zero. This is index one. So I'll give one index one here. And 0, 1, 2, 3. Here, give 3 here, guys. Okay. Now run this code. Yeah, it will be printed in the output. Yeah, it got printed in the output. Next, what next? It got printed in the output. Now, can I update this value, guys? Okay. Can I update this uh, value in the tuple? Is it possible to update any value in the tuple? Tuples are immutable, right? You cannot change anything. Okay. If I say A13, I want to change the value of 8 to 9. Okay. And now if I say print of A, You'll get type error, guys. Okay? Some kind of error. Okay. Type error you will get. Uh, you cannot you cannot update, guys. Okay. And tuples are immutable. But what if I change this to list? I'm nesting a list inside a tuple. Here the concept is different. I'm nesting a list inside a tuple. Now is it possible to update? Yes, it is possible, guys. Okay. List is mutable, whereas tuple is immutable. So only in this list you can update, guys. Okay. Only if you are updating any value in this list, which is one of the value of the tuple, that is possible. Okay. Now it's possible guys here uh, 8 will be replaced with 9. So before updating I'll say print of a and after updating I'll say print of a okay run this code it is possible okay here 8 got replaced with 9 because the nested or child uh, child uh, collection is a list type that's why it's a possible to update but if it is a tuple inside tuple that's not possible to update only the list inside the tuple is mutable not any other thing okay and also guys we can type cache a string to Tuple guys, okay. We can convert a string into a tuple. How? How we can convert a string into a tuple? For example, here I'll say a is equal to tuple of. Here I'll give my name, okay. So here this is string text, right? I'm converting the string text into a tuple, guys. Okay, I'm converting the string text into tuple. Now, if I say uh, print of a of a of zero, what will be printed, guys? This a should be printed, okay. The first value in the tuple that is a should be printed like that okay so and also if i say print of type of a okay this is also a tuple okay i'm converting the string into a tuple okay type casting here another way of type casting where we are converting a string into a tuple okay run this code you see it got tuple it's not string guys string got converted into tuple okay so again i can say for uh, element in a 
print of e if i say all the all the elements uh, all the elements in this tuple that is a r u n four elements are there four elements will be printed one by one you see a r u n got printed okay this is a tuple guys now this string text got converted into a tuple this is possible in python so hope guys you understood uh, what exactly is tuple and how the tuple is different from the list in python collections okay list is mutable tuple is immutable immutable right tuple is non modifiable that is immutable okay only the functions uh, which are uh, okay which which update the things are only supported by list whereas the same functions which update the things are not supported by tuple because tuple is immutable other than that both list and tuple are same almost same okay and for uh, creating a list you have to use square brackets for creating the tuple you have to use circular brackets these are few differences other than that both are same so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 36 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about set so let's get started in python set is one of the collections data types in the previous sessions i have already covered two collections data types that is list and tuple now i am going to cover the third collections data type that is set before i start demonstrating this set collections data type for you let me compare this set with the previously covered list and tuple collections data types why because if i compare this set with the previously explained list and tuple collections data types right you can understand the set in a better way okay you can understand the set in a better way if you compare this set with the list and tuple which i have already covered in the previous sessions okay now let's start comparing here we am here i am providing list here i am providing tuple and here the current session is all about set right that set i am providing here so we have the three items one is list other one is tuple the third one is a set let's start comparing guys so if i compare this uh, set with a uh, list and tuple right you will understand the set in a better way okay that's why i'm comparing so coming to the list guys syntax wise okay if you have to create a list in python you have to use square brackets okay if you have to create a tuple in python you have to use circular brackets but if you have to create a set in python you have to use curly braces okay just this is the first uh, syntax difference guys okay between the list tuple and set okay list has square brackets tuple has circular brackets set has curly braces okay now the next item guys next item uh, that you already know from the previous sessions uh, when I compared the list with the tuple, right? Tuple is immutable, right? You cannot modify or update the existing elements of the tuple. Once you create a tuple, that is group of elements as a tuple, you cannot modify any of the elements, guys, okay? You cannot uh, remove the elements, you cannot modify the elements, you cannot reverse the elements, you cannot sort the elements, you cannot update the elements that are already there in the tuple, okay? or you cannot use any of the inbuilt functions which can modify the behavior of the tuple okay simple term but coming to the list list is mutable guys okay that's the main difference right as explained in the previous sessions okay the difference between the list and tuple is list is mutable okay you can update reverse sort all the elements of the list but whereas tuple immutable you cannot modify okay if you want a modifiable behavior you have to go with the list if you want a non modifiable okay if you don't want anyone to modify the elements of something then go with the immutable guys okay that is tuple then go with the tuple okay so but remaining all are same guys okay in list and tuple remaining all are same guys remaining all are same okay but what about set is it mutable or immutable set is also mutable okay only tuple is immutable guys list and set are mutable you can update okay you can update modify the elements of the list and set but not tuple okay tuple is immutable but whereas list and set are mutable now what is the next one next one is all about indexing guys okay as you already know when you uh, okay when you store multiple values as a list into a variable okay if you, when you store multiple values as a list into the variable each and every element of this particular list has a index okay the first element will have the index 0 the second element is stored at the index 1 the third element at the index 2 and so on that I have already explained as part of the list and tuple, right? Tuple also has indexing, as I already explained, okay? 
both the list and tuple have index in concept okay all the elements of this uh, list or tuple will have a particular index you can even access the elements of the uh, list and tuple with the help of index like a, a variable name of zero or five or something you can give index value you can give okay that i have already explained in the previous session but coming to set no index okay that's the first major difference guys apart from the syntax difference set there is no index okay there is no indexing concept in the set guys because of there is no indexing something is not possible in set okay what is that duplicates are ignored duplicates are not are ignored guys okay in simple terms duplicates are ignored in the set what does it mean if you try to add some duplicate okay if you try to add some duplicate elements to this set it will not give you any error but it will only consider one element or value okay even though you get even though you give multiple duplicate elements try to add multiple duplicate elements to the set but only one value will be considered remaining all duplicates will be ignored okay you will not get any errors but coming to the list and tuple since we have this indexing concept the duplicate elements or values are allowed here okay duplicates accepted why why duplicates are accepted in list and tuple because of the indexing concept guys list and tuple have indexing concept because of the duplicates are accepted let's say at the index 0 9 is there and at the index 3 again 9 is there at the index 5 again 9 is there you see even though there are duplicate elements in the list but each and every duplicate element has a unique index that's how the list is able to differentiate the different duplicate elements okay that are part of the list okay because they have a different index values similarly tuple is also indexing okay tuple also has indexing so duplicates here also accepted here also duplicates are accepted but coming to the set since there is no indexing duplicates are ignored guys if you try to give to some duplicate elements you will not get any error but they will not be considered only one value will be considered set finally will have the unique values okay there will not be any duplicate values in the set the final comparison guys between the list set i mean list tuple and set is okay this list uh, list tuple and set is here okay so here order okay it's all about the order guys okay here since because there is some indexing concept here again since here indexing concept is there values or elements are stored in an order whatever the order you have created the list in the memory also the elements are stored in the same given order order is same here also since there is indexing concept the element that is stored at uh, that is uh, there in the first position will be stored at the index 0 so elements are because of this indexing elements are stored in the same given order in case of tuple also elements are stored in the same given order but coming to the set guys okay but coming to the set here elements are stored in random order no order is followed because there is no indexing concept okay can you see how different it will happen if you have indexing duplicates are accepted elements are stored in the same order okay if you have indexing duplicates are accepted and elements are stored in a same given order but if you don't have indexing duplicates are ignored and at same time the elements will be stored in random order because there is no indexing right zero one two that kind of indexing is not there so elements will be stored in the random order hope guys you understood uh, the difference between the list tuple and set and how set is different from list and tuple first difference here is syntax difference compared to list and tuple set has curly braces and uh, second difference is this indexing guys okay indexing okay there is no index because of there is no index duplicates are ignored and random order okay simple terms now let me practically demonstrate uh, several things about set in detail manner now okay so let me go back to the notes and uh, let me start uh, creating a set first of all let me create a set in uh, python for that i'll go to this pycharm id here we have the sample python file i'll create the same variable a and here what is the syntax of the set guys I have to provide curly braces okay here i'll give the group of elements let's say 9157 collection of elements okay fine we created the set guys uh, now uh, we can print the set guys okay we can print the set okay so set will be printed you see the order is 9157 okay this is order right but will the set follow any order 
while storing the element the given values will not be stored in the same order guys it will be random order in the memory the computer memory they will be stored in the different order you see though you gave 9157 when you print it out run this code you see random order 9517 okay here 9157 but in the memory this uh, this uh, set of uh, values are getting stored in a different order in the memory guys because there is no indexing concept here 951 9517 9517 okay here 9157 here 9517 different order that's why i said random order okay set follows random order okay stores the elements in the memory in a random order they will not be the same as given order okay they will be stored in the memory in a different order fine next next item next item is uh, an order i showed you right just now when i printed the set uh, they got uh, stored in the memory in different order as you can see here the different order came up now unindexed there is no indexing concept guys okay you cannot use indexing like this a of 2 if i give and run this code you see you cannot give index guys inside this is not possible if it is a list or uh, tuple this will work out okay you see you will get a value because in list and tuple we have indexing concept but uh, if i provide cur uh, curly braces here this indexing will not work so indexing concept is not there in the set and unduplicated so what if i add another nine at the end of this uh, set 91579 here how many nines are there two nines but in the memory only one nine will be stored if i print a here you will see that in the memory in the computer memory only one nine will be stored 9517 even though you gave multiple nines only one nine is being stored in the memory because there's no indexing concept no duplicates are allowed that means uh, you'll not get any error guys even though you try to add duplicate uh, uh, elements in this uh, set but in will not get any errors or something but uh, set will simply ignore them okay only one it will consider fine now now printing set i sh already showed you finding the type of the set guys okay let me give only these values and if i say print of a the set will be printed first of all set will be printed and if i say print of i want to find the data type of this variable a if i am providing this curly braces that means it is a set right how to find out i have to say type of a if i say type of a in the output i'll get what is the type of the a that is set okay type set guys this set is set type finding the length of set okay finding the length of the set if i say print of len of a okay finding the size of the set so the same len function that i have used with the list double right i can also use with the set also to find its size you see four got printed because there are four elements so four got printed the size of the set got printed adding values to the set okay i said uh, set is uh, mutable right set is mutable so you can easily add the elements to the set and there is some function known as add func add inbuilt function okay that you can use with the sets to add any number of i mean for now you can add only one element here if you want to add more elements again you have to say a dot add multiple times okay so here if i say eight okay again if i say a dot add of uh, let's say 12 okay two elements i am adding before adding i'm printing here the original set i am printing after adding also after adding two elements to the set by using this add inbuilt function i'm trying to print the set let's see what's the difference so before adding nine nine five one seven is came and after adding one five seven eight nine twelve okay eight has come here you see random order completely apart from nine one five seven we got eight and twelve here okay because i added this or instead of adding this in separate lines guys okay if i have to uh, add multiple elements to this particular set in a single line instead of for example if i add I have to add these two elements right i have to create two add statements instead of that what you can do is just replace this add with update and provide the square brackets here inside this provide these two elements 8 comma 12 okay you don't have to write multiple statements now in a single statement that is using the update inbuilt function we can add multiple elements to the set at a go you don't have to uh, use add inbuilt function multiple times if you have multiple elements to be added to the set okay it will work in the same way guys you'll get the same output you see 8 and 12 got added here done so that's about uh, update guys okay add is done update uh, inbuilt function is also done now removing the values from the set you can all apart from adding uh, the elements to the set new elements to the set you can also remove the elements from the set uh, for that what i will do is a dot remove of i will say five okay a dot remove of five it will remove the five from the set that's it okay original value is nine five one seven but nine one seven is there five is gone okay you can remove the a particular element from the set using the remove inbuilt function 
now removing the values from the set without knowing whether it is available in the set or not what does it mean is okay so here i am removing 5 since 5 is there there's no problem it's deleting but what if i say remove of 15 is 15 there in the set but i am trying to delete if there is not if the 15 is not in the set but i am trying to delete what will happen guys you will get an error okay you are getting an error because you are trying to delete an element which is not there in the set okay you have to clearly give the element that you have to delete if you are giving some element which is not there in the set and trying to remove that then you will get this problem okay some error will come this is not possible it will say okay that kind of error is coming but what if i want this to be uh, more intelligent where okay if i give a element that is there in the set it has to remove and if i don't give an element that is there in the set in that case it has to ignore okay if if the element is there in the set it has to delete but if the element is not there it should ignore instead of giving this error it should ignore guys so for that we have to use instead of uh, remove we have to use discard guys okay so discard discard is a bit intelligent than remove because if the given element is there in the set it will remove if i give 5 here it will remove guys okay you say remove 5 but if i give 15 here since 15 is not there in the set it will ignore guys but it will not give any error okay only if the element is there it will delete otherwise it will ignore okay you see you are not getting an error okay you have to choose wisely when you have to use remove and discard that's the difference between remove and discard in python sets okay now randomly removing the value from the set okay so here uh, we don't have any indexing concept right we don't have any indexing concept and the elements uh, that you have provided in this order will not be stored in the memory as it is right set stores the elements in the memory in a different random order so the pop function pop inbuilt function that we have used with uh, uh, list and double may not work the same way here okay may not work in the same way here because here the elements are stored in a random order so pop also removes the element in a random order guys okay now run this code you see nine got removed okay nine got removed guys okay randomly it will remove again if i say after uh, doing this if i say a dot pop it will randomly remove some element from the list uh, from the set guys but uh, which element is going to be deleted we don't know okay here pop inbuilt function will remove the element from the set in a random order okay we don't know which which uh, will go here five gone okay here five gone okay so like that guys removing uh, removing the values from the set in a random way removing all the values that go from the set okay at a time i want to remove everything okay at a time i want to uh, remove all the elements uh, from this set okay for that again i have to use dot clear clear is not possible uh, clear is not possible right uh, and and one more thing guys pop pop you cannot use with the tuple because why why pop cannot be used with tuple if you remember guys top cannot be used with uh, either remove or pop cannot be used with tuple because tuple is immutable okay more non modifiable so you cannot use only list you can use but in case of set pop can only randomly remove the elements okay in case of list pop will remove the last uh, element of the list okay the last element of the list will be removed using pop but uh, in case of set since the set stores the elements in the uh, memory in a random order pop will remove randomly okay so that's what is the difference between the list and tuple in uh, list and set in case of pop now let's go with the clear guys clear clear you cannot use with the uh, tuple because uh, tuple is immutable clear can be used with either uh, list or set okay in case of set also it will work in the same manner it will clear all the elements at a go that the set will not be deleted but all the elements in the set will be removed at a go okay run this code you see the set will become empty here complete set was there it was empty now okay set became empty now deleting the set guys okay entire set you have to delete so this is same for all the things now okay dl uh, uh, keyword is same for deleting either a list or either a tuple or a set it will work in the same manner run this code uh, you see after deleting i am trying to print which is not exist okay after it got deleted guys okay first it got printed after that once it got deleted if you try to print that uh, set uh, you'll get an error like this okay name error will be displayed now using for loop with set okay so can i use for loop with range with set it's not possible okay because why for i in range of is there any indexing concept in the set no right so i cannot use this for loop uh, with range here but i can use for each loop okay i cannot use for loop with range with set because set doesn't have indexing concept it's not possible guys but i can use for each loop okay for element in set print of that element for each and every element in the set for each and every element in the set print that element 
So if there are four elements, this for loop for each loop will be iterated four times, and every time it will print a different element. Nine one five seven, nine five one seven. Okay, done. For each loop is possible, but for loop with range is not possible because there is no indexing concept. If there is index concept, we can go with the for loop with range sets. Okay. Now using in and not in operator with the set, the same way uh, as the in and op not in operator works with the uh, list and double, the same way it works with the set also. Okay. Print of I'll say phi in a. Is phi available in a? Yes. So true boolean boolean value true should be printed in the output. Run this code. Boolean value true got printed. If I say not in, if I say not in, phi is not in, it will return false, right? Phi is in. So phi is available. If you are saying not in, you should get false. But if I say 15 in a, is 15 available in a? Is 15 available in this set? No, right? You'll get false again. What if I say 15 not in a? Here 15 is really not in a, so it will return true boolean value. Okay. So the same way it is working with the uh, list and tuple, uh, the same way it is same way this in and not in operators are working with the set. Now set can only nest, okay? Tuple. Set can only nest tuple. What does it mean? So here, in place of here, if I provide an internal set, it is not possible, guys. Okay, set inside set is not possible. Let's try to do that. Six comma zero comma six comma eight. Okay. I'll, I'll do like this. Uh, if I say print of a, is it possible? Set inside set. You are getting error. You cannot nest a set inside another set, or you cannot list. Okay, you cannot list. Uh, you cannot. Uh, I mean nest. Sorry, not list. You cannot nest a list inside a set. Okay. So inside this set, uh, you cannot even nest a list. Is also not possible. If you run this code, you'll get error again. But if you provide tuple, okay, tuple can be nested inside a set. Only tuple can be nested inside a set. So here, run this code. It will work. Okay, run this code. It is going to work. So now, okay, fine. So you can only nest a tuple from the. Okay, you can only nest. Tuple inside a set. That's the main thing. Nothing much. Fine. Now converting a list to a set. Okay. Converting a list to a set. So here I I'll first create the list, guys. Okay. Here A is a list because I provided square brackets means A is a list. I can convert that list to a set, guys. How to convert using this type casting thing known as set? I can convert. Okay. So I'll say B is equal to set of A. Here B becomes B is what, guys? We are converting a list to a set, guys. Okay. So now if I say print of type of a, what is the type of the a? Type of the a is list. But after that, if I if I say print type of b, okay, I'm converting this a to the set here. Okay. B should be printed as set. Run this code. First list, then set. B is nothing but set. Then now union, guys. Okay. Union. What is this union? Okay. Union of uh, sets. Okay. Let's create uh, here two sets, guys. Okay. One of the set is like a uh, Curly braces. I'll give one of the set that is nine comma one comma five comma seven, and uh, other thing I'll give here is uh, b is equal to. Okay, uh, I have to give different numbers eight comma five comma. Okay, eight comma five comma six comma. Let's say one. Okay, like this I'll give. I have here how many sets? Two sets are there. Okay, a set and b set. So now let me draw a diagram, guys. Okay. Uh, like uh, two circles kind of diagram okay yes uh, intentionally i am drawing the diagram like this okay one two here uh, this is one set and uh, here this is one set and this is another set in the first set a we have nine one five seven here one five is common with this one five with another set right in a and b there are some common elements like five and one okay remaining nine seven and eight six are different okay here non-common element in the a is nine and other non common element is 7 and uh, non common element in the b is 8 and 6 so here i'll say 8 and 6 8 and 6 but uh, coming to the common 1 5 1 5 is common here so i'll give 1 and 5 here done okay 1 and 5 here so fine fine what i have to do here is uh, union okay first i'll i'll use this uh, different uh, Right, union. Okay, how does they work and all? I'll show you. First one is union. 
uh, second one is the uh, intersection uh, third one is the difference fourth one is the symmetric difference okay these are the four operations you can do symmetric difference okay four operations so first one is union second intersection the difference symmetric difference four things are there what is union union means every element okay 9 1 5 7 6 8 complete total how many are there six elements are there right total six elements will come if i say print of k dot union of a dot union of p if i say all the elements okay together will become will get merged into a single set and as set doesn't have any duplicates right so duplicates are will be ignored right so six elements will come here nine seven uh, these duplicate elements are uh, ignored and only one value for each and everything will be taken so nine one five seven eight six should come okay some kind of thing only six elements should come you see one five six seven eight nine okay all six elements came what if okay union means all there is intersection I, and there is one more thing guys so with the union right there is one more thing either you can say union or you have some operator guys the operator is this or operator okay uh, either you can say a dot union of b or you can say a pipe b a pipe b both will give you the same result you see all this this is a symbol for the union guys okay either you can use that or this and come into the intersection guys. The intersection is uh, here uh, what i will do here is in, instead of union i will say intersection okay a dot intersection of b and uh, here intersection I have to use this uh, ampersand symbol give the ampersand symbol so uh, intersection means the common point okay so what are the common elements in this uh, both the sets one five right only one five should come okay uh, this one should get one five and this one should get one five because those are the common things okay intersection is done common common elements okay common elements coming to the difference a minus b if you remove okay if you remove this b from a a minus b then what will be left out guys if i remove this one from a only 97 will be left at right this uh, this moon shape thing will be left at okay the circle will be removed from this uh, entire thing and only the remaining 97 will be printed okay here if i say a uh, a difference okay there is a inbuilt function known as difference and either i can use a difference or i can say a minus b both are same run this code you will get you see 97 got print or i can say b minus a okay or b dot difference of a here a will be removed from b guys uh, 86 will be left out okay 86 should be printed 86, okay? like that so it's like uh, a minus b or b minus a now you understood now symmetric difference guys. symmetric difference means the common part will be removed guys okay symmetric difference means this and this common part will be removed remaining all elements in the a and b will be accepted that means uh, 1 5 will be removed and remaining are 9 7 8 6 should be so here i have to say instead of saying difference right i have to say symmetric difference okay symmetric difference here i have to use the uh, cap symbol guys okay a b a cap cap symbol i have to use so cap 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 okay cap b a cap b so both are same guys symmetric difference run this code except in uh, and except uh, common elements everything will come six seven eight nine okay six seven eight and nine one five is not one five is removed Hope guys you are able to understand this union intersection difference and symmetric difference okay uh, we, this we can do with the sets guys uh, in python okay now we have a few other functions common functions that we can use either with a list or tuple or set right min max sum you can use here okay min max sum count is not possible because duplicates are not allowed right count is not possible okay whereas uh, min max sum are possible if i say print of max of a max of set the maximum element 9 will be printed 9 and if i say min of a the minimum value that is 1 will be printed and if i say sum of a the sum of all the elements in the set that is 9 1 5 7 10 15 22 should be printed in output so this is working the same way that this that these functions have worked with the list and tuple in python so guys this is all about uh, set in collections okay set is one of the data type in collections okay one of the collections data type and this is all about the set in Python. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 37 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about dictionary. So let's get started. In Python, dictionary is one of the collections data types. 
in the previous sessions, I have already covered the other three collections data types, that is list, tuple, and set. Now, in this session, I am going to cover the fourth collections data type, that is dictionary. Before I get started explaining about dictionary in a detailed manner, let me first compare this dictionary collections data type with the other three already covered collections data type that is list, tuple, and set. How is dictionary different from list, tuple, and set? Let me cover first. At a high level, when I compare list, tuple, set with the dictionary, okay? At a high level, when I compare this list, tuple, set with the dictionary, the major difference we have is, in case of the list, tuple, or set, we have a group of values, okay? List tuple set has a group of values stored into a variable. But coming to the dictionary, it's not just values, guys. It is a group of, okay, in case of dictionary, it is a group of key value pairs. Understand the difference, guys, okay? Here, only group of values, but here, a group of key value pairs. So how the key value pairs will look like? For example, here, if I take an example of list, it will be like this, guys, okay? The list will be like this. Uh, if I say colors orange, okay. So here, list of values. This is an example for the list I'm saying. You can give the same example for tuple and set, but I am only taking one example. Either list, tuple, or set, right? It's a group of values like this, okay? It's a group of values. But coming to the dictionary, it's a group of key value pairs. It will be like this guys okay it will be like this inside this uh, curly braces you'll have let's say it will be like this uh, brand colon okay honda comma then next one next one is uh, uh, model okay model colon model colon Amis, then price, price colon, sorry, price colon, nine lakhs, comma, mileage, mileage colon, fourteen point five. Like this, guys. These are the key value pairs. This is one key and its value is followed by colon. Key, colon, value. Here again, model is a key. Amaze is a value. Price is a key. Nine lakhs is a, in Indian rupees is a value. Mileage is a key. Here, 14.5 is a value. Here, a group of key value par pairs are there, okay? First key value pair, second key value pair, third key value pair, fourth key value pair, okay? But here, only a group of values, guys, okay? That is a major difference between the list, tuple, set, and dictionary, guys. In dictionary, we have a group of key value pairs. Okay? Dictionary, we have the group of key value pairs. Now, let me demonstrate dictionary. Now, you understood the major difference between the list, tuple, set, when compared with the dictionary, right? Dictionary has a key value pairs, whereas list, tuple, set doesn't have the key value pairs. They are group of values. Okay? So, dictionary, as I already mentioned, is one of the collections data types in Python. Okay? It stores, a, uh, it stores a multiple values in key value pairs, okay? Here, key value pairs. It's not a group of values, it's a key value pairs. Now, let's create the dictionary, guys, without any delay. Let's go into the practical mode. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID, and here we have this sample Python file under which I'm going to create the dictionary. Let's create the dictionary. Let's say car is equal to curly braces. Inside the curly braces, I have to provide, okay, brand, colon, Brand colon, what is a brand? Honda is a brand, let's say, okay. Then comma, brand, after brand we have uh, model colon, amaze, comma, then we have price, price colon, Nine lakhs in Indian rupees, comma, then mileage. Like this, we can create any number of key value pairs, okay? A group of key value pairs we can store into the variable. And this is known as a dictionary, guys. Simple terms, this is known as dictionary. 
mileage is 14.5 done now if i print car here the dictionary will be printed in the output as it is okay in the form of key value pairs the dictionary will be printed you can also find the type of this uh, case okay if you find the type of this variable it will print the dictionary type of car you see in the output you'll get dictionary sorry right click run you see dictionary dict means dictionary fine so this is how we can create a dictionary guys and there is one more way you can either write this key value pairs in a single line or uh, if you want to write them you see if you want to understand or properly format them uh, some people write like this also okay like this just press enter there you see a tab space should be there and uh, here just press enter and uh, this is another way guys okay if you feel this way is good uh, you can also write this this is also nothing but dictionary uh, instead of writing in a single line, right? Uh, it's more readable, right? This dictionary is more readable than the previous one. Okay, brand Honda model MS price and like some people write like this also. Okay, some people write create the dictionary in this format also. Look wise, it looks good. Okay, how many key value pairs are there? We can easily find it out. Now run this code. It will work in the same manner. You see, it is working in the same manner. Done. Now let's move on to the next one, guys. Uh, I showed you how to create the dictionary and uh, how how to create the dictionary with indentation here. This space is this tab space is nothing but the indentation, guys. This is also a dictionary. And uh, how to print the dictionary, how to find the type of the dictionary, I explained, right? Now let's perform some operations on the dictionary. Like let's get the value of a key. Okay. So here there are four keys: brand, model, price, and mileage are the four keys. I want to get value of one of the key, guys. So what I will do is I'll just print here. Okay. I'll say car dot. There is a inbuilt function known as get, guys. Okay. In so along with the dictionary, we can use an inbuilt function known as get. Inside this get, whatever the key you provide, its value it will retrieve, guys. Okay, get inbuilt function will retrieve the value of the given key. For example, here in the double quotes, if I give some key like a uh, price, okay, it will it will get us the value of this particular key in the dictionary. Okay, car dot get of price means what will be printed here? Nine lakh will be printed on this quotes. You see in the output, nine lakh got printed. So this is one way, guys. Or there's another way also. So instead of saying car dot get off and all those stuff, provide square brackets like this car off. Inside the square brackets, provide the key, you'll get the value. Let's say if I give model here, car of model, what is the value of this model? Amaze will be printed in the output. This is another way. Case. Either you can use get inbuilt function or you can provide the square brackets and provide the key there. Okay. In any of the cases, you'll get the value of the given keys. So retrieving the value with the help of the keys. Okay either using the get inbuilt function or by directly providing the name of the dictionary followed by the key okay inside the square brackets now let's print all the keys of the dictionary guys okay let's print all the keys of the dictionary what i will do here is in the print statement so i want to print brand model price mileage okay all the four keys i want to print so i'll say car dot okay there's a inbuilt function known as keys if i say car dot keys all the keys of this dictionary will be printed in the output run this code you see brand model price mileage okay brand model price mileage all the keys got printed similarly we have another inbuilt function known as values using which we can retrieve all the values of the dictionary guys okay so here we we are printing all the keys of the dictionary right using the keys inbuilt function similarly if i say print of car dot values another inbuilt function so all the values of this uh, dictionary will be printed that is honda amaze 9 lakh and 114.5 you see all the values got printed honda amaze 9 lakh and 14.5 now updating the values of the dictionary you can also update the values of the dictionary guys before updating let me print the dictionary as it is now let me update one of the value of this dictionary guys okay let me update one of the value of this dictionary i want to change the price from 9 lakhs to 9 lakh 50 thousand okay so how to change that i have to say car of inside the square brackets i have to say price okay is equal to give the later uh, give the updated value that is i want to change it to 9 lakhs 50 thousand okay from 9 lakhs to I want to update it to 9 lakhs 50 thousand. After updating this uh, price key, value of this price key in the dictionary using this statement, now let me print off, I'll say print off car, okay? So run this code, you see the, the particular uh, value of this particular price key inside the dictionary will be updated, okay? You see before 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 updating the price is 9 lakhs, after updating the price is 9 lakh 50 thousand. That means dictionary is mutable, right? It's immutable. You can update it. You can modify it. Dictionary is mutable in Python. Okay, fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Updating is done. Now adding the new key, guys. Okay. You can also add a new key. Here we are updating the existing key with a different value. Let's say instead of this, the same format, guys. 
I'll give the new key, guys. Okay, instead of updating here, I'll say car off. I'll give the new key. The key which is not there here, brand, model, price, mileage, four keys are there, but I want to give a new key. Let's say I, will, I would like to add a new key known as color key with value as gray color. Okay, gray color. That's it. Okay, now run this code. Before adding this new key along with the value, it will only have four keys. Dictionary will contain only four keys. Now, if I add a new key along with the value, this dictionary, when I print, it will get five values, five key value pairs. Okay, you see, before we have one, two, three, four key value pairs. After, after adding the new key along with the value, it has one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the new key and value pair that is color gray got added to the dictionary. This is the way of adding the new key value pair to the dictionary. Okay. Now, similarly, we can use for loop with the dictionary, guys. Okay, we can use for loop. Uh, that is a for each loop. You can, if you want to specifically say this is a for each loop. Okay, you can use for each loop with the dictionary. So, how to use that? Here, guys, this is a dictionary created, and I'm going to use a for each loop for for k. K means key. Uh, you can give e, a, anything you want, but uh, just to represent, uh, I'm just giving k, guys. For k in, by k in car. Print of K. Okay. For K in car means for key for each and every key in the car. How many keys are there? Brand model, price mileage. Okay. Those four keys will be printed in the output. Okay. Run this code, you see. You will get brand model price and mileage got printed in the output case. The four keys got printed. So here there is an optional inbuilt uh, function that you can use after this in this for each loop, right? For K in car, you can say or you can say for K car dot keys case. Okay. Anything is fine. R dot keys also will give you the keys only brand model price mileage you will get run this code all the four keys will be printed okay brand model price mileage will be printed in the output okay for k in car dot keys print of k done okay so this one is optional guys okay dot keys is optional here either you provide or not when you say for k in car it will get you the keys only if you provide this will be more readable right similarly i can print the values guys okay so what i can say is for v in car dot Values okay. If I say for v means value, right? Here I will print the value for each and every value in this uh, dictionary. Let's print the value okay. Honda Ames 9 lakh and 14.5 will be printed in the output. So when you say dot keys here, you are getting the keys. When you say dot values, you are getting the values, guys. For each and every value in the card dot values, you are printing the values. Honda Ames 9 lakh and 14.5 got printed. Now let me go back to the previous one, guys. For k in car dot keys, right? For k in car dot keys keys okay done here i am printing the keys only right is there any possibility where with the help of the keys i can with the help of the retrieved keys can i print the values yes there is a possibility what i have to do is print k comma k comma car of k okay or k comma car dot get off k anything is fine okay k means key car dot get off key means it will get the value so key value pairs will be printed now Brand Honda, model MS, price 9 lakh, mileage 14.5. You can also say car of K. Okay, whatever the whatever the syntax that is convenient, you can use guys. Okay, this also will get you the value of this keys, the car dictionary, right? Brand Honda, model MS, price 9 lakh, mileage 14.5. Okay. When you retrieve the keys, automatically you can get the values because you because of the using this particular syntax size, we can also get the values. Okay. Fine. Now there is one more inbuilt function known as items case. Okay, there is one more inbuilt function in Python known as items. Okay, here I will say car dot items car dot items. So when I say car dot items here, not only key you will get, you will get value also. K comma we have to say. Okay, here two elements I have to provide. First one is a key and second one is a value. So he can, here instead of using the syntax and all, you can say k comma v guys. So for each and every iteration, this items inbuilt function will retrieve the key and value of the uh, card dictionary in this case. So both key and value will come here. See the same output brand Honda, model MS, price, and mileage 14.5. Okay? This is another way, guys. Okay, using the items inbuilt function, we can get both key and value at the same time. So fine. Now there are other inbuilt functions we can use with dictionary guys okay apart from whatever i have explained about the dictionary and the different inbuilt functions right we have other inbuilt functions we can use with dictionary let's start using them so that is a pop okay uh, removing an item having the specific key okay so let's say before removing anything i'm just printing this car dictionary and i want to remove one of the item guys okay so using the pop so car dot 
pop inbuilt function. Inside this pop, I have to give the key. Let's say I want to remove model guys. Okay, I want to remove the model from this model from this car dictionary. So after removing this uh, model key value pair, I want to print the car again, dictionary again, run this code. Only three key value pairs will be there after deleting. Okay, after removing this model key value pair, the remaining brand price mileage will be there. Brand price mileage will be there. Whereas model got removed, okay? After using the pop, I have removed the model key value pair. Another way of removing an item having the specific key in uh, Python is instead of using the pop of key, you can directly say del keyword you can use, okay? You can use del keyword like del of car of, okay? Give the key, whatever the key, which key, key value pair you want to remove that you provide here, del this particular key value pair, okay? From the car dictionary. Again, the same thing will happen, guys. Brand price mileage is there, model got removed, okay? Fine. Removing the last item in the dictionary and, uh, okay, removing the last item in the dictionary, okay? So instead of uh, removing a particular key right here, there are four keys, brand, model, price, mileage. What is the last key mileage, right? So if I say car dot pop item, okay? Car dot pop item, right? The last key value pair will be removed automatically. That is mileage will go off, you see? In the earlier one, brand model price were there and uh, mileage is also there, but here brand model price mileage is gone. Okay, again, when you say car dot pop item again, this time price will be gone. Again, if you say pop car dot pop item, this time model will be gone. Again, if you say car dot pop item, brand will be gone. Okay, so that's how we can even use pop item, guys. It will remove the last item in the dictionary, last key value pair in the dictionary will be removed. Now we can remove all the key value pairs at a go. Okay, there are four key value pairs at a go. I want to remove all the key value pairs from the dictionary for that car dot clear out use and run this all the key value pairs that is using brand model price mileage got removed from the dictionary now we can find the size of this dictionary how many key value pairs are there in this dictionary you can find out uh, simple guys you have to say print off len of car okay that's it we can use this len inbuilt function either with the list, tuple, set, and also with dictionary guys, it will find how many key value pairs are there. The size of the dictionary that is four got printed, four key value pairs, so four is the size of the dictionary. Using the len, we can find that. And we can delete the complete dictionary guys using the del command, okay, here. So before deleting and print the dictionary, and I'll delete the complete dictionary. Instead of clearing, instead of clearing the, Key value pairs in the dictionary. I'm going to delete the entire dictionary. Del car, simple. Okay. If I say del car, it will delete the entire dictionary. After that, if I print dictionary, guys, you will get error. Okay. This statement should give error. The output. Run this code. You see. First, it has printed because you see I'm printing before deleting. After that, I deleted the dictionary, and then you are getting that name error. Okay. The car is not available. Name error is coming. Now we can also compare one dictionary with another dictionary, guys, in Python. We can compare one dictionary with another dictionary. Let me explain. What I'll do is I'll just uh, go back to the normal mode or let's do one thing. Let's copy paste this one, sir. okay, here. I'll just mention this as car one. As it is, I copy pasted, guys, right? This one is a replica of the same one, okay? So here four key value pairs are there, here four key value pairs are there. Now I'm going to compare. So print car one dictionary is equal to car two. Is it true or false? Yes, car one is same as car two. So true got printed, okay? True got printed. What if I say, what if I say, I'll remove one of the uh, key value pair in the second dictionary, okay? Here mileage I am removing, okay? I removed the mileage guys, okay? In the first uh, dictionary, brand model price mileage over there, but in the second dictionary brand model price. Now is the car one equal to car two? Car one dictionary equal to car two? No, right? You'll get false in the output because car one is not equal to car two. But if I provide somewhere here, the order is different, okay? Here we have four key value pairs. Here also four key value pairs. But the thing is mileage key value pair is the last position. Whereas in the car two mileage key value pair in the second position. Are they equal or not equal? This time also equal guys, even though the order of the key value pairs is different from other dictionary, but car one is equal to car two will result in true guys, because they have the same key value pairs, okay? The order doesn't matter guys. Run this code, you see true will be rendered. They are equal. Opposite one is not equal guys, you'll get false. If you say not equal, it will become false, okay? So like this guys, we can compare two dictionaries in Python using double equal to and not equal to 
operators okay so order of the key value pairs doesn't matter only how many keys are there are the exact keys matching or not are the exact values matching or not matters okay so guys this is all about the dictionary collections data type okay dictionary is one of the collections data type and this is all about the dictionary in the next session i am going to compare list tuple set and dictionary in a detailed manner okay in this session i am not going to i have not uh, done that right i didn't compare the list uh, tuple set and dictionary in a detailed manner i didn't do that at a high level i compare but in the next session i am going to compare the list tuple set and dictionary in a detailed manner so that's it for this session guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 38 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain the differences between list tuple set dictionary collections data types in python so let's get started in the previous session i have already covered about list tuple set dictionary in a detailed manner and practical manner now in this session i am going to compare all these things together so if you have not gone through my previous sessions on list tuple set and dictionary i recommend you guys to go back and watch those sessions and come back here so that you'll understand the differences between the list tuple set and dictionary in a clear manner in this session so let's begin guys okay let me provide the differences between the list tuple set dictionary so let me draw this uh, lines so that it's properly divided okay fine so what is the first difference the first difference is the syntax difference okay so syntactically the list tuple and set store a group of values right a group of values in case of list tuple set it's all about the group of values in case of list guys inside the square brackets if you provide value 1 value 2 value 3 and so on that becomes a list okay if you provide square brackets inside that a group of values you are trying to store that becomes a list in python coming to the tuple the difference between the list and tuple is here we have the square brackets but in tuple we have the circular brackets okay here also we have the group of values like v1 v2 v3 and so on now coming to the set now coming to the set it's a group of values but inside the curly braces here we have square brackets here we have circular brackets circular braces and here we have the curly braces okay here v1 comma v2 comma v3 and so on okay this is how the set looks like but coming to the dictionary guys dictionary is not a group of just values it's a group of key value pairs okay dictionary is a group of key value pairs unlike the list tuple and set which only stores a group of values but dictionary stores a group of key value pairs and they are surrounded inside the curly braces like this key 1 colon value 1 key 2 colon value 2 key 3 colon value 3 and so on guys okay and so on this is how a dictionary looks like okay key 1 colon v1 key 2 colon v2 and so on guys okay so this is dictionary guys now let's move on to the next difference between the list tuple set and dictionary that is here in list we have indexing in list we have indexing that means the first value of the list will get stored at the index 0 the second value of the list gets stored at the index 1 third value of the list gets stored at the index uh, 2 and so on okay indexing concept is there in tuple also same guys here also we have indexing concept which is similar to list list and tuple have both follow the indexing concept where the first value will be at the index 0 and second at the index 1 and third at the index 2 and so on and coming to the set there is no indexing there's no indexing concept guys in set okay there's no indexing concept in the set and coming to the dictionary also there's no indexing concept in dictionary also okay only this list and tuple have the indexing concept whereas uh, set and dictionary doesn't have the indexing concept now the third difference guys the third difference here is about the 
order okay the order in which these values are stored in the list in the memory okay the, so the way you are representing the order in which you are representing these values in the list like this the same order okay in the same order these values will get stored in the memory also okay so same order the order will not change if you give the v1 some value here that value will be in the same order right? in the memory also this value will be stored in the same order okay there will not be any difference in this order it is a tuple tuple also same order okay tuple also same order but coming to the set it is random order so the way the order in which you are creating this set the same order will not be stored in the memory guys okay in the memory these values will just okay change their positions okay we can't expect the same order the given order may not be the same in the memory guys okay the, these values when they are created like this in the set v1 v2 v3 on v1 was in the first position v2 is in the second position v3 in the third position but in the memory this order is not same okay some random order they will be stored so coming to the dictionary same order coming to the dictionary same order guys next next difference between the list tuple set and dictionary is list is mutable that means you can modify the list once you create a list you can modify any elements in this list you can reverse the order you can sort the order you can deal uh, you can remove one of the element from the list you can add a few more elements to the append some more elements to the list okay all those stuff okay all those uh, modification stuff are possible in the list but coming to the tuple guys tuple is immutable okay that means you cannot modify once you created the tuple you cannot modify the elements in the tuple guys that is tuple coming to the set set is again mutable okay only in collections data types tuple is immutable remaining all are mutable guys okay only the tuple is mutable but remaining all are okay only tuple is immutable remaining all are mutable now next next difference between the list uh, tuple set and dictionary are here duplicates accepted why duplicates are accepted here means let's say the first value is 9 and the third value is also 9 that is accepted in the list guys okay list will accept duplicate values because this 9 is at the index 0 and the second 9 is at the index 2 right 0 1 2 so because of that indexing concept right duplicates are allowed okay they are treated even though the values are same they will be treated as separate elements in the list because uh, the one value which is at one index is different from the another value which is at the index another index right so even though the values look same but their indexes are different that's why list allows the duplicates values coming to the tuple tuple also duplicates accepted allowed or accepted okay what about set then are du duplicates accepted here no duplicates are ignored okay duplicates are ignored in the set guys even though you give duplicate values you will not get any error in python when you try to create a set with duplicate values no error will come but ultimately in the memory only the unique values will be stored duplicates will be ignored and only the unique values no matter how many times the value 9 you give only one 9 will be accepted uh, and remaining are ig simply ignored guys without giving any error and finally coming to the dictionary guys in dictionary keys are unique keys need to be unique guys okay whatever the keys we are giving right key 1 key 2 key 3 those keys need to be unique but values can be okay values can be duplicate duplicated values can be duplicated so here with the help of keys we are maintaining the maintaining the uniqueness in the case of dictionary so keys need to be unique you cannot have same key but values can be duplicated guys okay you can have the duplicated values but keys need to be unique so guys this is all about the differences between the list tuple set and dictionary collections data types in python okay just to summarize these are the things guys okay syntax differences indexing wise order wise order in which they are getting stored into the memory and uh, whether they are mutable or immutable whether the duplicates are allowed or not these are the important differences between the list tuple set and dictionary so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to 
part 39 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about strings so let's get started first of all what exactly are these strings strings in python are nothing but the text surrounded either by single quotes or by double quotes now let me practically demonstrate these strings for you i'll first open this pycharm id and here we have the sample python file in this python file i'll first create a variable say first underscore name into this variable i want to store some string text so how to create the string text in python how to provide double quotes inside the double quotes how to provide the text say like this okay so this is a string text and you are storing this string text into the variable and as you can see this particular text is now surrounded by double quotes similarly i'll create one more variable the last name and into this variable i'll store another string text but this time i am not going to surround the text with double quotes i am going to surround the text with single quotes this is also string text guys okay in python either you surround with the double quotes or single quotes both are string text guys so here i'll give my last name similarly there is one more way for creating the strings in python let me create one more variable say location is equal to the third way here is i have to use this str okay str function and inside this str function i have to give the string text in double quotes let's say i'll give the string text as hyderabad as a location okay so these are the three ways guys of creating the string text in python okay either by surrounding the text with double quotes or by surrounding the text by single quotes or by using this string function inside that you have to provide like this okay now let me print okay let me print all these variables and see whether the string text are getting printed in the output or not okay print of first name then print of last name then print of location okay three things now run this code you see all the string text will get printed in the output okay arun motori hyderabad got printed in the output now let's see what type of uh, things they are what data type it is okay what is the data type of these variables first name last name and location since we are storing the string text into this first name string text into the last name and string, te string text into the location okay if i print something like this print of type of first underscore name or if i print type of type of last underscore name and print type of location in all these cases guys in all these three cases they will be the data type of these variables will be printed as string guys okay let's run this code you see arun data type of the variable that where arun is stored is string this is also string this is also string fine so we just get started with the strings guys okay where i showed you the different ways of creating the strings in python and also i showed how to print them how to find the data type okay and all the stuff now let's move further okay let's move further and understand uh more about the strings so strings work like collections list in python guys okay strings work similar to the collections list in python guys what do i mean there so here what i will do is i will remove all this stuff okay here only one string text is there that got stored into this variable as i am mentioning here strings work like collections list in python what does it mean so this behaves like a collection list this string behaves like a collections list so how can i find out okay for example if i in collections write a, a group of values will be there okay how the string can be converted or can be treated as a list here each and every value okay each and every character in the string text becomes a value guys a is a value r is a value u is a value and n is a value for example if i say print of first name of zero at the index zero in the string text at the index zero which character is there a a will get printed here okay if i say print of first name of one index one at index one which character is there r is there like that okay print of first name of two print of first name of 3 okay run this code 0 1 2 3 first a will be printed then r will be printed then u will be printed then n will be printed run this code you see a r u n got printed okay 
So here strings are behaving like the collection list where each and every character becomes a value in the list. Okay. Each and every character of this string text becomes a value in the list. That's how it is behaving internally. You can also use a for loop guys instead of printing this many times you can say for okay for each and every element okay or each and every character in this string text okay for c in for c in first name okay print c for each loop right for each and every character in this string text print that character okay so here also you'll get the same output guys a r u n will be printed in the output now let's move on okay let's find the size of this string text okay let's find the size of the string text so how to find the size of the string text as a print of len of okay using for list also we can use the len function right using the len function we can find the size of the list similarly using the len function we can find the size of the string text so here if i say first underscore name it will find the size of the string text that is one two three four four should be printed in the output you see four got printed now i can use for loop with range with the string text okay so what i will do is for i in a range of len of first underscore name okay if you have followed my previous sessions you can easily understand this logic is i have used this several times in my previous sessions okay this for loop with range things for i in range of len of uh, first name okay so print first underscore name of i okay so what will happen in the first iteration here len of four uh, len of first name means four right for i in range of four that means first zero will be assigned 0 1 2 3 okay 4 minus 1 up to 4 minus 1 so starting with 0 till 4 minus 1 0 1 2 3 the first iteration i is 0 so first name of 0 is a a will be printed then i will become 1 the second iteration okay first name of uh, 1 is r first name of 2 is u and finally till 3 right from 0 till 3 4 minus 1 is 3 0 1 2 3 when first name of 3 n will be printed okay so this will give you the same result a r u n okay done so now let's do one more thing let's use the in and not in operators okay in and not in operators with a string so how can we use if i say print r u n run okay is this run string text available in first underscore name is run available in this arun yes r u n is available here so it will print true guys okay if you run this code true will be printed in the output Okay, what if I say run not in first name? Okay, is run not in first name? It is there, so it will return false. Okay, it will return false. What if I say some? Okay, is this available in first name? Is this available in my first name? No, this is not there anywhere, so false will be printed as it is. Okay, and if I say not in, yes, this is not in, so it will return true. Fine. like this guys you can use uh, in and not in operators with uh, string text and similar to slicing the list you can also slice the strings okay in python you can also slice the strings how to slice the strings here i'll say print of first underscore name of square brackets in between that provide colon and start with one and say three what will be the output guys here okay or i will say two okay one colon two what is the output here so 0 1 this part is the index guys as you already know about the slicing which I have already covered in the collections topic okay so right I have explained the slicing thing in the collections topic a lot right the same thing here also the same thing here the first thing before this colon is nothing but the index so index 0 1 R starting from R guys this number stands for the position guys 1 2 okay what if I give 3 here 1 2 3 okay starting from index one to third position u is third position right r u should be printed in the output okay r u but if i remove this part okay then starting with the index one till the end of the end position till the end position that is r u n should be printed in the output r u n but if i remove this part and here i'll put uh, three starting from the zero by default it is zero index if you don't provide anything it's zero index starting with zero position is three one two three so aru should be printed in the output what if i don't provide any of these things entire text okay here zero index till the last position zero index till the last position complete aru will be printed okay done so this is how we can slice the strings guys slice like like uh, slicing a mango you can also slice the strings in python okay now 
modifying the strings. Uh, there are some inbuilt functions, guys, using which we can perform several modification operations on the strings. I'll show you. So here, what I will do is I'll just convert this entire string text into the uppercase. Okay, here A is in uppercase, but R U N is not in uppercase. But I want everything to be in uppercase. So for that, guys, I'll say print of first underscore name dot upper. That's it. Okay. First underscore name dot upper. It will convert the entire string text into the uppercase. This R U N also will become capital. Okay. You see, complete thing got capital. What if I say first name dot lower? Entire thing will get converted into lower. Here A also will get converted into lowercase along with R U N. Okay. So entire text will be printed in the lowercase. So that is upper and lower, as simple as it. Now let's go with the next one. That is strip. Okay. That is strip, guys. What if uh, I have the? I'll change this example a bit. Name is equal to Arun Motori with some space is there, and before also there is some space, and after also there is some space. Now, if I say name dot, otherwise if I directly print name, guys, okay? If I directly print name, what will happen? This leading spaces and this is trailing spaces will be printed in the output. You see, run this code. You see the text Arun got printed, the string text got printed, but it came with the leading spaces and trailing spaces. What if I don't want this leading and trailing spaces? Then I have to say name dot strip guys, simple. Okay, when I say strip, the strip inbuilt function will remove the leading spaces and trailing spaces and only will print this part. Okay, so run this code. You see the leading and trailing spaces got removed. So this will only remove the leading spaces and trailing spaces, but not the in between spaces. Okay, Whatever the space that is there between the words that will not be removed, guys. Only the leading space and trailing space will be removed by this strip. Let's move on. Okay, the next one is uh, replace. Okay, uh, here I'll remove this part. I'll just go back to the normal example. So name dot replace old character with the new character. Okay, here O I want to replace O with the A. I want to replace this. O with A. How to replace? Here we have to provide like this, guys. Give double quotes the character. So O need to be replaced with what? A new character that is A. So before replacing, if I print this uh, name and after replacing, if I print the name, let's see the difference. Okay. I'm not replacing anything and printing the name. As it is, it will be printed. After that, name dot replace of in the name, replace wherever the O character comes. We have to replace with A. So run this code, you will see O getting replaced with A, guys. Okay. Arun, O, O, O. In place of O, you see A came. Okay. That got successfully replaced. O got successfully replaced with A. That is a replace inbuilt function in Python. Now split, guys. One more interesting one that is split, guys. So I'll write a bigger statement here so that you can understand the split thing easily. Okay. I'll say like this. My name is arun muturi okay this is a string text we have now here this is single string text i want to split this entire string text into multiple words okay so this my should be one one string and name should be one string is should be one string and arun should be one string muturi should be one string. instead of entire thing to be a string i want each and every word of this uh, String to become a string. For that, I have to split it, guys. Okay, I have to split this entire string into substrings. How that is possible? So for that, I have to say name dot split, guys. Okay, name dot split. Using what I want to split here, you just observe, guys. Uh, what is what is there in between the my and name? There is some space. What is there between the name and is? There is some space. Is and around space. Around and motor is space is there. Okay. Just provide the space here. Okay. With the help of the space, we are splitting this entire. St String text into multiple string text. Okay, so here the written type of this uh, split is a list, guys. Okay, it will become a list. So how do that? Uh, let's say uh, words. I'll say words is equal to. Okay, I'll simply say words is equal to. Okay, so here for word in words print. Okay, for word in words print word. Okay, like this. If I run this code, you see, so everything got split into multiple words. Okay. You see the entire string got split into multiple strings. This is possible in Python, guys. So, or you can even say something like this, guys. Once you split this entire string text into multiple strings, right, by splitting them with the help of space. So wherever the space is encountered, that will be 
convert into a word. Okay, if the space comes here, the this until here before the space is a separate string. Okay, so I can also do like this, guys. Print of uh, words of zero at the index zero. My will come at the index one. Second word. Okay, it is a list of words, guys. Now when you say name dot split of something, it will become a list of words. Okay, so at the index one, the second word is there. That is list of uh, list of strings. This is okay the second string is there that is name and uh, at the index 2 is will be there in the index 3 or uh, the next possible string text will be there that is arun and the word of words of 4 well, my last name will be there okay so this is how the split will work guys sometimes let's say what if i say i'll put this hyphen symbol in between this okay i i don't have space now will it split with this split will split this uh, multiple uh, I mean, uh, the single string text into multiple strings. Is it possible to split this entire string text into multiple string text? It's not possible because we are trying to split using the space here, but here there is no space. It is not possible, guys, okay? Run this code, I'll remove this part. Okay. Otherwise, I'll say words of zero for now, okay? Run this code. You see, entire string text came here. If I give words of one right, you got the error, okay? Only one word got stored because cannot split using the space right so if if at all i have to split this then i have to use instead of the space i have to use this hyphen okay hyphen i have to use using hyphen we can split right now it's possible if i say words of zero you see first word words of one splitting is happening now with the help of hyphen right that's why it's happening my name then uh, is okay splitting is happening with the help of hyphen so that's how we have to use split inbuilt function in Python with strings, guys. Okay. Now this one is already done, guys. I already demonstrated here, right? In and not in operator. Okay. Here also same thing I'm doing. Okay. So uh, that is a repetition. Let's not do. Strings are immutable in Python. Okay. The next one, next thing that you have to know about strings in Python is strings are immutable. That means non-modifiable. But here they are mod modifying, right? What if just see here? Visually they are getting modified. If I say name is equal to Arun. Again, in the next line, if I say name is equal to Varun, and if I print, if I simply say print of name, what will be printed? If the strings are immutable, immutable means non-updatable, right? Non-updatable, but here I'm updating, right? In the name variable, originally Arun was there, I'm updating the value of Arun with, I'm replacing the Arun with Varun here. Visually, it looks like you are replacing. When, you, when I print name, Varun latest updated value that is Varun will be printed. But here the statement is reverse, right? I am saying immutable. Why I'm saying it is immutable, non-updatable, but I'm able to update here, right? Externally, it looks like strings are mutable, but internally strings are immutable, guys. Okay. When I say name is equal to Arun and name is equal to Varun, okay. Here just see guys, if I print ID of name, okay, the the moment I say name is equal to Arun, right? In the memory, what happens is, okay, in the computer memory somewhere, some space will be reserved for the string text like this. And in that space, uh, in that uh, memory, allocated memory, here string text Arun will be stored. Like this, Arun will be stored, right? So who is referring to this Arun here? Name, right? Using name, we are referring to this Arun. Using name, we are referring to this Arun for now. That's good. So, Again, when I say name is equal to Warren, what's happening is, so here in this reserved, in this allocated memory space for Arun, it's this Arun is not getting replaced with Warren, okay? In the memory, this Arun is not getting replaced with uh, Warren. Instead, what's happening is another memory space is getting allocated, okay? This is still there, but another space is getting allocated. In that space, Warren, Warren is being stored. Now, now, since I am saying name is equal to Varun, okay, this connection is being lost and name is now referring to Varun. That's what is happening. But this is not getting deleted, guys, okay? This you are not getting updated. Since name is referring to Varun and when you say print of name, Varun is getting printed because now name is referring to Varun, not Arun, right? But original string text is not updated, guys, okay? In order to update the string text, a new memory is getting allocated every time and uh, the variable is referring to the new thing. That's why outside it looks like uh, strings are mutable, but internally strings are immutable. How to prove that a different memory is getting allocated? Here, name is equal to Arun. 
if i say id of name and name is equal to varun if i say print id of name just see guys okay you will, you will not get the same I, uh, id that is memory address okay id id will get you the memory address guys you will not get the same this this memory address is different from this memory address let's see that run this code you see this is something like a uh, 3122 till here same but here 5253 is there so this address is different from this right so when i say name is equal to arun this address is being okay this address is being this address where arun is stored memory address where arun is stored when i say again name is equal to arun okay here varun is not replacing arun right here arun is not getting replaced by varun instead another memory is getting allocated okay original string without disturbing the original string okay another memory is getting allocated that means the original string text is not getting up updated that's why strings are immutable non updatable the mo visually outside they look like they are getting updated but internally that's not happening guys every time you do some updations a new memory is getting allocated without disturbing the original string okay only this reference variable is getting referred to the new locations that's it so hope guys you understood why strings are immutable in python okay though externally they look mutable but internally they are immutable because the original string is not getting deleted in the memory guys instead of performing the updation option operations on the original string text in the memory okay so python is allocating a new memory space for the updated thing okay no matter how many times you update that many number of memory locations will be allocated to the strings okay so without disturbing the existing string that's why strings are immutable in python so next thing is next thing is there are few more uh, or few other string inbuilt functions are there okay apart from whatever i have demonstrated here upper lower skip replace and split we have few more uh, string inbuilt functions uh, that we can use with strings the one is capitalize guys okay let's use the capitalize so capitalize means first letter of the statement will get capitalized okay for example here i say my name is arun motori if i say okay and if i say print name dot capitalize only the first letter will be capitalized only this m will get capitalized out of all these things only the first letter of the sentence will get capitalized guys and this code you'll see that only m got capitalized remaining all are in lower case okay that's how the capitalize will behave now the next thing is title guys okay so how the title will behave is print name dot title title when compared with the capitalize 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 only capitalizing the first letter of the first word but here title will capitalize the first letter of each and every word that is m will get capitalized n will get capitalized i will get capitalized a will get capitalized and m will get capitalized and this code you see m my name is arun motori here m n i a m everything got capitalized okay so that that's how title is different from the capitalized guys we can also count the number of words okay how many number of uh, times the word is getting repeated okay in the string okay so here i'll say my name is arun motori uh, i'll just write it again guys okay here i'll write my name is arun motori i teach python programming okay python is an easy language i just want to see how many times uh, this uh, python got repeated okay how many times this uh, python got repeated i want to see okay in this particular string text how many times this python word got repeated i want to see for that name dot i'll say count of i'll give this python okay let's count how many times python came in this string so i'll print it out guys i'll print this output so how many times python got here two times right we should get two in the output got two okay this how we can use count inbuilt function and uh, we can also find the word guys okay uh, we can find whether the required word is available in the string text or not how to do that so name dot find of just give the word let's say python is there or not let's see okay is python there in the string text yes python is there here right uh, it may be multiple way uh, it may be there multiple times but at least one time it is there or not okay if it is there one time right the first occurrence from left to right the first occurrence uh, the index of this uh, python okay will be returned here okay index position of this python first occurrence of this python in this index will be returned here i'll say print of name dot find of python it will give 
if if it is there it will give you the index okay index position of this python okay run this first occurrence of the python you see 33 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. At 33, we got the occurrence. So it's not that, okay. What if I give Java here? What if I give Java here? Is Java there? Is Java there? No, Java is not there, right? In this print text, Java is not there. So it has to return minus one, guys. Okay, if it is there, it will give the index. If it doesn't there, if the given word is not uh, findable in this string, okay, then it will give minus one. Okay, if you get minus one, that is not there. That means okay. So, so these are the few other string inbuilt functions which can come to use while working with the strings. Now the last uh, topic for the strings, guys, like comparing the strings. Okay, comparing one string with another string. So, I'll say name one equal to Arun, okay, I'll give one more thing. Name underscore two is equal to also Arun if I give. Then name underscore three, I'll give it as Varun. Now let's compare this, this, uh, this string text, okay? So if I say print of name underscore one, double equal to name underscore two, what will be printed this? Is name one equal to name two? Yes, Arun equal to Arun. So true should be printed in the output. Or if I say name one is equal to name three, is name one equal to name three? Name one is Arun, name three is Varun. So false. You should get false. So it's working fine. Okay. We can use this operator equal to operator for comparing the strings in Python. Now there is one more inbuilt function in Python using which also we can compare. That is, I can say print name one dot underscore underscore eq of name underscore two is name one equal to name two you can use this inbuilt function also guys so is name one equal to name two yes true true should be printed and if i give name one equal to name three then false should be printed in the output done and the last one guys so what if uh, i have like this okay let's say I have like this, okay? Here name one is uh, capital A R U N. Here name two is small a R U N. Now if I give name underscore one equal to name underscore two, okay? Here case is different, right? Since case is different, the first uh, character of the string text and first character of the string text, the case is different. So it will return false case, okay? It will return false. But if, if you're not worried about the case, then here before comparing what you have to do is name one dot okay name one dot you have to use this function known as case fold okay name one dot case fold just use this function guys case fold then what happens is it doesn't bother about the case guys okay whether this capital a or small a will compare and you'll get true this time see you're not worried about the case so you got the true so guys this is all about the strings in python and uh, as part of this session i explained what exactly are the strings are the different ways of creating the strings in python okay how strings behave like the collections whatever you can perform operations with the collections right collection list right the same thing you can perform the strings like splicing like using the operators finding the size okay accessing them using the for loop for each loop and uh, using their index okay and also i demonstrated a several inbuilt functions that can be used with uh, strings like upper lower and all those stuff okay here also some functions got covered and also i explained how strings are immutable in python so they look externally like they are mutable but internally they are immutable so guys that's all for this session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 40 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about in and not in operators so let's get started in and not in operators are already covered in the previous sessions or topics but in this session i am going to summarize and demonstrate the extent to which we can use in and not in operators in python in and not in operators in python can be used with list tuple set it can be used with uh, for loops like for loop with range for each loop and also with strings now let me practically demonstrate all these things together 
in this section. Okay, let's start with the list, guys. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have this uh, sample Python file, and here I'm going to create a list, say colors, and uh, this is a list, right? So let me create uh, some colors inside this list. Say green, comma, orange, comma, blue. Okay. I just uh, gave a group of three colors and inside this list. Okay. Colors list. Now, how can we use in and not in operators with this list? So let's say print of, okay, print off. I'll say some color, let's say red color in colors. Is the red color available in the colors list? Can you see red color here? No, right? If I run this code, it will return false because red color is not there in the colors list. So it will return false, okay? Like this, we can use in operator with the list in Python, okay? Similarly, if you give, uh, let's say green color here, okay? Green in colors, yes, green color is in the colors, so it will return true, okay? It will print true. If I go with the opposite, not in, okay? Green is not in colors, that's not true, right? Green is in the colors, but green not in colors is not true. Run this, false, okay? Then uh, red not in, yes, red is not in this colors list, so it will return true here because red is not there, in the colors, and that statement is true, right? So it can be either list or set or double guys. If you just convert this, square brackets into circular brackets, it will become a tuple, right? So with tuple also the same strategy, guys. Uh, run this, you see, true, red is not there in. If I say green not in, it will return false, okay? The same way, guys, okay? Just a simple change, okay? It's just tuple. And similarly, uh, with uh, set also the same thing, guys. Just curly braces, this becomes a set. And uh, here also the same, okay? Here also the same. Green in colors. Yes, green is there in the colors, it will return true. And if I say red in colors, it will return false. You can also use not in, it will return true. Red is not in is true, yeah, like this. You can use in and not in operators in Python with the list, double and set. Similarly, we can use in and not in operators with for loops, okay? There are two types of for loops in Python, right? Uh, for loop with range and for loop with for each loop, okay? So let's go with the uh, for loop with range, okay? So what I will do here is I'll just remove this part or I just, okay? Or I'll just I'll write something here for i in range of, okay, 11 colon print of i, okay? A simple for loop with range, okay? So it will print from what, guys? Okay, what this for loop will print? It will start with the zero till 11 minus one, that is 10, zero to 10, okay? Zero to 10 should get printed in the output, right? This for loop will print. For loop with range will print 0 to 10 in the output. And here, as you can clearly observe in this for loop with range, we have the in operator used, okay? So in I not uh, in operator used in for loop. Similarly, for each loop, okay? For color in colors, okay? For color in colors, print of color. This is a for each loop, right? For each and every color in the colors, print that color, okay? So here, in is clearly used. In operator is clearly used in the for each loop also. You see all the colors in the list or tuple or set you can be printed with the help of this for each loop. okay done so this is how we can use uh, in operator not in operators with list tuple set and for loops now let's go with the last one a string uh, i'll just give the string as uh, some okay a is equal to a is equal to i'll say python is an easy programming language. Like this, I'll write some string text, okay? Now, if I say print, okay? Print Python in A. If I write like this, okay? Python in A. Is Python available in A, string text? Yes, it is there, no? Python word is there. So it will has to return true, okay? It has to return true, guys. If I say Java in A, is Java anywhere in this string? In this A string? No. So it will return false. Okay. Similarly, not in will return true because Java is not in A is true, so it will return true. And if I say Java in A, Java is not in A, so it will return false. Okay. So like that, you can use uh, in and not in. Okay.
okay in i not in operators with strings okay in python so this is just a summarization session guys uh, because the last uh, few sessions or few topics uh, regarding the list double set already we were coming across this in i not in operators but uh, in this session i just want to summarize like uh, together like how exactly you can use in in i not in operators in python uh, at a single place if you have to know right this session is for you okay so in i not in operators in python can be used with all these items okay so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 41 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about file handling so let's get started in python as part of file handling we can read the data from the files or we can write the data into the files either you want to read data from the files or write data into the files we have to first open the files and then we have to perform either reading or writing after that we have to close the files okay so in order to read or write data from or into the files okay first we have to open the file in python first we have to open the file then if you want to perform writing the data into the file write it and after you are done writing the data into the file close it okay this is the process similar thing for reading also first we have to open the file then read the data from the file and then close the file okay and then close the file guys this is the process okay this is the process now let me practically demonstrate how to write data into the files in python for that i'll open this pycharm id here we have the sample python file and here i will create a variable like file is equal to i'll say open off here i need to provide the path okay path of the file comma what operation you want to do after opening this file sorry after opening this file what operation you want to do on this file i want to write the data into the file if you want to write data into the file you have to say w okay there are three notations here guys either you can mention w here or r here or the final one is a okay w stands for writing r stands for reading okay you are opening the file what is the purpose behind opening the file you want to write the data into the file in that case you have to mention while opening the file you have to mention w here so that you are going to write data into the files while opening if you mention r here the r means reading guys okay you are opening this file with a purpose of reading the data from the files okay then you have to mention r or there may be some situation where you want to append the new data into the file okay along with existing data some new data you want to add into the file that is called as appending right that is called as appending in case if you want to perform appending operation then while opening the file itself you have to mention a here okay a mode these are the modes guys okay in which you are opening the file for now our first requirement is to write data into the file so i'll open this uh, file in writing mode okay i'll open this file in writing mode and here i need to provide the path of the file okay i need to provide the path of the file let me provide the path uh, where exactly i want to create let's say i'll create a folder here the same project itself you can also create the folder in your machine and give the path guys that's not a problem let me create this uh, folder in the same project so i'll say files okay under this files i'll create a new file okay say sample text file guys okay so i'll say arun dot txt file okay some sample text file here you see there is nothing in this file right there is currently there is nothing in this file so i'll give the path i'll copy the path copy path or reference and uh, when i say right click on this file and say copy path or reference i am getting this multiple options i'll take the absolute path for now and paste it here as it is okay and here you have to replace this back uh, backslash with uh, multi double backslash just replace this backslash with double backslash for giving the path in python okay done and this is a file guys i am talking about this is the file this is the path of this file and uh, i am opening this file in which mode write mode so that i can perform write operation now i'll say file dot okay write okay file dot write what i want to write just write guys whatever you want to write okay my name is arun motori okay and uh, i will write again i'll write one more statement okay i am teaching python programming okay like this two lines have written after you write the required data into the files using this uh, write statements now final thing is after you are done writing what you have to do 
you have to close the file right so for that i'll say file dot close that's it okay now run this code guys run this code right click run okay it has been run now open this text file you see whatever the text have typed here right using this right statements whatever i have provided right that got typed but the problem here is this statement and this statement got printed in the same line i want this statement to be coming in the new line so what i have to do here is i have to say somewhere here i will say slash n new line okay now run this code so original uh, i mean previously written text will be replaced guys because this is write mode okay i am opening this file in which mode write mode if i say append mode this text will get appended okay the uh, previously entered text will not be gone if i say append but if i say write mode here the previously containing the, the file containing the text right this text will be replaced by this new text okay that is the write mode guys it is not going to append this write mode is not going to append the text rather it is going to replace this text okay replace this particular old text with this new text where slash n is there okay run this code done now open the text file you see this time the old text is gone and the new text came my name is arun motri and in the new line because of slash n here okay the control is going to the new line and here again i am teaching python programming is got printed fine done so this is called as uh, writing guys okay so if you have to write uh, data into the files in python you have to open the file then perform writing whatever you want to write write it how many lines you want to write write it and after that you have to close it okay now the next thing writing is done guys this is all about writing now let's read read the data from the files okay so what i will do here is i'll remove this stuff okay as we have already written the text okay as uh, the text is already there i don't have to write it again right the text file arun.txt file already has the text okay so this time the purpose i am opening this file is for reading right in the read mode i am opening this particular arun.txt file in read mode i cannot write now i can only read from the file okay so i want to read the data from the file for that we have several methods okay several functions you can several functions in inbuilt functions in python for reading the data from the files okay so we can use as simple as read okay if i say file dot read like this if i do okay this will read the entire entire text from this file okay whatever this file has the entire content will be read by the read function okay but i have to print it right i have to print it or i have to store this in something okay so print it okay whatever that is read will be printed in the output run this code you see in the output my name is arun motori this whatever the text that is there inside the already there is some text inside this arun.txt file right that got read by this read inbuilt function of python okay and it has been because of this print statement it is printed here okay so using read using read we can read all the text that is there in this file okay now i don't want to read the entire text that is there in the file rather i would like to read only the 15 characters okay only up to 15 characters i want to read i want to restrict this reading to 15 characters here how many characters are there uh, which got read using the the complete text the complete text is of uh, more than 15 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 up to here is a 15 guys okay so this extra will not come now because i am restricting that to 15 characters only it has to read only 15 characters now run this code you will see up to my name is arun got printed okay that is 15 next read lines it will read all the lines okay here in this arun.txt file there are two lines you can have more lines also for now there are two lines so if i say file dot otherwise if i say file dot read lines lines all the lines will be read one by one okay so this will return in the form of list guys okay string list so here i'll say lines is equal to okay whatever the lines here only two lines are there so the two lines will be returned in the list format this lines is nothing but the list so you you know how to work with the list right for each loop we can use for line in for each and every line in lines okay print that line okay if i say like this okay for each and every line in that lines print that line so this way we can do guys run this code you see my name is arun motori some space is coming here and i am teaching python programming okay so i am teaching python programming okay? you see the text has been read from the files right 
so line by line okay like this okay this, this if i print this lines as it is okay for example if i print lines like this okay the list of lines will be printed okay the list of lines will be printed on this code you see the list of lines got printed you see this is a list guys in python you already know right in the previous sessions i already explained uh, how the list looks like square brackets enclosed and in that each and every element is a line right each and every element is a line go here guys so there is a slash in here somewhere that's why it is coming that's why we are getting too much of space here that's okay while writing the text uh, we were writing like that right that's no other way okay i'll say my name is uh, arun modori okay uh, i am teaching i'm just modifying this text now let's see okay python programming okay like this i'll write now save this file okay it's already saved i guess let's open yeah it's saved auto save done now what i'll do is i'll i'll say i'll just run this code okay i'll run this code this time it will be good you see my name is arun motori i am teaching python programming okay i am teaching a list of string text are coming here but here so it's not going to the new line right it's not going to the new line okay what i have to do if, uh, i have to my name is arun motori i'm teaching python programming is coming in a single line because it is reading this entire thing as a single line i have to do like this okay then it will work now run this code you see my name is arun motori slash n is there because of that new line and then my name is arun motori slash n and i am teaching python programming got printed okay so like this guys uh, we can use read lines we can read all the lines okay all the lines in the text and all these lines will be stored in the form of list and uh, in order to work with the list you already know right how to use for loop with the list for each loop with the list so with that technique i am able to print all the lines in the text okay text file now few more uh, few more uh, inbuilt functions are there the next function we have is the read line guys okay it reads line by line okay only one line it will read it, it's not a list of lines it's a one by one line okay let's see uh, here i'll remove all this stuff and simply say file dot read line only line single line okay this will only read single line guys if i say print off file dot read line run this only one line will be printed my name is around first line in the this text file only this first line in the text file got printed again if i say print off file dot read line okay file dot read line this will print the next line okay after reading the first line this will print the this is the first line this is the second line guys okay open this file the second line will be printed in the output run this code you see my name is arun motori the second line i am teaching python programming is getting printed here okay so this is how the read line will work and now we can also append guys okay the existing text we can append the text so let's do one thing uh, for appending right we have to open this uh, file in right, uh, append mode a mode okay you have to give a here a means appending now i'll say file dot append of uh, sorry not append uh, file uh, appending mode i am file dot write you have to say again file dot write so this time it's not going to write guys it's going to append because here we have a right here let's give the text uh, let's say slash n okay python is an easy programming language okay python is an easy programming language run this code you see okay so here a mode and writing means it's not writing actually it's appending guys so if you open this around.txt file you see you got one more line okay python is an easy programming language you got a space here because you gave the space okay that's a problem so i'll remove this again and let's run this again i'm just removing this part okay now run this again run this this time you'll get proper you see this will get appended so you see it's not overriding this ex existing text it's adding a it's appending a new line okay it's not overriding the previous text with the current text okay so it's appending means it will append it will not uh, delete the old and uh, add the new one it's instead attach okay python is an easy programming language my name is arun motri i am teaching python program python is an easy programming language done now next one guys next one is using for each loop for reading a file okay so so now we have three three lines in this uh, text file we have three lines in the text file what i will do is after opening the file before closing the file i'll write this uh, for loop like this okay for line in file okay for each and every line in this file print that line guys nothing much okay print that particular line guys nothing much okay you can also use like this okay you don't have to uh use read lines and convert that to list and for with the list you don't have to use a for each for each loop rather directly okay 
using this file only we can say for here you don't have to mention line you can mention a l whatever you want but to understand right for each and every line i just gave line here for line in file for each and every line in the file print that line okay here we have this particular text file has three lines so it will print three lines okay so what's the problem okay it's okay append okay you see the problem is in appending mode i cannot read right okay i cannot read this this is trying to read so r mode you just change it to r r for reading now run this code it will work my name is arun motri first line after that i am teaching python programming python is an easy programming language everything got printed fine so this is the thing guys okay this is how we can read or write data into the files and from the files and also we can additionally we can also mention appending mode where we can also append the new text to the existing text in the file okay we can get more text into the file okay without replacing the old text we can append if you only say w old text will get replaced with the new text okay replaced here no replace it's appending it's reading only okay like this we can handle the files in python guys so that's it guys thank you bye hello welcome to part 42 of python tutorial in this session we are going to get started with object oriented programming concepts in python that is i am going to start with classes and objects in python so let's get started guys first of all the very basic thing that you have to understand in object oriented programming concepts is what exactly is a object okay the very basic thing that we have to understand to get started with object oriented programming concepts is what exactly is an object object in simple terms is a a real world entity okay what is the meaning of the real world entity in this real world whatever you can see that is a real world entity guys on my table i have a water bottle i have a mobile phone i have a laptop i have a mouse i have a mouse pad i have a table okay and i have a lot of things before me right all these are real world entities okay if i go outside my home then on the road i see a lot of cars buses okay other big buildings shops shopping malls and all all these are real world entities guys anything anything in this real world is a real world entity guys starting with your watch belt okay pen book you can the examples are endless right so to represent this kind of real world entities in the python programs okay we have to create objects in python to represent this kind of real world entities we have to use objects we have to create objects guys okay that is a way of representing the real world entities in this real world into the python programming as objects so hope you guys understood what exactly are the objects now right object is a real world entity that everything that you see in this real world like a pen book paper whatever it is okay that is a real world entity examples i have already given just now water bottle mobile phone laptop mouse pen book all these things are real world entities okay how to represent them how to represent the real world entities in this python programming with the help of objects okay we have to create objects guys okay objects need to be created in python to represent the real world entities that means objects in python programming are nothing but real world entities in the real world okay representation of the real world entities objects are nothing but the representation of the real world entities okay fine now let's go with the class guys okay after you understood hope you understood what exactly is an object now now the time has come for us to understand what exactly is a class okay after you understand the object you have to understand other term known as class guys what is a class 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 is like a template guys okay class in simple words is a template or you can call that as a blueprint or okay uh it's like a factory guys okay factory which produces this objects okay class in python programming is nothing but a template or blueprint or factory for creating this kind of objects with the help of the class template we can create objects okay we can create objects okay so if i take an example of a class a car class okay let's assume that this car is a class using this car class we can create real world cars what are the different real world cars we have lot of cars are there in the world right 
for example i want to represent a real world car like uh, okay honda ms honda ms in india honda ms right swift vdi another car model in uh, india okay we have um, audi audi some model okay some model x then okay mercedes benz like this any cars you can create guys any models any cars okay so here here these are the real world entities right if you if i go onto the road i see all these cars on the road right if i have to represent such kind of real world entities we have to create objects but using what we have to create objects using the template here car is the template guys okay using the template like car we can create this kind of real world objects real world cars here car is like a class and here this real world representations are nothing but objects okay so now hope you understood what is a class class is like a template or blueprint or factory using which we can create this kind of objects okay class is like a template blueprint or factory using which we can create this kind of objects fine okay so creating class in python now guys uh, i don't want to go so deep right away okay for now you just understand the basics of the object oriented programming concepts you just need to understand what is an object what is a class okay object is a real world entity representation in the python programming whereas class is a template blueprint or factory for creating the objects in the python program for now that is enough guys okay these two things i am going to demonstrate in a detailed manner in the upcoming sessions okay we just started guys here we are understanding the concepts okay practically i'm going to give you a lot of examples on objects and classes and in this example so this example also i will take okay i'll create a car class and i'll create different type of uh, object representations which got created from the car class template all these things i'll practically demonstrate in the coming sessions guys for now just we are just getting started okay so just to understand the syntax of the class and uh, object in python i will be demonstrating the, the this stuff okay here i'm going to demonstrate this uh, class i'll create a, some sample class and uh, i'll try to create an object using that class okay so car is a template right using the template i'll create an object okay how to create object how to create the class in python okay all this stuff i am going to explain guys this is the basic stuff guys okay this is not the real stuff the real stuff you'll get in the upcoming sessions okay slowly we'll understand more about objects and classes and why, what is the purpose and all you will understand in the upcoming sessions just to get uh, used to the syntax okay just to get started or getting used to the syntax of this class and objects in python i'm just starting here okay so no hurries let's learn step by step okay first of all let me create a class okay here i opened this pycharm id guys here i opened the pycharm id here we have this uh, uh, sample python file under this project right sample python file is there in this project in this python file i am going to create a class how to create a class in python we have to use a keyword known as class keyword followed by the name of the class uh, let's say car okay car is the name of the class i am giving here i am creating a class having the name as car that's what is happening after that i have to provide this colon then here under this class you can create variables and functions okay under this class you can create variables and functions till now we have not created any class in the till the previous sessions right we have not created any class now i have created a class under the class i will be creating the variables and functions you already know what are variables and functions as explained in the previous session first let me create a variable guys say wheels is equal to 4 okay wheels is equal to 4 is a variable and value and one function i will create how to create functions in python guys def is a keyword right def start car function okay start car here i will simply write a sample print statement saying car started this is a very sample example guys don't think this is a reality so you'll understand more why we have to create why we have to create class why we have to create use uh, objects using the class all those things you will understand later guys okay the purpose will be understood later for now we are getting started we are getting used to the python programming in terms of the class and objects object oriented concepts okay so for now as a sample i created a car class okay a class having the name car under that 
one variable is there one sample variable is there one sample function is there and here one more thing guys okay if you create this function directly outside the class that is called as a function okay for example not inside the class but outside the class if i create a function def uh, sample one okay sample function if i create and here print of here sample inside sample function if i write here this particular function is outside the class or inside the class this function is outside the class this is called as a function guys okay whatever the thing i have written here is a this is called as a the below is a function in python right but if the same function is created inside the class then terminology wise though it looks like a function terminology wise we have to call this function as a class uh, sorry a method okay terminology wise we have to call this function as a method the below is a method in python okay a function which is there a function which is created outside the class is called as a function a function which is created inside the class under the class is known as a method what is that called as method guys okay here also i provided guys just see here also i provided function which is created inside the class in python is known as method whereas function which is directly created inside the python file outside the class is known as a normal function okay it's a normal function but this is this function is of a method type okay it's a method you can call that as a method here inside this class what we have created a sample variable and a sample method we created it's not a function gets it's a method because this function which is there inside the class is known as a method hope you are able to understand how many methods are there under this class only one method you can create any number of methods guys okay here i created only one variable and one method but you can uh, but you can create any number of variables and any number of methods inside the or under the class okay and uh, here this one is a function guys okay if you create the same function outside the class that is called as a function but inside the class that is called as a method fine so far so good right here i created the class template okay i created that class template or blueprint or factory using this what we can create as i mentioned here using this class template or blueprint or factory we can create we can create what guys using this class or template blueprint or factory we can create what we can create objects that is we can create real world entities for example i'll create something like this how to create object then what is the syntax now you understood how to create a class in python but how to create objects in python simple guys copy the class name and provide the circular brackets that's it this is this statement is creating an object for the car class using the car class template we are creating an object so this is object creation statement guys okay the below is the okay the below is the object creation statement okay so for which using which class template we have created the object using the car class template we created one object the moment you say like this okay the moment you create an object for the car class like this using the car class template like this in the computer memory okay let's say this is the computer memory in the computer memory the moment you write this statement the name of the class followed by the circular brackets if you provide that is nothing but the object creation statement in python guys okay object got created in the memory in the memory in this computer complete computer memory somewhere some reserved memory will be okay some memory will get reserved for this some memory will get reserved for this object object got created guys okay so here some object guys i don't know what is the name of the object i'm simply saying object one for the object one some memory got reserved in the computer memory okay the object got created and in the memory some space got reserved for this object one that's one thing good now how to refer to this memory how to refer to this object memory so if if you remember guys uh, variables also if you store data into your uh, in python if you store data okay using what you are accessing the data from your computer using the variable names right using the variable names similarly objects can also be accessed using the kind of variable names and we call that as object references okay here i'll say so using some name i'll access this object that got created okay this statement has already created the object but in the memory to refer to this memory we need some name right some name we have to use to refer like uh, the similar to variable names 
some name you have to use for referring this uh, reserved memory for the object in the computer memory okay that is called as object reference okay that name is called as object reference case for example here i'll say this object i am assigning okay this object that got created using the statement i am assigning that to a kind of variable i'll call that variable as uh, h ames okay h m h a m a c ames okay h m s something like this okay h m s some variable name i am giving okay <clears throat> so this is called as object reference case okay it's not a variable case it is an object reference okay because what this uh, object reference is referring to it is referring to the object created by this statement okay object creation statement this particular reference is referring to the now you see here hms okay this object reference is referring to the object in the computer memory okay it is referring to the object in the computer memory fine now using this object reference we can access this variable sign methods under the class under the class we have some sample variables and methods right here in this example we have only one variable and one method so in order to access this properties of this class okay we can also call this variables and methods of the class as a properties of the class okay in order to access this uh, variables and methods that is properties of the class we have to use object reference what is object reference here the kind of variable which is referring to the memory object memory in the computer memory is nothing but the object reference right which is storing this which has the location address of this uh, newly created object right that is called as the object this object reference using this object reference only we can access this things so let's say i am using the object reference dot wheels i am accessing the wheels guys okay can i directly say print of wheels is it possible if i say print of wheels what's happening guys i am already getting error can i access this variable which is there under the one of the property of the class that is uh, variables wheels variable can i access it directly outside the class by using the print statement i am getting error guys so this is not possible okay this is not possible when i say print wheels it's not possible to access this right then how to access this one of the property of this car class for that you have to use the object reference of the object reference of this class okay what is object reference this is the object reference if i say h m a s dot wheels the error will be gone using the object reference you have to access case okay you cannot access this particular variable which is created inside the class if this particular variable is outside the class let's say uh, a is equal to 9 here a is a variable right a is a variable and is that under the class is this variable a under the class no right and i'm assigning some value say 9 i'm assigning some value say 9 to that if i have to access this variable you see i can simply access print of a no problem i can directly access because this variable is outside the class but whatever the variable i am talking about here wheels variable is not outside the class it's inside the car class in order to access this okay we have to first create an object for the class car class in this example we have to create an object for the car class like this after the object got created we have to create an object reference like this okay we have to assign that object to the one object reference like this okay some object reference like this using the object reference we can access the wheels because the wheels is inside the class using the object reference only we can access the wheels hope you are able to understand okay now run this code this will work okay you see error is not coming anyhow run this code it will print the wheels you see wheels similarly how to call this method is this method outside uh, is this particular function or method is inside the class or outside the class if i have this another function here let's say uh, uh sample okay we have this sample here and uh, inside sample i will say inside sample if i have to call this function this function is not inside the class right this function is not inside the class so if i have to call this function simply i will say sample that's it this particular statement will call the function and the function will be called if you run this code inside the sample will be printed somewhere okay but here can i call the start car also in the same way let's see whether i can call the start car uh, which looks like a function it's a method right start car is a method can i call this start car you see i'm getting error the reason here is start car is one of the property of this car class okay this variable and uh, method belong to the car class and to access this properties of the car class i have to create an object reference and using the object reference only i can access here if i say h m a z e dot start car error is gone run this code it will work now okay now 
you see to access the properties of the class we have to create an object for that and uh, we have to create the object reference referring to that object and using that object reference we have to access a variable sign and you can also call the methods inside the car class using that object reference and one more thing guys okay now we understood the small basics about the class uh, objects and all you can create any number of objects guys next thing is that you can create here only one object i created similarly you can create one more object okay here i can create one more object car okay this will create another object second object is being here already one object got created now this statement is creating the class name followed by circular brackets will create another object okay this object i am assigning to another object reference say uh, svdi okay another car okay like this svdi dot wheels like this i have to access okay using the object reference of the second object i can access the wheels also okay like this you can create any number of objects swift vdi okay now svdi dot star car swift vdi should start right swift vdi should start here we are starting the honda ms car here we are starting the swift vdi car like this guys using this is a template right using the template you can it's a template or blueprint or factory using which you can create any number of objects you can create any number of objects using the uh, template or blueprint or using this template or blueprint or using this class factory you can create any number of objects here first object is created here right this is the first object okay first object created here and using the object reference of the first object we have access the wheels and also we call the method inside the class okay honda ms start car okay it's starting the honda ms car here another second object created here okay here what we are doing we are creating the second object created okay here second object got created and uh, we created one more object reference say svdi swift vdi using that object references we are accessing this uh, uh, variable property of the class and also we are we are calling the method of this class that is start car method so we can create any number of objects right? there is no limit and uh, final thing guys final thing we are almost done okay we are almost done guys using the object reference we are able to access the variables and methods of the class we are already done and also i showed you how to create objects and how to create the object reference also okay using the object reference we can access the variables and methods of the class everything is clear clear but there is one more thing guys that uh, you may have not understood that is when i create a function inside a class inside a class when i create a function you are getting a keyword known as self keyword by default okay you see if i create one more function here you see f stop car the moment i provide circular brackets you see automatically my paisham id is adding this self keyword what is this self keyword why it is required okay you see when i create a function outside the class is there any self keyword here inside this function is there any self keyword no right but when i create a function inside the class under the class automatically self keyword is coming what is that self keyword then what is that self keyword why it is coming here when i create a methods inside the class okay when i create methods inside the class self keyword is coming but when i create functions outside the class self keyword is not coming but why the self keyword is coming for the methods i am creating under the class what is the purpose of that all those stuff i'll explain in the next session guys okay let me not cover this self keyword here because you'll get confused so first thing is that we have to understand what is an object object is a real any real world entity guys if you want to represent any real world entity in the python programming we have to create objects in python okay by creating the objects in python we are representing the real world entities in this real world okay like bottle pen book car anything okay okay so and what is a class class is like a template or blueprint or factory using which you can create any number of objects okay you can re, uh, represent any number of real world entities okay using this uh, class template you can create any number of real world entities that is objects okay here as i mentioned right using this class template we can create any number of objects like honda ms swift vdi using the class car template we can create honda ms car object swift vdi object audi mercedes some so and so on so on okay so that's what is a class and uh, the under the class we can create the variables and uh, functions but functions that got created under the class are called as methods whereas functions created outside the class are known as functions only okay so that also you understood you can create any number of variables and uh, methods under the class and uh, to access the properties of this class that is variables and uh, methods which are got created under the class right we have to first create an object for the class and using the object reference of that class okay using that object reference of that object 
we can access the variables and methods of the class okay we can only access the properties of the class by by creating the object reference first we have to create object and for that object we have to that object we have to assign to the object reference and using that object reference we have to access the variables and methods of the class and there is one more thing known as self keyword which i will be explaining later so in this session we are just getting started with the classes and objects in python guys we are getting started with the object oriented programming concepts and the basic things are class and objects i'm going to give you more examples on class and objects and help you in understanding them in a better way okay the realistic way but not now in the upcoming session okay then in the next session i will go with the self keyword guys where you will understand the purpose of the self keyword so that's it guys see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 43 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about self keyword in python so let's get started first of all what exactly is this self keyword self in python represents something that belongs to the class okay self keyword in python represents something that belongs to the class now let me practically demonstrate this self keyword for you for that i'll open this pycharm id and uh, here in this pycharm id we have a sample project under the sample project we have a sample python file inside this python file let me first create a class in the previous session i have already explained how to create a class in python right i am going to do the same thing we have to use a keyword known as class keyword okay in order to create a class in python we have to use a keyword known as class keyword followed by the name of the class let's say the name of the class is car and after that i have to provide this colon now under this car class i'll create some properties okay some properties i'll create let's say variable and method i'll create so let me first create a variable property okay for that i'll give some name of the variable as wheels and value as four and i'll create one method under this car class df start underscore car is the name of the method the moment i provide this circular brackets here pycharm id is automatically adding this self keyword i didn't type this right the pycharm id is automatically giving because whenever you create functions that is nothing but methods under the class okay you have to provide self keyword if i if i don't provide this you see you are going to get error okay you see when i pro don't provide the self keyword okay you are getting the error okay it, do it doesn't allow you okay you have to have the self keyword by default it is coming pycharm id is by default adding the self keyword but if you try to remove that you are going to get the error so there is a purpose why the self keyword is there by default in the methods of the classes okay it's there fine so here i'll simply say car started okay i'll write a print statement under this method and i'll simply whenever this particular method inside the car class is called we'll simply print out car started now i will create one more one more method i'll create here def okay or let's leave it let's leave it for now let's leave it guys so this particular car class has only two properties one is a variable property other one is a method property okay simple variable simple method now outside the class outside the class if i have to access this properties of the class what i have to do guys outside this class if i have to access the properties of this class can i access them directly can i say print of uh, wheels here you see outside the class if you try to print the wheels i'm getting error guys i cannot access like this right i cannot access the wheels like this what's the problem then the problem is in order to access the properties of the car class here we have to create an object for the car and using that object reference of this class we have to access right so this direct thing is not possible guys okay in order to access the wheels or this particular method to call this method outside the class it's not possible directly you see if i try to access this uh, call this particular method inside the car class you see i'm getting the error already okay this is not the way what i have to do is first i have to create an object for this car class okay outside the class i have to create an object for the car class and uh, this statement will create the object for the car class and uh, i have to provide an object reference okay this object i have to assign to the object reference so i'll give here like a car1 as object reference okay car1 is equal to car here car1 is the object reference now using this object reference using this object reference now i can access wheels okay directly if i try to access wheels that is not possible first i have to create the object for the class and using the object reference i have to access the wheels okay this concept i already explained in the previous session right 
ओके प्रिंट कार वन डॉट विल्स फाइन प्रिंट कार वन डॉट तो जस्ट गिव स्पेस हियर so after the class right just uh, it's asking you to give two spaces okay so so that the program will look good right so yeah i just play, uh, using the object reference i am able to access the wheels this is one thing run this code it will work print four in the output right similarly if i have to access this uh, if i have to call this uh, start car method which is inside the car class okay directly i cannot access right start underscore car will not work it will give error in order to access also i have to use the object reference I have to say car one dot start car. Now it will access. Run this code. After printing the wheels, it will it will it will call the start car method which is there in the car class with the help of the object reference. It will call and a car started will be printed. You see, run this code. After four, car started will be printed. Four and car started. That's all good. <clears throat> this is all good so far. Okay. So just to conclude, guys, if I have to access the properties of a class outside the class, I have to use the object reference, right? Here, using object reference, okay, we can access the properties of the class outside the class. Outside the class, if you want to access the properties of a particular class, you have to create the object reference. Using the object reference only, it's possible to access the uh, variables and methods of the class. But what about? I have one more function here. Let's say, let's say there is one more function. I will say example one function. Some dummy function example one function I'll create here. Here also self keyword is coming by default, okay? Because all the methods inside the under the class should have the self keyword as a first parameter, okay? That's mandatory. Fine. Here under the example one, what I want to do is I want to access these wheels, okay? You see, example one belongs to the car class. Wheels belong to the car class, okay? Example one belongs to the car class. Wheels also belong to the car class, but These methods and variables or properties are inside the same class. Now, if I have to access the wheels, I'm not accessing these wheels outside the class. I'm accessing these wheels inside the class only in one of the other property. So here, if I say print of wheels, what's happening, guys? It should be accessible, right? Not getting access. What's the problem here? Why I am unable to access the wheels here? What's the problem? The problem is we have to use a keyword known as Self keyword, okay. This wheels, the wheels belongs to which class? Car class, okay. This method belongs to which class? Car class. So in order to represent in Python that this properties belongs to the car class, the properties that belongs to the this particular class, if I have to represent, I have to use self keyword, okay. Self dot wheels, wheels which belong to our class, I want to access, okay. So outside the outside the class, if I have to access these wheels, I have to use object reference. Within the class, in some other property, if I have to access this uh, wheels within the class itself, I have to use self keyword. Okay. Outside the class, I have to use object reference. Outside the class, I have to use object reference. Within the class, I have to use self keyword. Hope you are able to get the point, right? Now, similarly, if I have to call this method, do I have to create object reference for this class? This method also belongs to the same class, right? Do I have to create object reference here? No. I have to use the self keyword. Self means what? something that belongs to the class okay self means wheels property which belongs to the class i want to access your same simple words wheels property which belongs to the class you are trying to access here okay here if i say if i want to call this start car i cannot call the start car like this okay even though the start car belongs to the same class i cannot call like this instead i have to say self dot start car okay the start car the start car method Which belongs to the class I want to access. So outside the class, if you want to access the properties of a class, you have to create an object reference. Using the object reference, you have to access within the class. If you want to access the properties of the same class, then you have to use self keyword. So hope guys, you understood the purpose of using self keyword in Python now. Okay. Now if I call this example one, okay, instead of creating all this stuff, okay. So uh, otherwise, uh, in order to call this example one, right? In order to call this uh, example one. I have to create an object, right? Outside the class, I have to create an object. So here, I will simply say car one dot example one. Okay. So what will happen when I call this example one? It will first print the wheels. Okay. Using what I am trying to access the wheels of the same class, self self keyword. Okay. So after that, it will call the start car method, which is there inside the class class, 
which is there inside the car class and uh, using what i'm trying to call this uh, start car which is there inside the same class self keyword okay this is the purpose of the self keyword guys okay run this code run this code you see the same output will be coming okay when the example one uh, method is called it will first print the wheels four will be printed after that it will call the start car car started will be printed done okay so this is not the end of the self keyword guys there is more okay you you need to more about the self keyword okay this is just the beginning this is just the beginning so whatever i explained about self keyword is getting started okay i just differentiated uh, the difference between the object reference and self keyword outside the class you have to use object reference for accessing the properties of the class within the class if i have to access the properties of the same class i have to use self keyword that thing you understood so simple terms self keyword represent something that belongs to the class okay self means what something that belongs to the class okay accessing the wheels which belong to the same class accessing the wheels uh, calling the method which belongs to the same class that that is what is self okay the meaning is something that belongs to the same class that is the meaning now there, there is one more thing we can do with the self keyword guys okay self keyword in python there is still some more thing that we can do uh, that thing i will cover in the next session in detail okay whatever i am going to say now i am going to cover that in the next session okay assigning function parameters to the that is method parameters to the class variables okay assigning the method parameters to the class variable i am going to explain in the next session in detail guys for now i am not going to explain so that's all for this session guys okay outside the class object reference within the class self keyword okay inside the class self keyword that's the difference if you remember that's enough okay in the next session we are going to see assigning the method parameters to the class variable using self keyword okay this also using the self keyword only guys so that's it guys thank you bye hello welcome to part 44 of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically show you how to assign method parameters to class variables using self keyword so let's get started first of all i'll open this pycharm id and in this sample python file i'll create a class a class car name of the class is car followed by the colon i have to provide under this i'll create a method say def okay sample sample method i am creating guys the moment i provide circular brackets here automatically the self keyword will come right the self keyword will come automatically as you already know under this method okay i'll not do anything now but what i will do is i'll not make this method like this okay i'll add some parameters apart from this default self i'll add some parameters to this particular method how to add the parameters here let's say uh, brand of the car okay model of the car then uh, price of the car and mileage of the car like this some four extra parameters i added into this sample method now okay now if i say print off okay brand comma model comma price comma mileage okay if i print this parameters this four parameters if i print here brand model price and mileage right there is no error here okay i am trying to access the parameters of this method inside the same method there are no errors now what i will do is i'll create an object for this car class okay car like this i'll create an object and i'll assign this object to the object reference say car1 is equal to car here car1 is the object reference using this object reference i'll call this sample method okay using this object reference i'll call this sample method okay i'm calling so if i run this code guys if i run this code you see here i'm calling the sample method but this sample method has four parameters right after this self keyword there are four parameters here that is brand model price and mileage but here am i passing any data into this parameters while calling this uh, sample method from this uh, method calling statement can i am i do, am i passing any arguments here no right run this code you will get error guys okay in the output you will get some error saying that the method you are calling okay the method in the class that you are calling from outside the class requires four arguments okay for which parameters it requires four arguments for brand model price and mileage okay this method is not an empty method it has four parameters okay you have to pass the arguments then only you can call this method so 
into the brand i'll pass something like honda into the model i'll pass something known as amaze amaze model honda is the brand of the car amaze is the model of the car and i'll pass the price as 9 lakh rupees and mileage as 14.5 like this here i am passing the arguments while calling this method of this class right using the object reference okay using the object reference i am calling this method of the class and i am passing the arguments because this method is an not an empty method it has four parameters now if you run this code it will work fine guys because this honda will go into brand amaze will go into model 9 lakhs will go into price and 14.5 will go into mileage and here this print statement is printing all those stuff okay whatever the uh, data arguments that these parameters have received right when you print the parameters okay since the parameters are accessible inside the same method okay they will be printed guys all these arguments will be printed in the print statement okay this method will be called and print statement will print all the arguments that are passed to these parameters run this code you see method got called sample method got called and also the arguments that are assigned to these parameters while calling the method got printed inside the method okay honda ms 9 lakhs and 14.5 mileage okay these four things we printed out that's fine so far so good i'll create one more method okay i'll create one more method guys i'll name this method as sample 2 sample 2 method okay so the sample 2 method got created here i'll try to print the same thing again okay brand model price mileage what's the problem here what's happening guys what is the problem here okay when i am trying to this method is also inside the same class right under the same class we have the sample to method but in the sample method all these parameters are getting printed but outside this method if i am creating another method and trying to print the parameters of the other method inside the same class i am getting errors that means the scope of these parameters is up to this method only we can use these parameters only within the method inside the method if you not a problem but outside the method in another method if you try to print these parameters of other method they will not be accessible okay so you cannot access the parameters of another method in a different method okay that is not possible guys now if you say car1 dot sample car1 dot if i call this sample2 you will get the same error guys okay these are not accessible okay in sample method because since these parameters belong to the same method these are accessible but in sample 2 the parameters of the other method will not be accessible guys that's the problem run this code you'll get the error you see first when you call the sample method this arguments got passed to these parameters and in the method the parameters got printed honda amaze 9 like 14.5 got printed after that when you're calling the sample 2 okay you see car dot sample 2 is giving some error guys saying it's not defined okay this particular brand is not defined that's why you're getting the error from the sample 2 method so how to overcome this problem to overcome this problem you have to understand one thing guys okay you have to understand one thing what if i create a variable here say wheels is equal to 4 okay when i say wheels is equal to 4 this wheels variable is directly created under the class not in any it's not a parameter of any method right it's a class related variable this wheels is equal to 4 is nothing but the class related variable directly created under the class class related variable okay class level this belongs to the class case this wheels belong to the class here in that case case since i am not able to access these parameters of another method in this method can i access wheels here if I provide wheels here, it, is it possible? Still, I am getting error. Why? Still, why I am getting the error, guys? The reason you are getting the error is, okay, the reason you are getting this error is, here, these wheels belong to what? Class. If you have to access the properties of the class, you have to use self keyword. Okay? So, you are accessing a particular property which belongs to the class. To mention that, you have to say self.wheels. You see, the error is gone okay this simple but i cannot say self dot brand self dot model that will not still work okay you see if i say self dot brand self dot uh, model self dot uh, price self dot mileage this will not work guys if you run this code you will get error because you see yellow color warning is already coming run this code you will get error in the output you see 
there is no brand variable under the car okay it's simply saying that you are saying self dot brand but car doesn't have any such brand kind of variable okay there is no particular variable which with the name brand belonging to the class so this is not possible they are saying but here wheels is directly created under the class so wheels belong to the car okay car class so to access the variables or properties or methods of this class you have to say inside the same class from different method if you want to access you have to say self dot wheels case okay this is what you have to do now run this code it will print at least wheels case okay this sample method will print brand model price because these properties are accessible inside the same method but outside the method these properties are not accessible but you can access the class level properties by adding the self keyword because this wheels belong to the car class so you have to say self dot wheels self means something that belongs to the class okay so wheels belong to the class so self dot wheel will wheels will work run this code it will work okay you see after printing honda ms 9 lakhs and 14.5 when you print self dot wheels four got printed in the output that's how it works guys okay so far so good but still what i want to do is i still want to access this properties outside the method i want to access this brand model price and mileage outside the method guys outside the sample method i want to access what to do these are properties of the method right they cannot be accessed at any cost but what we can do is here we will create some variables like for this car class okay so we will create some variables that which look similar to the which look similar to the this param parameters so like this brand is equal to brand okay here uh, model is equal to model price is equal to price i am trying to create some these are the parameters i want to create some class level variables like this i am trying to create but are these the class variables here you see when i double click here or select here you see only these things are getting selected right either i select this one or this one the same price is getting selected mileage or this mileage that means i am assigning the method parameter to the same method parameter it doesn't make sense but what i want to do is i want to make this brand model price mileage class level like wheels right here in order to access the wheels what i am using self dot wheels like this i want to access self dot brand self dot model in another method to make that possible guys you have to assign these parameters to the self dot brand okay if i say self dot brand is equal to brand here this brand becomes a parameter self dot brand becomes a class level variable like this inside the method also not here wheels is equal to four is a class level variable right you can access that using self dot wheels inside the method also you can create such kind of class level variables by assigning self dot brand okay even though this self dot brand is created inside the method it becomes a class level variable here again self dot model this self dot model becomes a class level variable for that we are assigning the value of this model parameter now self dot price is equal to okay price self dot mileage is equal to mileage now how many class variables are there apart from wheels because we are creating the self dot brand self dot model self dot price and self dot mileage right these four other variables also are the class level variables not only wheels now because you created self dot brand self dot model self dot price and self dot mileage okay now this class has four variables class level variables are four this these are the parameters guys this side right side uh, variables like brand model price mileage are the parameters method parameters but coming to self dot brand it is a class level variable wheels brand model price mileage are five class level variables we have this is another way of creating the class level variables guys and to that class level variables we are assigning the parameters okay whatever the data that comes to the parameters right we are assigning them to the class level variables like brand model price and mileage by assigning the self keyword this becomes a class level variables in the method this is possible guys okay within the method if you want to create the class level variables you have to use self keyword so fine guys okay so far so good now what i will do is here i'll say print print self dot brand earlier it was not working right when i said self dot brand it was not working but since we have the class level variables now this brand model price and mileage now belongs to the class because of the self keyword now i can say self dot brand comma self dot model comma self dot price comma self dot mileage you see they will be accessible now run this code you will see the output coming properly without any errors this time in a different method also 
I'm able to access okay this kind of parameter values by assigning the parameter values to the class level variables. Okay, that's the only way, guys. Here I'm trying to print the class level variables. Okay, these are not the parameters, guys. Okay, here without self keyword whatever that is there, those are the parameters. With self keyword whatever they that are there are the class level variables. Okay, run this code. You see when the sample to method got called self dot brand self dot model price and mileage got printed properly outside the method also i'm able to get this details this is the only way case this is the only way we can follow fine so and also this and also i'll create one more method i'll create one more method def sample three like this now in this method in this method what i want to do is i want to access i want to access these wheels wheels belong to the class right so if i say print self dot wheel size okay one thing so like this i have to access because wheels belong to the class now what about a sample guys what about sample or what about this sample to whatever this methods also belong to the same class okay what if i i have another method let's say i have another method say start car start car method is there let's assume that there is start car method like this i'll simply print car started here okay now this start car method also belong to the class right in order to access the start car method from a different method here also i have to use self dot start car okay that's it guys now call this uh, car one dot sample three okay so here we have to use a self keyword to access the prop, uh, properties of the class that's either wheels or methods we can access okay and also here using this method we are assigning the properties of properties of this method to the class level variables using which keyword we are doing self keyword that's what is the topic right assigning method parameters to class variables now when i say self dot brand this becomes a class variable i am assigning the method properties this brand model price and mileage or the method properties i am assigning to the okay i am assigning to the class level variables that is self dot brand self dot model price mileage these are the class level variables i am assigning so run this code everything will work fine okay you see four and car started got printed because we are accessing the class level properties using the self keyword and at same time here in the sample method we are assigning the properties of this method to the class level variables okay this self dot brand is a class level variable here brand is a method parameter okay so we have successfully assigned the method parameters to the class variable using which keyword guys this is possible using the self keyword okay when i add self keyword before this brand it becomes a class variable that's why assigning the method parameters to the class variables is possible using the self keyword so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 45 of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically show you how to initialize class variables using methods in python so let's get started first of all i'll open this pycharm id where we have the sample python file here i'll create a class using the keyword class keyword followed by the name of the class say car and followed by this colon okay these three things you can create a class class with the name car got created now under this class i'll create a method and the purpose of this method is going to be initializing the class variables okay in order to create the method i have to use def and the name of the method let me give some relevant name for the method so because i am going to use it for initializing the class variables right let me give that as initializing or initialization method okay some method name you just give us can give any name here i just gave initialization method and here i have to give okay i have to give method parameters okay parameters i have to give so this method i am going to use for initializing the class variables for that i need the parameters let's say whatever the class variables you want to initialize right that many number of parameters you have to give for example i want to give i want to initialize some car brand okay so i'll give brand parameter after that model of the car i want to initialize 
I want to even initialize uh, the price of the car and the mileage of the car. Like this, four parameters I have provided so that I can initialize these four varieties of class variables. Okay. So now let me create the class variables. Inside the method, we can create the class variables, right? Inside the method also, we can create the class variables. How to create the class variables here? I have to use a keyword known as self keyword as explained in the previous session. Okay. We have to use self keyword to create the class variables. Inside the method, if you create some variables with the help of the self that belongs to the car class variable. Okay. In this case, class variables. Self dot self dot brand. This is not a parameter, guys. Okay. This is not a parameter. Here, brand is a parameter. Method parameter is brand. But here, self dot brand belongs to the class variable. It's a class variable. So this car class, this brand variable belongs to that's why self dot brand to initialize the class variables with the method parameters. Okay, using the method we are initializing the class variables. Okay, this belongs to the class self dot brand belongs to the class to so that I am going to assign this brand done. Similarly, I'll create another class variable say self dot model. Okay, self means something that belongs to the class Here model variable belongs to the class because of using the self keyword. Okay. Is equal to parameter. This model is parameter, guys. Okay, this model is parameter. Again, self dot price class variable price. Okay, self dot price is the class variable. I am assigning the price parameter to self dot mileage. Self dot mileage is a class variable and mileage is a method parameter. So, like this, okay, I can initialize any number of class variables okay using a method we can initialize any number of class variables like this guys okay so now i'll create one more method inside this class okay car class say uh, print details method okay some print details method so what i will print here is i'll print print um, or otherwise i'll say def I'll say start car. Okay, I'll create one more one method known as start car. Here I'll say print which car started. Model sorry brand plus I have to say self dot brand. Okay, so in order to access the class variables, I have to use self dot brand car having model as what is the model guys? Model is self dot model. Okay, self dot model. plus as started anyhow this brand uh, this self dot brand and self dot, dot model will be instinct text so no problem you can use plus sign here not a problem okay similarly i will create one more method say stop car stop car here i will print print self dot brand plus car having model as plus self dot model as stopped okay car start so fine right uh, i'll i'll also create one more method three methods i'm creating here print car details okay if this particular method is called then it is going to print all the details of the car for example print i'll say uh, brand of the car is plus self dot brand then print model of the car is plus self dot model print price of the car it is an integer value right number okay i cannot use plus here but there is a way I can use still use place. Okay, I'll use that method. So price of the car is here. I'm concatenating this uh, string text. If I directly say plus self dot, if I say self dot price, right? That is a problem because this price will be in the number format. I cannot uh, concatenate a number with a string text. So what I have to do is I have to convert this right before concatenating. I have to convert the self dot price with str. I am converting that to string. After that, I am concatenating. This will work fine. Then same, then 
uh, print mileage mileage of the car also is in the number format mileage of the car is plus here of self dot mileage like okay all the car details will be printed so far we have written like this guys okay now what i will do is i will this particular method the first method inside this car class is going to initialize this class variables okay all this class variables that self dot brand self dot model self dot price self dot mileage belong to the class they are belong they belong to the class they are class variables okay all these class variables are being accessed in all the remaining method you see here self dot brand self dot model these are all the class variables these are not the parameters these are the method parameters but these are the class variables outside this method you can only access the class variables right not method parameters so that's why self dot model self dot model self dot price self dot mileage all these things are coming fine but the first method the intention of the first method is to initialize okay initialize the class variables with the method parameters now guys the first thing what i will do is i will create an object for the car class how to create an object for the car class i will say car like this okay this will create an object for the car class so what will happen in the computer memory in the computer memory okay some memory will be reserved for the first object okay object 1 some memory will be reserved the moment you create an object for the car class some memory will be reserved for the object 1 and in this object okay in, so for now this is object 1 got created so i'll create an object reference for this object guys so i'll say svdi okay svdi is equal to like this okay this is the object here svdi is the object reference. okay svdi is a object reference now what i will do is i will initialize the class variables using the initialization method with the help of this object reference okay here svdi is a object reference. that means this memory that got reserved for the object one created by for the car class okay will be referenced with the help of object reference known as svdi using this object reference you can refer to this object memory fine guys now i'll say svdi dot okay svdi dot initialize method initialization method so when you are calling this initialization method here parameters are there so i have to pass arguments for each and every parameter for this initialization method so here first parameter is brand second is model third one is price and fourth one is the mileage okay brand model price and mileage i have to pass coming to the price guys coming to the brand guys brand i will say um what is this maruti brand okay maruti is the brand company the model is swift model okay swift model okay swift vdi model you can say clearly swift vdi model then after that price is let's say 8 lakhs 8 lakhs in 8 lakhs in indian rupees and the mileage is and the mileage is how much let's say mileage is uh, 24 kilometers per liter okay 24 kilometers per liter fine done so like this you see i am passing the arguments and uh, this maruti will go into this brand and this swift vdi will go into when, when this particular initialization method is called using this object reference of the first object right okay this maruti will go into the brand this swift vdi will go into the model the 8 lakhs will go into the price and 24 will go into the mileage and all these arguments received by this method parameters will be initialized to the class variables that is this car class has this variables known as self dot brand self dot model self dot price and self dot mileage okay, all these class variables got assigned with this arguments indirectly with the help of via method parameters okay this is what is initialization guys and here we are initializing this class variables with the help of a method that's that's why i'm just saying the topic as initializing the class variables using methods in the python okay initializing the class variables using the methods in python so this will initialize the class variables using the methods in python fine now now what i will do is uh, if i call any of these methods okay fine here initialization is done right here because of this method because of uh, we calling this initialization method with the help of the object reference of this first object right we have initialized this so what happens in the memory is here okay uh, brand is equal to 
maruti okay will be stored in the object memory okay then uh, model is equal to swift vdi will be stored in the object memory then price is equal to 8 lakhs will be stored in the object memory then mileage is equal to 24 will be stored in the object memory like this guys okay whenever you initialize it in this particular object one memory which is referenced using this object reference one is vdi these details are stored again using the same object reference if i say i will do that later for now this is enough now i'll create one more object guys, for the car class okay this is the first object this is the second object i am creating and i'll create an object reference for the second object also let's say it's am okay amz okay h a m z okay so i'll say h a m z object reference dot I, i'll initialize this okay here also i'll say initialization method okay here also i need to pass these four parameters arguments the four parameters here i'll i'll send the uh, brand of the car as honda okay model of the car is ames then uh, price of the car as 9 lakhs and uh, mileage of the car is 14.5 kilometers per liter okay i have given different values here right so here also another object got created in the memory apart from this object one there is one more object got created in the memory like this okay so this is object two and here brand is equal to honda okay honda is stored model is equal to ames price is equal to 9 lakhs then mileage is equal to 14.5 like that you can create any number of objects guys okay here like this you can create any number of objects to this object to what is the object reference what is the object reference for this object to hmz right hamz hamz is a object reference in this case like this okay so in this object these details are being stored in the second object these details are being stored right fine now now what i will do is if i use this object reference after initializing this particular object and this is object reference right using this object reference okay if i say svdi dot start car if i say which car will be started if i say svdi dot start car which car which, which car will be started maruti swift vdi car will be started because this is object reference right honda amaze will not be started guys okay maruti swift vdi will be started because this is the object reference and these are the initialized data so when i say svdi dot start car maruti swift vdi car started will be printed in the right click run you see maruti car having the model as swift vdi has started got printed in the output now similarly if i say hamz dot start car this time using this object reference which car will be started honda amaze car will be started okay using this object reference this you see using this if you are trying to access start car method from the class the help of this object reference this car only will be started right honda ms car will be started run this code you see honda car having the model as ms started like this guys you can create n number of objects only two objects you created but you can create limitless number of objects okay for the same class you are creating multiple objects now here car class is acting like a template right this is a template guys okay car class is acting like a template and these are the instances of the class objects of the class okay first object of the class second object of the these are the instances of the class your class is acting like a template or blueprint or factory which is creating this real world objects right your swift vdi maruti swift vdi is a real world object right phone damage is a real world object fine like this you can create any number of objects guys and also using the swift vdi after starting the car i want to stop the car okay and using the swift vdi object reference svdi i will print the car details okay uh, print the car details there are three methods right after initialization there are three methods here all these methods we can call using the object reference you see swift vdi and here guys i'll put a line here so that we can see the difference just uh, just for the printing purpose okay i'm adding this line fine after that i'm starting the honda ms car and uh, i am stopping the honda ms car and also i am printing the car details of the honda ms car now run this code you get this detailed output you see maruti car having the model as swift vdi has started maruti car having the model as swift vdi has stopped 
brand of the car is maruti model of the car is 58 price of the car is 8 lakhs mileage of the car is 24 all the details related to the maruti car got printed here honda ames car ha having the model as ames has started honda car having model as ames has stopped brand of the car is honda model of the car is ames price is 9 lakhs and mileage of the car is 14.5 you see this is how it works guys so in this session i have practically shown how to initialize the class variables using methods in python right here i have used this method for initializing the class variables what are the class variables brand model price self, self dot brand self dot model self dot price and self dot mileage are the class variables i have initialized these variables with the help of the method parameters in python okay so so that's all for this session guys okay so that's all for this session in the next session i'll show a better way of initializing the class variables okay there is one more way guys for initializing the class variables okay without methods we can use constructors okay there is a concept known as constructors using which also we can initialize in the class variables but how to use constructors in python to initialize the class variables instead of methods what is the benefit all those things i'll explain in the next session so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 46 of python tutorial in this session i am going to practically show you how we can use init method in python for initializing the class variables so let's get started in the previous session we have used a normal method for initializing the class variables but in this session we are going to replace that normal method with the init method and i am going to show you what are the advantages of doing so for that i'll first open this pycharm id where we have the sample python file this is the code we have written in the previous session for initializing the class variables okay here brand model price and mileage self dot model self self dot brand self dot price and self dot mileage are the class variables these class variables we are initializing using the method parameter this is a normal method guys using the normal parameters of this method we are initializing the class variables right here now what will happen if i don't use this normal method for initializing the class variables rather if i remove this normal method name and in place of the normal method name if i give underscore underscore in it underscore underscore okay here i am using the here i am using what guys i am using in it method in place of the normal method i am going to use the in it method but how does this in it method make the initialization process simple compared to the normal method in it method makes the initialization process simple though the remaining syntax is same remaining process is same where the method parameters are getting assigned to the class variables everything is same but only the name of the method i change it to init this kind of method in java is called as a constructor guys okay in uh, in java we call this kind of methods as constructors in python this is a initialization method okay init method and it makes the initialization process easy why because when you scroll down after changing the normal method name to the init method if you scroll down here okay here the advantage is you don't need this extra step okay for initializing the class variables using the method parameters we have to call the method right but here for init method you don't have to call any particular method you don't have to use the object reference of this particular object to call the init method this is not required okay simply while creating the object itself you see this is the statement for creating the object while creating the object itself you need to pass the arguments okay okay this particular statement okay when the object is created for the first object is created for the car class automatically the arguments of this car class will be assigned to the parameters of this method and will be initialized class variables will be initialized here automatically okay this extra step is not at all required you don't have to use object reference of this class to call this init method which is which acts like a constructor in java guys this is nothing but a constructor in java in python this is how easy it is to initialize the okay this is how easy it is to initialize the class variables in python using init method we don't need that extra statement here also guys we are calling the separate method right for initializing but here when you create the object itself in the object creation statement itself you just have to pass this arguments this extra statement for initializing the class variables by calling a separate method is not at all required you see the code got optimized right you don't we have already reduced two lines of code okay if you have five objects you see five lines of code will be reduced right while creating the object itself this init method will be called and 
this arguments will be assigned to the uh, method parameters init method parameters and those init method parameters are getting initialized they are initializing the class variables here okay this init this uh, init method parameters are initializing the class variables here automatically okay so this process guys okay you will still get the same output okay whatever the output you already got in the previous session right the same output you got here you see this this arguments got uh, initialized with this uh, class variables for each and every object here svd object reference and hamd if i run this code guys the output will be same the output that we got in the previous program the same output you will get in the this program also you see Marthi Kaur has with models if PDI has started the brand of the brand model price okay Marthi details okay here owned am is 9 lakhs and 14.5 everything is perfectly working fine and also at same time we have reduced the number of lines that's the power of init method in Python guys so that's it guys this is how we have to use init method in Python for initializing the class variables thank you bye Hello everyone, welcome to part 47 of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about static variables, static methods, instance variables, and instance methods. So let's get started. So what are the different things I am going to explain in this session? One belongs to the static category, okay? That is static variables and static methods okay this variables and methods are static type okay they belong to the static category and on the other side we have instance category okay on the other side we have instance category where okay what are the instance category instance variables okay instance variables and instance methods okay instance variables and instance methods fine static variables and static methods and instance variables and instance methods so what is the difference between these two types of properties okay instance properties and static properties what is the difference between these two types of properties coming to the instance instance means which are related to objects okay instance means what guys which are related to the objects static means which are related to the class okay class level so which are related to the objects which properties are related to the class can be decided based on this factor known as if there are common properties those belong to the class okay if there are common properties like common variables and common methods those belong to the class if there are specific properties specific variables specific methods kind of properties they belong to the okay non common non common stuff i'll give examples also you'll get clarity in some time okay non common stuff belongs to the objects common stuff belong to the class okay the common stuff is specified with the static static variables and static methods non common stuff belong to the objects they are called as instance variables and instance methods for example for example if i take a common element like wheels is equal to 4 right wheels is equal to 4 every car okay every car has same four wheels right no matter you take any car okay in the market it has four wheels so this kind of variables can be specified as static okay can be treated as static okay these are static variables case okay which belong to the class level common stuff this is common to all the cars right wheels is equal to four is common to all the cars so it's a static variable okay simple terms and it and this kind of variables okay will be stored in the class memory they belong to the class case okay they belong to the class memory here class means class memory what about instance variables instance variables are non-specific i mean non-common things non-common things means what for example color of the car will the color of the car will be same for all the colors no right it keep changing for each and every color okay each and every car model the color will change and what about price yes price will not be same for all the cars price of one car will be different from price of the other car what about mileage okay mileage of one car will be different from mileage of another car okay model model of one car will be different from model of another car so all these kind of properties are specific to a object right so every car it's a different okay it's non-common 
non common okay non common such kind of properties need to be stored in the object memory that's why they belong to the objects okay this kind of changeable properties from one car to another car for example belongs to the object memory and common kind of things like every car has a four wheels such kind of properties need to be stored into the class memory and are static type whereas the the properties which are changing from one object to another object right those are instance properties and they will be stored in the object memories okay respect to object memories they will be stored now let me take an example guys and uh, okay syntactically and theoretically you have to understand everything guys for that i'll take an example i'll create a class known as car class same example car class inside this car class okay i'll create uh, i'll create some method guys okay i'll create a method say df okay df again init method this init method i covered in the previous session guys uh, if you are not aware of the init uh, init method in python just go and refer to the previous session okay so here i'll take okay here i'll take brand of the car model of the car price of the car and mileage of the car for changeable properties okay these properties keep changing from one car to another car right brand of one car will be different from brand of another car model of one car will be different from model of another car price of one car will be different from price of another car mileage of one car will be different from mileage of another car so this has to belong to the object memory so they have to be treated like a instance okay instance instance stuff these are all instance stuff so here i'll say self dot brand is equal to brand okay self dot model is equal to model self dot price is equal to price self dot mileage is equal to mileage so here all these four properties variable properties like brand self dot brand self dot model self dot price self dot mileage will belong to the instance type okay instance side because they keep changing right brand is different from different cars model is different for different cars price is different for different cars mileage is so they should be stored in the object memories right so we'll, we'll see that in action in, in some time okay now uh, i will create uh, something like day of start car start car start car and here i'll say print okay so self dot brand okay self dot brand car having model as plus self dot model okay self dot model has started has started okay fine done okay done guys in it start car okay good so far so good now now guys let's see i'll create an object okay i'll create an object for the car class car like this and for this object i'll create an object reference say swift vdi svdi okay svi vdi is object reference so the moment i create an object for this car class in the memory in the computer memory okay let's say uh, let's say this is a computer memory so some memory space will be reserved for the object one right one object will be created let's say object one some memory got reserved for the object one and uh, the reference for that object memory is svdi right svdi svdi is the reference for this object memory okay so using this we can access this uh, memory that got reserved for the object one okay so here okay there is nothing in this object at this moment nothing got stored so here while while creating an object for this car class okay here i'll provide i'll pass all the arguments for this parameters of this method right so into the brand i want to send swift sorry maruti maruti is a brand or Suzuki is a brand, whatever you feel convenient. Maruti Suzuki. Then uh, model is Swift VDI is a model. Price, let's say it is 8 lakh in Indian rupees. And mileage, mileage is okay, mileage is 24 kilometers per liter. Okay, fine. So the moment I pass this arguments while creating the object, okay, this init method will automatically assign this arguments received by this method parameters 
into the instance variables. These are instance variables, guys. Okay, this all these things are instance variables. They are different for different cars, right? Brand is different for different. These are instance variables. Okay, so here for this object, brand is equal to Maruti. Okay, model is equal to Swift VDI. Uh, then price is equal to eight lakh. Then uh, mileage is equal to twenty four. Okay, like this, all details got stored in the object one, right? All this details got stored in the object one. Okay, so because why these details are stored in the object memory? Because these are instance variables. This all these four are brand, model, price, and mileage are instance variables. Okay, fine. Now let me create one more. Okay, let me create one more car. One more object I am creating for the car class. This time I'll pass different arguments. Say Honda, comma, Amaze, Amaze, comma, nine lakh, comma, fourteen point five. Okay. And here I am giving the object reference as H E M Z. Okay. Honda Miss H A M Z. Let's say. So another object will be created. Let's say another object got created. That is object two. Here brand is equal to Honda. Model is equal to Ames. Price is equal to nine lakhs. Mileage is equal to fourteen point five. You see these instance variables are holding the values. Different values for different objects, right? Here you see, here brand is Maruti, but here for another car, brand is Honda. Such kind of changeable, okay, different, non-common things have to be created as instance variables in Python, okay? Such kind of non-common variables, okay? The variables which store non-common data according to the different objects right they have to be stored into the object memory and they are called as instance variables these are instant brand model price mileage which are changing from object to object are instance variables okay here h a m z but what if what if have to if i create something like wheels is equal to 4 here so instead of saying self dot wheels is equal to wheels here I am writing this directly under the class, right? Here wheels is equal to four. I am writing directly under the class because wheels will be four for all the cars. No matter which car you take, all the cars will have the wheels as four. This is a common variable which should belong to the class memory. So the moment I say wheels is equal to four, instead of the wheels is equal to four, wheels is equal to four stored in each and every object, right? It is not a correct process, right? Here wheels is equal to four. Again, in the memory, another slot is reserved for this. Okay, so in we are wasting the memory, right? If you are writing wheels is equal to four, wheels is equal to four in each and every object. Tomorrow you have hundred objects. In each object, if you specify wheels is equal to four, lot of memory is memory space is wasted, right? We should not be writing that kind of non-common memory. We should not be writing in objects memories. Instead, okay, instead, what is the class, guys? Car class, right? The common memory known as car class memory. Here wheels is equal to four will be stored. Wheels is equal to four will be stored as a common thing, right? It is a common for all the cars, so such kind of common stuff should be stored in the class memory rather than the object memory. Okay, here common. Okay, here non-common. Objects means non-common. Objects means non-common. Okay, car means common. At this level, common stuff. Fine. So far so good, right? So the next thing is I'll create. Uh, a method also. Okay, so far I created the instance variables. This is an instance variable, guys. Self dot brand is an instance variable which which uh, gets stored into the object memory, whose value gets stored into the object memory because they keep changing from object to object. So these four are the instance variables. What about this method, guys? This method is also an instance method. This method is also an instance method. Fine. But what about uh, here? We have instance variables, instance methods. But here we have static variable, which is a common variable. But do we have static methods? 
yes we can create static methods also in python how to create common methods in python for that we have to say at the rate static method this annotation we have to use guys under this annotation if you create a method that becomes a static method here i'll write print car wheels okay print car wheels so here self is not coming automatically for static methods self is not required for non static methods only self will come if you still try to write self here that is not a okay that's not a uh, self keyword this is not a self keyword guys this acts like a parameter that's the problem okay it's like it's acts like a, it acts like a parameter you have to pass the argument to that okay so it's not a self keyword if you still type self this is not a self keyword guys it is a parameter it become it acts like a parameter so don't write anything here if you don't have parameters don't write anything like that okay so here this is a static method static method will under the class will not contain self keyword non static methods will contain the self keyword okay fine now here i'll say print print i want to print the number of wheels okay whenever this particular method is called i want to print the number of okay this wheels i want to print but here how to access this wheels can i say self dot uh, wheels here can i say self dot wheels that's not correct if i say self dot wheels this will becomes an instance variable right here self dot brand self dot model self dot price and self dot mileage are the instance variables okay only the instance variables have to be specified with self dot kind of variable name but here wheels is not a instance variable and that's why you are uh, and the problem here is the problem here is this static method case okay static methods can only access the static stuff so if you try to access any of the non static stuff that is a instance kind of stuff like a self dot price definitely you are going to get the error okay so this is not allowed okay i'll tell you more about that later for now we should not be accessing the wheels with the help of the self keyword if you try to access the wheels with the help of self keyword that means self wheels is a instance stuff right that is not the correct process only the instance variables should be accessed using self keyword the static variables need to be accessed with the help of the class name okay because static variables belong to the class right so in order to access this okay static variables we have to use the class name okay we should not be saying self we have to say class name that is car dot wheels like this is the correct process okay to access the static variables we have to use the class name because wheels belong to the common memory that is class memory using the class name only we have to access the wheels we should not be using self here for instance variables we have to use self guys okay fine so we created one static variable one static method uh, here uh, four instance variables and one instance method okay instance method fine so now outside the class how to access outside the class how to access all this stuff so let's say i'll start with uh, just created two objects right that's fine after this so in order to access in order to access the instance variables or instance methods outside the class okay in order to access the instance variables and instance methods outside the class we have to use object reference right svdi for example if i say print of svdi dot brand okay you see instance variable i am accessing outside the class with the help of object reference because this belong to the this brand belong to the which memory object memory so we have to use object reference to access the brand so if i say print of svdi other instance variables let's try to access price again using the object reference because price is also instance variable so object reference dot price again svdi object reference dot mileage here print svdi dot model brand model price and mileage okay print but if i have to access a static variable which belongs to the common memory that is class memory then i should not be using the object reference guys that is not the correct process since it belongs to the class memory i have to use the name of the class car dot wheels have to say okay i should not be using svdi dot wheels or hamz dot wheels that's not a correct process i have to use the name because wheels is a common thing you have to use with the we have to access using the class name you have to access using the class name guys fine so far so good <clears throat> right what about the 
what about the instance methods and uh, static methods how to access same thing applies guys okay instance variables belong to the object memory static methods belong to the class memory so when you are accessing the instance methods you have to use object reference for example svdi is object reference of the first object svdi dot start car i can say because this is an instance method you have to access using the object reference. but in order to call this print car wheels which is a static method okay we have to use the class name i have to say instead of saying svdi dot uh, print car wheels i have to say car dot print car wheels this is the correct process okay because this is a static method which belongs to the class memory hope you are able to understand so far if i run this code it will work fine okay so it will print brand model price mileage and uh, it using the car class we are printing the wheels and uh, using the object reference we are calling the instance method using the cla uh, car class we are accessing the or calling the print car wheels okay now run this code everything should work should get the car proper output so model brand of the car using the object reference okay model of the car using the object reference price of the car using object reference and uh, no, uh, i mean mileage of the car also using the object reference but coming to the number of wheels to be printed wheels is a common memory and we have to use static variable we have to call using the car so we got the number of wheels also and also when you say start car okay this is an instance variable you have to use object object reference okay object reference because this belongs to the object memory so maruti car having the model as 50 vdi has started got printed and to access this print car wheels which actually prints how many wheels are there for the car okay which also is a static method you see it's a static method so you have to use the class name again car dot print car wheels has printed four here it is called and number of wheels that is four got printed and here one more rule guys okay there are few more rules here let me explain so now you understood at a high level what are static variables uh, instance variables uh, static methods and instance methods right instance uh, variables and instance variables uh, instance variables and instance methods belong to the objects object memory static variables and uh, static methods belong to the class memory which is a common memory here instance variables and instance methods are non common memory okay object specific memories okay fine because every object is different right every object represent a different uh, thing in a real world okay fine so so far so good now so till here you understood last item guys this one you have to specifically understand static methods can only access static stuff this is the right time to explore you see static method can only access the static stuff here we will see the static stuff right static variable so under the static method you can access the under the static method you can access the non static sorry uh, under static method you can access the static stuff okay but what about non static uh, that is uh, instance variables can you access no it's not possible try to use print self dot brand this is not possible guys okay as it is clearly stated here static methods can only access the static stuff that means static methods can only access this kind of static variables like wheels or if you want to call any other method that method also should be static method right so here if i say self dot brand or self dot model self dot mileage self dot price you see you will get error guys this is not possible or if i try to call from static method if i try to call an instance method that is also not possible okay try to call this uh, start car self dot start car if i try to do like this self under uh, self dot start car if i say you see this is a instance method which cannot be accessible from the static method static methods can only access the static stuff okay i'll i'll create one more method here def okay so demo method some demo method guys so i'll 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 just uh, remove the self keyword here and i'll make this method also a static method okay i'll make this method a static method let's see at the rate static method and i'll simply say print demo method okay demo static method demo static method okay this is another static method now from inside the static method if i have to call this method i, I can say car dot demo method okay this is a way static methods can only access the static stuff static methods can only access the static stuff but if you try to call instance methods from the static methods that is not possible right that's not possible fine 
but non static methods can access both static and non static here you see if i say print self dot brand no, uh, in instance method can access the instance variables and also instance methods can access the static variables also so you see no errors are coming but only the problem with static methods is that it can only access the static stuff here we'll see the static type static variable and this method demo method is also another static method so no problems here but if you try to access okay if you try to access either static variables or instance variables from inside the instance method no problem guys okay that's not a problem only static methods can only access the static stuff instance methods can access both static and non static stuff clear instance methods can only access the static stuff fine but still but still from static methods if you still want to access the instance stuff there is a way guys the way is we have to create the object for this car class okay inside the static method we have to create an object for the car class like this car this is only way guys okay you see by default static methods can only access static stuff but if you still want to access the instance instance stuff from the static methods then you have to create an object for the class okay in which that instance uh, stuff is there and uh, just give something let's say c1 is equal to car and just pass something just pass uh, some details okay so let's say hyundai comma i20 the price is uh, 10 lakhs mileage is 13 and using this object reference inside the static method using this object reference we can access the instance stuff now okay without creating the object we cannot access instance stuff inside the static methods okay that is the funda c1 dot brand you see i can access there are no errors coming right now using the object reference i can access inside the static methods but directly but directly guys without creating the object for the class inside the static methods if you try to access the instance methods it is not possible okay so guys these are the basics okay these are the basics okay uh, basics regarding the static stuff and non and instance stuff in python okay so this is how we have to work so that's all for this session guys that's all i wanted to demonstrate and explain in this session as part of the static variables static methods instance variables and instance methods in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 48 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about inheritance so let's get started first of all what exactly is this inheritance in order to understand inheritance let me give you a real world example in this real world okay there are parents right in every home there are parents for these parents there are children let's say these parents okay these parents acquired some properties okay they purchased some properties buildings whatever it is okay those properties which belong to the parents okay will be given to the children okay the children of these parents okay will acquire the properties okay at later point of time okay the parents will hand over the properties to their children and children to their grandchildren and so on right so here the children are acquiring the properties that belong to the parents this is called as inheritance right in real world also this name inheritance means okay inheritance means what children acquiring the properties of the parents is known as inheritance in different programming languages including python we have the concept of inheritance where okay where the child classes okay where the child classes acquire the properties of the of the parent class okay so the child classes acquire the properties of the parent class in any programming languages including python guys and this concept in python is known as inheritance okay as you can understand this real world example now 
coming to the python programming also same thing guys okay here we have the child classes which acquire the all the properties of the parent classes let me practically demonstrate this for you for that i'll open this pycharm id and here we have the sample python file i'll create a class say a name of the class is a this particular class a has some properties properties of the class means what variables and methods okay let me create a sample variable say a is equal to some nine okay a is equal to nine and also let me create a sample method say f method underscore a and here i'll say print of okay inside inside method a so this is class a okay one class is created now let me create another class guys say class b okay here also i'll create some properties say b is equal to 10 def method underscore b here i'll say print of inside inside method b okay two classes i created class a class b now okay class a has two properties class b has two properties but what if i make this class b a child class of the class a okay what if in python i make this class b a child class of this class a how can i make this uh, class b a child class of the class a simple guys after this b provide the circular brackets and provide a guys okay in the circular brackets after that class b provide the name of the class which you want to make as a parent of the b class okay so here a is the parent of the b class b is the child of the a class a parent class the moment you make this class b a child of the class a all the properties of the class a now will belong to the class b okay all the properties that means uh, these variables and methods of the class a okay are now inherited by the child class b here with the b it looks like there are only two properties that is one variable b and one method method b but since you have made this class b a child class of parent class a here okay these properties of this parent class a also belong to the class b so how can i prove that that uh, class b contains not only the properties of the class b but also it inherits the properties of the class a how can i confirm for that guys let me create an object for the class b okay I just created an object for the class B and uh, let me assign this object to the object reference say OBJ is equal to some object reference OBJ is equal to B using this object reference okay using this object reference I can not only access the okay properties of the class B but also the inherited properties from the class A that is all these properties are inherited by the child class b right all those properties also i can access using the object reference of the class b so if i say print print obj dot you see here i am getting the properties of the class a also because class a is a parent of the class b so all the properties of the class a now belong to the class b also so the properties which belong to the class b are coming class a are coming when i simply create an object for the class b and using the object reference of the class b if i try to access i can access not only the properties of the class b but also the inherited classes i mean inherited properties from the class a okay so here i'll say obj dot obj dot okay method can access both the properties guys okay method a here obj dot method b okay using the object reference of this class b i can access both the properties of the class a and class b because class b in now inherits the, all the properties of the class a because b is a child class of the parent class a now run this code it will work guys okay by just creating an object for the child class we can access all the properties of the child class and also the inherited properties from the parent class you see 9 10 a got printed a belongs to the class a but using the object reference of b we are able to access this a and then b inside method a inside method b everything is accessible guys because class b is now the child class of the class a and class b inherits all the properties of the class a and when you create the object for the class b and using the object reference we can access all the properties okay because class b is inheriting the parent class properties so hope guys you understood what exactly is inheritance and how to implement the inheritance in python right this is what is inheritance guys okay in python so the syntax here is 
class B is the child of the class A. Okay, if you want to make it one of the class in Python, a child class of another class, and this one is a parent class, this one is a child class. Okay, this is the syntax case. Fine. So that's all about this session, guys. Okay, where I explained inheritance. So in the next session, I'm going to explain the different types of inheritance possible in Python. So that's it, guys. See you in the next video session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 49 of Python tutorial. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate the different types of inheritance that are possible in Python. So let's get started. In Python, there are five types of inheritance that are possible. One is single inheritance. Second is multi-level inheritance. Third is hierarchical inheritance. Fourth is multiple inheritance. And finally, we have fifth type of inheritance as hybrid inheritance. Now, let me explain all these five inheritance types that are possible in Python in a detailed manner along with the practical demonstrations. So let's start with the first type of inheritance that is single inheritance. What is single inheritance? Single inheritance means there will be a parent class. Say I'll just name that parent class as A and there is a child class. I'm naming that as B. Okay. Here child class is inheriting the properties of the parent class A. Okay. So this kind of relationship between the classes where a child class is inheriting all the properties of the parent class is known as single inheritance. So let me demonstrate this single inheritance for you. For that, I'll open this PyCharm IDE where we have the sample Python file. Here, first I'll create these two classes, guys, class A and class B. Okay, very sample classes I'll create. Class A is one class, and here as a sample, I'll create a variable say A is equal to nine. And one more class I am going to create class B. This is another class, guys. Here I'll say B is equal to 10. Okay, B is equal to 10. Here I want to make this B as a child class of the class A. So what is the syntax? As explained in the previous session about the inheritance. Okay, if you want to make a class, a child class of another class, in the child class that you want to make, decide that provide circular brackets and provide the name of the parent class. Okay. Here B has become the child class of the parent class A. So in this case, guys, the class B is inheriting the properties of the class A. So A is a parent class and B is a child class, right? B is a child class, A is a parent class. So if I create an object for the class B, okay, how to create an object for the class B like this. And I'll create an object reference OBJ is equal to B. And using this object reference, I can access all the properties of the class A and class B because B is a child class of the class A and all the properties of the class A are inherited by the child class class B. So here I'll say obj dot A. Here I'll say print of obj dot B. Okay, run this code, it will print A and B. Okay, A is from parent class, B is from child class. By creating an object for the child class, we are able to access both properties of the parent and child class. Fine, this is single inheritance case. Now let's go with the second type of inheritance that is possible in Python. That is multi-level inheritance. Okay. Multi-level inheritance. What is multi-level inheritance? Let's say there are three classes or four classes, whatever you take. For example, I am taking three classes. One of the class name is A. The second class name is uh, B. Third class name is C. Okay. You can have any number of class, class B, class E. Okay. The, the list is endless. Okay. Let's say there are three classes here. Here, this class B is a child class of class A. So A is a parent of the B. And at same time, C is inheriting from B. Okay. C is a child class of B. B is a child class of A. This type of inheritance is called as multi-level inheritance. There are multiple levels, right? One first, uh, one level, second level. Okay. Like that, if you have more classes here, D is inheriting from C, E is inheriting from D. That is called as multi-level inheritance, guys. You can have any number of classes in this order okay so this is called as multi-level inheritance and this is possible in python so let me show you here already we have class a and class b and b is already a child class of the class a so now i'll say class c class c 
e is inheriting class b so b is a parent of c and a is a parent of b right c is a child of b b is a child of a now c is equal to some variable sample variable c is equal to level and create here here if i create an object for the class c like this if i create an object for the class c using the object reference i can access all the properties of the grandparent and parent classes okay by creating an object for the grandchild okay i can access all the properties of the parent and grandparent classes okay so you see this one is coming from the grandparent this one is coming from the parent and here this one is coming from the class c itself okay the same class itself print obj dot c okay done so this is multi level inheritance and this is possible in python guys okay you see 9 10 11 so all the properties of the parent and grandparent class okay which are inherited by the class c grandchild class by creating an object for the uh, grandchild class using the object reference you are able to access all the properties okay of the grandchild its parent and its grandparent okay everything is coming up this is multi level inheritance then we have the next type of inheritance that is hierarchical inheritance okay hierarchical okay hierarchical inheritance so what is this hierarchical inheritance here in hierarchical inheritance okay two child classes have the same parent class for example here there is a one class say a okay and uh, to this class okay this class is a parent of not only one child but multiple children okay this parent class a is a parent of multiple children like this this class is also inheriting from a and this class is also inheriting from a okay let's say the name of this class is b the class b is inheriting from a at same time the class c is also inheriting from a same class same parent class but two children okay this is called as hierarchical this is also possible in okay this is also possible in python guys okay hierarchical inheritance is possible in python so here class a class b so what i will do is here instead of this class c inheriting from b i will make it as a guys okay so here b and c classes have the same parent class right here class b and class c both have the same parent class both have the same parent class and this is possible in python so i am making this class b and c as a children of the class a same class a that is called as hierarchical now let's go with the next one that is uh, uh, the next one is multiple okay multiple inheritance multiple inheritance what is this multiple inheritance in multiple inheritance okay it's an opposite of the hierarchical where here there will be multiple parents okay a single class a single child class has two parents like this okay okay the single class have multiple parents multiple parents so here b is a parent and c is a parent okay these are the parent classes and d is a child class okay of these two parent class here two children are having a single parent here a single child is having two parents okay that's the difference guys okay so this is called as multiple this is also possible in this is also possible in python how this is possible let me show you so here let's say let's make a and b separate okay there are two classes and the child class c okay a, a uh, let's let's make the c as a child class of both the parents a and b so you have to give a comma b here guys okay that as per the syntax in python if you make if you want to make this class c as a child of both this a and b c of a comma b okay here a and b are the parent classes of the c child class c okay or here if i put the in this example guys b c d is there right so b c d for example this is b this is c and uh, if i say b comma c okay if i want to depict the same diagram here i am just changing the code so b class b class c and uh, class d okay class d 
here the child class d have two parents as b and c this is called as multiple inheritance which is possible in python okay this is possible in python guys no problem now the final type okay the final type guys that is hybrid hybrid is nothing but the combination of hierarchical and multiple okay what is hybrid guys hybrid type of inheritance is a combination of multiple plus okay it's a combination of hierarchical and multiple okay so hybrid is a combination of hierarchical plus multiple okay multiple it's a hybrid of the combination of hierarchical and multiple so how does i represent this to represent this guys i have to cut this part i'll just provide this here okay and uh, here a b c is there and here at the end is the thing okay as i said hybrid is a combination of hierarchical and multiple so here we have d so here d is the child of these two parents b and c and these two parents b and c are the child of the same parent a so this kind of structure if you get that is called as hybrid guys it's a combination of the top portion is hierarchical and uh, the bottom portion is a multiple right combination of hierarchical and multiple is known as hybrid case okay this is also possible in python for example so let me uh, if i explain this hybrid right automatically i have explained the hierarchical and multiple okay because hybrid is a combination of hierarchical and multiple right let me demonstrate this hybrid so that automatically the hierarchical and multiple already got kind of okay are inbuilt in this right so if i explain this automatically hierarchical and multiple are demonstrated okay so let's go with the hybrid demonstration here first i need to create a class a let me create class a guys class a a is equal to some pipe class b b is equal to 6 i'll create four classes guys class c first i am creating a normal classes c is equal to 7 class d d is equal to some 8 okay some sample property i am creating under that now guys what i want to do is you see this diagram i want to make okay this b and c as the children of the a here b need to be the child of b need to be the child of a like this at same time c also should be the child of the a c also should be the child of a here b and c are the children of the class a and d is the child of both b and c d is the child of both b and c that means d of b comma c i have to provide okay d is a child of both the parent classes b and c now if i create an object for the class d let's say d i can access all the properties of okay of a b c right simple all the properties of a b c and d can be accessed using this object reference in this hybrid in this hybrid inheritance type okay if you create class according to the hybrid inheritance type and if i try to create the object for the last bottom class here using that object reference of the bottom class i can access all the properties of a b c d guys so let me show you here i'll say print of obj dot a okay print of obj dot b print of obj dot c c is come c property is coming from class c because it is inherited all these things are inherited by d now right in this hybrid obj dot d on this code all the things will be printed 5 6 7 8 will be printed okay a b c d got printed in the output so this is called as hybrid in inheritance guys which is a combination of hierarchical and multiple inheritance okay so these are the five different types of inheritance we have in python one is single second is multi level third is hierarchical fourth one is multiple and fifth one is hybrid which is a combination of hierarchical and multiple so that's all about the different types of inheritance that is the five types of inheritance we have in python thank you bye hello all welcome to part 50 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate about method overriding so let's get started first of all what exactly is this 
overriding. Let me explain. In Python, you can either override, okay, in Python, either you can override variables or you can override methods, okay? If you are overriding the methods, it's called as method overriding and you can also override the variables in Python. But what exactly is this overriding means? Okay, what exactly this overriding means? If a child class properties match with the parent class properties, okay, if the properties in the child class match with the properties in the parent class in Python, then the properties in the child class are said to override the properties in the parent class. To make this concept clear for you, let me practically demonstrate. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have the sample Python file. And here, I'll create a class, class A. Here, I'll create some sample variables and methods. Say A is equal to five. Here, some method inside this class, say DF method or sample method, okay, sample, sample, sample method. Here, I'll say print. In, uh, inside sample method of which class? The sample method of which class? Class A, right? Of class A, I'll write. Like this, I created a sample variable and sample method inside the class A. Now, I'll create one more class case, okay? In Python, I'll create one more class A, class B, and I'll create the same variable here. In the class A, already variable A is there, the same variable I'll create and assign some value, say 10 here, and I'll create a method say again the same method guys here also in class a sample method is there in class b also i'm creating a sample method here i'll say print inside sample method of class b if this particular method is called this message will be printed in the output inside sample method of class b will be printed so far this class a and class b are individual or independent classes but now i want to make this class b a child class of the class A. In one of the previous session, right? In the one of the previous sessions, I explained about inheritance, if you remember, right? Where I can make a class, a child class of another class. Here, class B, I can make the class B as a child class of the class A. A will become the parent class. For that, I have to write the circular brackets here beside A and provide the A. The moment I have typed A here, you see some symbols are coming in this PyCharm ID. If you hold the mouse, okay? You see here, hold the mouse here somewhere. Should get some notification guys this uh, generally comes but uh, okay you see overrides attribute in a this property this variable property in the class b is said to override the same property that is there in a because here b is a child class of a a right this a is being inherited by the child class okay this variable and method are being inherited by the class b these two properties are being inherited by the class b but unfortunately or fortunately uh, the properties having the same names are already there in the class B. Now, in this case, the class B has to consider the inherited properties from the class A or its own properties having the same name as the class A. What should it consider? So, here, here guys, in simple words, these properties inside the class B as they are matching with the inherited properties from the class A, these properties in the class B are said to override the properties in the class A. That means when I create an object here, for example, for the class B, if I create an object, I'll give some object reference also. Using this object reference of the class B here, I create an object for the class B and using the object reference of this class B, if I try to access, okay, if I try to access obj.a, which A will be printed? Okay, the inherited A will be printed or the direct property of the B will be printed. Which one will be considered here? here this property is said to override the property of the parent class A, right? Because they are matching, right? So this property is said to override. That means overrided property will be printed here, okay? So here, this property is overriding this property. And so when you try to access this property, okay? When you access the this kind of stuff, overridden properties, overridden properties will be printed here. That means here, 5 will be printed or 10 will be printed in the output. When I say obj.a, using the object reference of b, 
5 will be printed or 10 will be printed 10 will be printed guys okay overridden properties will be printed again if i say obj dot sample method if i call which method will be called here okay the inherited method which is there in the parent class or the in, the uh, overridden method inside the class b which is matching with the parent class is method which one overridden method will be given preference here okay using the object reference of the child class the method which is overriding the parent class method will be accessed or called okay run this code you see inside sample method of class b will be printed okay inside sample method of class b will be printed so this is called as overriding guys okay this is called as overriding in python the properties in the child class are matching with the properties in the parent class and when you create an object for the child class and using that object reference the overridden properties okay the properties of the child class which are overriding the overriding the properties in the parent class will be accessed or called is called as overriding in python okay if the method in the parent class is being overridden by the method in the child class that is called as method overriding okay and you can also override the variables at the same time okay so this comes this concept of method overriding comes into polymorphism in python guys okay polymorphism oops concepts polymorphism comes into okay so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 51 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain about method overloading so let's get started unlike other programming languages in python method overloading is not directly supported but there is an alternative way to achieve or implement method overloading in python now let me practically demonstrate that for you for that i'll first open this pycharm id where we have this sample python file okay now i'll create a class class a inside this class i'll create a method f the method name say sample method guys okay so here under the sample method i'll write a sample print statement saying inside sample method that's it i'll create one more method having the same name that is sample okay sample and here here i'll provide a property guys okay so apart from the self keyword okay here only self keyword is there but the second method is having the same name but i am trying to create an a parameter here okay parameter a now i'll write a print statement saying inside sample method okay by default or okay in python method overloading is not directly supported you can see that now okay i'll i'm trying to create an example to demonstrate that how python doesn't support method overloading directly okay so here inside sample method comma a i'm writing this parameter i'm printing here so in other programming languages if you create this kind of stuff where you create the method having the same name but different parameters or something right this method is an overloaded version of this method in general other programming languages but here it's not like that guys okay it's not like that now if i create an object for class a Okay, I'm just creating an object reference for class A. Create an object reference and uh, assign that object to the object reference. Using this object reference, if I try to call the sample, okay, sample, and uh, if I call this, run this code, you see what it is saying? I'm getting an error. Why I'm getting the error is, so here there is a sample method which is not accepting any parameters, but the second sample method is accepting the parameters. It's asking me to send one argument guys, right? If the method overloading is possible in Python directly, so you can have any number of methods having the same name, but different number of parameters, if that is so. Since method overloading is not directly supported in Python, what's happening here is, when you try to create an overloaded methods like this, okay, it's not considering this method as an overloaded method rather it's it's replacing this method with this method okay so once you create a duplicate method here this method is of no use guys in python this method is of no use it will consider the second latest method only that's why when you are trying to call the 
sample method without any parameters it's not it's ignoring this guys it's uh, it's like this method is not there at all okay you cannot create or overloaded methods in python like this okay it's simply considering the latest method okay the whatever the method that is coming after at the end right that is being considered but this is ignored now that's the reason it's asking you to pass the parameter if i pass the parameter it will work fine for example object uh, uh, object reference dot sample of i means it will work now okay, you see it will work now this one is ignored but still if you want to implement method overloading in python there is an alternative way let me explain okay let me explain the alternative way guys so here i'll create the same sample method okay or some method i'll create def some sample method i'll create and here what i will do is after this self i'll create some parameters say a is equal to a is equal to none comma b is equal to none okay like this i'm creating some sample method having some parameters but i'm assigning what here a is equal to none if a value is not passed it should be none if b value is not passed as an argument it should be also none okay so i'm trying to make this dynamic and behave like a overloaded method just see that in action now here i'll write if condition saying if if a is not equal to none and b is also not equal to none okay colon then do what print a into b print a into b guys okay print a into b if both are not none that means they should be considered again elif elif if a is only not equal to none b is none but a is only not equal to none in that case only one parameter one argument is passed okay if this method is called by passing two arguments where one of the argument is going to a and another argument is going to b then this condition will be satisfied and this particular statement will be printed right this this statement will be executed but what if i am not passing any argument into b but i am only passing one argument okay then only a should be considered right so print of a otherwise else if no arguments are passed to none of these parameters then then do what then print print nothing i'm just printing nothing okay that's it this is how guys we can achieve overloading method overloading in python so by by default by default python doesn't support method overloading but still if you want to okay implement method overloading in python this is the only way guys okay this is the only way to implement method overloading in python so now see the action guys okay see in action what will happen here so here i'll create an ob uh, object for the class a and i'll create the object reference i'll store that object into the object reference using the object reference when i call sample and if i pass two arguments let's say 5 4 okay when i am passing two arguments say 5 4 5 will go into a a is not known now b uh, 4 will go into b so here the condition is checked a is not equal to none yes a is have holding 5 so it's not equal to none this is true b is not equal to none yes b is holding 4 now and it is also not equal to none so both are true so the condition will be true and here a into b that is 5 for the 20 will be printed in the output okay run this code you see 20 will be printed in the output that's fine so this is fine okay now what if i am passing only one argument here there are two parameters but i am only passing one argument still this method will be called and 5 will be stored to a and uh, into b none will be stored okay into b nothing is stored but into the a five is stored so here a not equal to none is true but b not equal to none is false because nothing is passed to the b so b is none only so this is false if one of the condition is false you go to the elif part where another condition is there a is not equal to none is true right five is there in a so a is not equal to none is true so print of a five will be printed in the output run this code five will be printed in the output what if i don't pass anything here neither argument is passed into a nor argument is passed into b in that case both a and b will be none by default and here a not equal to none is false b not equal to none is false since both are false this will not happen it will go to elif a not equal to none is false here also this also will not happen and finally else block is there where nothing will be printed okay nothing got printed 
So this is how guys we can implement or achieve method overloading in Python, okay? And by default, method overloading is not directly supported by Python. So that's it guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 52 of Python tutorial. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate super in Python. So let's get started. Super in Python can be used for accessing the parent class properties from a child class when the parent class properties have the same name as a child class properties. This is one requirement of using the super in Python. What about the second requirement? Super in Python can also be used for calling the parent class init function from the child class init function. That's the second requirement. These two requirements I'm going to practically demonstrate now. For that, I'll open this PyCharm ID where we have this sample Python file. Inside this sample Python file, I'll first create a parent and child classes. So class A. And here under this class A, I'll create some sample properties. Say A is equal to five. And also I'll create a sample function. Okay, I'll just name that as sample only. Sample. And here I'll say print. If this particular uh, method inside this class A is called, I'll print inside sample method of class A. I'll print this statement, okay, when you call this method of this class. Now, I'll create another class, say class B. Okay, I'll create another class, class B, and I will make this class B a child class of the class A, like this. Here B is a child class of the class A. And under this also, I'll create the same properties, okay? Properties having the same name, I'll create under the child class. Here also I'll say A is equal to, but I'll give a different value just to differentiate. Here, the name of the variable is same, right? In the parent class, same A is there. In the child class also, same name A is there, okay? Now DF, again, sample, okay? DF sample, this is same, method name is also same inside the child class. Now here I'll, if this particular method in the child class is called, I'll print out saying, inside sample method of class B like this, okay? Now I'll create one more method. Let's say def print, print properties. I'll just give some random name saying print properties, print properties like this, okay? Now here I will, I will print the value of the variable A, okay? So I'll say self dot A self dot a okay so the value okay the value that is stored in the variable a of this class b need to be printed right here again i'll say self dot self dot sample now if i create an object for the class b like this outside the class when i create an object for the class b and assign that object to the obj kind of object reference here name of the object reference is obj Using that object reference, if I call this print properties, what values will be printed, okay? What will happen, guys? When you call this print properties using the object reference of the class B, what will happen? This method inside the class B will be called. And here, print self.a means, does it print the inherited value from the parent class A, or it will print the value that is stored into the variable A in the child class itself, either five or 10 inherited value or inherited property or the class own property here self dot a means it will only okay it will it will actually print the value of this class own property variable okay so here even self dot sample means this sample method which is there in the child class will be called rather than calling the same sample method in the parent class okay when you are saying self means the class related properties okay the child class related properties that is a is equal to n and uh, sample method inside sample method of class b will be called on this code you will see that 10 and inside sample method of class b are getting printed right but what i want is i want to retrieve these values okay i want to print the value of a which is in the parent class and also when i call this method guys okay when i call this method the value of a which is 5 should be printed and uh, this sample method which is there in the parent class should be printed okay should be called and this statement inside that method should be printed. So here, 
what i have to do in that case is to make that possible i have to use instead of using self dot a i will use super dot a the moment i use super dot a it will get this variable a from the parent class okay it will not prefer this uh, child class variable rather it will get the variable having the same name in the parent class because i am saying super means parent right parent variable a here also instead of saying self dot sample if i say super dot sample it will get the we call the sample method in the parent class rather than calling the sample method in the child class okay now run this code this time you'll get five and inside sample method of class a will be printed five and inside sample method of class a will be printed okay this is one of the use of super in python okay as i mentioned super in python can be used for accessing the parent class properties from a child class which are having the same name as a child class properties okay when parent class properties have the same name as a child class from the child class if you want to access the parent class properties then you have to use super that's one required one thing that you can use super for the second thing is for calling the parent okay for calling the init function or init method inside the parent class we have to use super so for that let me demonstrate guys again i'll clear all this stuff freshly i'll create class a okay freshly i'll create class a inside this class a i'll create an init method def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self okay so here if this particular init method okay of the class a is called okay when you create object for the class automatically init method of the class will be called right so whatever it is when this particular init method is called inside this class it will print inside init method of class a okay this is what i will print now i'll create one more class i'll call that as class b i'll make this class b a child class of the class a okay and here i'll not create anything guys i'll simply write pass statement here okay so if if i don't have to implement this class instead of not providing any of the statements i'll simply provide the pass statement which is nothing but it will it nothing will happen guys if the class b is called or something will happen nothing will happen here pass doesn't any instead of keeping it empty i'm just providing pass that's it okay now in this case guys if i create an object for the class b like this okay and uh, assign that uh, object to the object reference say obj so generally init will be called okay init function or init method will be called when you create an object but here i am creating the object for which class a or b i am creating the object for the class b which is a child class of the class a okay i am i am creating an object for the class b which is a child class of the class a so what happens here is since class b doesn't have any init method you see class b doesn't have any init method in that case since the parent class a has a init method okay even though i create an object for the child class okay the init method from the parent class will be called guys okay so if there is no init method inside the child class automatically the init method inside the parent class will be called okay when you create an object for the child class this is going to happen now run this code when i run this code guys simply by creating an object okay don't have to create object reference also just by creating an object for the child class automatically okay if there is an init method inside the class b the init method inside the class b would have been called automatically when i create an object but here class b which is a child class doesn't have the init method so in that case it will check whether the parent class has any init method or not if it is there it will invoke the init method in the parent class that's all. that's going to happen now guys run this code you see inside init method of class a is being printed that means this particular method got invoked when i create an object for the child class init method inside the parent class got invoked that's good okay now instead of this pass statement i'll create init method here also i'll say init underscore underscore so now child class has its own init method now if i say print inside inside init method of class b i'll say okay inside init method of class b what's the problem here nothing let's see if i create an object for the child class run this code what's happening guys now since the class b has its own init method 
okay instead of invoking the edit method of the parent class okay the child class edit methods has been invoked you see inside edit method of class b this time earlier we got class a because at that time edit method was not there inside the class b then parent class init method was invoked now since the child class has its own init method okay when you create an object for the child class automatically it will prefer the child class init method okay it will call the it will invoke the child class init method but my requirement is okay even though this particular method is invoked from this init method i want to call this init method okay still i want to call the parent class init method from the child class init method further guys what i'll do here is i'll add something like this okay here i will add super so from the child class init method i am going to call the parent class init method for the super dot i have to say init that's it guys nothing much okay super dot init what happens here is when you create an object for the child class this child class init method will be invoked if it has and when it uh, calls this init method of the child class the first statement here is it will call the parent class init method from the child class init method because using the super guys okay this will be called that means first inside init method of class a will be printed after that inside init method of class b will be printed run this code you see first init inside init method of class a because this super was invoking the super inside the child class init method is invoking the init method of the parent class okay after that the remaining statement inside init method of the class b is getting printed so this is how guys we can use super in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 53 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically demonstrate using private variables and private methods in python so let's get started first of all what exactly are these private variables and private methods the variable sign methods which can only be accessed inside the class but cannot be accessed outside the class are known as private variables and private methods now let me practically demonstrate this private variables and private methods for you here i'll open this pycharm id and uh, here is a sample python file inside this sample python file i'll create a class a class a okay first i will not demonstrate the private variables and private methods normal variables and normal methods i'll create and demonstrate how they work after that i'll show you how they will be different from the private variables okay so i'll create a normal variable here say a is equal to 5 and a normal method saying sample method like this and here when this particular sample method is called i'll print out saying inside sample method of class a like this i'll print okay so in order to access this variables and methods of this class okay outside the class is it possible can we access the properties of the class outside the class by default yes we can do that right we simply have to create an object for this class and using the object reference of the object we can access its properties outside the class because these properties are not private so i'll simply create an object for the class a and assign to the object reference say obj and using this object reference okay using this object reference we can access the properties that is variables and methods of the class because they are not private by default okay so like this and also using the object reference i can call the sample method also because sample method of this class is also not private so you can access this properties outside the class like this okay if i run this code five will be printed here and here inside sample method of class a will this method will be called and inside sample method of class a will be printed in the output so five and inside sample method of class a by when inside the sample method of class a so far so good what if i'll convert this normal variable which is created inside the class into a private variable for that guys i have to add underscore underscore okay two times underscore now this becomes a private variable okay and similarly before the method also i'll simply add underscore underscore this method becomes a private method now so can i access the private variable and a private method outside the class outside the class is it possible no guys okay you see you are already getting some problem here right so here some colors are coming let's run this and you'll get errors in the output okay you'll get some error in the output saying that a object does not have the attribute it's there but it's saying it's not there because a is private okay so a is private to this particular class 
and this method is private to this particular class. You cannot access the private properties of the class outside the class. Okay, that's what is private case. So still, I want to get the details of this private variables and private methods. What we can do is here inside the same class create a method. Okay, say I'll say print details kind of thing. Some sample method I'm creating print details, and here what I will do is I will access this. Okay, I'll say print of self dot underscore underscore a okay here i can access right this method belongs to same class so within the class we can access the private properties of the class like private variables and private methods can be accessed by the methods which is there inside the same class but outside the class it's not possible okay that's why i'm creating another method inside the same class and trying to access the private variables and private methods so here i'll access the private method also self dot underscore underscore sample okay here i can call this method guys that's okay uh, but outside the class, I cannot access like this. You see, these things are not possible. I have to remove this. Now, using this object reference, what I will do is I will call print details method. Okay, I will call the print details method using the object reference. This is object reference. I will call this method. And this method, since it belongs to the same class, it, it can access the private variables and private methods of the same. Okay, run this code. When you run this code using the object reference, we are accessing the print details which belong to the same class. Since this method belongs to the same class, the private properties are accessible. Here you have to say self dot underscore underscore a self dot underscore underscore sample like this. You have to say okay. So here this will be accessible from the within the method which is there inside the class. It's accessible. So run this code. The print details uh, will now it will print this method will be called and fire and inside sample method of class A will be printed in the output without getting any error. Okay, you see we got the output still even after the variables and methods are private we are accessing that inside the same class and uh, that method we are accessing we are calling okay this is the process guys they are private okay for private properties you should access right you should have access otherwise not possible to access the private properties okay outside the class so hope guys you understood how to use private variables and private methods in python so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 54 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain and practically show you how to use getter and setter methods for accessing the private variables in python so let's get started in the previous session i have already covered about private variables and private methods this session is a continuation of the previous session and in this session, I'm going to show you how to use getter and setter methods with private variables for accessing the private variables in Python. So let's get started, guys. Let's move on to the practical mode where I'll open this uh, PyCharm ID where we have this sample Python file. First, I will create a class. Class, okay, A. The name of the class is A symbol, okay? In this class, I'll create a variable, okay? I'll create a variable. Say uh, what we can create, guys. Say age is equal to okay. Initially, I'll put it as zero, guys. Okay, initially, I'll put the age as zero. Okay, I'll say age is equal to zero, and this variable is a normal variable. Okay, but what I want to do, I want to create a private variable as explained in the previous session. In order to convert this normal variable into a private variable in Python, I just need to add double underscore here. Okay. So now this variable becomes a private variable. Okay, now if you try to access this variable outside the class, you are going to get an error. How can I access this particular variable outside the class? First, I need to create an object for the class, right? Like this, I'll create an object for the class and I'll assign this object to the some object reference. And using the object reference, if I try to access the private variable, okay, using the object reference of this particular class, if I try to access the private variable that is underscore underscore a here okay sorry underscore underscore age here if i try to run this code you will get an error in the output because this is a private variable right it's a private variable you can only access this private variable inside the class but when you try to access the private variable outside the class you are going to get this kind of error saying that the class a doesn't contain any variable known as age okay that's what is coming so this is not possible then how to access this private variable or how to work with this private variable from outside the class is there any possibility yes there is a possibility guys 
for that we have to create some non private getter and setter methods okay so that is a topic for this session right using getter and setter methods outside the class okay from outside the class if you want to access the private variables or you want to work with the private variables then we have to use getter and setter methods okay we have to create some getter and setter methods inside the class which are of non private type okay here i'll create getter and setter methods inside this class which are non private type f i'll say set underscore h okay this is a random name guys okay i'm just adding the set word here and age word here because it's resembling right age i want to set this age here say age is by default zero guys i want to set some age for that okay so here i'll give the age and this variable as we already know is not an instance variable right it belongs to the class so you can access this particular variable using the class guys okay so what i can do is i'll say a dot underscore underscore age is equal to h okay like this i can set this particular variable now next one so def get underscore h okay so for getting the h you see using this getter and setter methods outside the class from outside the class we can now access the private variables i'll show you these are non private these are non private methods right this getter and setter methods are non private methods which are intentionally created to access this particular variable private variable outside the class okay hope you are getting the purpose here i'll say a dot underscore underscore h okay return this h this method is going to return this h when you call this method this method is going to return the h now guys from outside the class can i access can i modify the value of this uh, private variable which is there inside the class from outside the class and also can i get the value let's see okay i'll say obj dot set h i just need to pass some age guys let's say let me pass some age as uh, 14 okay set age as 14 so the moment i say set age this this is a non private method right uh, the setter method is a non private method and it will set the this 14 will go into this 14 this 14 will go into this age okay this 14 will go into this age and that age will be assigned to this class variable age okay private variable age class level private variable age okay so after the age has been modified the value of 0 will be replaced by 14 when you call this method and when you pass 14 from this set age method and now if you want to get the um get the current age after setting the age whatever the age that is assigned to the latest age assigned to this private variable right if you want to get it outside so uh, again i have to say object dot get age okay this another non private getter method get age that's it guys uh, this will give you the age okay this will give you the age let's print it out guys okay let's print the age age returned by this uh, get age method okay getter method here we are returning the age right when you call this method this method is going to return the age that particular age we are printing here okay run this code you see 14 got printed that means the age okay the age uh, private variable class level variable that is created inside the class we can now access it using the getter and setter methods okay by creating the non private getter and setter methods in the same class from outside the class also now we can work with the age okay private variables so hope guys you understood uh, the purpose of using the getter and setter methods for accessing the private variables in python outside the class so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 55 of python tutorial in this session i am going to explain about encapsulation so let's get started first of all what exactly is this encapsulation encapsulation is a mechanism which wraps the data and code under a single unit known as class okay encapsulation is a mechanism which wraps the data that is variables and code that is methods okay this data and code will be wrapped together that is data will be stored in the variables whereas code is written inside the methods so these two entities will be wrapped together under a single unit known as class if i draw it it will be like this guys okay under a class we are wrapping okay let's assume that this class okay class is a unit here right under this class unit we are wrapping okay we are wrapping what variables plus methods okay variables contain data 
methods contain code so indirectly we are wrapping the data and code under a single unit known as class okay we are wrapping the variables and methods under a single unit known as class this concept is known as encapsulation so if i explain you about encapsulation in a more detailed manner now okay after wrapping up these variables and methods in under a class that is after wrapping the data and code under a single unit known as class so here variables should not be accessible outside the class okay variables should be of private in encapsulation variables should be of private type that means these variables should not be able to we should not be able to access these variables outside this unit okay directly you should not be able to access these variables that's one thing second thing is if you still want to okay if you want to if you still want to work or access these variables or do some operations with these variables right then that should be possible only with the help of this non private methods okay that should be possible only with the help of this non private methods this non private methods are generally getter and setter methods guys i have covered about i have explained and practically shown you how to implement getter and setter methods with the private variables in python already in the previous session okay encapsulation also come to the same point guys okay if you have already understood the previous session understanding encapsulation concept is very easy the concept simply says that you are going to wrap the data with the code under a single unit okay that is we are wrapping the variables and methods under a single unit known as class and these variables cannot be accessed directly outside the class that means they are private type and coming to the methods they are non private methods which you can use for performing the operations or modifying or accessing these variables okay from outside the class if you want to access or modify or perform operation on these variables that should be possible only with the help of this non private methods but you cannot directly perform operation on these variables that's what is encapsulation guys let's go back to the notes okay let's understand now in encapsulation you cannot access the variables as a single unit single unit that means you cannot directly access the variables outside the class okay instead we have to take the help of the non private methods okay there will be non private methods like getter and setter methods using which we can access the variables outside the okay you can access the variables outside the class or you can perform operations on the variables update the variables or whatever it is retrieve the current value of the variables all this should be possible with, with the help of the non private methods that is getter and setter methods whereas variables should not be act like a single unit okay data binded to the methods should act like a single unit under a class but you cannot directly access the variables outside the class that's what is encapsulation guys okay uh, encapsulation now you got it right so encapsulation is achieved by privating the variables okay this i already told you right you have to make the variables inside the class that is a unit a private type and in order to access this private variables from outside the class you have to access them using the getter and setter methods okay if you want to modify or access or the get the current uh, variable values inside the class from outside the class you have to use or take the help of this getter and setter methods non private getter and setter methods okay so binding the data to the class by making the variables as private okay you are here strictly binding the data to the class by making the variables as private and accessing them only via the non private methods that is getter and setter methods okay so let me practically show you this uh, practical demonstration i have already done in the previous session guys where i explained about this getter and setter methods now let me show that code again here i'll open the pycharm id where we have already written the sample code for getter and setter methods as part of the previous session as you can see here here this is a class class a is a unit guys okay here in our language of encapsulation this class is a unit okay which is wrapping this unit class is wrapping the variables and methods here okay here variables are binded to the class because they are of private type here variable is of private type underscore underscore means this variable is a private that means we cannot access this variable outside the class directly directly if you try to print the value of this class you will get an error right so private access should not be there uh, direct access should not be there outside the class so what is the only means since this particular variable is made private and binded to the class here okay so if you still want to access this variable or modify the values of this variable or retrieve the value that is currently stored in the variable we have to use this getter and setter methods okay this is a getter method this is a setter method okay so like this kind of a getter and setter methods we have to use so this 
this concept is known as encapsulation guys uh, here class is acting like a unit which is wrapping uh, the variable with the methods that is code okay here code is there here data is there data and code got wrapped inside a class as a single unit and if you still want to access this private variables uh, which are binded to this class with the help of this methods non private methods only getter setter methods only it should be possible okay like this okay here you see you create an object and using the object reference you are calling the set age if you want to modify the value of this uh, private variable of this class you have to call this setter method after that if you want to get the current value of this uh, variable okay so you have to use getter method okay you have to call this method known as non private getter method so this is called as encapsulation guys so this is called as encapsulation why the name encapsulation came into picture capsule it it contains something known as capsule right what capsule does guys what capsule does capsule will be like this right everyone know about the capsule right the, the capsule will be like this and uh, the medicine will be there inside right okay this is just a wrapper right uh, capsule is like a wrapper which contains the actual granules of medicine small granules of medicine will be there inside this capsule and uh, okay so you cannot directly access this granules from outside the capsule right after you take it once okay if you want to access you have to open this capsule that's the only way right direct accessing is not possible okay so inside this capsule that's why encapsulation name came okay we are wrapping the data and okay data and code inside a single unit known as class okay here class is like this capsule inside that uh, capsule we have the medicine that is data okay kind of okay so this is called as encapsulation in python guys so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 56 of python tutorial in this session i'm going to explain about abstraction in python so let's get started abstraction in python is possible because of abstract classes and abstract methods first let's go with the abstract methods what exactly are these abstract methods methods that are just defined and doesn't contain any method body or implementation such methods are known as abstract methods what are abstract methods the methods which are just defined but without implementation okay the methods which are just defined but without implementation or method body you can say are known as abstract methods then what are abstract classes then what are abstract classes if there is a class in python having at least one such kind of abstract method under it okay at least one abstract method under it such classes are known as abstract classes okay the classes if there is a class in python having at least one such kind of abstract method which is just defined but without any method body or implementation such classes in python are known as abstract classes okay such class in python are known as abstract classes and there's one more thing is in python there's one more thing for the abstract classes these abstract classes okay need to be the children of okay we have to inherit something known as abc class okay we have to inherit we have to make this abstract class a child class of the abc class okay abc is a predefined abstract class in python okay we'll see that in action okay i'll show you how to create the abstract methods and abstract class in python so basically abstract class are the classes in python having at least one abstract method and at the same time the abstract classes have to inherit from a parent predefined abstract class known as abc that's the rule in python guys okay that's the rule in python abc is a predefined abstract class which has to be become the parent class of the abstract class that we are trying to create in python okay simple words and these abstract classes will contain abstract methods so fine so let's create this okay let's create a, a sample abstract class so inside this pycharm id we have this uh, sample python file under this sample python file i'll create a class okay i'll create a class so what can we call okay i'll call this uh, uh, classes some class a that's it okay i want to make this class 
okay i want to create some abstract methods okay under this class i want to create some abstract methods so what i have to do beforehand is i have to make this class a a child class of a predefined abstract class in python in the circular brackets you have to give abc okay abc is a predefined abc is a predefined abstract class in python guys this is the rule if you want to create an abstract class in python you have to make it a child class of the okay abstract class over the mouse on abc and uh, import this this line you have to select guys import abc dot abc okay import this abc class from abc module okay that's all i'll explain more about modules in the upcoming session for now just import this whenever you get that kind of error okay fine so now the first uh, qualification is done where a has already become an abstract class by inheriting from a parent predefined abstract class known as abc okay this is the rule in python after that under this abstract class i'm going to create some abstract methods okay so how to create that so i'll say def okay def uh, i'll say method 1 method 1 okay i'm just creating some sample method guys and that to an abstract method so as i mentioned right abstract methods are the methods in python which are only defined okay which are just defined but they doesn't contain any method body you see only pass statement is there okay only pass statement is there under this method so i'll create one more abstract method okay abstract method which Uh, which is just defined but doesn't contain any method body say pass okay then can abstract classes also contain non abstract methods the method which contain implementation and all is it possible yes it is possible because because abstract classes means partial implementation of the class okay so few methods may not be implemented few methods can be implemented okay that is called as abstract methods guys okay abstract classes abstract classes can contain abstract methods and non abstract methods the methods which doesn't contain the implementation which are just defined and at the same time abstract classes can contain the methods which are also implemented also here i'll create another method say method 3 which is implemented actually okay i'll implement the method body for this i'll implement i'll say print okay inside method 3 like this i am implementing this method guys right this particular third method is implemented this not an abstract method it's not an abstract method non abstract method you can say that i will put a comment here it is a non abstract method whereas the this two methods method 1 and method 2 are this is an abstract method because it just defined without any implementation okay method body is there but only method def definition is there so this is abstract method and this is abstract method okay partial implementation abstract classes are all about partial implementation because they contain abstract methods and non abstract methods okay they can have both type of methods abstract methods can be there under the abstract classes and also non abstract methods which can contain the implementation can also be there under the abstract classes so this is an abstract class this is an abstract class guys uh, which has to become a child class of the predefined uh, abc abstract class in python this is a rule number one rule for uh, creating the abstract class in python and um, okay so abstract classes are all about partial implementation okay partial implementation so there can be some methods having the implementation and uh, there can be some methods without having any implement this method has implementation this methods doesn't contain implementation okay so this is all about the abstract class and abstract methods case okay so let's move on guys let's move on so you got some idea about what exactly the abstract classes and uh, okay uh, how they are partial implementation okay how they can implement partially by having the both uh, abstract methods and non abstract methods created under them okay so then uh, then uh, what else and and guys uh, there is another rule guys okay there is another rule okay Th these are still general methods guys okay i cannot at this moment i cannot say this is an abstract method this is an abstract method okay so why because i have to add an annotation here okay so for abstract classes Uh, we have to make the class as a child class of the predefined abstract class in python that is abc class in python which has to be imported from abc module but what about the methods they are just defined without any implementation but at same time the abstract methods in python need to be provided with an annotation known as abstract method annotation okay import import this abstract method annotation from abc from the same module guys 
from where the ABC predefined abstract class is imported from this ABC module, right? From the same module, abstract method also, annotation also need to be. Then only this particular method becomes an abstract method, guys. Abstract method is a method in Python, which is just defined without any implementation. And at the same time, it's specified with this abstract method annotation. You see this method, second method is also has to become an abstract method. So I'll say abstract, abstract method, okay? This is the second rule. Second rule for the abstract methods. Now these methods are abstract methods. This non-abstract non method, okay, which has implementation and doesn't contain any annotation like abstract method, okay? This is an abstract class. Fine, let's move on. So <clears throat> the next thing is we cannot create objects for the abstract classes, okay? The next thing about the uh, abstract classes is we cannot create, okay? Though abstract classes are all about the partial implementation, but we cannot create objects for this class. Let me remove this uh, comments, guys, so that I can save some space. Okay, so let's remove this. Now, here, we have an abstract class having two abstract methods and one non-abstract method having the implementation. Two abstract methods without any method body implemented, fine. Now here, guys, uh, here, we can create an object for this class. Okay? We can create an object for this uh, class. Can we create? Can we create an object for the? Abstract class in Python? No, guys, it's not possible. Let's try to create, but I'll try to create an object for the abstract class in Python. I'll say obj is equal to, okay? And if I run this code, if I run this code, you should get some error in the output because in Python, if you try to create an object for the abstract classes, then you should get error. It should not be possible, okay? It should not be possible. You see, already you're getting an error saying that can't instantiate abstract class A with abstract methods, method one and method two, it's saying clearly, okay? That means you cannot create objects for the abstract classes in Python, okay? You cannot create objects for the abstract class in Python. So what is the option then? What is the option? If I still want to access this abstract methods and all those stuff, what I have to do then? For that guys, the only possible option is we have to create a child class for this abstract class where all the abstract methods are implemented in the child class, okay? So we cannot directly create an object for the abstract class in Python, but still, if you want to access this abstract methods of the abstract class, then we have to create a child class which implements this abstract methods, okay? Which are just defined here, that uh, the defined methods of the parent abstract class need to be implemented in the child class. And you have to create an object for the child class. Directly creating an object for the parent class is not possible. Parent abstract class is not possible, guys. So here, what I have to do is I'll create another class known as class B and I'll make this class B a child class of the class A. The moment I make this uh, class B a parent class of the child class, uh, um, uh, child class, the moment I make this class B a child class of the parent class A, all the abstract methods of the parent class need to be implemented here. How? So I have to say def method one, like this I have to say, and I have to implement it, guys, okay? Here I'm implementing inside method one, <coughs> excuse me, another uh, abstract method I'll implement. There's one more abstract method that is there in the parent abstract class uh, that I'm implementing the child class B. So method two, then print inside, inside method two, okay? So here, the abstract methods of the parent class Okay, parent abstract class are implemented in the child class that is B. Now, though I cannot create an object for the this abstract class, I can create an object for the child class of the abstract class. Okay, so here I can create an object for the child class of the abstract class and say B is equal to like this. Okay, B is equal to using this object reference B dot, I can access all the methods. You see, method one, B dot, method uh, two. Okay, B dot method three and so on. Okay, now run this code. Now run this code. You see all the methods. Okay, all the methods in the child class that is abstract, all the abstract methods and non abstract methods uh, of the abstract class got accessed here, right? Okay, so okay, guys, that's uh, that's the way, guys. Okay, that's the way. If you have an abstract class and uh, uh, you cannot directly create an object for the abstract class. So you have to create a child class which implements all the abstract methods of the parent class and 
to that child class you can create an object and using the object reference of the child class you can access all the abstract methods and non abstract methods of the parent class that's the way what if what if uh, all the methods of the all the abstract methods okay what if all the abstract methods of the parent class are not implemented in the child class for example here a is abstract class as we know and b is a child class of the parent abstract class a okay so here I have only implemented one of the abstract method of the parent class. Okay, parent abstract class. What about the other abstract method of the parent class? Is it implemented in the child class? No, guys. In this case, what happens is if you don't implement. If the child class of the abstract class doesn't implement all the abstract methods of the parent class, then the child class also automatically becomes an abstract class. Okay, then the child class also becomes an abstract class. So if you try to create an object for the child class which has not implemented all the abstract methods of the parent class this is also this also will give you an error now okay when i run this code you'll get an error guys can't instantiate abstract class b you see it's saying abstract b is also abstract class because why b is abstract class because it has not implemented all the abstract methods of the parent class until and unless all the abstract methods of the parent class are implemented in the child class child class will become a normal class but if only one or few of the or, or zero of the Parent class met abstract methods are not implemented or implemented here. Then B also becomes an abstract abstract class only. Okay, so for the B to become a normal class, not an abstract class. Okay, all the abstract methods of the parent abstract class has to be implemented here. B is only implementing one abstract method out of two abstract methods. That's why B is also abstract class. Now let's like try to create another class. Okay, I'll make this uh, C a child class of B. And uh, the remaining abstract method, let's say remaining abstract method, that is method two, I'll implement here. Okay, already B child class B has already implemented one of the abstract method of the parent abstract class, but uh, the remaining abstract uh, method that is method two, I'll implement here. Okay, def method three. Uh, sorry, method two, guys. This is abstract. Uh, another abstract method we have is abstract. Uh, that is method two. So here I'll say print inside method two okay inside method two i have to provide in double quotes fine guys now we have okay now we have an abstract class which contains two abstract methods one of the abstract method of the parent abstract class implemented in the child class known as b but still two abstract methods uh, abstract class has two abstract methods not all the method abstract methods are implemented in child class so this b also becomes an abstract abstract class now finally c is implementing the remaining abstract method okay c is implementing the remaining abstract method of abstract class so what happens is here i cannot directly create an object for the class a because a is an abstract class b also same thing guys since b is not implementing all the abstract methods of the parent abstract class b is also an abstract class for us so for the b also we cannot directly create an object like this but c is when the term comes to C, right? C is actually implementing the all the remaining abstract methods of the parent abstract class A. Hence, we can only create an object for the C. Okay, and using the object reference of C, we can access all the methods, abstract methods and non-abstract methods. But we cannot create objects for the A and B because A and B are abstract classes here. Whereas C is not an abstract class because when the term comes to C child class, all the abstract methods got implemented from the abstract class. Okay, all the abstract methods from the abstract class got implemented here. So we can only create an object for the class. Hope you are able to understand. Run this code. Inside method one, inside method two, inside method three got printed. Okay. So this is all about the creating the objects for the abstract classes, guys. We cannot directly create an object for the abstract class. So we have to create a child class for that abstract class and implement all the abstract methods of the abstract class. Then for the child class, we can create the objects. If the child class doesn't implement all the abstract methods of the parent abstract class, then we cannot create an object for that child class also because the child class also is an abstract class. Then we have to create another child class where all the abstract methods of the parent abstract class got implemented. Then only we can create object for that child class which is implementing all the okay abstract methods of the parent abstract class. Fine. So that's all about creating objects for the abstract classes, guys. Right? So abstract methods in the abstract class need to be implemented by each child class and only we can create an object for the child class. Otherwise child class will become an abstract class. Okay.
Okay, so so this is all clear so far, right? Child class which is not implementing all the abstract methods of the parent abstract automatically becomes an abstract class, and object cannot be created for it until all the abstract methods of the parent abstract class are implemented in the child class. Okay, so the last topic, guys, last topic in this uh, abstraction in Python is about the constructors, guys. Okay, so we can create can we create constructors in an abstract class? Can we create a constructor in abstract class? Yes, it is possible, guys. Okay, apart from apart from the okay, apart from the uh, this uh, abstract class having the abstract methods and non-abstract methods. Along with that, we can also create a constructor. Constructor is nothing but init function and init function or method in Python, guys. Okay, in Python, constructors are nothing but the init methods or functions. Okay, so so here we have as explained in one of the previous session, right? Init method. Okay, we have to create an init method here, init method or function, whatever you call inside the class. So here we generally use this for initialization purpose, guys. Okay, the constructor uh, in Python, okay, that is init method in Python is used for initialization for simplifying the initialization process as explained in the previous session. Here I can initialize something like a. Uh, here what I will do is I'll say self dot a is equal to a. Okay, self dot a is equal to a. I'll create and uh, what else is there? Uh, here in this method three, okay, in this method three, I'll print the value of a here, okay. I'll print the value of a inside method three and a like this. I'll print, okay. So now when you create an object for the class C, which is the grandchild of the class A, okay. So what happens is you cannot it cannot be empty like this, okay. When you're creating an object for the class C, it cannot be empty, guys, okay, because you have to pass an argument into the constructor that is created in the abstract class, right? Here C is the child class of the somewhere grandparent abstract class. So this particular, okay, this particular constructor need to be contains a parameter, guys. You have to pass the argument. So while you are creating an object for the class C, you have to pass the argument to the init method in the parent abstract class. So how? Here I'll pass something, guys. Let's say I'll pass nine. C is called C of nine. This nine will be passed to the uh, whenever you create an object for the class C automatically. This constructor in the class A will be automatically called when you create an object, and uh, nine will be assigned to the A, and self dot A will be assigned as nine. Here, guys, I have to say self dot A. Okay, self dot A. So now, when you call this method three, method three, so inside method three, self dot A, whatever the initialized value will be there, right? That nine will be printed here. Okay, run this code. Run this code. So there is a problem. So what is the problem here? Method one, method two is from method three is uh, one missing argument. It is saying, but we are passing the argument, right? But we are passing the argument. Uh, e oh, sorry, I'm passing here, guys. So this is wrong. So I have to initialize here and I have to print it here. Okay, I don't have to create a parameter here. Now run this code. It will work. So inside method one, inside method two, and uh, here when I'm creating an object itself, I'm passing this argument nine into this a of the init. Uh, Method and a that parameter argument uh, that is assigned to the parameter right that nine is getting assigned to the class okay class variable that is self dot a and that self dot a I am printing here in the method three okay so this is what I wanted to explain okay so simple thing guys simple thing I what I want to do is I want to mention that in abstract classes you can create constructors simple words okay in abstract classes I can create constructors like this and if you have to initialize or something. Can pass arguments like this, guys. Okay, so we can create, we can create, we can create constructors in abstract classes. That is the main funda. Nothing much. Okay, so guys, this is all about abstraction in Python, guys. Okay, abstraction in Python is possible via abstract class and abstract methods. And now you understood what is the syntax and what are the requirements of creating the abstract class and abstract methods in Python, and also. How to create a constructor? Can we create constructor for an abstract class? And also whether we can create object for the okay abstract class in Python. All these things we have learned in this session. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello, all. Welcome to part 57 of Python tutorial. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate about modules in Python. So let's get started. First of all, what exactly are modules? Module is a Python file containing a set of functions. What exactly this statement means? Let me practically demonstrate. Module is a Python file. 
right? So I'll open this PyCharm ID and uh, under this sample project, I'm going to create a Python file that is module. Okay, I'm going to create a module which is nothing but a Python file. Right click on this project and select new. And I'm to create the module, I have to select the Python file here. Okay, now give the name of the module. Say calculator is the name of the module and press enter. Now in this module, that is in this Python file, we are going to create a set of functions. Let me create a set of functions. Def, okay, addition. First function I'm creating as addition. A comma B colon. Here I'll say sum is equal to A plus B. And this particular function is going to return the sum. Okay. Similarly, I'll create other few functions like def subtraction A comma B. Then sub is equal to a minus b return sub then return sub then def multiplication so these are some sample functions uh, set, sample set of functions i am creating under this uh, python file that is nothing but a module this module is nothing but a python file containing a set of functions right so what is a module module in python is nothing but a python file containing a set of functions that's what is happening right a comma b set of functions are there here mul is equal to a into b and here i'll say return mul then f division okay a comma b colon div is equal to a divided by b return div like this i created a set of functions under this Python file. Now this becomes a calculator module. Okay, this becomes a calculator module. And before proceeding further, guys, as you can see, I'm getting kind of line here. You see, a gray color line is coming the, under the name of the functions, right? The problem here is uh, enough distance is not maintained. Okay, from this function to this function, there's only one gap. You have to give multi two lines of gap. Okay, here one two, here two lines of gap. You have to give to re uh, to overcome that uh, warning. Okay, warning. Fine, guys. Now, successfully, we have created a module which is nothing but a Python file containing a set of functions. Okay. Now, how to call these functions inside this module? So, for that, I'll create one more Python file. I'll just name that as demo. So, under the demo Python file, okay, what I want to do, I want to access the this set of functions which belong to the calculator module. Okay. For that, what I will do is I'll say the name of the module I'll give that is calculator dot I'll say addition first one is what addition the moment I say these are the different uh, functions right addition subtraction division and multi uh, addition subtraction multiplication and div division are the set of functions we have in the calculator module all things are coming here okay so what I will do is I will just select uh, addition here the moment I selected this addition function from the calculator module this import statement got added Okay, so we have to import the module. Okay, in order to use the okay, in order to use the set of functions under this calculator module, we have to import that module case. Okay, that's the requirement. So what will happen when I say calculator dot addition here? I have, if you can see here the implementation of the addition, I have to pass some values, right? Some arguments I have to pass. So I'll just pass five comma four here, and uh, this particular function addition function is going to return some sum okay that i will store into r1 result one okay r1 and i'll print it out here print r1 now similarly if i have to get a subtraction calculator dot subtraction and here 5 comma 4 again here i'll say r2 is the result result 2 and i'll print the r2 print r2 similarly using the module name i can access another function that is a uh, multiplication by comma four again and here i'll say r3 is equal to and here i'll say print r3 okay print the result three. then r4 is equal to uh, calculator dot division last function of the calculator module that we have just now created before calling from here by comma four and uh, print r4 that's it guys. okay this is a way Simply we have to import the module guys. Okay, in order to access the set of functions from the module, we have to first import the module and uh, using the module name, we can access all the set of functions okay, which are there in the module. Now run this code. 
will get the output proper output okay first one is printing r1 which is nothing but sum 5 plus 4 is 9 second one subtraction is being returned by the subtraction function of the calculator model 5 minus 4 is 4 5, 5 minus 4 is 1 that one is being printed here then 5 for the 20 20 printed here yes right then uh, 5 divided by 4 1.25 times the 5 can be divided by 4 okay so this is one way okay this is one way there's one more way guys okay there's one more way the other way is like this okay the other way is instead of using the here you see every time i have to use the calculator module name right you see in order to access this addition subtraction multiplication division function from this calculator module i have to specify the calculator module every time so i don't want to specify this calculator module so what i can do is instead of writing this normal import calculator i'll say from calculator import addition like this i have to say from calculator module import addition if i say like this there's no need of providing calculator here okay this is another way of importing guys this is another way of importing the functions in calculator module where you don't have to call this addition method with cal calculator module name okay module name is not required directly addition but coming to the subtraction calculator is there and all right so what we can do is uh, here i'll say from calculator import subtraction okay now calculator is not required then again from calculator module calculator module import multiplication okay now we don't have to specify this calculator module name for calling this multiplication function from the module from calculator import division okay so remove this done now run this code it will work fine guys you see you'll get the same output you see proper output is coming the advantage of uh, using this kind of statements uh, is instead of normal import the calculator module from calculator import functions kind of statement if used right you don't have to specify the calculator dot calculator dot calculator dot calculator dot here this module dot is not required and still there's a problem yes the problem is here four lines i have to write right instead of writing in four lines i have to say because i'm importing all these uh, functions from the same module right calculator is the same module so i can simply say addition comma subtraction comma div uh, multiplication comma division okay division I don't have to specify this number of this many number of import statements okay so simple right like this okay the same thing will work run this run this guys will work in the same manner and there's one more way guys instead of even specifying like this many number of function names here i can just put a hashtag symbol here this also works in the same way any function from the any function imported from the calculator module this means okay hashtag means any function run this code this also works in the same way okay you got the same output so these are the different ways guys okay of uh, okay of uh, using the or calling the set of functions from the module fine what next so i have explained a uh, lot of things so far and next thing is that guys next thing is uh, you see uh, before using any of these uh, functions right for example if i say from calculator input hashtag right but i want to know how many functions are there in this calculator module okay i just want to know how many functions are there in before actually calling them i want to know how many functions are there in this set of functions are there in this calculator module for that what i will do is uh, i'll say print of dir of okay calculator module okay just give the directory of calculator okay so here the problem is uh, i cannot use this statement guys okay? so i have to say import module okay then it is possible okay import calculator module import module name after that i have to say print dir of calculator okay that's module name this will print the set of functions which are there in this calculator module okay run this code you see it will also print other things but don't ignore guys all these things ignore from here start okay you can see the difference right with this uh, underscore underscore things and uh, this kind of stuff right so which are not with underscores right that's what you want okay in that particular calculator module we have addition division multiplication and subtraction okay this is possible with the help of dir okay by using this dir function we can pass the module name and find out what set of functions are there in this particular module okay now you can say the uh, r1 is equal to calculator dot addition like this you can say okay so this is what is the dir guys now next thing let's move on to the next uh, okay next level next level is so till now we created a module here calculator module but uh, under the calculator module directly the functions are there right a set of functions are there what i want to do is what i want to change is 
instead of having this uh, particular things directly, okay, this set of functions directly created under the module, what I will do is I'll create a class, okay. I'll say class A. Under the class A, I'll put this. I'll just give a tab space so that uh, these two, two functions become the methods now because they are inside the class. Now this class A contains two methods, that is addition and subtraction. Similarly, I'll click you class B. That means in a single module, we have multiple classes. Under that modules, we have multiple functions, okay? multiple methods. So he, this also I'll say like this, you see? So under this calculator module, we have class A and class B. Under the class A, class A we have addition and subtraction methods, okay? Under the class B, we have multiplication and division, okay? So now in this case, a module can contain like this also. Module can contain classes, classes can contain functions or methods, okay? In that case, how to access? The first thing guys, the first thing is I want to find out, okay? I want to find out uh, earlier uh, when I use DIR, right? When I use DIR, I got how many functions are there in this module? But this case, right? The functions are inside the classes. So if you use DIR again, here it will give you how many classes are there, okay? It will give you how many classes are there. For example, here, I'll say import calculator module first. And after that, if I say print DIR of, okay? Module name calculator. The earlier, when I say DIR calculator, it was giving me how many functions, how many functions are there in this calculator module. But this time, it will not give you the number of functions or the function names which are there in the calculator module. Instead, this DIR will give you the number of classes that are there, okay? The classes which are there under the calculator module it will print because this time the functions or methods are inside the classes. Run this code, you see, A and B, right? Remaining all are, you know, right, you can ignore. A and B, okay, they are different, right? So A and B are the classes. Earlier it was giving us a set of functions names here, but this time, since the functions are not directly created under the module, instead the uh, functions are wrapped under the classes inside this module, we are getting the class. Okay, this one. Here. Now, how to how to access in this case? In this case, when the functions are part of the classes inside a module, how to access the functions? So here, what we have to do is we have to create objects for the classes inside this module. Okay, how to create the objects? For example, if we want to use if you want to use this particular addition function, which is there in the class under the module. So what I have to do guys, I have to say, with the help of module name, first I have to say module name dot class name A, just create a function like this, okay? Uh, just create a object for this class, okay? Calculator the module name dot create object for the class A, which is there inside the module, calculator module. And uh, here I'll say uh, object one, obj1, obj1 is equal to, now, Using this object reference, I can access object reference dot addition. I can say five comma four. I can print this out guys, okay? It will return me uh, the sum of uh, five and four. I can print like this, okay? That's all. Uh, again, print of object reference dot subtraction, okay? The second uh, function we have in the, under the class A of this module is subtraction, five comma four. Okay? So this will be printed as uh, five plus four, nine. This will be printed as uh, five minus uh, four, one. Okay, run this code. 99y. Okay, what happened? So addition takes two positions arguments, but three were given. Okay, what does that mean? So let me check. Addition. Okay, here. Okay, a comma b. Sorry guys. Uh, here you know right self. We forgot self. Okay, we forgot self while creating. That's the problem. Other than that, it's not a big deal. So just give self here, guys. So as you know. The methods by default under the class should have the first keyword as a first parameter as a self, okay? If you don't give self, this is a side effect. So now guys, it will work fine, run this code. I forgot to provide the self there when I'm creating the methods under the classes, okay? So after I provide the self, I'm getting the output properly, okay? Five, four, five plus four is nine, five minus uh, four is one, okay? Similarly, if I have to access the uh, functions which are there under the, if I have to access the functions uh, that are there under the class B, multiplication and division, if I have to access, so what I have to do? Here, using the module name, I have to create an object for the class B, okay? And uh, obj2 is equal to, okay? Object2 is equal to print of, or you can say uh, m is equal to, okay? m is equal to obj2 uh, obj dot multiplication 5 comma 4, 
and print this yum okay this is another way print yum okay so similarly obj2 using the object reference i'll call the division and pi comma 4 i'll say and i'll assign whatever whatever the written uh, written value that division method of the calculator module is giving from the class b right that i am storing into uh, let's say d and i'm printing that result okay printing that result as d done now this will be printed as uh, 5 for the 20 and this will be printed as 5 divided by 4 is 1.5 okay run this code 9 1 20 and 1.5 okay hope you got the idea guys uh, if okay if the module contains classes and under the classes the set of functions are there set of methods are there then this is the approach okay if directly this module contains a function the approach is different okay but in case of okay in case of the module containing class under the classes the methods are there then we have to create the objects the help of the module name we have to create the objects for the classes which are there under the module and using the object reference we have to access it okay those one hope you got the difference now the next thing okay the next thing is so next thing is built-in module guys okay there is one more uh, like you see whatever the things i created this calculator module is not a predefined one it's not a built-in module okay this calculator.py is not a built-in module so this is a module which is a user defined module that i have created okay python doesn't have this module by default i have created okay i have created for myself right so what if uh, let me demonstrate let me demonstrate uh, this guys let me delete this stuff first okay let me demonstrate the inbuilt modules in am i using anywhere okay otherwise uh, let's keep it aside okay somehow struck fine i have the demo class guys okay demo class so i'll show you uh, some inbuilt uh, modules guys okay python also has some inbuilt modules okay so i don't have to create always the different modules okay so python also is coming with some predefined or inbuilt modules which can which we can directly use so how to use them okay so uh, for example there are a lot of modules in python guys okay there are a lot of inbuilt modules in python okay there are a lot of inbuilt modules in python uh, but i am going to okay there are a lot of inbuilt modules in python and but i am going to give you some examples only okay so i am going to uh, explain only two modules two inbuilt modules in python okay i am going to explain only two inbuilt modules in python but there are a big list of uh, inbuilt modules in python for example i am going to demonstrate only two inbuilt modules that is math and random okay so here let's start using one of the inbuilt module of python uh, that is math case okay math how do you use that so here uh, square root okay you know about square root in mathematics right uh, so what i will do is i'll say math dot you see these are all the set of functions guys square root you can find the square root you can find the pi value and you can print the pi value okay you can uh, get the ceiling value you can uh, get the flooring floor value floor value here Okay, like the different uh, uh, functions are there set of functions are there in this inbuilt or predefined math module in python okay so let's start using it guys one with one of the by accessing one of the uh, function from this okay module square root okay just give four guys what is the square root of four in mathematics two right square root of four is two so two should be printed okay if i say print of math dot square root it should print two guys. the output it should print two and this code 2.0 got printed okay done similarly i'll say print of math dot okay pi. if i want to print the pi value in, in, in mathematics guys uh, with the value of pi is 3.141 uh, something right so run this code you'll get the pi value printed here 3.141599 and all those stuff okay and then math dot there's one seal right what is seal i'll tell you what is seal. Okay. like this many uh functions okay many uh set of functions are there in this predefined math module in python so we can directly use them okay they are coming by default with python okay seal seal if i give seal means on the rooftop right for example if i give 4.2 what is the seal here 4.2 means let's run this code okay it's printing five okay even though after the decimal point uh less than five value is there after the decimal point that is two is less than five right but still when you say seal right uh, it will be rounded off to five okay point two also will be rounded off to five but if i say floor here this will be ignored guys okay floor means it will be ignored uh, it will be rounded off to four only okay in case of uh, 
steel, it will take the upper value. In case of floor, it will take the lower value. That four will be printed. Okay. Like this, many operations are there. Many operations that you can do with mathematics, right? That are possible with the math module in Python, guys. Okay. You can call the respective set of functions from the inbuilt uh, math module. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Next one is. So if you have if you have seen guys, if I say math dot square root, the moment I say math dot square root, right? You see. Is importing the module, inbuilt module from the Python, right? The math module. I have not created any math module here, right? It's taking it from the inbuilt. Okay, inbuilt uh, Python module is being imported here automatically. Okay, the PyCharm ID is automatically imported. Similarly, I told you, right? There's one more example uh, that is random. Okay, there's one more example that is random, guys. Uh, so let's start using the random now. Uh, random module. Okay, random dot. Okay, random dot. Uh, so here, guys, uh, the, uh, like uh, I can use random with uh, a list. Okay, you know about list, right? In one of the previous sessions, I explained about the list, right? So let's create a list once. Uh, how to use a, a random module with the list? Uh, I'll tell you. Okay, random predefined module. A list of colors I'll give, guys. Uh, orange, green, blue. Orange. I'll just give different uh, list of colors: green, blue, white. Hello, red, black, purple, let's say these are the colors. Now if I say random dot, this is a module, right? Random dot, something known as random dot random, okay? So I have to use, uh, sorry, with the list, I have to use choice, guys, okay? With the list, I have to use choice, uh, random dot choice, and I have to pass these colors, okay? I have to print this, guys, okay? Every time I have to print this. Like this, okay? Random dot choice of list. Run this code. Randomly, it will choose one of the color, guys. Every time it will print a different color in this list of colors. You see, it has print white here. Again, run it. This time you got purple, random. Randomly, it's printing the any of the values from this list, guys, blue. Orange, white, red, like this. Randomly, it is printing the colors okay, from this list. So if you want to randomly pick one of the colors from this, uh, one of the value from this uh, list of values, right? Then you can use choice, choice uh, function, okay? Choice function of this random module, random inbuilt module okay, in Python. Okay, and similarly, you can also use uh, random like this instead of using the random with the list, right? Random module. Here you see random module is already imported when you started uh, saying accessing this one of the function using the random module. So random dot rand int, okay, rand int. Uh, here I'll give some values, guys, okay. If I want to get the values from one to 100, okay, in between one to 100, I want to one to 100. My, okay, so let's see, one to 10 otherwise, okay, one to 10 otherwise. Let's see, uh, it will be kind of different, guys, I'll tell you. So print off, otherwise I'll show with a less value, five, one comma five else. Okay? And this, so some random value, five, one to five, okay? So let's see, five is coming, four is coming, one is coming, two, three, 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 three is coming multiple times, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So if I want to increase that range, one to 100, if I give, okay? Random values will be printed from one to 100, any value from one to 100, that is at a time, only one value from within the range of one to 100 will be printed, that is one or 15 or whatever it is, the 15, 17, that is, you can increase the range guys, okay? If you give like this, okay? It will print a bigger number, you see, 6739, 2140, okay? 664, 5838, like this, okay? So like this guys, you can use a rand int also. So anyhow, the main, idea here is okay main thing that i wanted to explain is apart from we creating our own modules in python there are some inbuilt modules okay there are some inbuilt modules which are coming by default in python okay built in modules in python which will save a lot of time for you right uh, you don't have to create a set of functions okay they are coming by default inbuilt so if you have to perform this kind of mathematical operations or random or any other things right just look after this modules guys inbuilt modules they will save a lot of time for you Okay, so this is all about modules, guys. Either you can create the modules or you can use the inbuilt modules provided by the Python. Okay, up to you.
and uh, this topic is all about modules in python okay so that's it guys thank you bye hello all welcome to part 58 of python tutorial in this session i'm going to explain and practically demonstrate about packages in python so let's get started first of all what exactly are these packages packages are nothing but folders whose purpose is to organize the stuff for example guys let's take a laptop or a computer machine that you guys are using okay in that we generally have different drives like c drive d drive e drive okay and inside the drives we'll have a lot of files for example if you take any c drive or d drive right in your computer machine or laptop there will be a lot of folders why we have to create so much of folders or why by default uh, in our computer machines there are so many folders in c drive or something like that the purpose is to organize the stuff okay we have to organize the stuff for example in my laptop okay in my laptop if i take you to any of the drives okay let's say i'll take you to this uh, c drive here you see there are a lot of folders here the purpose of the folders is to organize the stuff right so here uh, you see this is the folder i created okay where i am putting all my stuff okay i'm just uh, dividing all the stuff and all and also if i go to any other program files or so you'll see a lot of folders here okay java related folder all the files and folders related to java are under this folder okay if you go to any other folder like microsoft uh, i mean microsoft uh, or something mozilla or something like firefox right you can see all the folders related to files and folders related to mozilla firefox under this folder so the purpose of the folders is to organize the stuff but coming to the packages packages are nothing but folders only okay packages are nothing but folders only their purpose is also to organize the stuff under the python projects okay let me practically show you how we can use packages for organizing stuff in python projects okay and also i'll show you like what will happen when you create packages without packages what will happen after you create the packages in the python projects uh, how how the things change and all those things i'm going to explain so firstly i'll open this pycharm id where we have this sample python project okay which is already created here so first i'll not create any package guys without creating the package what i will do is i'll just simply uh, create the modules okay you already know right uh, in the previous session i explained about the modules in python okay i'll just create the modules which are nothing but the python files having some set of functions okay so i'll create a module let's say calculator module okay calculator module i created guys so here in the calculator module i'll create some functions uh, def addition some sample functions i'm creating guys here sum is equal to a plus b and uh, here i'll say return sum okay this is one function i created another sample function i'll create subtraction a comma b so modules in python are nothing but the okay modules in python are nothing but the python files having some set of functions okay like this so here i can create any number of functions inside this uh, calculator module okay return sub okay so these are two functions for now so one module is created so i'll create one more module guys let's i'll create another module say uh, animals okay animals module i'm just creating another module known as animals module in this module also i'm just going to create a let's say i'll create a, let's say class okay class animals class under this i'll create some methods say def okay say def uh, i'll say cat okay i'm a cat def okay def uh, dog french dog dog def uh, cat is over dog is over rabbit french like this some sample okay methods i am creating inside the class inside this uh, animals module okay so here i will say i am a rabbit fine 
so so far so good okay so here uh, animals and calculator modules i created so i want to organize this uh, modules properly okay? i want to organize this modules properly before i organize this modules properly i'll create another uh, kind of okay another python file okay? say demo demo python file i create and uh, here in this python file what i want to do is i want to access this uh, animals and calculator modules inside this uh, python file okay demo.python file how to how to access the how to access the function set of functions inside this animals or calculator for example if i want to access the set of functions inside this calculator what i have to do i have to import this module first okay import the module and after that uh, using the module name i have to access the functions inside the calculator okay like this i can access the print of the okay, lines like right run this code you see 9 will be printed in the output okay the result of this addition that is y plus 4 9 will be printed in the output so similarly if, if i want to access okay uh, the set of functions under the class of this animals okay what i have to do i have to say import animals okay animals module and uh, here i'll say animals dot what is the class name under the animals module we have the under the animals module we have the animals class under the animals class we have this function right methods so i have to say animals dot i have to create an object for the animals and using the object reference of this animals uh, i have to call a dot cat okay a dot dog like this okay run this code it will work so this is a default way of uh, okay if you don't have any packages and uh, if the modules and this demo.python file are inside the are at the same level here this is the thing but i want to categorize guys i want to organize the stuff properly okay so i want to create a package and uh, i want to move for example i'll create a package here so so here right click on the project and say new and uh, create a python package i'll say uh, Pack, okay. Pack uh, animals, okay. Pack animals. I'll say pack animals. So I'll give this name pack animals. So under this pack animals, I'll move this uh, animals case. Okay, I'll just move this uh, animals. Sorry, pack the animals uh, module has been moved to the one of the package as part of the organizing the stuff right i'm just creating a package known as pack animals under that i'm moving the animals okay so if if uh, there is something other python files or whatever the files are related to the animals right i may move into the this package okay just for the sake of organizing the stuff okay? i'll create one more package and here i'll say uh, math package okay math package under the math package i'm moving the calculator guys so like this done okay so here i'll create one more package okay experiment package experiment package anything you can create any names and all uh, to that i am moving this uh, demo.python file so now this animals is under the pack animals package calculator is under the math package okay this uh, demo.python file is under there uh experiment package so all these things are in a different packages right now if i still want to access okay now in the demo.python file which is there in experiment package i want to access the uh, set of functions of this animals module which is there in a different package known as pack animals what i have to do is i have to say import import package name pack animals dot animals have to say okay earlier for importing the normal module i used to say import animals you see this is not working now because earlier animals calculator and demo python file were at the same level okay they are not organized using the packages but now since you organize this python project uh, all the related files are uh, grouped into a different package here like uh, some experiment related files are under the experiment package mathematical related files on the math package animals related on the pack animals package like that okay now this is not possible guys okay because demo is under a different package and animals uh, module is under a different package so here here while importing the module you have to give the name of the package guys that is pack animals is the name of the package as you can see animals is under the pack animals so you have to give pack animals 
package name dot animals you have to give okay module name then it will work guys okay now uh, how to access how to access the functions then okay again pack animals dot in the help of package name guys okay you have to give package name animals dot like this so here animals dot uh, we have to create an object for the first before that before animals guys i'll ex i'll explain you about the math package that is easier okay so here instead of saying import okay instead of saying import uh, cal uh, calculator you see it's not coming okay because calculator is under a module right i have to give the package name here that is math package math package dot calculator now calculator right without this math package it will not come you see without this math package you will get error now so here i'll say uh, math package dot now it will work okay you can import like this now to access uh, any uh, set of functions of this calculator module which is under the math package right i have to say math package dot calculator dot you see all the set of functions are coming here okay so like this i have to say this is the way guys okay then uh, once you move a particular module into a package accessing the module will depend on the will depend on the package okay run this code see the result is coming nine is coming that's fine okay so there is one more way guys okay there is one more way to avoid this uh, problem okay so because again if i say r2 is equal to math package dot every time i have to give the package name here followed by the okay module name and followed by the function inside the module right every time i have to give this process okay this is a tedious process for me so i'll simplify this just give me a second run this code 9 and 1 not coming i'll simplify this instead of writing the import statement like this what you have to say is from okay math package dot calculator okay from math package dot this module import import what import addition like this okay for now import addition when you say like this when you say like this what will happen is you don't have to mention this okay directly you can access okay here also better this will not come because here i am only imported the addition but again i would say here subtraction okay now you see the problem is gone okay directly you can access now so here but you have to say package name from package name dot module name import the addition function okay from package name dot uh, uh, module name import the subtraction function okay and so on so fine next uh, addition comma subtraction okay like this you can give just to avoid the lines okay number of lines this is one way or just put asterisk here that means all functions which are there in the calculator module under this math package okay all these things will work guys okay these are the ways so far so good now what about uh, this uh, pack animals okay animals uh, module under the pack animals okay here if i open this animals guys so there is a class inside this module under the class we have the methods okay the process will be bit different right so what we have to do here is uh, general i have to say import uh animals module from which package pack animals dot animals okay module this is the first thing you have to do after that to access the methods which are under the class of this animals module i have to say pack animals dot animals module dot under that we have the under this animals module we have the animals class so i have to create an object for the class and that object i have to assign to some object reference obj1 is equal to okay and using this object reference i need to access okay i need to access this cat i need to access this uh, dog etc or i can access this rabbit okay this is a way guys okay this is a way run this code it will work so i am a cat i am a dog i am a rabbit got printed here and if you don't want to okay while creating the object for the animals class which is there inside the animals module of the pack animals package okay if i don't want to provide this part what i have to do guys i have, I have to modify this import statement instead of writing like this i have to say from pack animals dot animals module okay import import what animals animals class okay 
import animals class from like animals dot animal. Okay, now remove this part. Okay, this is not required, guys. Okay, now you can directly create an object for the animals class, and uh, okay, this will this is going to work. So hope you got some idea, right? At the moment uh, you organize the stuff in Python projects under these different modules, right? Uh, with the help of this, okay. Uh, the moment you decide to organize the stuff, different modules or whatever the Python files under this Python project under different packages like this, then you have to use the package names in the import statements. Okay, in the import statements, you have to use the package names like this. And uh, as the way I showed you, right? Uh, if if you use this kind of import statement, then you don't have to provide the package names and module names here. But if uh, the second process is very good, right? From package uh, pack animals dot animals import animals means this is a better way. Okay, it looks very simple. The code looks very simple here. Okay, so that is the changes, guys. Okay, that are the changes of using the packages. Okay, so you have to be aware of that. What else is there? All these things I explained, guys. You can also create parent and child like packages, guys. Okay, uh, hierarchy of packages can be created. Okay, under a parent uh, package, you can create a sub package or child package, and uh, you can still access the stuff. Let me practically demonstrate that for you. So. I'll do one thing. Uh, I'll just uh, take this uh, calculator. Is there right under this math package? I'll create one more package. Let's say uh, math package uh, CLC package. Okay, CLC pack or something. I'll just create another a sub package. I created under the math math package, and uh, I'm just moving this calculator into this cal package. Okay? Right. Now go to the demo. Now calculator module is under the cal sub package that is cal pack, which is there under the parent package math pack. Okay, now how the things will change. Okay, if I have to use this calculator, set of functions from this calculator, right? What I have to use do is I have to say import. Okay, import this calculator from the sub package which is there under the main package. I have to say like this math package dot under that we have calc package. Under the calc package, we have this calculator module. Okay, then here to access, I have to say math package dot calc package calc pack dot calculator dot addition okay, this is a process guys you see you have to provide the parent package child package i mean sub package and then module and then the function this is one way okay r1 is equal to so print r1 is one way so run this code you see nine got printed that's working fine i'm able to access this function from the module which is there under the sub package of this main package okay so I don't want to write all this stuff, okay? I don't want to mention till here, okay? Directly, I want to use addition of four five. This part I want to eliminate. In that case, I should use a different type of import statement where I have to say from math package dot calc package dot calculator import addition. If I write like this, I don't have to provide all this stuff. Right? Okay, I, would, I will remove this in a, so this import this format of import statement. If I use, I don't have to provide this now directly this is going to work okay and if i put a hashtag here that means any function from this uh, calculator module which is there under the parent sub package okay so now i'll say or uh, i'll say r2 is equal to r2 is equal to subtraction of uh, i comma 4 print r2 by minus four one will be printed okay so it's working fine so you can have parent and child packages uh, in the python projects guys and you can still access the stuff and i just now showed you how to access the stuff okay when there are multiple okay parent and child packages in python projects fine so that's all guys that's all okay that's all about the packages uh, packages are nothing but the folders okay in the python projects Packages are nothing but the folders uh, which can be used for organizing the stuff. Okay, as the way I showed you. Okay, I organize the stuff right. Different uh, modules I stored in different packages. Okay, that's the way of organizing, right? So packages are nothing but the folders which can be used for organizing stuff. So that's it, guys. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part fifty nine of Python tutorial. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about exception handling in python so let's get started first of all what exactly is this exception 
Exceptions are nothing but the errors which occur while running the code. So errors which occur while running the code are nothing but exceptions. Till now, we have seen the errors which occur while writing the code. Okay, those are not exception type of errors. But when you run the code, then if you are getting the error, such kind of errors are known as exceptions. Let me practically demonstrate one exception for you. Okay, so I'll open this uh, PyCharm ID. Here, I will create a variable, say A, and I'll assign this variable a with some value 10. Now, if I try to, okay, if I try to divide this number with zero, is it possible in mathematics to divide a number by zero? No, right? It's not possible, right? You cannot number, okay? You cannot divide a number by zero in mathematics, but if you still try to do so, am I getting error while writing the code here? Is this statement giving any error in this Python file? No, right? It looks, everything is okay. But the moment I run this code, okay, when I run this program, then I'm getting this exception, right? Zero division error. The errors which occur while running the code are known as exceptions. Here, zero division error is nothing but an exception. It's an example of an exception. You cannot divide a number by zero. If you try to do so during the runtime, or that is while running the code, you will get this kind of exceptions, errors, okay? This kind of errors are known as exceptions. But what is the problem with the exceptions? What is the problem with the exceptions? And why we have to handle them? Here I'm saying, here I'm not saying simple exception. Here I'm saying exception handling. That means I have to handle the exception. Why we have to handle the exceptions? Let me explain. For example, guys, okay? For example, if there is a piece of code like this, for example, there is a box here. Let's say this is a file. This box represents a file. And uh, in this file, a lot of code has been written, okay? A lot of code has been written like this. And a lot of code has been written like this. And there is one line of code here, somewhere here in between, and uh, which is giving some exception. When you run this code, exception, this kind of error, okay? Whatever the error we got uh, while running this code, right? A kind of exception error during the runtime, right? Let's say zero division error or whatever the exception. Let's say that that kind of exception has come in this fourth line. You see here, how many lines are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In that fourth line is giving some error known as zero division error exception kind of, okay? So in that case, what is the problem? The problem is after this line, okay? After this exception, all the other lines will not be executed, okay? The set of code, okay? The code which is coming after this, exception giving code, this won't be executed. This set of code won't be executed, guys, okay? This won't be executed. Let me practically show you guys. Here, here I'll say print start, starting of the program, okay? Starting of the program, like this, I have written some print statement. Here I'll say print ending of the program, okay? Ending of the program. So here, how many lines are there after this uh, line? or statement which is going to give this kind of zero division error exception. After this third line, there's only one line, right? This line won't be executed because the third line itself, when you're running this code during the runtime, at the third line itself, you are getting this kind of zero division error exception. Because that exception came in the third line, the program will be halted and all the remaining lines after the third line won't be executed. That's a problem. It's a problem statement, guys. Whatever I'm saying is a problem statement. Run this code, you see? First starting of the program got printed, so far so good. In the third line, you see at the line three, we got this exception known as zero division exception we got, okay? Since we are dividing a number by zero, we got the zero division exception. And since the program halted because of this exception, the program has stopped and whatever the lines that are coming after this line three are not getting executed. You see, if, if this particular fourth line got executed, you would have seen ending of the program printed in the output, but there is no ending of the program. Starting of the program is there. After that exception came at the line three and the program halted and all the lines which are coming after the line three got skipped. They will not be executed because of the exception in the previous line, okay? If I give multiple print statements like this, none of these print statements will be executed here. Run this code, the same thing will happen, guys. Starting of the program after that exception came, the line three and after that ending of the program, nowhere ending of the program got printed, right? Nowhere, this ending of the program got printed. 
okay so the uh, so you understood the problem statement right uh, why we have to handle the exception okay if the exception comes the statements which are coming the code the set of code that is coming after the exception won't be executed that is the problem statement how to overcome this problem to overcome this problem guys we have to surround this uh, code okay which is going to give some exception right that code we have to surround with some try except blocks okay i'll tell you okay try block just say try colon and give the indentation here as usual and uh, under whatever the statement there, there is a possibility of give, throwing an exception right giving an exception right that you you provide that under the try block like this okay and after that type accept ex create accept block okay accept accept here i will say print so here accept followed by which type of exception will come because of this line what's the what type of exception we may get zero division error exception so copy this zero division ex exception and paste it here guys okay accept this one okay so if there is an exception coming here ignore that we are simply saying okay what shall we do when such kind of exception really comes so i'll write that okay exception got handled okay so what happens in this program is you see this blog guys just just see this code here the program will start when i run this code the starting of the program will be printed in the output after that under the try block a is equal to 10 divided by 0 statement is there but this statement is going to give an exception known as zero division exception but here since we have provided this statement un under the try except blocks like this okay try block and except blocks we have provided right so since this particular statement which is uh, which will which will throw the zero division error exception right that is inside the try block so instead of halting the program the exception thrown will be received by this except block like this, okay whatever the exception that is coming right that will be stored here that will come to this except block and if it is matching okay whatever the exception what exception this particular statement will throw it will throw zero division error exception here also except what is there what type of exception we have written if this particular statement in the try block is throwing the zero division error exception then instead of stopping the program or halting the program okay it will print this statement okay it will go to the it will run the except except block okay except block will be executed where exception got handled will be printed and after that the program will not halt case okay here exception is handled by this except block and the program will not stop and the remaining statements will be executed ending of the program ending of the program will be printed you see run this code this time even though the line fine is going to give the zero division error exception but still because we have this try except blocks except block will catch that zero division error exception here and since it has captured the proper exception it will simply run the code that is mentioned inside the except block that is exception got handled will be printed in the output since the exception got really handled by this try except blocks okay all the statements which are coming after this uh, try blocks try except blocks will be printed the program execution will continue program execution will not stop this time you see starting of the program after that this exception got handled guys whatever the exception that is thrown inside the try block is handled by the except block and whatever the statement inside the except block got printed here exception got handled got printed after that the remaining program will be executed without any problem ending of the program ending of the program ending of the program ending of the program got printed hope you understood how to handle the exceptions now right so what is the problem with the exceptions guys when the exception occurs while running the code the remaining portion of the code in the in the whatever the program we have written won't be executed right after the after the exception thrown statement all the set of code which are coming after the exception thrown statement right though they will not be executed they will not be executed since the program will stop there itself where the exception got occurred but now when you handle the exceptions using this try except blocks okay try block and except blocks you handle the exception okay exception then remaining set of code will be executed the program will not stop and the code will be executed guys okay so that is called as exception handling hope you understood now so for now i just only demonstrated zero division error exception guys okay zero division exception but what happens in real time is uh, you, you will not intentionally give 10 divided by 0 here okay you will not give 10 divided by 0 what we'll do is here i'll say num is equal to input you remember the input right in one of the previous sessions i explained input so during the runtime uh, you uh, during the runtime you can receive the input from the user right here i'll say print enter okay any number okay like this i'll say enter any number i will say and uh, 
here whatever the input that is received from the user will be received by default in the string format as i explained already in the pre one of the previous session i have to type cast that to into type okay integer type okay even though you give number here that will be taken the form of string that you have to type cast into into type after type casting into type uh, that number will get stored into the number and here 10 divided by number i will say now if i run this code guys if i run this code uh, when i run this code here starting of the program enter any number if i am entering a number say 1 here what will happen guys 1 will get stored in the number and here 10 divided by number 10 divided by 1 will any exception will be thrown here 10 divided by 1 it will store 10 here right 10 times the 10 will be divided by 1 so 10 will be stored into a and it, this statement is not going to give an exception since the exception is not there except block will be skipped and ending of the program will be printed okay so run this code sorry already have run i have to press enter here after i enter number any number say one here one is being captured into the number and uh, 10 divided by one 10 will come here since there is no exception okay this except block will not be executed and uh, remaining code will be running okay end of the program end of the program will be running what if i run this program again and here enter a name number here i'll give zero here in this case when the user gives zero and that is con converted into integer number zero 10 divided by zero this time this will give exception that is zero division error exception will come and that will be captured in the except block and uh, exception got handled and remaining statements will be executed. Run this code. Sorry, already running. Yes. Okay, fine. Starting of the program, enter in number zero. Exception got handled. You see, exception got handled here. Let me run it again, guys. So if you give zero and press enter, you see, the zero will be 10 divided by zero, it will give exception and that exception got handled. That's why you're getting exception got handled here. Okay. The except block got executed and remaining ending of the program will be continued. Okay. The remaining code will be executed. So this happens in real time, guys. Okay. We generally don't intentionally give 10 divided by 0. Instead, we will receive an input from the user and that okay, based on that input, if suddenly if user gives 0, then program cannot handle, right? If there is a possibility of getting an exception, we'll put that code inside the try except blocks. Okay, simple. And handle the exception. Okay. And there are other type of exceptions, guys, like uh, zero division error, type error, name error, like the different type of exceptions are there. Okay. So some example exceptions are there. For example, here, I'll just remove this code and say print. I'll make it simple. Starting of the program and print. Ending of the program. And in between, I'll say uh, a is equal to 10 divided by 0. a is equal to 10 divided by 0, I'll say in between. And if I run this code, you'll get an exception and the last statement will not be executed because exception occurred in third line, fourth line will be skipped. Because of the exception, the fourth line will be skipped. You see, starting of the program, exception, and uh, ending of the program is not printed. But what if I provide that inside the try blocks, right? Try, try block, and uh, to handle the exception, I'll provide except block. So which type of exception it will it will throw? The statement will throw zero division exception, zero division error exception. So let's write it here, put a colon here run and uh, here yeah here i'll say print if the exception is handled i'll say exception zero division error or exception got handled i'll simply say exception got handled handled okay run this code you see this time the exception got handled starting of the program exception got handled even though the exception is coming the exception got handled and finally ending of the program so far so good now other type of exceptions I have to explain, right? Apart from having the zero division error exception, we have the type error, okay? What's the type error is, uh, you see here, for example, here, I'll receive an input from the user, okay? So A is equal to input, I'll say. Definitely this will come in string format, okay? So here I'll say print any number or, okay, enter anything, okay, enter enter your input okay like this i'll say enter your input i'll say and uh, user will enter the input based on this statement during the runtime that input will be captured and stored into the a and here i'll say b is equal to 10 plus a okay i'm appending this a with the 10 so 10 plus if this is string format is it possible guys can i append uh, 10 can i concatenate a digit number 10 with a string text here no right this is not this statement is not possible so it will throw which exception type error but here i am handling which exception here we are getting type error but i am trying to handle zero division 
the exception is type is mismatching, right? Here you are going to get the type error, type error exception, because you cannot concatenate a string text with a number. So type problem is there. So run this code. Starting of the program, I'll give A, B, C, D as a text. A, B, C, D will be inputted. And when you try to add this 10 with A, B, C, D, automatically you'll get, you cannot concatenate string with number in uh, Python, okay? So automatically you will get type error, okay? Since this statement is throwing a type error, but here we are trying to handle which error exception, zero division error. Is there a match with the type exception, type error exception and zero division error exception? No, right? So the exception will not be handled and it's already running guys, okay? Just press enter, it will run, okay? Starting of the program, enter your input. Already program is running, right? Already program is running, stop and run, I will say. Stop and run. Stop and uh, run, okay? Input A, B, C, D and press enter. You see, the moment we did, did that uh, in the line three, in the line eight, sorry, line eight, here line eight, we got the type error and uh, because of the type error, exception we got and here we are trying to handle a different exception, that is zero division error. But how to handle that? You have to change this to type error, then it will be handled. Change this to type error, guys, then only it will be handled. Now run this code, exception will be handled this. A, B, C, D, press enter. Exception got handled because here we are getting type error, we are trying to handle the type error. So that's the problem. Okay? So, and uh, ultimately there is one more way, guys. Okay, There is one more type of exception we can expect. I'll tell you. So I'll remove this part your input and all i'll make this program again simple here tribe tribe block tribe block will be there and uh, here exception got handled is fine here in the tribe block i'll write print a okay print a like this i'll write okay print of a or print a whatever it is print a also is fine okay. is there any a already created is there any variable created as a there's no error but i am trying to print the a variable a which is not yet created so what type of error uh, exception it will give this statement will give name error but here what you are handling type error run this code you see automatically starting of the program after that here exception got occurred that is name error exception got error occurred and since we are not handling the name error the exception didn't get handled and the ending uh, this program has halted because exception has been thrown and the exception is not handled means program will stop remaining statements will not be executed if the exception is not handled yet, okay what if i change this type error to name error then the things will work fine now run this code starting of the program and you see the name error exception got handled because here we are putting name error that means exception will be handled in the ending of the program done <laughs> ending of the program so these are the different type of uh, exceptions okay the examples of the exceptions, guys. Okay, you can handle the exceptions in different ways. Okay, using the try except blocks, you can handle the exception. Fine. So far, so good. Now, guys, there is one more way. Okay, there is one more way. What is that? Is here you are trying to print a, and you are getting an exception name error. But here only you are simply printing a generic message saying exception got handled. Instead, you want to print the details of the name error exception. Okay, why the except what exception got handled? I want to print. For that, guys, here. After this except name error, I'll say as some variable you give, okay? Some X or B or N, I'll give N here as N and here I'll try to print N, okay? So whatever the exception that is told, uh, that is thrown from here in this statement, this, this statement is throwing name error exception. That name error, error exception will be captured by, as an object by this N, okay? This name error exception will be captured because here we are handling the name error, right? The thrown name error exception will be stored into this N and that N, that object we are printing. Here I'll put a colon here and give some space. And all the details of the exception that were thrown from this statement will be printed here because of we printing n here. Run this. Starting of the program, exception got handled. Name A is not defined. This is the reason, okay? Here the n, when you are printing n, this is getting printed. Okay, along with the text exception got handled. Here name A is not defined is getting printed. Okay, A is not defined, it's printed, okay? So like this, you can also try with other, uh, so here, if I say a is equal to 10 divided by zero, okay? And here, what type of exception I have to handle? Zero division error exception I have to handle. Here I'll say as z or something, and here I'll print which type of exception got handled, exception got handled and the details of the exception that got handled, okay? Here, this statement will throw an object of the exception. That object will be stored into z. When you print that object that is uh, captured here by the except block, that object details, that is what is the reason for the exception will be printed in the output here. 
run this code starting of the program and here we got a zero division exception here we are uh, handling the zero division exception so that object got stored whatever the exception that is shown in the statement is stored into the z and that z got printed here exception got handed division by zero is printed here ending of the program got printed okay like this guys uh, you can also you can also uh, capture the object okay that is thrown in the previous exception object you can capture the syntax is after the a type of the exception you are handling here after that you have to provide as and some variable name e or x or n or whatever is okay and one more thing guys so you can actually okay so this one i already shown guys what if the exception type provided in the except block doesn't match exception will be thrown and uh, it will not be handled right if you are getting uh, if you are getting this uh, zero division error exception but if, if but you are providing here here the statement is giving zero division exception but here if you are saying name error exception the exception will not be handled okay the statement is throwing zero division error exception but here you are trying to handle name error that is not possible and this code it will give an exception okay starting of the program exception because here we have to handle the zero division exception the statement is giving the zero division exception if you provide zero division here then only it is possible or you can provide like this multiple except blocks can be provided guys okay? multiple except blocks are possible in try except blocks okay first exception i gave it as name error one of the and here i'll say here i'll say n guys okay name error as n it will be easy right for us name error as n and i'll print n here okay except type error let's say type error as print exception got handled colon space comma t okay and one more except name error type error and uh, zero division error as that print exception got handled comma z okay n t z like this fine starting of the program ending of the program and between if this particular statement is giving an exception based on the type of the exception either name error or type error or zero division here any of the except blocks will be executed guys okay based on the type of exception the statement is throwing for example this statement will throw zero division so is zero division error uh, whatever the exception that is uh, throwing from here that is zero division error exception is it matching name name error no it will go it will check with the next exception type okay next except, except block type error is it matching no again zero division error thrown here is matching with the third except block so it it will go to the third except block then the exception comes and uh, it will store into z that object exception object will be stored into the z and it will be printed here along with the exception got handled the reason for the exception run this code you can have multiple except blocks simple terms okay starting of the program exception got handled division by zero okay when you are printing z this particular statement is coming and ending of the program okay so multiple except blocks are possible in python guys and along with that guys you can have the else block okay what is this else block so at the end of this except block okay here you have try block and you have three except blocks let's say three or two or one whatever it is and after that you have else block okay i'll make it simple guys i'll make it simple i'll remove this stuff so that you can understand the concept easily i'll, I'll remove this two except unnecessary except blocks here this statement will go will throw zero division error and we are handling the zero division only and here i'll put an else block and i'll say print at the end of the except block i'm providing the else block inside else block i'll say so when this particular else block will be executed when you are running the try except blocks here when the else block will be executed when the exception is not thrown then only the else block will be executed when the exception is not thrown here then only the else block will be executed but here exception will be thrown or not a is called 10 divided by 0 definitely the exception will be thrown and uh, then only except block will be executed okay else block will be skipped and this code this is starting of the program exception got handled since exception is thrown here exception got handled and ending of the program you see else block is skipped what if i say 10 div 10 divided by 1 in this case the statement is not going to give an exception the statement is not going to give an exception so this will be skipped but since the exception is not there else block will be executed saying in inside else block okay run this code starting of the program inside else block if the exception is not thrown inside the try except block then else block will be automatically executed and similarly we have finally block guys here write finally colon print i'll simply say inside finally block okay i'll say inside finally block 
what is this finally block okay so finally block will inside the try try except blocks will be executed okay along with that try except blocks we have provided the finally block also now this will be executed no matter what whether the exception comes exception doesn't come you want to do something okay when the exception comes or when the exception doesn't come you want to do the same thing then you have to provide finally block guys so here in this case when i say 10 divided by 0 exception will come or not this statement will definitely throw the zero division error exception and since the exception is coming the except block will be executed and the exception got handled and the reason for the exception will be printed in the output after that the program will continue and here else block will be executed since the exception is thrown else block will not be executed but finally block will be executed whether the exception will come or not come okay so inside finally block will be printed only in this statement the statement got executed the exception got uh, handled here exception got handled will be printed after that else block will be skipped because exception is thrown and finally block will be executed okay no matter what finally block will be executed you see here this time first exception uh, starting of the program after that here exception will be thrown and exception will be handled here exception got handled division by zero exception got handled after that else block will be skipped because exception is thrown in this case and finally finally block will be executed no matter what so inside finally block got printed here from the finally block and ending of the program what if i don't get an exception in this case what will happen if i say a is equal to 10 divided by 1 here okay exception is not thrown by this statement 10 can be divided by 1 so this except block will be skipped since the exception is not thrown else block will be executed inside else block okay after starting of the program directly inside else block will be printed in the output after that finally block will be executed no matter what right whether the exception comes or not so inside finally block this time will get starting of the program inside else block inside finally block and ending of the program will be printed four statements will be printed in the output starting of the program inside else block inside finally block ending of the program hope you are able to understand so far that's called as finally block is and there is one more thing guys uh, that is raising an exception okay uh, you can raise an exception okay so uh, like based on some conditions or something you can raise an exception guys i'll tell you what i mean here i'll say raise okay raise zero division error okay simply i'm simply raising guys okay okay i'm simply raising raise zero division error run this code you'll get an exception you see manually you are raising no matter what there is no mathematical equation here or expression here and i'm simply raising okay i'm using a keyword known as raise and just uh, uh, raising an exception okay when this statement 4 will get executed automatically the exception will be printed in the output exception will come in the output and program execution will stop the last statement that is line 6 didn't get executed here so i can i can handle this using again try try catch block so here i'll say except colon print exception got handled exception got handled and here i'll say except which type of exception zero division error exception okay as z i can say and here i can print the exception details also as i mentioned run this code this time this statement will raise an exception no matter what but it will be handled by the try except you see starting of the program exception got handled okay so okay fine so ending of the program here uh, why we are not getting the message that here is uh, here uh, we have to give some message okay? uh, intentionally or dividing a number by zero or something okay number by zero we have to give okay now run this code this time exception got handled div dividing a number by zero whatever the message you gave here it is coming here okay that's it okay so this this here we are manually raising the exception guys but where exactly we have to use this raise and all okay so here i'll create a program guys okay i'll create a program where i'll say age is equal to input okay age is equal to input i'll uh, here i'll say input your age okay print input any input uh, your uh, child's age okay child's age like providing something when the when the user inputs uh, his uh, child's age that age will be stored here i'll just convert that into integer for now and here i'll compare if age is okay age is less than 5 print if age is less uh, age is less than 5 i will raise an exception raise which exception i want to raise here there's one more type of exception that you can throw manually is value error exception okay raise a uh, minute yeah value error capital v guys okay that's the message. value error error 
okay value error exception i want to raise and here i'll say so if age is less than 5 we are, we are raising the value error exception okay value error exception. If age is uh, greater than 5 not a problem okay if it is less than 5 only is a problem run this code so input uh, for example if i give 3 and press enter automatically get an exception known as value error exception i'll get okay because the value is less than 5 i'm throwing an exception known as value error exception so what if i uh, run this code again and this time i will give the age as 10 10 is less than 5 is false so exception will not be thrown okay ending of the input input your child is starting of the program input your child is when you say end, ending of the program is being printed so what i want to do is okay what i want to do is here i'll say if age is less than 5 here else i'll write else block uh, print uh, okay uh, if age is less than 5 you have to give an exception uh, otherwise uh, your child is eligible okay eligible for something okay your child is eligible for something tickets or something like that okay at theater or something okay so now run this code run this code if i give three here exception will be thrown right three is less than five exception will be thrown and uh, remaining statements will not be executed but what if i run this code and if i give 10 here your child is eligible okay your child else block is getting eligible. but in one of the case the exception is being thrown right we have to handle that exception okay we have to handle the exception how to handle i have to put this inside the try block i'll put this inside the try block like this i'll say accept print okay here i'll say exception got handled exception got handled colon space here which exception value error exception okay which exception got handled value error as some v i'll say here I'll print V. Here I'll print V. Now run this code. Now run this code. Okay, so here I'll give three again. Exception got handled, but no message is coming. The reason you already know, right? When you are when you are throwing an exception here using the race race keyword, here you have to provide brackets and say, okay, below five years of age is not eligible. Okay. Like that, okay. Below five years of age is not eligible. Like that, I'm now run this code. Uh, let's say three again. You see, exception got handled. Now, exception is not uh, being thrown and program is not stopping. Exception got handled below five years of age is not eligible. Ending of the program. What if I run the code and give 10 here? Okay, your child is eligible. So, this is how, guys, uh, you can okay, you can use the raise keyword for uh, throwing an exception. Okay, whatever the exception you feel like based on the here i have written some my own code right based on my own conditions i am throwing an exception okay based on my own programmatical logic or code i want to throw an exception in that case i have to use the raise keyword for creating such kind of situations okay for uh, for throwing such kind of exceptions okay but this, uh, this zero division error type error name error happens naturally right based on the type of the code you are writing as that will happen here your customized code will give an exception okay whatever the code you are writing will give an exception okay? You, there is a requirement where you have to implement a logic where okay if this situation happens if the user gives this kind of input or something then the exception has to be thrown customized exceptions can be okay created using the race keyword and followed by the exception name and here you have to provide the message what message you want to give okay because this logic is like this and based on the logic you have to give the message okay why the exception is coming you have to you can handle the customized exception also so guys, it's all about the exception handling in Python. That's all. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part 60 of Python tutorial. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate about Lambda function. So let's get started. Lambda function is a function in Python which has no name. It's a nameless function. Lambda function is a nameless function. That's the first thing. Second thing about the lambda functions is lambda functions can intake any number of arguments. Okay, that means we can create any number of parameters: one parameter, two parameter, three parameters for this lambda function because it can intake any number of arguments. And third thing about the lambda functions is only one expression is allowed in the lambda functions. Okay, only one expression is allowed. Three things here, guys. First of all, lambda function is a nameless function which has no name. Second thing is Lambda function can intake any number of arguments. That means any number of parameters which can receive any number of arguments can be created inside the Lambda functions. And third thing about the Lambda functions is 
only one expression is allowed to be created in the lambda function okay so in order to create this lambda function in python syntactically we have to use a keyword known as lambda okay now let me practically demonstrate this for you how to create the lambda functions and how to use this uh, keyword lambda keyword to create the lambda functions in python for that i'll open this pycharm id where we have the sample python file here i'll simply type a keyword known as lambda to create a lambda function you have to create use this keyword known as lambda and forward this as i mentioned right lambda function doesn't contain any name so i'm not giving any name i'm just simply mentioning the keyword lambda followed by the number of parameters okay how many arguments you want to receive that many number of parameters you have to provide here for example i can provide either single parameter here say lambda a or i can provide two parameters three parameters four parameters and so on guys okay but for this example guys to get started i'll provide only two parameters okay lambda function having two parameters followed by these two parameters provide a colon and followed by this colon perform the operations okay whatever the expression you want to okay write here for example i want to add this a and b parameters okay whatever the data that is received to this two parameters right i want to add it up so i'll say a plus b here and the result of this expression here only one expression is allowed multiple parameters are allowed but here only one expression here you have to write only one expression i cannot put a comma here okay other side of the colon i have to provide right side of the colon i have to provide the expression the result of this expression okay the result of this expression i can store into a variable okay here sum is equal to here sum is a variable right so here lambda function having no name contain two parameters a and b which are separated by comma and other side of the colon we have the expression using this parameters i have performed some expression the result of this expression i am storing into this variable guys okay the return type of this function let's say is being stored into this variable now how to call this lambda function which doesn't contain any name that's a problem right we successfully created a lambda function having these two parameters and we have an expression also and the result of the expression is being stored into the variable known as sum here in this example but how to call this lambda function because it doesn't have any name so to call this lambda function guys we have to use this uh, variable okay some variable you have to use sum of okay sum of sum of variable name of whatever the data you want to pass into this uh, parameters of this function nameless function lambda function that you provide here i'll say 5 comma 4 here 5 will go into a okay and 4 will go into b that's it guys okay so what will be the return return type a plus b is the return type right that is 5 plus 4 9 will be written but how to get that 9 simply surround this this function calling statement lambda function calling statement with the print statement okay the return type will be automatically printed and this code guys the value 9 will be printed in the output as you can see here uh, similarly i can do this expression guys okay it's not compulsory that i have to use a plus b here right i can say a plus 10 also okay so here even though i am passing 5 into a 4 into b here a plus 10 means 5 plus 10 15 will be stored in and 15 will be printed in the output right here 4 is being passed to b but i am not using the expression it's not compulsory that i have to use all the parameters in the expression you can write your own expression okay right so here i can only provide a single parameter also because i am not using the other value anyhow 5 will go into a and 5 plus uh, 10 is 15 right i can provide multiple parameters okay more than two parameters let's say a b c and d also if required okay i'll say a plus b plus c plus d plus okay 10 like this also i can provide here i'll pass i can pass four parameters right four arguments here so i'll say 5 comma 4 comma 3 comma 2 okay here 5 will go into a 4 will go into b and uh, 3 will go into c and 2 will go into d a plus b plus c plus d is 5 plus 4 9 9 plus 3 is uh, 12 12 plus 2 is 14 14 plus 10 is 24 24 will go into sum and that return type of this okay returned value from this particular lambda function we are printing here using the print statement 24 should be printed in output okay so hope guys you understood how to create lambda functions in python lambda functions in python are nothing but the nameless functions which doesn't contain any name and they can intake any number of arguments as shown in this example any number of arguments can be intaken by this lambda function which doesn't have any name and uh, only one expression is allowed in the lambda function this side is called as one expression okay there is nothing but the one expect one expression guys okay so so all about the lambda functions in python guys thank you bye